Hello and welcome to my course. So let me ask you a couple of questions. So do you want to learn how to create your online store? Uh, of course, the answer is obvious. Of course you do. But do you want to learn how to make your online store without having to invest a lot of money? And of course, without knowing how to code. Basically, we're going to create our online store in an easy way. So in this course, I actually created a real e-commerce store. Basically, what I did in this course, I recreated my online store that I created a month before I started recording this course. And this online store that I created is already making sales, is getting organic sales. So that means I don't need to, to spend any money to get those sales. And that's exactly what I'm going to teach you in this course. In this course, I'm going to teach you step-by-step -step method how you can create your online store that's going to be professional looking fast loading it's going to load well on any device and that's very important for good user experience that can impact your conversion rate in this course i'm going to share with you my blueprint that i use to create my online stores and uh, i used to use the same blueprint to create online stores for my customers so once you're going to complete this course, you're going to have enough skills and knowledge to create a website, an online store, not just for yourself, but if it's something you are interested in, maybe you will decide that you want to work as a freelancer. So that's another great benefit of this course, because with the same blueprint, you will be able to create online stores, not just for yourself, but maybe for your future clients. In this course, you're gonna have two methods how to create your store. So in the first method, we're gonna use free tools. So it's gonna be cheaper. You could call this method a money savers method. And in the second option, we're gonna have a premium option. So in this premium option, you're gonna create your website using premium tools and it's gonna cost you just $70 extra. It's not much, but results are gonna be shocking compared to the free option. But uh, just to let you know, in this course, you're gonna have two options. So depending on your budget, you will be able to choose the option you want to use. And of course, you can start with a free option and then you can upgrade to a premium option. That's easily doable and no worries about that. So having a professional looking online store is extremely important. That's why in this course, I will show you the tactics, the tricks that you can follow to make your online store professional. Usually less is better and usually less looks much better. So in this course, I'm going to show you how that works. You will learn yourself and I can bet you that you will be surprised with the final results. You won't even believe that this is possible and you are doing this yourself. So that's going to be a very interesting part where I'm going to show you how to choose colors, how to match those colors, how to work with different styles, how to choose the right fonts and so on. So this is going to be a very interesting part in the course where we're going to take care of the design part of our website. I will also show you how you can easily create a business email address with your domain name and it's gonna be completely free. Other people tend to spend a lot of money, hundreds of dollars per year, just to have their email inbox with their domain name. And I will show you how you can do this for free. So that's another great way to save some extra money. In this course, I'm not just focusing on showing you how to create your online store because creating a website, not just online store, any type of website, is just the first step and the second step that is the most important you gotta know how to attract visitors how to attract customers and the best way the best way hands down is seo getting those visits from search engines like google bing.com or any other and you will get free sales so what can be better than getting free sales from uh, random visitors and if you're gonna make free sales from google or any other search engine that means your online store is good and ready to run paid ads so in this course i have a full section where i show you how to do seo uh, that is search engine optimization this section is about two hours long so you could say that it's a completely separate course so you're gonna learn how to do keyword research how to optimize your products how to track results how to understand the data how to understand the traffic that is coming to your website and all those things that are important if you want to have a successful online store so in this course i have a huge portion dedicated for teaching you how to get those free visitors how to get those first 
customers. So that's very important. I'm not just showing you how to create your website. I'm also showing you how to get customers. And of course, for everyone who's looking to create an online store, not in English language or not for the global audience, but maybe you will want to create an online store in your language for your audience. And uh, that audience is not English speaking audience. So at the end of this course, I have a separate section where I'm going to show you how you can fully translate your website into any language you want. So basically, you will be able to create your online store in any language you want. So no matter what your goal is, maybe you want to create an online store in English language for English speaking audience, for global audience, or maybe you want to create your online store for your native audience. No matter your goal, in this course, I have covered everything. I made this course for everyone who wants to learn how to start their online store. So maybe you are planning to start your business. Maybe you are planning to start selling something online. Maybe your crafts. Maybe you are planning to find suppliers and sell products online. So if you are that person, this course is absolutely for you. Maybe you have a physical store and now you are looking for adding another sales channel to your portfolio. Creating an online store is probably one of the best options you can choose. And if that's the case, this course is also perfect fit for you. And maybe you are a person who's already selling products on Etsy, eBay or any other platform. And trust me, I completely understand how sometimes it can be frustrating selling products on these platforms. They have various different rules. If you do not obey those rules, they might block you. They usually take a huge cut of your sales. So having your own online store, having your own sales channel is a huge benefit. So if you think that you would benefit greatly from having your online store, trust me, this course is exactly for you because having your own sales channel is a huge benefit compared to belonging to a sales platform like Etsy or eBay or anything like that. You're going to have everything in your power marketing aspect products aspect because sometimes those platforms they do not let you sell some products but when you're gonna have your own sales channel trust me you're not gonna have any issues like that so no matter what is your situation as long as you want to start your online store e-commerce website this course is for you it took me around 10 years to learn everything i know and i decided to put everything into this course i learned everything while running my e-commerce stores building e-commerce stores for others and I decided to put everything into one course and share it with you. So if you think this course is the right fit for you, then please join me and let's start building your online store. In this lesson, we're going to focus on domain names. So in this lesson, you're going to learn what those things are, where to get them. And I will share with you some tips when choosing your domain name. All right. So what is a domain name? Domain name is simply the name or the title of your website that you type in your browser to access your website or any other website. For example, it could be facebook.com, google.com, basketballnews.net or any other. You probably get it what it is. And let's talk about the structure of a domain name. So at first you're gonna have the title. So for example, it could be Facebook. And then after Facebook goes the extension or the ending of your domain name. So in Facebook's case, it is .com and uh, there are plenty of various different extensions available. So the most popular is obviously .com. The second one popular is .net, .co, .uk and all other. There are plenty of various different extensions available. And in later slide, we're gonna talk about the extensions itself. All right, so where you can get a domain name? I usually like to use godaddy.com because it is the most popular place to get your domain name. They have quite a lot of different extensions available and they are quite cheap. Usually to get a domain name for a year and I'm talking about a domain name with an extension.com, it will cost you around $10 per year. If you're going to choose a package of three years, it's going to be cheaper. Uh, it's not going to be cheaper than $10, but it's going to be cheaper around $20 for three years. So it's worth to buy domain names for a longer period of time because it's going to be cheaper. And if I'm choosing a domain name for, let's say, not a global audience, but for some type of local audience, the other speaking language audience, let's say for Polish people, I might look for other options. And that's exactly what 
we're gonna talk about right now so when you are choosing your domain name and you know that your project your website is going to target global audience or if it's going to target english speaking audience then your best choice is always .com if that domain name is not available and it is already registered then the second best option is .net and usually those two options are the best but of course these are not strict rules to choose only from .com or .net you can choose any other extension if you think it's gonna work for e-commerce stores you can absolutely choose .store .shop or anything similar I personally use .pet for one e-commerce store that is a cat toy store and it works very well and we have a second group of domain names so for example if you are building a website and not for English speaking audience and your website is not going to target a global audience then your best choice is to choose a country code domain name so for example if you are building a website that is going to target polish people and it's going to be in polish then your best choice would be to choose domain name extension or in other words the ending .pl if you are doing the same for let's say latvians then your best option would be .lv if you're doing the same for a lithuanian audience then your best option is .lt so this is how it works if you are building a website for global audience then your best choice is always .com and the same goes for the English speaking audiences and if you are building a website that is going to target a particular country particular language then you should choose country code extension all right so let's talk about the tips when choosing a domain name so obviously you want to make your domain name simple and easy to remember it's obviously because when people are gonna visit your website website and the next time they're gonna want to visit your website another time or they're gonna want to let their friends know about your website it's going to be much easier for them to remember your domain name and they're not gonna be over complicated with the name of your domain and the next tip try to keep it under 15 characters so I guess this tip goes with the first tip because if your domain name isn't going to be very long it's going to be short of course it's gonna be easier to remember all right let's move one and the third tip would be avoid hyphens in between the words so when you are building a website when you are choosing a domain name you might want to try out or to use a domain name that is out of two words so for example sitewizard.com in a lot of cases when people cannot find a certain domain available they try to use hyphens in between the words so it looks like site-wizard.com it's kind of complicated because people can mistake in your domain name with someone else's domain name so for example with site wizard or anything like that so be careful with hyphens in between the words if a particular domain name is not available then you might want to try another extension so for example if com is not available maybe look for net maybe this one is available if it's not available maybe a good option would be to try out dot store if you are building an e-commerce store or anything similar so these are some of the tips you can follow of course these are not rules these are just recommendations uh, those tips gonna help to choose and easy to remember and a simple domain name which is gonna help you a lot and if you can make this happen of course it is the best to make your domain name catchy it's gonna be much easier to remember and like I said if it's going to be much easier to remember you're gonna do yourself a favor because you gotta consider that your website your domain name is gonna be basically a brand and you're gonna have your social media profile so you want to look uh, interesting you want to look uh, different and this would be a tip for you I of course understand that uh, choosing the right domain name it can take some time maybe you already have some ideas and quite soon we're gonna check out if those ideas or domains are available uh, so if you feel like you need some time to think of a good sounding domain name just take your time uh, take a day or two or anything like that and then come back to the scores and you can continue building your website i totally understand from a personal experience how frustrating it can be to get yourself a good domain name because if you are building a website for a global audience uh, it's quite difficult to find a domain name that is free that is not already registered and it can take a while so no worries about that and let's say if you are building a website for your native audience not for the global audience or english-speaking audience 
then GoDaddy might not be the best choice. You can basically use Google, just type the extension of your country code domain. Let's say if you're looking for domains with an extension .lt, just type in a search .lt domain names for sale and definitely you'll find the country code extension that you are looking for. But in this case, we are going to use GoDaddy just to show you how it works. So let's go to GoDaddy.com and let's try to look for a domain name that we could register. All right, so I am at GoDaddy.com and as you can see, I just entered the domain name which I would like to register. So just do it yourself right here. Like I mentioned you before, I'm going global and I will use the extension .com, which is the most popular one. So once you have typed in your domain name, just click right here, search and this is what we get. As you can see, this domain name is already taken, but uh, to be honest, I already registered this domain name in the past. So this domain name belongs to me and we're going to use this domain name to create our website. Later on, I will show you how to connect your domain name to your web hosting. But right now, I just wanted to show Show you the whole process of looking for a domain name. So like I mentioned you before as you can see right here we have various different domain names with various different extensions. So we have com, tech, co, store, site. So as you can see there are plenty of different extensions available and it's completely up to you what extension you want to use. But like I mentioned you previously if you're going to go global then your best option is always .com, the second best option is always .net. But if those options are not available, you can experiment with other types of extensions, they're gonna work as well. Like I mentioned you before, I even have a domain name that is with an extension .pet and it works just fine, there are no issues with that. Alright, so once you have typed your domain name, once you have found your domain name you would like to register, just click add to cart and finish the checkout. And once you have done this, you're gonna actually find all your domain names right here, if you would go to my products. And as you can see, these are all the domain names I have. And later on, we're gonna use this domain name to create our website. Alright, so that's all for this lesson. Now you know what are domain names and where to get them. So I assume you already got yourself a domain name, but if you haven't gotten yourself a domain name yet, you can still follow this lesson. So in this lesson, I will show you how to set up your web hosting and I will share with you a special discount that I got for myself and that will give you a 20% off for the first three months. And as you can see with this web hosting, you're gonna get three day trial without even needing to add any credit cards or anything like that. And uh, let's go right here, let's click start free and as you can see right here, you'll have to fill up your information and here just type a coupon code. And this is the coupon code you want to type right here. And just fill up your information and click start free. And I will tell you why I use this web hosting myself. And as I like to say, I only recommend tools that I use myself. And the reason why I'm using this web hosting is because in the past I have tried various different providers. I even tried GoDaddy, but I was eventually disappointed because at the end of the day, my e-commerce store lost at least a couple of hundred customers because it was quite lagging, it wasn't loading quite good and it was quite disappointing and the price was almost identical to this web hosting. Uh, this web hosting is going to cost you $10 per month, it is pay as you go plan, you can stop using this web hosting anytime you want, there's no upfront fees, just like with majority of web hosting companies where they claim that it's gonna cost you $3 per month but at the end of the day you gotta purchase at least two years plan to get this good deal. So just add your your information and set up your account and I will show you how to set up your server, how to install WordPress and do all the other necessary steps. Alright, so I just logged into my account and as you can see this is how it looks. I have three projects running on Cloudways. So as you can see I started in 2018 and I've been running those projects for quite a while. This particular server cost me $70 per month. So I even upscaled some projects using this web hosting. So you might not see the same as I see right here because you are a fresh client and you have to click right here add server. So right Right now we're gonna create a new server where we're gonna install WordPress and basically this is where we're gonna set up our website. Alright, so let's choose an application. Let's choose WordPress 
and right here just give a name for your application so basically your application is going to be your website so i'm just gonna type right here mywebsite.com and the name of your server is going to be basically just the name of your server you can call it any way you want but i usually like to call it the same as my app but except i don't use extension at the end of my title all right right here you'll have to create your project since i've been using this web hosting for quite a while as you can see i have some projects created but in your case you will need to create a new project you'll see it right here an option to create a new project all right now let's choose server size let's start with one gigabyte of rams it's going to be more than enough i know they are saying you that there are some recommendations but don't bother yourself with those recommendations eh, because your website is going to be new and you will not need so many resources just because they are recommending you this it doesn't mean that you have to get a more expensive plan all right so it's going to be more than enough all right, now you have to choose your server location. So like I mentioned to you previously, when I was talking about domain names, uh, if you are building a website for global audience, most likely you want to choose a server location that is located in United States of America because most likely most of your users, most of your visitors will be from United States of America. I usually like to use New York when I'm building a website for a global audience but San Francisco should work as well. But if you are building a website just for the people who are in the US and you're planning to target a certain state or anything similar, then you should choose a server location that is closer to your potential visitors. If you are building a website that is located in Europe, for example, in my case, not so long ago, I built a website that is located in Lithuania that is targeting Lithuanian audience. And as you can see right here, we don't have any servers that are located in Lithuania so I chose the closest server that is Frankfurt and this server is in Germany and it works just fine my website loads lightning fast and there are no issues so let's say if you're building a website for people who are in the UK then you might want to choose London and the same goes for other Europe countries you can choose any other server that is closest to your country or maybe you are building a website for other regions then of course you want to choose a server that is closer to your potential visitors and if you're gonna choose a server that is far far away from your potential visitors you will have a slight delay it's not a big thing but of course it's the best to do things the right way and if you are building a website for a global audience like i said you might want to consider servers that are located in in the United States of America and if you are building a website for your native audience then just look for a server that is closest to your audience so simple as that in my case I think I will go with a global audience and I'm just gonna choose New York so just like that and let's click launch now all right so just wait a few minutes until the server setup is complete it shouldn't take very long all right the setup is complete and we are basically done with this lesson in the next lesson i will give you a walkthrough of the panel of this web hosting you will familiarize yourself a bit more and basically we are finished with the first steps in starting our website in this lesson i will give you a quick walkthrough of our web hosting panel so once you have created your server you should see your server right here just like that except as you can see i have some more servers but you should focus on your newly created server so let's click right here all right so now we are on the first level of our web hosting panel uh, this is where we're gonna do various adjustments let's say this is where you're gonna find the various settings related to your server so this is the first level of your web hosting panel so right here as you can see we have master credentials uh, with these credentials we can access ftp account to uh, check all the files we have on our server uh, actually we're not gonna use those credentials but you can use them if you want and uh, by using those credentials you can access all the files you have on this server so those files belong to your websites or just the website that you are creating right now using this server you can actually host multiple websites not just one but more than one and you will find the list of those websites right here so as you can see websites that we are hosting right here are called applications so that's how they are called if you would have more websites hosted on this server here you will see more applications 
All right, let's go back to the first level of our web hosting. And the second tab right here is monitoring. So right here you can see how many resources your website is using on your server. Because on your server you have a limited amount of resources. So as you remember we chose a server that had one gigabyte of RAMs and this is the CPU usage. As you can see it's not at use at all. It's showing us that it's 0% in use. So that's great. And as you can see right here this is our disk space. That's how much space we have on our server so basically your website it consists out of files like media files images codes and so on and those files are uploaded on your server so those files take some space right here if you go to details this is where you can see how much of your CPU is in use. I kind of understand that these things might sound complicated, but don't worry about that at all. Because right here, you just have to check how much of CPU your website is using. Right here, we have some recommendations. So if your CPU usage is below 10 or 20%, that's an indication that your server isn't powerful enough and you might need to upgrade your server to a more powerful server that has more resources. But when you are starting with your website, your website is fresh and your website isn't getting a lot of visitors, there's not going to be any issues with CPU usage. The more visitors come to your website, the more they interact with your website, the more CPU will be at use. So simple as that. If your website is fresh, do not focus around here too much. As the time goes by, once your website starts growing and growing and once you see that your CPU isn't powerful enough to handle this traffic that is coming to your website you might want to upgrade your web hosting right here new relic you actually don't need to focus right here right here you can check your server usage the cpu and everything a bit more in depth you can see how much of cpu uh, separate plugins are using on your wordpress website so this section is not very important to be honest in the past i used to track all those things right here but eventually i realized that uh, it's it's not worth it because you know it's time consuming and 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 there's not a lot of things to focus on but if if you are planning to go above and beyond dive deeper into all management settings and so on maybe this is going to be useful for you in the future right here we have tab to manage services so right here we don't need to change anything everything is good as it is by default so let's not focus here too much all right let's go to settings and packages Right here we have various adjustments that we can do to our PHP. But again, everything is good as it is by default right here. And we don't really need to do any adjustments. Like going to other tabs like optimization, we don't really need to change anything because we are starting fresh and everything is good as it is by default. If we would go to security tab, as you can see, you can whitelist and block IP addresses. In the future, once your website becomes bigger and bigger and there are more and more visitors to your website, you might see that there are some spammy comments coming to your website. And uh, this might be a good uh, idea to add IP addresses of these commentators right here so they would be blocked. But there's a huge chance that you're not going to get those spammy comments. I remember I started getting spam on my website after two or three years. So that's not a huge issue. You can just delete those comments. But yeah, this is where you can whitelist IPs and blacklist IP addresses. All right, if you would go to vertical scaling, this is where you can upgrade your server. So just like I mentioned you previously, if you would go to monitoring tab right here, and if we would go to details, as you can see, if your server usage is always below 10 or 20%, then this is where you want to scale your server. So if you would choose more powerful plan, you would have more resources. And uh, just like that, just select a better plan and click scale now. Right now our plan is the cheapest one. It works just fine. I've been running various different WordPress websites using this cheapest plan and I was getting quite a lot of visitors to my websites, even e-commerce stores and everything works just fine. So you can start with the lowest server and you won't have any issues. All right, if you would go right here, backups, you can obviously take backups of your server 
So just in case you're gonna need to take a backup of your server when you are doing some major changes, major updates to your website and you don't want to mess anything up, it's a good idea to have a backup of your website. You can also do backups in your application settings. All right, if I would go right here in SMTP tab, right here, we're not gonna change anything, but in later lesson, we're gonna use this tab to activate SMTP and we're gonna do this so we could get various notifications emails to our email address from our website that's what we're gonna use this tab later but for now let's not focus and all right being honest in this level what you're gonna use most likely i've been using cloudways for five years and i can tell you from my own experience i've been running multiple websites and right here the only thing i use is this one monitoring i just like to check how much of resources my website is using especially when i have an increase of visitors let's say if i have like 200 live visitors on my website at once then i usually like to check how much of resources my website is using and if everything works smoothly without any issues so this is where you can check the usage of your resources and like i said this is probably the only one tab that i use most often I don't use almost any other tabs at all. All right, so this was the first level of our web hosting and the second level is right here on application level. So if I would go to my application, right here we have another set of various tools and settings. All right, so let's start with the first tab. Right here you'll find your credentials to log into your WordPress dashboard. So later on we're gonna use those credentials to access our WordPress dashboard. And here we can set up our FTP client. So later we can use this FTP client to access the files of our application. As you remember right here in server level and the first level of our web hosting, we had master credentials that we can use to log into our FTP and access all the files that are on our server. But if we would go right here in application level, which is the second level of our web hosting and right here we're gonna set up our username password and by using those credentials we're just gonna access the files of this application of this particular website instead of accessing all files that can be found in this first level of our web hosting so later we're gonna set up those credentials and i will show you how you can access the files all right let's move on to staging management this one is for staging management basically before going live with your website you can set up your website in a staging environment so this one is up to you usually this one is for a bit more advanced users who want to test various code things plugins and before making sure that everything is gonna work smoothly those people can use staging application to check if there's not gonna be any issues with the changes with the plugins or anything like that but but in this course we're gonna use uh, proven methods proven plugins and everything so you won't need to use this staging management environment all right let's go to monitoring section this one is kind of similar to the previous one we had in the first level of our web hosting as you remember but right here you can check what ip requests are coming to your website and all other things this section might not be very important to you but um, this is where you can check the incoming traffic to your website by the IP addresses and so on. So this one is completely up to you if you want to use those analytics right here, but I usually don't use them at all. Let's go to bot protection. As you can see right here, Cloudways is protecting our website from bot activity. And this is a very useful tool to have. As you can see, it is active. So we are protected from bot activity and that's good. Basically, this tool, this tab right here, once it's activated, it just installs a plugin to your WordPress website. A plugin is basically an add-on for adding uh, some type of a function. So this time, the function that was added is bot protection. Simple as that. Let's go to domain main management right now we're not gonna do anything here but in later lesson we're gonna use this tab to connect our domain name so for now we can skip it we can go to cron job management right here you will be able to create cron jobs i know it might sound complicated but do not get discouraged by this whole jargon and everything because most likely you're not gonna need to use this that much basically cron jobs are meant for creating some commands some tasks would be executed automatically so that's what these cron jobs are for but right now we're not gonna add any cron jobs because we don't need we're gonna create our website fully functioning website without needing to do anything 
something like that. But if in the future you will stumble upon a plugin that you want to install to your website for a specific functionality and this plugin might need some cron job, this is where you can create this cron job, this is where you can add a new cron job. All right, let's go to SSL certificate. So for now, we're not gonna do anything with this SSL certificate. Uh, the good thing is that with Cloudways, you will get free SSL certificates. So you won't need to pay for them. If you remember when we were in GoDaddy, they offered SSL certificates for almost 50 pounds. So that's how much you can save per year. All right, later on, we're gonna come back here and we're gonna install this SSL certificate. If you're not sure what is an SSL certificate, it is this gray pattern padlock next to your domain name it basically indicates that your website has secure connection there is an SSL certificate installed to your website and basically this certificate encrypts data that uh, your visitors type into your website it is important for security all right if you would go to backup and restore here you can take backups of your website. So instead of going right here to your server level, like I mentioned you previously, you could go right here and take backups of your application of your website. So once you take a backup, you're gonna take a backup of this particular website right here, instead of taking a backup of the whole server. So if you would take the backup of the whole server and you have like two websites hosted on this single server, then you're gonna take a backup of this whole server with those two websites but since we have only one website and this is what we're gonna focus on so the best is to take backups right here of your website so if you are doing some changes and you don't want to mess anything up if you are trying to install some plugins let's say in the future you will decide that you want to install a plugin and something goes wrong and your website just breaks before doing before those installations you can take backup of your website and if you see something goes wrong you can always choose a backup that you just took from the list and you can click restore application and just like that you will restore your website to the previous state just like that deployment via git this is for advanced users where you can connect git with your website and we're not gonna use this at all if we would go to application settings right here you'll see various extensions that you can activate to your application if you would go to php settings you can do changes to php but we are not gonna do that unless in the future you will stumble upon that something requires those changes this is where you can find those adjustments those settings in this tab all right, let's go to migration tools. So migration tools are kind of obvious. You use those tools to migrate a website. So let's say if you have a website hosted somewhere else and you want to use Cloudways because Cloudways is a fast hosting, then you can use this tool to migrate your website. Simple as that. All right, if you would go to Cloudflare, Cloudflare is basically CDN service, a content delivery network, by using Cloudways, you will add extra layer of security to your website. And by using Cloudways, you will improve the speed of your website just a little bit. But let's not focus on Cloudflare. Oh, I mean Cloudflare, not Cloudways. So I'm talking about Cloudflare. All right, so Cloudflare is a paid service. And as you can see, it will cost you this much. Actually, you can use a free version of Cloudflare, but you will have to connect everything yourself. But let's not focus on that because we don't really need to use any of those adjustments. But if in the future, let's say after a couple of years or something like that, you will decide that you want to dive a bit deeper into optimizing your website, uh, you might need to use some of those tools, some of those settings right here. If you would go to save updates, this is a new tool you can do save updates for your website. So for example, if there are some WordPress updates, plugin updates or anything like that, you can do save updates without messing up with your website because sometimes in rare occasions, when you do update to your WordPress plugin or a theme, it might mess something up but it doesn't happen very often and uh, it's up to you if you want to be extra cautious and take updates using this tab so this one is up to you but we're not gonna need to use that like i said my methods are proven i've been using the same blueprint to create websites for myself and for my clients and everything works smoothly and being honest what tools you're gonna use right here probably you're gonna use this tab more often to access your wordpress dashboard so you're gonna use those credentials 
and you're probably gonna use those credentials right here after you create them to access all the files on your website and the, the other quite important tab that you might use more often is bot protection just to check how much of bot activity is going on on your website how much of these bots were blocked or not and so on. So being honest, I'm using Cloudways for five years and on application level, on the second level of our web hosting dashboard, this is the most important tab to me and this tab, bot protection. I only use those two tabs on application level and when we go to the first level of our web hosting dashboard, that is server level dashboard, I only use this monitoring to check how much of resources my website is using right now. I only use just three things, but it's good to know what each tool is meant for, so you would be a bit more familiar with all the settings, all the tools that are right here. Because maybe in the future you might need to use some of these tools. Just don't forget, there are two levels. The first level is for server management right here, and like I said, I only use monitoring. And the second level is for application uh, management. So this is the second level of your web hosting dashboard. And this is where you're gonna find various settings related to your website itself, not just the server. All right, so this is it for this lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna connect our domain name to our web hosting because right now those two things are separate entities. Even though we have our domain name, we cannot access our website because it's just a name. It's not connected to anything. So we have to connect this domain name to our web hosting and we're gonna use web hosting to host our website basically to keep all the files of our website on the server. All right, so to connect your domain name to your web hosting, you want to go to your account of GoDaddy or any other place where you register your domain name. In my case, it's of course gonna be GoDaddy. And let's go right here to my product. And as you can see right here, this is my domain name. Maybe you're gonna have your domain names right here. What you want to do is actually you want to go to the list of all your domain names and you want to click right here, DNS. All right, so the only thing that is going to be the most important for us in this whole section is this first line. In your case, you might have text that says parked, no worries about that, it's completely okay, but everything else should look very similar like that. Your records might be a bit different, but no worries about that. If you haven't done any changes, everything will be fine. All right, so we have all our records and now we wanna go back to our web hosting right here. And don't forget, you want to go to your application management level. So this is the second level of your web hosting dashboard. As you remember, server is the first level. So this is server management, but you don't want to be here. You want to go right here in application settings, select your website, and now you want to copy this IP address. So just click on this IP address right here. And now we can go back to our DNS management settings and we want to change this first record right here. Let's click edit and just paste the IP address you just copied. Let's change the time right here, TTL, that stands for time to load. And instead of using this number, let's use 600 and let's click save. All right, success, our DNS record was updated and now our domain name is pointing to our web hosting. It's like we added a telephone number to a name, just like that. So now once someone's gonna type our domain name into web browser, they're gonna be able to access our website. But we are not done yet because we have to do some changes right here. Like I said in the previous lesson, we're gonna use this tab right here, domain management, and let's click add domain. And right here, you just want to type the domain name you purchased, you registered. In my case, it was the baconavocados.com. So I'm just gonna type this domain name right here. Let's click add domain. And we want to make this domain name primary. So let's click right here. Oh, let's click here. And let's select make primary, set as primary. All right, so just wait a minute until the changes are complete. All right, let's go to access details one more time. As you can see in admin panel, now we have a completely different URL. It has our domain name. And by using this URL, we can actually access our WordPress dashboard. So for example, I'm just gonna go to my domain name. So I'm just gonna copy my domain name 
or I can open this domain name in a new tab. And if I would go right here, as you can see, we are getting this message that uh, there's a suspicious page and it was blocked for me. It's happening because we don't have SSL certificates. So we are not able to access this website. But if I would click right here, I can actually go to this website. But since we got an SSL certificate for free, we can actually install this certificate to our website. And in later lesson, that's exactly what we're going to do. For now, we can close this tab. And this is it. This is it for this lesson. Now you know how to connect your domain name to your web hosting. All right, so as you remember, we couldn't access our website because my antivirus was blocking it because it seemed for this antivirus that uh, this website is too suspicious because this website doesn't have SSL certificate. So as you can see, if your website doesn't have an SSL certificate, it doesn't look trustworthy at all. So it is important to have a SSL certificate. And like I said, at Cloudways, you will get SSL certificate for free. And that is just great. So let's go to SSL certificate and now we're gonna install an SSL certificate all right so let's choose let's encrypt right here just type your email address the email address that you use for your personal uses you can use the same email address that you use to register right here at Cloudways so that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna type my email address and I will enter my domain name all right so I just enter my details and now we can click install certificate it shouldn't take long, just wait a minute. All right, fantastic. We just successfully installed our SSL certificate. As you can see, it says it's going to expire this date, but no worries about that. It's going to renew automatically, so you won't need to do any changes. All right, since we have installed our SSL certificate, we can actually go to our website and let's see if it works, if my antivirus isn't blocking this website anymore. All right, so this is the website we want to access. And voila, as you can see, my antivirus isn't blocking this website anymore. It's because this website has SSL certificate, this website is secure, and this website has an extra layer of security. When you are creating a website, it is extremely important to have an SSL certificate because as you saw it yourself, some anti virus is gonna block the website because it's not trustworthy at all so as you can see we have a website so great progress so far of course this website has a demo content and doesn't look good it doesn't have any of our information but good job on creating your website so if it's your first website congratulations you just created your website of course there's a lot of things to do but we can see the foundation of our website so fantastic job so this is it for this lesson. Now you know how to install SSL certificate to your website and why it is extremely important. In this lesson, I will show you how to set up your FTP account so you could access all the files of your website. This is quite important, especially in the future for you if you're gonna need to do some authentication with your website. Sometimes some websites might require for you to upload a file to your FTP account, let's say, uh, to verify your website. Uh, so it is important to know how to access your files. All right, so like I said, we're gonna use some details from our tab that says access details and right here application credentials so right here you want to create credentials for your application just given a username and set a password so that's exactly what I'm gonna do myself all right so I just added my details and I'm gonna click right here add I'm not gonna update anything right here all right so just wait a bit and everything is ready so now we can use those credentials to log into FTP account but how to access FTP account what is that so FTP account is simply the files of your website so FTP is file transfer protocol that's what it stands for but to access your files you need to install one program 
So just go to Google and look for this program that is called FileZilla. In old times, this is how people used to upload the various files on the server. And this is how people used to share those files, download those files from various different servers. Uh, those things used to be like that in the past before various different file sharing options were available. All right, but we are not here to talk about that. We are not to talk about the history of uh, internet. We are here to set up our FTP account. So let's go right here and let's click download FileZilla client let's click download FileZilla client one more time and all we have to do is just download the first option all right once the download is complete just install FileZilla to your computer just a second all right let's click agree let's not install brave browser let's click next and we can add a desktop icon let's click next Let's click next, install. It shouldn't take very long, just install FileZilla. All right, now we can launch FileZilla. And as you can see, this is how it looks. All right, so now we can close this tab and let's go back to our FileZilla. And right here, we could type our host that it's going to be IP address. This is the username, this is the username, password, password right here port should be 21 or 22 I don't really remember it's 22 if I'm not mistaking anything yes but instead of typing those credentials right here let's create our new site right here so let's go to site manager and let's click new site just type your domain name right here I'm just gonna type bacon avocados all right and here we have to choose protocol so it's going to be this one and now you want to copy your public IP address. Let's go to FileZilla. Let's paste it right here. Let's go right here. Let's copy username. And uh, we can copy the password. The same credentials we just created. All right. Let's click right here. Let's click OK. Let's save password. And now let's click right here and let's see if we can connect. Yes, we can connect. So let's click OK. We are connecting and we just connected to our files of our website. So as you can see right here, we have files. Just like on your computer, you have file directories and everything. And the same goes for your website. All right, so as you can see, these are the files. If I would go to public HTML, those are basically the files of our website of WordPress and this is where all the plugins will go and this is where you might need to upload a file some files to, for authentication let's say Pinterest used to do this in the past I'm not sure if the Pinterest still requires to authenticate your website if you want to connect your website with Pinterest through files but in a lot of cases it's still possible there are some websites that require to do this so they usually say for you to download the file and once you download the file you just have to add this file right here just like that so as you can see we have various different files we can access our website using those files we can check all the files of our website media files like images code and so on so your website your wordpress website or any other type of website is basically just a bunch of files and your browser whatever your browser is if it's firefox chrome or internet explorer or any other these browsers they just read those all files that are right here let's say and they display your website in easy to understand format in interactive type of format so just like that you can go through your website through your files instead of just going through these file directories you go through your website just like in this format so this is it for this lesson now you should know how to set up your ftp account you might not use this ftp account that often but um, it's good to know how it's done because uh, as i can say from my own experience i kind of use filezilla not that often but i usually use uh, filezilla like a couple of times per year or something like that to do some some changes to do some adjustments but uh, to be honest you might not need to use that much but it is important to know how to access your files using ftp account so this is it for this lesson
In this lesson, I will show you how to set up SMTP services so you could send and receive notification emails. To explain to you what is SMTP, instead of explaining everything, I'm just gonna give you an example. So let's say you are building an e-commerce store and uh, once your customer places an order, he receives a notification email of uh, successfully placed order. Once the order is shipped, he's gonna receive an email, a notification email of a shipped order. So those are notification emails that customers receive. If you don't have SMTP service that is responsible for sending and receiving, basically sending emails uh, to email addresses, then your customers will not be able to receive those notification emails. Let's say if you have a contact form on your website, you know those forms once you go to a contact page of a certain website and there is a form where you can add your email address, your name and leave a message. And once you hit a button send, this form is sent to the administrators of this website. So if you don't have a SMTP service set up on your website, you will not be able to have contact forms, functioning contact forms because you will not receive emails. So in this lesson, we're gonna set up our SMTP services and it's quite easy. You just have to know what you have to do. All right, so the first things first, let's go right here and let's open add-ons in a new tab. All right, let's go here. And as you can see right here, I have this add-on that is called Elastic Emails. I have already activated this add-on because as you saw it yourself, I have multiple websites, multiple servers running on this web hosting. So I had to activate this one. But in your case, you have to activate it yourself. So you'll have to click right here and just select your package. I highly recommend you to choose the first one. It's going to cost you just 10 cents per month for 1000 emails. And when you are just starting out it's gonna be more than just enough so just select the first option and click subscribe that's all you have to do and once you surpass uh, this number of emails you can always upgrade your plan but i'm telling you when you are just starting out you don't really need to worry about that all right once you have done this we can close this one and now we can go back right here to the previous tab and as you remember now we are on the second level of our web hosting and we are on the application level that is our website we have to go back to the server level and uh, the first level of our web hosting so right here in smtp tab let's click right here and we want to select elastic email let's click right here and let's click enable all right just wait a minute until it is enabled all right fantastic everything was configured successfully and now we can go back right here and we're gonna need to verify our domain name so to do this we will have to click here on this check mark and you can open this link in a new tab as you see it right here let's scroll down until we see the instructions and we're gonna need to add those records right here to our domain name so to do this we want to go to our domain name provider where we purchased our domain name in my case it's going to be godaddy and we're gonna need to do some dns adjustments so as you remember from the previous lesson when we had to add our ip address of our web hosting we have to click right here let's go right here my account we can click domains actually we could have done this in a previous window but it's okay all right so let's find our domain name this is the domain name we want to use and uh, just a second let's click right here manage dns and now we're gonna need to add some new records right here so to add a new record simply click add and let's go back to instructions now you just have to remember that is gonna be text record so you don't need to copy this one, but you have to copy this one right here. So let's click copy. Let's go back to our domain name provider. Let's select text element right here and uh, name just type ETA as you saw it yourself and just paste the value right here and time to load. Let's add custom. Let's choose 600 seconds. All right, let's click add record. All right, so we successfully added a new record as you can see. This record was added right here and now we're going to need to add some other records as well. So this is the other record we want to add. So as you saw it yourself, the previous one had name host alias that was ETA and this one has this one. So you want to copy that. Let's go back and let's click add and let's choose the type. So the type is going to be just like it was with the previous one, but instead of 
the name we're gonna use this one and right here we have to copy the value so this is the value you want to copy so just click copy the value let's click paste right here and let's choose custom just like we did with the previous one and let's type 600 seconds all right let's click add record and i believe we're gonna need to add another record so let's scroll down at this time we're gonna need to add another type of record that is gonna be c name so you want to copy this one tracking or you can remember it and right here let's click add let's choose type the type is gonna be c name name it's gonna be tracking and now you want to copy value so let's copy this value let's go back let's paste it right here let's choose time to load just like we did with the previous one let's click add a record all right fantastic it was added successfully and now we're gonna need to add i believe the last record as you can see we were supposed to add another record that is mx but we're not gonna do this right now in the later lesson we're gonna add this record when we're gonna set up our business email address because we're verifying this domain name we don't really need this mx record unless we are going to use some type of email suit like g suit or any other i will show you the one i use myself it's free so you will be able to send and receive emails using your business email address for now let's not focus on that let's add the last record so the last record is going to be text record and we want to copy the name so let's go back to godaddy and as you remember let's click add let's choose type so the type is going to be text element let's paste the name and let's copy the value so the value this is the value you want to copy let's paste it right here and let's choose the custom time to load again 600 seconds and let's click add record as you can see right here in rare cases it can take up to 48 hours until those uh, records are full added but in our case it shouldn't take this long uh, everything should be set and ready within a couple of minutes all right so we have done this we have finished with this part let's go back and let's see if we have any other record stat no we don't have but as you can see we had some other options for the last record but we don't need to do that all right we can close this tab we can close this tab as well again if you're using any other domain name provider if you have registered your domain name somewhere else the procedure is still gonna be the same you're just gonna need to add a record so as you saw just so we had some text records and we had a c name record so just add those records and you will be good to go all right so now we have to verify our domain name so right here just type the domain name you are using for this website the one that we used to add those records so that's exactly what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna type my domain name and now we can click verify domain name all right so we haven't successfully activated our domain name but no worries about that and later lesson we're gonna go back right here like i showed you we don't have mx record so mx record is responsible for setting up for you a business email address you know with a domain name so let's say i'm gonna have a business email address that it's gonna say support at uh, baconavocados.com so this is gonna be my business email address for now everything seems great now we can can leave it as it is as you can see all other records are green so that means we successfully activated them and the last record that we need to take care of it's going to be this one mx and in the next lesson when we're gonna set up our business email address i will show you how to add it we're gonna go back right here and we're gonna click verify one more time and everything should be okay all right so for now everything seems great and we can leave it just like that All right, so just like I told you in the previous lesson, in this one, we're going to focus on setting up our business email address. So I hope you haven't left this tab. So instead of leaving this tab, you should go to a new tab and you want to go to zoho.com. All right, so once you're here, you want to click right here, sign up now and make sure that you have selected business email and just type your name your email or phone and set a password. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do myself. All right, let's agree to terms of service and let's click sign up for free. All right, you can click save if you want uh, in my case i'm just gonna click save password and right here you'll have to type the code you received to your email address so simply just verify your email address 
Let's verify it. So, all right, as you can see, we have paid plans. It doesn't cost that much compared to Google Suit, G Suit, or basically the interface of uh, Gmail, but uh, we don't really need to pay for it. Since we're just starting out, we can use a free plan. So we will be able to create five different email addresses with your domain name. So for example, you could have an email address for marketing, support, with your name, and so on. So let's click try now, and let's click add a existing domain name and now you just want to type your domain name so I'm just gonna type my domain name and uh, fill up all the other needed information all right let's click add and now we're gonna need to verify our domain name so just like we did in cloudways right here the procedure is gonna be almost identical all right let's click proceed to verify our domain name and we can click configure manually now we're gonna need to add a text record so just like we did the previous time you want to go to your domain name provider in my case it's gonna be obviously godaddy so let's click godaddy let's close this one let's go right here to my products and let's choose the domain name this is the domain name i want to use let's click manage dns and just like we did the previous time we're gonna need to do the same let's click add and as you remember it was text element as well and now we have to copy the value so let's click right here to copy this value and the name is gonna be eta all right so let's paste the value right here and let's choose custom 600 seconds let's click add record all right we can close this window let's go back right here and let's click verify text record all right it's not verified yet because i selected time to load 600 seconds so time to load basically means how long it's gonna take to load those newly added records so i added 600 seconds and uh, that means we should wait a couple of minutes so just wait a minute or two and try verifying text record one more time if this issue happens you don't need to worry too much it just means that you have to wait some time in rare occasions you're gonna need to wait uh, a longer period of time as you can see right here it can last from 30 minutes to one day but it happens in very rare occasions all right now we can click verify text record all right so i successfully verified the ownership of my domain name and now i can create my email address so the first email address that i want to create and it's gonna be used as a super administrator i want this email address to be support at uh, baconavocados.com probably when you're starting any type of project this is gonna be the most important email address for you so you should always have email address support at uh, your domain name.com or dot any other the main name extension so i'm just gonna type support but if you want you can type any other email address it's up to you all right let's click create and here you can add other users you can add other email addresses right here if you need to so now this is your perfect opportunity to add more email addresses uh, later on you can edit those email addresses as you can see right now it is support at the bacon avocados but the name is Gwedas. it is my name but you can do changes to this email address so let's click edit profile instead of showing my name Gwedas, because once your visitor or customer receives an email from you from support at the bacon avocados they're gonna see your name so you can change that instead of saying your name you can add support and you can change the nickname as well right here all right let's hit save changes and now we can go back and as you can see now we have an email address that is support at uh, your domain name.com and uh, once uh, your customers your visitors are gonna receive an email address from you they're gonna see that it's gonna be from support all right so now you can add more email address by clicking right here just create uh, an email address with your name an email address for marketing purposes and so on but in this case since you already know how to do that we can proceed to the next steps of setting up our email email accounts.
All right, so now we don't really need to create any groups because our business is small, we're just starting out. Once your website grows, you will always be able to create groups for various other purposes. But now let's proceed to DNS mapping. All right, so let's click configure manually. I'm doing this manually because you might be using some other domain name providers because in your case, you might not be able to do this automatically and you will need to do this manually so that everybody would be able to follow this lesson. I'm doing this manually. All right, so now we're gonna need to add some records. So it's gonna be very simple. We just have to copy those records just like we did the previous lesson and we have to add those records right here so we're gonna need to add free mx records so basically let's copy the first mx record let's go to our domain name provider let's click add let's choose type so the type is gonna be mx and uh, name let's go back for name yeah it's gonna be eta let's paste the value priority it's gonna be 10 and time to load is gonna be 600 seconds let's click add record all right let's add another one let's go back right here now we have to copy this one as you can see priority is going to be 20 and let's go right here let's click add if you know how to do that you don't need to follow this lesson you can do this yourself but i just want to show you how it's done all right so let's paste the value and yeah let's choose custom let's type 600 and as you can see it's quite simple all right so i'm just gonna add the last mx record it's gonna be this one it is set to 50 priority let's go to add let's select type type is gonna be mx name it's gonna be eta priority 50 and value just pasted it right here let's select custom time to load 600 seconds let's click add record all right great success it is successfully added and now we're gonna need to add spf record but instead of adding a new record we're gonna need to edit the record we previously add when we were verifying our domain name on cloudways with elastic email all right so now we should go back to zoho and let's click view spf value so this is the current value we have and we have to replace this value with this one all right we want to use this value all right let's click ok since we have copied this value and now we have to go back to our domain name provider and we have to look for spf value just a second it's supposed to be text record so let's go to the next page all right just a second all right spf so this is the value we want to replace so instead of creating a new SPF value, we have to add the value that was generated by Zoho because you can only have one SPF record added to your domain name. All right, so this is very important. All right, so we successfully replaced this value with another one and now we can go back. And the last value that we're gonna need to add, not the value, but the record, is going to be text record. It's gonna be this one. So we have to copy the host, the name. So it's gonna be this one. Let's go back to our domain name provider. Let's choose text element. Let's paste the name right here. Let's go back and let's copy the value. So this is the value. Let's paste this value right here. As you remember, time to load, 600 seconds. And let's click add a record. All right, so everything should be good right now. And now we can go back to Zoho. And now we're gonna need to verify all our records. So instead of verifying right away, just wait a couple of minutes and then click verify all records. All right, after you have waited some time, let's click verify all records. All right, we successfully verified all records. Now we can proceed to go mobile. If you want, you can install an application to your phone device with Zoho email suit. It's up to you, but I'm just going to keep it as it is. And now we can proceed to complete our setup. And as you can see, you have two choices. So let's open the first one in a new tab. Let's see if we can open this in a new tab. No, we cannot. 
So instead of going to admin console, if you would go to admin console, you would go straight to your administrator's console where you can add uh, more email addresses, you can delete email addresses, where you can do adjustments to those email addresses. You can try out other Zoho tools. They have other tools uh, like calendars and all other various tools that will help you to optimize your workflow. But uh, in this lesson, our focus is email address. So let's click right here. Check out out your inbox all right and this is it now you have fully functioning business email address all right we can skip the tutorial and as you can see this is how it looks so you have your inbox you have drafts send spam trash you can click new email you have calendar tasks you have all kinds of stuff right here don't be afraid to explore everything yourself because this way you're going to learn how to use this email suit much better as you can see here we have various other tools if you would go right here you would be able to access your administrator's console so do not be afraid to explore everything yourself because this way you're going to learn how to use this tool much better if you would use any other tool let's say g suit like google it's a paid tool and uh, you would have just interface of uh, gmail maybe it would look better but this one that is free it uh, completely does the job i've been using this email provider for very a long time and it works very well just click to write a new email that's all you have to do but before we finish with this lesson we have some unfinished business to do so we can close our domain name provider right here because we're not gonna use this one for quite a while and now we can go back to cloudways and as you remember we had one record missing that was a max and as you remember we added that record all right, so now we can click verify domain and as you can see domain verification was complete so we can close this window and we can actually test if our notification emails will work so to do this we have to go to servers right here let's select your server that is here and you want to go to the second level of your web hosting that is your application oh sorry you want to go back to the server to the first level of your web hosting and click smtp uh, let's refresh this page because as i remember we saved elastic email and it should reflect right here yeah as you can see we have elastic email saved successfully and uh, you should have this one as well if you don't have you have to select it from the list click enable and now we can click send test email simply type your email address so type your business email address in my case it's going to be support at the baconavocados.com and click send test email you will see to yourself that you're gonna receive this email so let's try this out let's click send test email all right it seems like it was sent successfully and now i'm just gonna open my email inbox and i'm gonna check if i received this test email and as you can see we successfully received a test email it says that it came from support at the baconavocados.com and when you are sending a test email make sure that you are not using the same email address for receiver's email address as you have used for creating your cloudways account because it might not work so make sure that you are using other email address than you used to create your cloudways account because if you're going to use the same it might not work but if you're going to use other email address it should work so this is it for this lesson now you know how to set up your business email address without needing to pay a lot of money for any other options and as well you know how to verify your domain name both for zoho and for elastic email all right congratulations on completing the first section of this course so now you should know what is a domain name what is web hosting how those two things connect together and of course now you know how to set up your business email address that's very important if you are running your online store because you want to look professional and having a business email address is extremely important so if something was not clear for you you are always welcome to join my facebook group if you're gonna have questions while building your website just join this group and i'm always here to help you so now you are done with the first part of this course and you kind of have your website of course this is a completely default version of your website but at least now you are online so if before starting this course you didn't know anything about building websites or what is a domain name or what is a web hosting just look at yourself now now you have 
your website now you are online so great job on that in the next section you're gonna get a solid foundation of wordpress so if you will ever decide that you want to create any type of website you're gonna have a solid foundation of wordpress and that's gonna be helpful for you in the future all right so that's all for now and of course congratulations on going online In this lesson, we're going to talk about WordPress. So you will learn what is WordPress and why we are using WordPress as our content management system. So let's put it simply, WordPress is basically like a software that you use to create your website. So instead of needing to code everything, to program everything, we have a content management system that helps us to do the whole creation process of our website without needing to know any code or anything like that. Basically, you will need to learn how to use this content management system where to add your content how to add products and all other things and uh, this helps to create a website much faster and you don't need to spend a lot of money on developing your own website so this is a huge advantage of WordPress and WordPress is the most popular content management system believe it or not around 50% of websites that are online are running this content management system so if you have visited any type of website there's a huge chance actually 50 percent of chance that this website was created using wordpress there are plenty of huge websites using this content management system so it's very popular it's very good and it's actually quite easy to use it once you know how to navigate the dashboard and everything and in this section that's exactly what we're gonna focus on we're gonna focus on wordpress so the first things first, we have to log into our WordPress dashboard before we can dive deeper into this content management system itself. So, all right, so you want to open your website in a new tab right here, just like I did. And at the end of your website's URL, you want to type slash WP dash admin and hit enter. Right here, you will have to enter your credentials to log into your WordPress dashboard. So let's go back to our Cloudways account. And right here, let's select our server. And right now, we are on the first level of our dashboard, of our web hosting dashboard. And we want to go to the second level of our web hosting dashboard, which is application. And right here, as you can see, we have information about admin panel. So as you can see, this is the same URL that we typed right here, slash WP dash admin. And now we want to go back right here and just copy your username. So your username is basically the same email address that you use to create your Cloudways account. And the password was generated automatically. So you want to go right here, click on this password. You just copy it and just paste it right here let's click remember me and let's log into our website all right we can click save and yeah we are in this is the dashboard of wordpress and like i said wordpress is a content management system that helps us to create our website much faster much easier without needing to code anything and this content management system is the most popular for the reason so if you decided to use wordpress you made the right choice all right, so this is it for this lesson. Now you know what is WordPress, how to log into your WordPress dashboard, and in the next lesson, we're gonna dive deeper into the dashboard of WordPress itself. In this lesson, I will give you a quick walkthrough of our WordPress dashboard so you would understand each tool much better. I actually like Cloudways hosting a lot because when you set up your WordPress website, you don't have too many tools right here because other web hosting providers, they tend to install various different plugins uh, that we actually don't even need. And uh, the dashboard of WordPress looks quite confusing. I really like that it looks very simple. All right, so since you are here, we actually can close this tab of Cloudways website hosting because we are not going to use it and uh, right now let's focus with the first tab that is dashboard so as you can see right here we have two other tabs that is home and updates in this home tab you will see various tools widgets you can add uh, to your home dashboard as you can see right here we have various activities that are going on on your website basically right here we see comments 
on blog posts on everything like that you can see how many posts you have pages right here it also shows your site health status and some other various widgets and here you can add other widgets if you want if you need to uh, this is basically the home page of your wordpress dashboard if you're gonna install more plugins to your website uh, for different functionalities to add more functionalities to your website right here you can add those tools right here to see a quick summary of your plugins of your website but to be honest i don't really use this tab of home that much i actually don't use it completely because this is not where my focus is some people might like to use it but i don't really see a point why to use this dashboard because most of the time i use just uh, certain tools and later on i will show you what uh, tools might be more important to you as well all right so let's go to updates right here here you will see various available updates so if you have a wordpress that is out of date you will see that you can update your wordpress itself that is content management system right here we have plugins and as you can see two plugins are outdated and we can update those plugins so let's do that it's a good practice to keep everything up to date on your wordpress website because you want to be sure that everything works smoothly and there are no issues and sometimes outdated plugins outdated themes in rare cases they can cause you some security issues so you don't want that to happen so make sure that you keep everything up to date so let's go back to updates and yeah so this tab is for updates so if you will see that there are updates available don't ignore them and just keep everything up to date because it is good practice to keep your plugins themes and the wordpress itself up to date all right let's go to post tab right here all right so once i click on post i can see all posts so basically this tab is focused on blog posts so if you are writing blog posts probably this is where you're gonna want to focus more and uh, as you can see in all posts you can see all of your blog posts that you have on your website at the moment i only have one blog post that was created by default and if you would add new blog posts by clicking right here or right here you will be able to add more blog posts to your wordpress website all right if I would go to categories, obviously you can create categories for your blog posts. So of course, depending on your project, you want to create your categories for blog posts if you're writing them. And if I would go to tags, right here you will see the list of tags that you are using in your blog posts. Basically tags are used to describe your blog posts in short uh, words and short keywords. So it would be easier for your visitors to navigate through your blog and so on. Also, a lot of people who are into SEO say that uh, tags help to rank higher if you include tags relevant to your blogs and you can optimize your blog posts a bit better. In later lesson, I will show you a bit more about uh, blog posts. I will talk about uh, tags and categories more in depth. But for now, I just wanted to let you know that this tab posts, this is where you will add your blog posts. All right, if we would go to media library, this is obviously where you will find all your media files. Most likely, without a doubt, this is where you will find your photos. I never recommend for people to upload videos to their WordPress websites because it is not good practice. If you will ever want to upload a video to your WordPress website, the better choice would be to go to YouTube, upload your video to YouTube, and then copy the link, embed video to a blog post, to a page, or anywhere else you don't want to upload videos to your wordpress website because it's gonna slow down your website tremendously and you don't want this to happen because you want to keep user experience as good as possible so if i would click right here or right here i would be able to add new media files to my wordpress website so simply drag and drop files right here or just select from files if i would go to pages right here as you can see we have various pages so similarly to posts of course posts are different in later lesson i will explain to you the main difference between posts and pages i'm gonna talk about this a little bit in depth but to make it short and to make it quick i'm gonna tell you that pages are the most important pages on your website if you're gonna write blog posts you're gonna have a lot of blog posts in different categories and uh, once you add pages uh, you're most likely gonna have just a limited number of pages uh, the pages are important information to your customers to your visitors so for example you could have page about your business you could have page contact page privacy policy 
terms of service, cookie policy, and all those pages that you see on all other websites. So those are pages. If you will want to add a page, you will have to click right here or here. All right, let's go to comments tab. In comments tab, you will see all the comments that are on your blog post. So as you can see right here, we have one comment that was added by default and we can do various things with this comment. So we can unapprove, we can reply to this comment, we can even edit this comment. We can put this comment to spam bin or we can put it to trash bin. So this is where you will see all the comments that are posted under your blog posts. All right, let's go to appearance tab. In appearance tab, you basically can install a new theme for your WordPress website. So depending on your project, depending on your niche, you can choose the theme you would like to use. But in this course, I will recommend you some themes that I use myself and I have tested myself. So I can guarantee you that those themes gonna work smoothly. And yeah, if you want to add new theme, just click right here or click here. And in the editor, you can basically edit the theme of your WordPress website. Of course, it depends on what theme you are using. Different themes have different options, different ways of customizing themes. But as you can see, this default theme has such options for customizing this theme. Uh, this is not the best way to customize your theme. And like I said, I will show you the proven themes that I use myself. And those themes are popular, they are fast and they are reliable. All right, let's go back right here. All right, let's click dashboard. And like I said, an editor, you don't really need to focus right here. Of course, it depends on your theme, but in later lessons, when we will edit our theme, I will show you how you can customize it and you'll see it yourself how simple it is. All right, let's go to plugins tab. If I would click on plugins tab, as you can see, those are the plugins we have. Those are two plugins active. If you see something different, no worries about that. If you see any inactive plugins, you can delete them because you are not using them, obviously. And uh, the plugins are for adding various different functionalities to your WordPress website. In later lesson, we're gonna talk about this a bit more in depth so you will understand themes and plugins much better. If you would click add new or right here, you will be able to add a new plugin using search. You will find any plugin you want. All right, let's go to users tab. All right, as you can see in users tab right here in all users, we can see all the users that are on this website. Obviously, I'm the only one user. I am the administrator. So I'm just the one user right here. If you will ever need or if you will ever want to add new users to your website, once your project grows, you can do this right here. Just add username, email address. Uh, the password is generated automatically and just select the role for your newly added user. As you can see, you can add administrator, editor for blog posts, author for blog posts as well, and so on. All right, let's go to profiles tab right here. All right, we do not need to save anything. And in profile tab, basically you will be able to do various customization options for your profile. You can change the color scheme. You can do various other adjustments related to your profile. So this one is up to you if you want to do any changes at all. All right, let's go to tools tab. Right here, you will see various different tools for your WordPress website. Right here in import export, you can export and import your data of your profile of your WordPress website, not a profile. Those two options might be useful for you if you're planning to migrate your website anywhere else. But uh, actually there are plugins that will help you to do that so you don't really need to focus right here if we would go to site health you will see the health of your website obviously since it's a new website the site health is gonna be good it usually it shows uh, that there's some issues with site health especially if there are some outdated plugins and anything like that so you will see any uh, issues that are going on on your website right here but again this is not the most important thing like I said, just keep everything up to date and you will not need to worry about anything. Right here, export your personal data. You can export your personal data of your WordPress website, so from your profile. These settings are not so important. Right here in theme file editor, you can edit the files of your theme. 
So this one is for advanced users who know how to work with the code. And right here, you don't really need to focus at all because this is for advanced users, just like plugin file editor. You will be editing the code of your plugins. So those two options are not that important. You don't need to focus on them too much because they are for advanced users. And in this course, we are not going to use those options. Actually, we're not going to use any tools right here at all, but it's good to know what each tool is for. All right, let's go to settings tab. And to be honest, right here, we're not going to focus in this lesson too much on the settings because in later lesson, I will show you the most important settings that you have to do to make sure that your website works smoothly. All right. So this is it basically. This was the quick walkthrough of WordPress dashboard. And as you can see it yourself, it's not that complicated. You just have to know what each tool is for. And uh, talking from my personal experience, I can show you the most often used tools that I use myself with uh, e-commerce websites, with blogs, business websites. So without doubt, this one posts for adding blog posts, you're probably going to use more often than any other tool right here. Media, media you're going to use also more often, especially for adding media files like images for your blog post. So you can use media to upload all images all at once. Pages, you're not going to use that often because once you set up all your pages, you're just going to forget about those pages. So this is not where you're going to focus too much. So you're going to focus more on comments because once you start getting comments, you will be able to find all the comments right here, just like I showed you previously. And you can delete them and approve them, do whatever you want with those comments. And probably one of the most other more often used tabs is this one. Because in the future, once you add new plugins to your website, this is what you might want to use more often. Maybe you will need to deactivate some plugins. So that's what you're going to use as well. So the most popular ones are posts, media, comments, and the last one is plugins. So this is it for this lesson. Now you know how to navigate WordPress dashboard much better and it shouldn't look this complicated anymore. In this lesson, I will show you the most important settings. So the settings can be found right here, as you remember from the WordPress dashboard walkthrough lesson. So all the settings related to your WordPress website can be done right here in this tab. So let's start with general settings right here. And right here, the most important things you have to do is you have to add your site title and just add a tagline for your website. As you can see right here, it says just enter a few words to explain your website to describe your business and simple as that. Just type the tagline and add a site title. So that's exactly what I'm going to do myself. All right. As you can see, I just changed the site title and added a tagline. As you can see, once you changed your site title, it changes right here as well. So it's up to you what uh, site title and tagline you want to use. As you can see, I just added a simple uh, tagline that this website is basically to teach you guys to teach you how to create your websites all right right here we can scroll down and here you can choose your date format uh, the date format you want to use on your website i usually like to keep uh, the default settings of course don't forget to choose your time zone because according to this time zone you will see various blog posts that are posted on your website or the products added and so on so just choose your time zone and uh, other than that, you don't really need to do any adjustments right here and you can hit save changes. All right, let's go to writing tab. Here, we don't need to do any adjustments. Everything is as it is by default. So let's go to reading tab. In reading tab, you can basically do some adjustments to the information, to the content that is displayed on your website. At the moment, we're not going to do any adjustments. In later stages of creating our website, we will do some changes right here. I will show you what those changes are for. Uh, basically, we will set a home page for our website that is going to be the front page of our website. And we're going to add a blog page to display blog posts. So this is what we're going to do a bit later. For now, we're not going to change anything because we don't even have those pages ready. So those things will be done in later stages of setting up our website. This is just a common practice, but it's good for you to know a quick introduction of uh, various steps that are right here. All right. From here, we can move to discussion tab. 
and this tab discussion is responsible for the comments that are on your website so your visitors are gonna leave comments they might leave reviews under your products if it's gonna be your e-commerce store and this is where you can do various adjustments you can play around with these settings right here but I'm gonna be honest the only adjustment that I do right here I like to activate this option right here comment must be manually approved so once a visitor gonna leave a comment uh, the comment will be shown right here so I'm just gonna open this one in a new tab and as you can see right here we have one comment that was added by default and once I activate this option right here as you can see uh, this comment was approved automatically it was added just automatically at default comment and I'm just gonna click on approve and as you can see once a visitor once your visitor gonna comment under your blog post or that visitor gonna leave a product review this comment will be unapproved so you will have to approve this comment yourself manually and the reason why I like to do this because at some point once your website starts to grow once your website starts to get more and more traffic there is a huge chance that you're gonna start getting spammy comments and you don't want those comments to appear under your content because it's not gonna look too good and you're gonna need to delete those comments anyway so it's the best for you to keep this one active right here and you can approve the comments manually yourself just click right here approve and the comment will be approved automatically if you want like that comment you can uh, delete this comment or you can mark this comment as a spam as well right here the other quite important tab that i like to use myself is this one instead of using this one for moderating comments i like to disallow comments so once you start getting those spammy comments right here you will notice the pattern that usually those comments gonna have the same commentator url address added to a comment or maybe the same email address maybe these comments gonna have the common keywords among those comments like the ones that are repeating in every single comment so you want to copy any of those things uh, right here you will see the ip address of the commentator uh, we cannot see the IP address under this comment because this comment was added automatically by default so we are not able to see the IP address but once someone's gonna leave a comment you're gonna see that and you can copy this IP address and paste it right here so just paste the one IP address or email address or the URL or the keyword one per line to disallow these comments so if this spammy commentator gonna go ahead and gonna leave you another comment a spammy comment this comment will be deleted automatically so you will not need to approve this comment or disapprove so this is gonna help you to save a lot of time but when you are starting fresh and your website is new it might take some time until you start getting those spammy comments but it's good to know how you can combat with these comments and you wouldn't need to worry in later stages of running your website so this is the real life example this is one of my websites that i'm running myself and as you can see this website gets quite a lot of spammy comments so just besides approving them myself manually and besides deleting them i usually like to identify the common keywords in the comments itself the most used or repeating email addresses urls or ip addresses and once i identify those things i just copy those things and i paste them right here in this window in disallowed comment keys just one per line all right so now you should know how everything looks all right we can scroll down and as you can see right here you can do some adjustments to your avatars of your profile i usually like to hide avatars because it helps to load the website a bit faster it's a very small thing but i like to do those things as well so i usually like to hide avatars but it's up to you if you want to display avatars those avatars will be displayed under your blog post if you're gonna add blog posts to your websites you're gonna show your avatars so you can choose any avatar you want to use or you can set your own avatar but i usually like to hide this one again it's up to you if you want to do that as well but this one right here i meant this one is quite important so once you have finished doing changes you can click save changes all right let's go to media tab uh, this one is also good as it is by default because we don't really need to change anything everything is good as it is by default all right let's go to permalinks this one is extremely important so right here in permalinks you can see the structure of the url 
basically how your URL is going to look to your visitors. So for example, if I would go to uh, our homepage right here, I'm going to show an example. So this is our URL. And if I would go to sample page, as you can see, this is how it looks. So we have our domain name, we have slash index.php and we don't really need this part to display because it doesn't do any good for SEO, for search engine optimization. And we want our URLs to look simple. So instead of choosing this one, let's choose this one, post name, and let's hit save changes. So for example, if I would go back to this site right now, again to our homepage, not the site, and I would click on the sample page, as you can see, this is how it looks. And this is the structure we want to use because it's much better, it's much easier to understand for our visitors, and it's much easier for search engines to understand. So we want to keep this one. All right. So don't forget, hit save changes every time you make changes. And from here, we can move to this tab, privacy. At the moment, we don't have our privacy policy page ready. In later stages, I will show you where you can create your privacy policy pages, terms and conditions, and all other important pages for your website where you can generate them automatically. So you wouldn't need to hire people to write those pages for you. But for now, in this step, we don't really need to change anything except we can set privacy page so we would have it set and we wouldn't need to come back to this tab ever again. So let's click use this page. And now it's set and now we can leave it as it is. All right, we can go right here to this tab, but we're not gonna do any changes in this tab as well because those changes that are here, those options that are here are done for the plugin. As you remember, when we were in our plugins page, I'm just gonna open in a new tab real quick. As you can see, we have Breeze plugin. And these settings right here are done for this particular Breeze plugin. And this plugin is responsible for optimizing your website so your website would load faster for your visitors. And right now, everything is good as it is by default. We don't really need to change anything. But in the future, if you will decide that you want to learn how to optimize your website even better, because I know this from my own experience, as you continue growing your website, as you continue improving your website, one very important point will become website speed. But with a fresh website, you're going to have a fast loading website anyway. But eventually, you might want to improve the website speed. Maybe your website will grow even bigger and this might become more important to you. I believe I will make another course on that. So if you are taking this course, that course on optimizing your website will be free for you. And I'm doing this because there's a lot of things you can tweak. There's a lot of things you can change to make your website load faster. But again, you will see it yourself that this freshly created website will load fast in any case. All right, so this is it. These were the most important WordPress settings. So to sum it up, one of the most important settings were in this general tab, in this discussion tab, and in permalinks tab. So this is it for this lesson. All right, let's talk about themes and plugins. I uh, know we already talked about them in the previous lessons, but now our all focus will be on those two things. All right, so let's go to themes right here. And as you can see in this page, we can see all the themes that are installed on our website. Basically, themes are responsible for the design part of your website. So different themes have different customization options with various themes you can achieve different looks and so on in this course i will show you the methods the themes i use myself the proven themes that you can trust and that are fast loading but again it is important for you to know what themes are where you can find them because maybe in the future you will decide that you want to update your website and you want to change the theme so you would know where to look for themes and you would know what are themes responsible for so right here as you can see we have this theme active all right this is how our website looks when this theme is active so for example if i would go to the home page of our website i'm just going to open this in a new tab 
as you can see this is how our website looks i know it doesn't make much sense because this is the default website but basically you can understand that this is the design of this website this is how it looks and it only looks this way because this website this wordpress website is using this theme of course you can do customization options but right now this is how the default version of this theme looks if we would choose this theme let's say if we would click right here live preview as you can see this is how our website would look with this theme active of course uh, we can change the content we can add our images we can add our blog posts uh, products and anything like that but the default version of this theme would look this way so as you can see it's kind of different looking website but it still doesn't look too good all right since we are not going to use this theme we can close it right here all right so if you would want to add a new theme you would have to go right here add new theme and as you can see we have loads of themes available we have over 5000 themes that you can use on your wordpress website usually themes for e-commerce websites are in different category because uh, e-commerce themes are more customizable themes for blogs and business websites are a bit uh, more simple but if you're looking for themes and you want to go through the list of all those themes you can even use filters right here what type of themes you're looking for and uh, yeah you can use those filters if you would go back you could use search to look for certain themes again it's up to you if you would like to use themes but in this course i will show you the themes i use myself that are proven but it is important for you to know where you can find themes so this is one place where you can find themes usually all themes right here are freemium so that means they have free and paid versions and usually with free versions you don't have a lot of customization options and you will not be able to create a truly unique looking website so you will need to purchase a paid version and usually themes that are right here usually those themes cost around 60 dollars per year so you have to pay each year for a premium theme from this list of course it doesn't apply to all the themes right here but most of these themes they have such two options where they have free and premium version there's another place where i like to buy my premium themes and it is a completely other website so i'm just gonna go to this website to show you how it looks this is the place where i like to get my premium themes so for example if i would go to wordpress tab right here and i would click popular items you'll find popular themes so for example if i'm gonna open this theme as you can see this theme gonna cost you 69 dollars but the best part is with all the themes that are here on this website they only are only with one time fee so they only come with one time fee you only need to pay for those themes once and basically those themes belong to you you will not need to pay every year 69 dollars so it's just one time fee all right so this is the other place where you can look for those themes and those themes that are right here on this website cannot be found here and if you want to add this theme you will need to upload once you purchase that theme and you will need to upload the file right here this theme and you will need to install that theme it doesn't necessarily mean that you will go and use those other themes right away but like i said it is important for you to know what are themes how to use them what options are available and it's just good to know that you're gonna have more options in the future all right so themes are responsible for the design part of your website now let's talk about plugins all right let's go to plugins and as you can see right now we have two plugins active so like i told you this plugin is responsible for speeding up our website and this plugin is responsible for adding extra layer of security to our website so basically plugins are responsible for adding new features to your website even if you're gonna want to add an e-commerce feature to your website you're gonna need to install a plugin that is called woocommerce so to install a new plugin you will need to go right here and as you can see right here there are plenty of plugins available for adding various different features to your website of course uh, in the future maybe you're gonna decide that you want to add some other feature to your website and this feature wasn't shown in this course maybe you will want to do some changes you can use various plugins so there are plenty of plugins available for various of different features and you can basically use search to look for those plugins and of course if you would go to this website there are such plugins right here as well 
And just like with themes, uh, those plugins are in two versions. So they come with a free version and premium version. And usually a premium version will cost you, uh, of course, it's going to cost you less than a theme. In some cases, it might cost similar to a theme fee. But yeah, those plugins right here, they might cost you on the early basis. You might need to pay on the early basis for premium plugins. But if you would purchase plugins from here, again, you would own those plugins basically. All right, so plugins are responsible for adding various features to your website. And in this course, we're not going to use paid plugins because we can easily set up a good looking, a professional looking, a functional website, even without using premium plugins. So probably now you understand what plugins are used for. And of course, it is important to note that if you're looking for certain feature to add a feature to your website, let's say to add forms to your website, so your visitors would be able to use those forms and they could leave you messages, then of course, it doesn't mean that there's only one plugin responsible for this feature. There are plenty of plugins for the same feature available. So for example, if I would type a keyword forms, as you can see, we have a lot of different versions available. We have over 1000 plugins available for this particular feature of adding contact forms to your website. So it's similar to phone apps. There are plenty of apps for various different features. All right. So now we can close those two tabs, I believe. And probably now you understand what themes and plugins are for. So themes are responsible for the design part of your website and plugins are responsible for adding new functionalities to your website. So that's all for now. Let's focus on the types of content we have on our WordPress website. And uh, in the previous lessons, we already talked about them a little bit and we're going to focus on posts and pages. You might be wondering why it's so important and why I'm so repeating myself. I think it is very important because in the past I have gotten various questions from the people asking how those two things are different. And as I remember myself in the past, I had some issues understanding the difference between those two things. So, for example, let's start with pages and let's go to all pages. And like I mentioned you before, pages are static type of content. When you are creating your website, you're not going to have a lot of pages. Once you have finished creating your website, probably that's it. These will be the pages you're going to have on your website. Once you finish creating your website, of course. So in the pages tab right here, you're going to have such pages as privacy policy right here terms and conditions. If you're going to run an e-commerce store, you're going to have shipping and delivery information, refunds and returns policy, and all other important pages, such pages, of course, as cookies policy and so on. So those are going to pages that you're going to have on your website. Of course, you're going to have such page as blog page as well for displaying your blog posts because you need to have a page in order to be able to display the blog posts that you're going to post right here by clicking add new and you're going to have such page as home page and the home page is going to be the front page of your website so for example if you're going to add a contact us page where are you going to add this page you're not going to go right here and post and you're not going to click right here add new post just because it's easier or more customizable no you're going to go right here you're going to click add new i'm just going to open this in new tab and as you can see this is how it looks this is where we can add our pages and simply just type the title of the page and here you can add information and later lesson i will show you how to create those pages and for now we can close this tab and yeah so if you're going to add a contact us page you're going to use pages to add this page so let's go to posts all right let's go to all posts and like I mentioned you before, posts are for adding blog posts. So if you are running almost any type of website, there is a huge chance that you're going to have a lot of blog posts. I highly recommend writing blog posts because by writing blog posts, you can attract more visitors to your website. All right. So for example, I'm going to click this blog post and I'm going to open a new tab. And I just want to go to all pages one more time. No, I'm just going to click right here and I'm going to open you this sample page page in new tab as well and now let's compare those two pages how they are different let's compare this page to this blog post so as you can see it looks quite the same all right in a blog post we have various information that is added right here it was added by default 
And as you can see right here, we have comment section. So that's something we don't have in our page. All right, this is the sample page and it's quite simple. As you can see, it doesn't have too much compared to a blog post because blog post has comment section. Of course, it is possible to activate comment section for pages, but it's not a common practice and I do not recommend you doing this. So, all right, as you can see, there's a clear difference between pages and blog posts. All right, we can close this. And if I would go back to posts right here and I would click all posts, as you can see, this is the list of all posts. As you can see, posts have categories, they have tags. Uh, usually tags are used to describe in short words what this blog post is all about, the most important keywords and so on. And as you can see, it has comment section. It has publishing date and so on. So once you're gonna have more blog posts right here in this list, you will see who's the author and you will see the category of this blog post, tags, comments and so on. To add a new blog post, you have to click right here and I will show you that this whole panel, this whole dashboard looks identical to the previous one when we clicked to add new page. All right, even though it looks the same, but here we have some different adjustments here where we can do some adjustments to posts where we can choose categories and tags, add featured image and so on. All right, so this is the main difference. The main difference is that pages are used for displaying static content, important content to your visitors, and posts are used to add various blog posts, informative blog posts, valuable information to your visitors where they could read uh, interesting things, valuable things. For example, if I'm creating a pet store where I'm focusing only on cat products, so I'm gonna have pages such as about, contact, terms and conditions, privacy policy, shipping and delivery, and all those other similar pages. And in blog posts, I could add various blog posts with valuable information for my visitors. And those blog posts would have different categories. So for example, I could have such category as breeds, where I could talk about various different cat breeds, where I could share uh, various cat facts about certain cat breeds. I could also have such category as health and care, where I could share various tips in different blog posts for uh, helping your cat, for helping your elderly cat, and so on. So you probably not understand what is the main difference because I know from the experience that there are some people who can find this kind of difficult to understand of course when you have an e-commerce site you're gonna have uh, another type of content that is gonna be products but usually this is not so confusing uh, products are quite simple and the main issue is when we are talking about pages and posts so now you should understand what are posts for and pages for much better and from here we can move on to other lessons All right, so in this one, we are going to create the most important pages for our website. Uh, those pages are going to be terms and conditions, privacy policy, shipping and delivery, about us page, contact us page. Of course, we're going to create such pages as a home page. So we would have this page once we install a theme to our website, we would be able to work on the home page. And the next page that is going to be also very important is going to be a blog page. Of course, at the end of the day, it's going to be complete up to you if you want to write uh, blog posts to your e-commerce store if you want to add those uh, but I always highly recommend you to do that because it gives you extra edge and you're gonna get more visitors to your website and that means there's a bigger chance that you're gonna get more customers all right so to create your page of course you remember you have to go right here let's check all the pages one more time and let's delete this page because we are not going to use this page as you can see we already have privacy policy it was created automatically as you saw it yourself it's quite good it's quite good i'm not gonna lie but uh, of course uh, it might be a better option to use this automatically created page for bloggers for small business websites that represent uh, a brand or a business and not an e-commerce website but we can keep this page and later we're gonna edit this page so first things first let's create the first page and the first page that i want to create is going to be about us page so let's click add page all right, right here we will need to add a title to our page. So just give a title about and that's it. 
All right, so before we move on, I believe it is important to give you a quick walkthrough of all the tools we have right here. So all the tools right here, this tab right here, this sidebar, I mean, not a tab, but sidebar with various uh, options here is just for editing your page. So as you can see, you can do some changes to URL. You can add author, but it's not necessary at all. Uh, you can add featured image. You can add comments, allow comments, but we're not gonna do any changes right here. Uh, this sidebar is very important when you are adding blog posts because there you will need to select some things add a featured image for your blog post but when you are working with pages you don't really need to do that the biggest focus will be right here uh, once you click on this plus symbol you will get various blocks so as you can see we have all kinds of blocks we have a paragraph block for adding just the text paragraphs we have a heading block for adding headings, we have a list block. And as you can see, we have image blocks and all kinds of other blocks. Uh, to be honest, when you are creating pages, uh, you're probably gonna use just a paragraph block, a heading block, and maybe image if that's something you want to use or maybe you're gonna use some embed codes like YouTube embed videos to talk about your business maybe you want to include a video where you introduce your e-commerce store or talk about your story in that case of course you can add videos but again I highly do not recommend to add videos directly to your WordPress website because if you're gonna do that, it's gonna slow down your website. So you want to use YouTube instead. So simply just add uh, your video to YouTube and then just use this embed, for example, like that, and just paste your video URL right here and click embed. This way your video will be added to your page and this way it's not gonna use resources of your website. This way your video gonna use the resources of YouTube. So it's not gonna slow down your website. So this is very important. All right, so like I showed you, these are blocks. And when you are adding your content, you can simply start typing this content right here. Just type whatever you need. Once you hit enter, it's gonna open a new paragraph. So you're gonna have another block with a paragraph. I usually like to write down all the information, all the important information in Google Docs or any other document. And once I'm done with that, I just paste this information. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I have already prepared some information about my business in advance and I'm just gonna paste this information here and you will see it, how it looks. All right, as you can see, I just pasted my information about my website and this is how it looks. It's not too much, but when you are writing uh, about text about your website, actually, you don't really need to write too much information, but I believe it is important and it is essential because at the end of the day, you want to tell about your business. This way, you're going to look a bit more trustworthy. Your visitors, your potential customers will know you a bit better. So I highly recommend you to create your about page. Just write it down, write it on on Google Docs or anywhere you want and just paste this information here. So I'm gonna show you how to add an image to this page, to this about page. So like I showed you before, once you click right here, you'll find various blocks and here's an image block. So simply drag this block and drop it anywhere you want. All right, so if you want to add an image, just click right here, media library. Of course, you could have clicked uh, upload, but I usually like to do this from media library. So let's click select files. And just a second, this is the folder I want to open. And this is the image I'm planning to use. All right, so I'm not gonna add any title. I'm not gonna change anything. This is gonna be SEO aspect, search engine optimization aspect. And I'm gonna tell you about this in later stages of this course, uh, probably at the latest stage of this course. All right, so just select an image. Let's click select. And as you can see, I successfully added an image. All right, this image doesn't make too much sense, but actually it looks kind of good. All right, you can preview the changes you made. Once you click right here, you can click preview and as you can see this is our about page it's simple looking about page of course this is not how it's gonna look uh, once we finish working on our e-commerce store because we're gonna install another theme and we're gonna do all the customization options and it's gonna look a bit better than that but you can get a quick draft you can get a better vision of how it's gonna look it looks quite simple so as you can see, this is how it's done. Okay, now we can close this preview tab. As well, you can preview how it's gonna look on tablet, on mobile, 
and so on. So, okay, we can close this one. And another thing that I wanted to show you, you can do adjustments to a particular blocks. So once you click on a block, in this case on an image block, so we can do changes to this block. As you can see right here, we have various adjustments. Uh, this is the block tab of this particular block that is image. And you can do some changes right here. So we can change the alignment of this image. So we can align this image left. It doesn't look too good but we can keep it as it was before and uh, yeah if you would click right here you could do some other adjustments at the moment just a second i'm just looking for a line center a line left all right if you would do this you could resize this image and you could make this image look like this but it's not working too good so let's make it as it was previously i guess this was the previous version all right so yeah, this is how it looks. As you can see, you can resize this image. You can do all those changes if you want, if you need to. So you will know how to add an image, how to add an embed video. It's quite simple. I highly recommend you to write down all the information on Google Docs or any other document file and then just paste this information right here. So as you can see, we have different blocks for each uh, paragraph. You can do adjustments right here. If you will need to add a heading element, uh, let's say right here where was it so this is the heading element just paste it right here second level of heading is set so that's exactly what you want to use and just type the text you want to use for example our story and you can click preview one more time in a new tab again and this is how it's gonna look of course at the end, it's going to look a bit better because we're going to change the theme. And at the end of this course, we're going to make sure that everything looks fine. Everything looks great. So yeah, now we can close this tab and we can click publish. All right, let's click publish one more time. All right, we can go back to the list of all our pages. And the next page that we're going to create is going to be contact page. So just add a title right here. Type contact or contact us. It's up to you what type of title you want to use. I'm just going to use contact and I'm going to click publish. This time I'm not going to add any information because once we install a theme with a new theme, we will have more options, more customization options. We will be able to include contact form. And you will see yourself that with this contact page, we're going to need to to use more customization options from the theme itself and right now we can create just a blank page we just want to have all the pages ready so we wouldn't mess up our workflow all right so we just published our contact page it's live and now we can go back and i'm gonna add the next page the next page is gonna be terms and conditions all right so i'm just gonna type terms and conditions right here and you might be wondering where to get terms and conditions for this page. All right, I will share with you some of the methods I use myself, some of the ways I use to generate uh, those important pages for our visitors, for our customers, because if you're not gonna have those pages, uh, you're not gonna look trustworthy. And of course, those pages are actually to help you to protect your business, so there wouldn't be any loopholes. So of course, uh, huge businesses like Amazon, they have all the lawyers and and all the legal teams working on those things but when you are just a small business uh, you shouldn't worry on that too much usually simple templates for these pages they work and they do the job just well all right so i'm just gonna open for you a new tab and i will explain to you where i generate all the important pages all right so i just opened a new window and as you can see this is my google docs and right here I have all the pages I need. I have terms and conditions, I have shipping and delivery information, I have privacy policy, I have returns and refunds, and of course I have cookie policy. All right, so the question is, where did I get those pages? Actually, I didn't spend much time to generate those pages. It took me around 15 minutes and I have custom made pages. These are pages for my business. These are pages created for my online store. That is this one. And as you can see, it has all the needed information. Of course, if you want to be sure that it works for you better than this version, you can check other websites that you trust, check their terms and conditions, check their other legal pages and see what you can take and you can adapt for your own website. But I will show you how I generated those pages. So I'm going to share with you the first method. And the first method is completely free. At the moment, it is completely free. Uh, I don't know how it's going to be in the future. But there is such tool as openai.com. It is 
right here as you can see just check the url that is here and it is ai generator ai tool basically with this tool you can write all types of content not just necessary uh, the important pages or any other pages you can write almost anything you can imagine this ai generator is very powerful and it can pump out you all kinds of content so i will show you what inputs are added so i would get a terms and conditions page so just a second let's scroll up and uh, this is the shipping and delivery page all right terms and conditions all right so this is what i entered right here in the chat i asked uh, this open ai tool to generate terms and conditions for an e-commerce website based on avocados.com and this is what i got this is what i got it was pretty nice looking page with terms and conditions and it actually does the job it looks professional it looks trustworthy and it has clear terms and conditions so that's the most important thing so just like that i generated terms and conditions just like that i generated shipping and delivery as you can see generate shipping and delivery for an e-commerce website bacon avocados and here we go we have shipping and delivery in my case it is united states but in your case it could be any other country but again if you are making your website in any other language you might need to generate and later to translate this text but uh, it's not a huge problem and as you can see here we have clear shipping and deliver information and of course i might need to adjust this deliver information i might need to add my own time frame but we basically have the biggest piece of information ready and we don't need to hustle ourselves with uh, writing this ourselves we can use ai generator so i'm gonna show you what i did with privacy policy i did the same this is my input generate privacy policy for an e-commerce website baconavocados.com and here we go we have privacy policy page just like that it's completely free this is the best thing all right let's scroll down we have generate returns and refunds for an e-commerce website and this ai tool generates you all needed information so you don't need to pay for people who are into this stuff usually it would cost you quite a lot but with this tool you can do this for free i know that even people using this tool they pass some exams so that's how advanced this tool is you can easily use this tool for generating such pages as returns and refunds and so on all right i generated cookies policy so as you can see this is what i entered it is cookie policy and for e-commerce website and i said that cookies used for marketing purposes so as you can see this is even the description for the cookie what is that so usually such websites as facebook when you run ads on facebook or when you run ads on pinterest they save cookies on your visitors device and uh, this way you can do uh, marketing campaigns you know good marketing campaigns calculated marketing campaigns this is how cookies work i know this might be a bit advanced but you don't really need to know too much about this you just have to know how to write those uh, pages those important pages and what information you want to include of course i know that i'm gonna run facebook ads so that's why i included cookies used for marketing purposes it's gonna be facebook i'm gonna run pinterest ads i'm gonna run google ads and I also included cookies used for analyzing or maybe I could have included analyzing traffic because later in this course I will show you how to set up Google Analytics so you could analyze the traffic that is coming to your website so you would know how many visitors you are getting where those visitors are coming from and this way you will be able to analyze how well your website is performing so obviously you want to include this one as well so this is how your input should look and just type this one hit enter and you will get cookies policy page ready for you uh, the second option that i used to do is i used to generate privacy policy with this tool as you can see it right here and as you can see it here you will have to enter your details and hit next and you will get your privacy policy generated and maybe this option could be better for bloggers for small business websites where those websites are meant to represent brands or businesses because it's a very simple privacy policy but again it's up to you if you want to check out this tool i have used this tool in the past and the last option that i use myself that i have used in the past actually i used this option for one of my websites 
I have a premium option for this one. It doesn't cost much compared to all other plans, uh, compared to all other tools, not the plans. But you know, maybe in the future it's gonna cost a bit more. But right now, this was the cheapest paid tool for generating important pages as I could find. And yeah, this is what I'm using. So as you can see with this tool, even with the free version, you can generate uh, all kinds of pages. Those pages are gonna be a bit limited compared to premium pages. I'm just gonna log into this website and I'm gonna show you how it looks. All right, so this is one of my projects. As you can see, I have four pages in use out of five. So if I would click right here, manage, as you can see, these are all the pages I'm using. So for example, if I would click terms of service, uh, that is terms and conditions. Of course, this page is not in English, but I just wanted to show you that such option exists. All right, so to copy this whole text right here, the best option would be click right here, HTML and you would have to open this HTML file in a new tab and just copy all the text right here and simply go back to your page and just paste all the information here and it's gonna be copied and pasted without losing its um, style or anything like that so yeah you can use this option as well so yeah this is the paid option it's quite cheap i use it myself this is the other option this one is quite limited you can create privacy policy page of course there are some other options but this is not the best option in my opinion but even though it is quite limited you can use it for smaller projects and this is the last option that is probably the best uh, it's completely free and with this uh, option with this tool with this ai tool you can generate those pages for free all right so it's gonna be up to you what option you want to use but i just wanted to show you that such options exist all right so of course i'm gonna copy this terms and conditions text right here and i'm just gonna copy it and i'm gonna go back to my terms and conditions page all right and i'm just gonna paste this information right here all right so just a second let's go back let's check if i lost numbers yeah I lost numbers so instead of copying this way i'm just gonna copy the other way all right let's go back and let's just a second just a second now it should work all right so this is my terms and conditions page and just a second i'm gonna delete this block and now we can click preview let's click preview and as you can see this is how it looks we have a fully done terms and conditions page and we are done with this page now we can close this tab and we can actually click publish publish let's click one more time and let's go back to the list of all our pages and as you can see these are the pages we have right now so we have about page we are kind of done with this page we're gonna finish working on this page and other lessons when we're gonna install a theme we are completely done with terms and conditions and privacy policies so to add our privacy policy instead of creating new page we can edit this page as you can see this is the information we have so we can simply select all the information right here and we can delete it all right so now it's gone so now I'm just gonna paste the text from the previous document. All right, so I just added my privacy policy and now I can click publish. Let's click publish one more time and we can click view page. Let's see how it looks. And yeah, this is how it looks. So just like that, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go to pages. I will go to all pages and I'm gonna create and I'm just gonna add all the other missing pages. So I'm gonna skip this whole process for you so you wouldn't get bored too much. And as you remember, let's click add new and just add all the needed information. All right, so as you can see, I just finished adding all the pages and all the pages can be found right here. So we have all the pages ready. And as you saw it yourself, you have multiple options to generate those pages. You can use AI tool or you can use a paid option or any other option you want. Of course, if you want, you can check other websites, other websites policies, and you can try to come up with your own policies. All right, so this is it for this lesson. Now you know how to create pages and how to generate information for those pages. Congratulations on completing the WordPress section. So now we know how this content management system works, what are the most important settings, and basically now you have a solid foundation of WordPress. 
So from here, we're going to start working on our e-commerce part of our website. But since now you know how WordPress works, this is where you will be able to create almost any type of website you can imagine. So this information that you just learned is going to be useful for you, not just in creating online stores or e-commerce websites, but if you will decide that you want to create a blog, you're going to know how to use WordPress to create a blog or just a regular business website to represent brand or business. So this is a very powerful knowledge to know how to use WordPress. And uh, a lot of websites use WordPress for a reason because it's a truly great content management system so congratulations now you know how to use wordpress and we are getting closer to our e-commerce website of course there are a lot of things left to do but now you know how to use wordpress great job so we are done with the wordpress section and now we're gonna start with woocommerce section so woocommerce is a plugin and as you probably remember plugins are for adding various functionalities to your wordpress website since we are done with wordpress part we're gonna move on to woocommerce part and woocommerce is a plugin that adds an e-commerce functionality to our website so to install a plugin you probably remember you have to go right here and click add new and right here in search bar type WooCommerce. All right, and as you can see, this is the plugin we want to use. As you can see, it has over 5 million active installations. So yeah, this is how popular this plugin is and we can click install now. All right, let's click activate. All right, and right here, we're gonna need to fill up all the information. So just select your country, your region, because depending on the selected region, you're gonna have a different time zone, a different types of settings. So yeah, this is where you should select your country. And if you would activate taxes on your WooCommerce store, and I'm gonna show you how it's done, uh, this information, this address, uh, the country and everything else will be used to calculate taxes automatically. So you will not need to install any separate plugins. It will be done automatically for you. You just have to select your address. All right, if you're not ready for that, of course you can skip. Let's click continue let's not share any data with WooCommerce because we don't want to slow down our website just select your industry of course it's not necessary but let's make it other and of course you can choose what type of products you're gonna sell in this uh, course we're gonna create a store with physical products so let's keep it as it is but as you can see there are other options available as well so using woocommerce you can create uh, an online store not just for physical goods but for downloadable goods so digital products you can create subscription based websites you can create membership type of websites and all other type of websites as well all right let's click continue and if you want, you can select some information right here. How many products do you plan to display? And we can select from 11 to 100. Currently selling elsewhere? I guess not. And we can click continue. Let's see what free extensions they offer to us. All right, just a second. We can disable this one. Uh, we can keep that one. We will see if we're going to need this plugin. Uh, later when we're going to set up payment gateways, we're going to check if we're going to need this plugin. If we're not going to need, we're going to replace this plugin with other option. All right, we can uncheck this one because it's not going to help us at all. Even though it says it's for security, no worries about that. We are not going to need mail poet. We're not going to need this one. We're not going to need this one because we can install this plugin ourselves manually and we can install even a better version than this one all right just a second all right we can leave this one if uh, pinterest users are gonna find our products they will be able to pin our products to their boards so extra reach for us so this is good we can keep this one and right here facebook for woocommerce we can keep this one as well but just a second let me think about that no we actually don't need this one because uh, facebook has its own plugin for that and it works much better than woocommerce plugin so we can disable this one and tiktok again if you're gonna decide that you want to run tiktok ads in the future you can install this plugin but i like to keep everything light weighted as possible because i don't want to make uh, our website to load slow i want uh, our website to load as fast as possible so that's why i disabled so many plugins because there are better versions than uh, those that are offered right here and in later lessons you will see that yourself all right let's click continue 
And since we installed WooCommerce and we added e-commerce functionality to our website, the previous theme that was active, it's this one, it's not gonna work very well with WooCommerce. And of course, in later lessons, we're gonna install other themes, but for now, let's choose this theme that comes by default with WooCommerce. And by installing this theme, we're gonna have a better look, better understanding of our e-commerce website. So we just installed WooCommerce plugin and just like that we added an e-commerce functionality to our website. So as you can see this is how it looks. As you can see our WordPress dashboard got bigger, much bigger because right now we have WooCommerce, products, payments, analytics and probably with payments we can disable this plugin because it's not going to help us uh, much. I uh, thought that it's going to be a bit different plugin but as you remember let's practice one more time and let's go to install plugins and let's select woocommerce payments let's deactivate this plugin and let's click delete because we're not gonna need this plugin we're gonna install other plugins for payment options that are proven and that truly work all right so this is how it looks as you can see our wordpress dashboard got bigger and now our website has e-commerce functionality if we would go to visit our site as you can see it looks a bit different it has a shopping cart it doesn't have any products because we haven't added any products but right now our website looks completely different from the previous version all right so this is it for this lesson we had a quick introduction into woocommerce and now you know that woocommerce is a plugin that adds e-commerce functionality to your website and we installed some of the plugins but we didn't install all the plugins that came with this WooCommerce plugin because in later stages of this course we're gonna use other plugins that uh, do a better job than these that were listed. Alright so that's all for now. Alright since we have our WooCommerce ready now I can give you a quick walkthrough of the WooCommerce itself. So let's go to the dashboard and once you go down as you can see the very first tab is WooCommerce. So if you would click right here in home tab it's kind of similar as it was with dashboard tab right here for WordPress itself for home. So right here you're gonna see various steps that you can take for adding uh, various details, store details, how to add products, set up payments, add taxes, shipping costs and everything. But in this course I'm gonna show you how that's done without needing to follow any of these steps. But if you are interested you can explore everything yourself. I always recommend everyone to explore all the tools, all the dashboards themselves because this way you're gonna learn how to use a particular tool much better. All right, from here we can go to orders. In this tab, you're gonna find all the orders. So once a customer places an order and uh, he buys something from you, this is where you will see this order. All right, I'm gonna show you how it looks real quick on my website. Yeah, and as you can see, this is how it looks and this is the list of orders uh, that you're gonna have yourself. All right, let's go to customers. Obviously at the moment it is empty. We don't have any customers, but again, I will show you how it looks. And as you can see, this is one of my stores and this is how it looks, how the list of customers looks. Right here, you will be able to see how many orders a particular customer placed if it was his first order or second or third. And here you will see the average value of order and so on. All right, we can go to coupons. Right here, you will be able to create various coupons. As you can see, once we clicked right here, coupons, it took us here into marketing tab and we went to coupons automatically. So basically this tab coupons and this tab coupons is the same. All right, let's click reports. Right here, you will see various reports. Uh, in the past, I used to use uh, this one to check all the reports before WooCommerce updated their plugin. Nowadays, they have this tab for analytics. It is more in-depth and yeah, I don't use this much anymore. But as you can see, this is how it would look if once you start getting orders. And you can check how many orders you got, how many sales you made. And yeah, you can check uh, this by month. You can check customers, you can check stock. Uh, sales by product and all other things so once you start getting orders or even before getting your first order 
you can explore everything yourself so just understand what works for you what doesn't what information might be important or not it's kind of convenient to give a quick look how good you're doing a certain week a certain month or even a year all right settings tab we're gonna go back in the next lesson uh, there is uh, quite more things to talk about it so we can go to status and in status tab actually you don't need to do anything it's just for checking status if everything is uh, all right here you can check logs to see if there were any issues any errors or anything like that but yeah i usually don't use uh, this status tab too often because once you are set you are set you don't really need to worry too much much. of course in the future you can check logs to see if there were any errors or anything like that and again don't be afraid to explore everything yourself if you would go to extensions tab as you saw it previously when we were uh, setting up our woocommerce plugin we installed some extensions that basically were plugins and here you will find some other extensions uh, that are basically other plugins but again i will show you the plugins i use that are guaranteed to work and yeah so those options truly gonna work and they not gonna mess up your website all right so this is for this woocommerce tab now we can go to products all right if you would click all products you will have a category of product so this is how it's gonna look once you add products and for now our list of products is empty because we haven't added any products yet all right here this tab is for adding products so later on i will show you how to add products categories before adding products of course we're gonna create categories for those products tags again tags are used to describe uh, products or even blog posts but this time let's focus on products so for example if you have a blue tiger print purse uh, then you might want to include tags uh, such as purse, blue tiger print, blueprint, and these would be tags that would help to identify a product by taking some specifications of this product. So once a visitor clicks on that particular tag, for example, if that customer clicks on a purse tag, he will go to all the list of products that have this particular tag that is called purse. If there are more products with other tags uh, that I mentioned you before, uh, yeah they're gonna see those products in those tags so that's what tags are for all right if i would go to attributes attributes are basically uh, specifications that are used uh, for your product let's say if you're gonna have a product that has different sizes it has large small medium and all other sizes those attributes will be listed right here so that's what it is but you're not gonna need to add those attributes right here yourself it's basically for checking all the attributes you have on your website but but you will add those attributes yourself when you are adding products and I will show you how that's done so you won't need to focus on this tab right here too much if we would go to reviews obviously we're gonna have the list of reviews but since we don't have any reviews we don't have any reviews and as you probably remember when we were doing some changes right here in discussion tab we activated to manually approve comments so in this case review is considered as a comment and if you're gonna get a review because sometimes there are spam reviews as well so once you get a review you can approve it or you can delete it or you can do anything you want because uh, if you're gonna start getting spammy comments under your blog post there's a huge chance that you're gonna start getting spammy comments spammy reviews not the comments under your products as well so you're gonna need to delete those all right in analytics tab obviously we're gonna have various analytics so this one is for you to explore we could say it's your homework don't be afraid to explore those tabs right here right now there's not too much information so i cannot show you anything but here you can check how many sales you made uh, this month compared to previous month this year compared to previous year and so on right here in products tab you're gonna see how many products you sold how many items how many variations and so on so if we would go to revenue tab here you will see various information about the revenue how many sales you got how many coupons were used and so on so this one is all about the money all right in orders of course you're gonna see 
the orders how many orders you made and so on if we would go to variations again you will see how many variations you sold off particular item and all other similar information here you will see sales by category if we would go to coupons you will see how many discounted orders you made and uh, pretty much that's it in taxes if you're gonna activate taxes on your online store this is where you're gonna see information about the taxes how much you made with taxes and how much you sold and how much of that is tax so this is where you're gonna see this information downloads we are not using any digital products we are not selling any digital products but if you would sell digital products this is where you would see this information so yeah this is where you would see this information stock right here you will see information about the stock so you will see what products are low in stock and so on this is very useful if you have your stock and yeah this helps you to check if you are low in stock and in any case once you add a product i will show you where you can set emails notification emails that will notify that a certain product is low in stock so you will never miss a product that is uh, out of stock because you're gonna get notification emails and in settings here you can do some adjustments to change how the data is presented for you but actually don't do any changes right here marketing tab so if you would go to overview we have this extension pinterest extension that we can set up and in later lesson i will show you how you can set up this extension i'm probably gonna show you how to set up facebook extension as well and yeah those are for marketing and basically you're gonna use this extension to connect your product feed with pinterest that's gonna be much easier and you're gonna use this to connect your pinterest profile file with, uh, with WooCommerce so you wouldn't need to do this manually by adding any codes or anything like that because uh, just like Facebook just like any other social media platform they have their pixels that are basically used to identify your products and to identify your visitors so you could run a successful marketing campaigns you could do remarketing campaigns and all those other things all right in coupons as you saw it yourself this is where you can create coupons and yeah that's pretty much it so once you install woocommerce you're gonna have extra free tabs added to your wordpress website so this is the first the second and the third so yeah this is it this is it for this lesson now you know woocommerce a bit better and you should understand what those all tabs are for All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you the most important WooCommerce settings that can be found right here. As you remember, let's click on the settings tab and let's start with the general settings. So obviously you want to type your address uh, line first right here enter your city choose country and zip code if you did this when we were installing woocommerce then everything should be good you won't need to change anything but this is where you have to enter your address of your e-commerce store and using this address uh, this basically woocommerce plugin will calculate taxes automatically so all right let's scroll down and here selling locations you can choose a selling locations where you want to sell your products so if you're not selling products for global audience you are selling your products for specific countries then this is where you can choose sell to specific countries select this one and just choose countries from the list by typing the country you will find that country and just add this country to the list if you're selling to all countries except to some of the other countries then you can do exceptions right here by typing the countries where you are not selling your products all right i'm gonna keep it as sell to all countries and uh, shipping locations so you can keep this one as it is and default customer location you can keep this one as well like that and right here if you are doing taxes you can activate this one and taxes will be calculated automatically all right so let's scroll down and let's see what else we have we can keep everything as it is right here we don't need to do any changes right here you can select your currency so this is where you can do that i'm gonna keep it to united states dollars so that's good for me and yeah you can change the numbers how many numbers people see but we don't really need to change anything right here everything is good as it is by default all right so once you have finished doing those changes once you added information right here uh, don't forget to hit save changes every time you do any changes don't forget to do that all right from here we can move on to products tab right here 
and in the products tab uh, i believe we are not gonna change anything but again if you are using any other measurement units you can change those units right here just choose the units you use where you are doing your business all right so right here we don't really need to do anything else so just choose your weight units and dimensions once you have done this hit save changes as well right here as you can see we have some other tabs forgot to mention to you all right let's scroll down and right here as you can see once the stock of your products is getting low you're gonna be notified with email notification and this is the email so basically this is the same email that i use to log into this wordpress dashboard so this woocommerce plugin is using my email address that was added to my wordpress website so it's using it by default if you want to change that you can change that if you want and as you can see right here you can change the low stock threshold once the stock hits two products i'm gonna receive a notification message and if you want you can change it to one so simply just like that and once you have done those changes hit save changes all right and downloadable products we are not selling any downloadable products we are not selling any digital products so we're not gonna focus on those two and if we would go to advanced tab once again we don't need to do any changes right here all right so from here we can move on to shipping tab and actually in this shipping tab we're not gonna do changes because there's more things to talk about shipping zones i will show you in another video how to create shipping zones and you will be able to choose different shipping methods if those methods are going to be paid or flat fee methods it's going to be completely up to you all right from here if you would go to payments you will see all the payment methods we have available right now but in later lesson i will show you how to activate payments by cards and payments by paypal so those are two of the most popular payment methods of course it depends if you live in any other country uh, depending on the country you might have some other payment gateways so i'm not sure where you are from and if you are creating this e-commerce store for your native audience then probably the best choice for you to use google search to look for payment gateways that are particular for your country so let's say like bank payments or anything like that but in this course i will show you two of the most popular ones and i believe those two are more than just enough so i'm gonna show you how to add paypal and how to add payments by credit and debit cards all right from here we can go to accounts and privacy so right here i usually like to allow my customers to create uh, their accounts uh, this is just a common practice you know it's good to have an account uh, to be able to create an account on e-commerce store so i highly recommend you to activate this option uh, this option and that option as well all right let's scroll down what else we have of course you can also remove your customer's personal data uh, so let's say once a customer is inactive for a certain period of time if it's months or years or days or weeks you can set this number right here i usually like to do those uh, adjustments to canceled orders i don't like to retain any data of canceled orders so let's say if customer cancels his order and after one month i just delete this data but i usually like to keep it to one week so let's say once customer cancels his order i don't need his date anymore or let's say if there was a failed order so we can keep it to one day as well because this is a common practice and i think it's quite good all right once you have done with those changes like always don't forget to hit save changes all right let's go to emails so right here in emails you will see all the notification emails that you have on your woocommerce store those are the emails that your customers receive and you're gonna receive some of the emails yourself so let's say the customer places an order on your store you're gonna receive a notification email that uh, there was uh, an order successfully placed on your store and this way you're going to be notified that uh, there's a new order as well you're going to be notified if there's a failed order and uh, if you're going to cancel an order you're going to be notified as well and your customer will be notified about that as well so what is important right here you can add a title the name of your basically email address the sender of this email that your customer going to receive the name of the sender that that's going to be a, the sender of this notification email so you can add just the name of your website and right here add your email address so as you remember we previously created our business email 
address and I created a business email address with support at baconavocados.com. So I usually like to use this type of email address in this bar because uh, let's say if a customer is gonna have some issues with his order, he could easily reply to this notification email and you will receive this message to your business email address. So this is what is important in this tab. You have to add your business email address. So in my case, it's gonna be support at the bacon avocados.com. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. All right, and here you can do some customizations to the template of the email. I uh, know these uh, emails are not the best looking. Of course, there are some plugins that you can use to customize emails even more to make them look better. But uh, for starters, for beginners, it's gonna work completely. I still use this template almost on all my websites and I'm still in progress of changing those those default email templates but I think for beginners it's gonna be just fine we can click right here and we can check how this email template is gonna look so as you can see these are the colors and right here we could add a logo so to add a logo you're gonna need to paste this logo right here so how to add a logo you might be wondering it's quite simple if you would go to media and I'm gonna open media library in a new tab so I'm just gonna open this one in a new tab and I'm gonna upload my logo so this is the logo I want to use I'm just gonna click upload all right just a second I'm gonna click edit just to make sure that I have the right URL all right so I'm just gonna copy this URL of this logo right here and I'm just gonna click update just in case if there were any changes and now I'm gonna close this one and all I have to do is just paste this URL right here that's all I have to do and now we can hit save changes and once you hit save changes now you can click preview the template so as you can see now we have our logo right here and of course you can change the colors so this one is gonna be completely up to you all right so let's go back and let's see what we have an in integration tab actually right here we're not gonna need to do any adjustments because everything is good as it is by default all right let's move on to advanced tab so in advanced tab probably the only thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna select our terms and conditions page so as you remember previously we added those all important pages so i'm just gonna type this page right here and i'm just gonna select from the list that's it all right so right here we have various endpoints if your website is going to be in english so there's no need to change anything right here everything is as good as it is by default so you don't really need to do any changes right here but if you are creating your website for a native speaking language for native uh, audience uh, then you will need to change those endpoints right here so if that's the case uh, later in this course i will show you how you can fully translate your online store and you can basically make uh, your online store in any language so i will show you the most important things you have to do but for now everything is good so now we can hit save changes and basically pretty much that's it of course we have some other tools right here but again we don't really need to do any changes with those tools so this is it for this lesson now you know what are the most important settings for your woocommerce store In this lesson, I will show you how to create shipping zones. So in the previous lesson, we skipped shipping and delivery. So let's go to shipping tab. And right here, if you would click add shipping zone, you will be able to create a new shipping zone. So you have a lot of different options to create your shipping zones. Of course, it depends where you are shipping your products. If you are shipping your products globally, then you can simply create a global shipping zone. So for example, I'm just gonna type a global shipping. And once you type global shipping, you don't really need to select any regions because this shipping zone will be applied automatically to all countries. Of course, it's not the best choice, not the most convenient one because your shipping is going to cost depending on the country depending on the state if you're doing this in the united states of america but yeah it is possible to create a global shipping zone and i'm going to show you how to do that so once you add this name right here now you will need to add shipping method so we can add a flat rate right here so if you would add flat rate let's click add method and now let's click edit 
and right here you can select if this is taxable shipping so if you have activated your taxes and the woocommerce settings that i showed you previously the tax will be applied to the shipping as well so it's up to you if you are not taxing shipping you can select none and instead of flat rate we can call this standard shipping all right and for standard shipping just uh, type the cost so i'm just gonna type the cost let's say it's gonna be five dollars and let's hit save changes all right so now this shipping zone this global shipping zone that is right here has one shipping method that is standard shipping but we can add more shipping methods so for example if i would select flat rate one more time i will click add the shipping method and now i'm gonna click edit and i'm gonna select that it's not taxable and i'm gonna type right here express shipping and obviously express shipping is gonna cost more so i'm gonna type 15 dollars all right let's get save changes and as you can see now this global shipping zone that is applied to global audience has two shipping methods so it has standard shipping and express shipping we can also add another shipping method that is going to be free shipping so if i'm gonna click free shipping i can click edit and instead of making just the free shipping i can set that a person needs to spend a certain amount of money on our online store so he could get this free shipping option so for example if i'm gonna type 80 so that means our customer needs to spend at least 80 dollars on our store to get free shipping if you would click this apply minimum order rule before coupon discount you will be able to offer free shipping shipping but uh, let's say if a customer has a coupon code and he spent on your store $85 and once he activates that coupon uh, he's just gonna pay $70 then if you're gonna activate this option your customer will be eligible for this free shipping info he's just gonna pay $75 so that's why I'm not activating this one so I'm just gonna keep it like that and I'm gonna click save changes all right so as you can see now we have free shipping methods we are shipping globally and uh, these are free shipping methods so we have free shipping express and standard shipping so usually it's more than enough you can also add any other shipping method so for example if you want you can click add shipping method right here one more time let's select flat rate and uh, just a second right here in flat rate you can also type that it's going to be delivered by ups for example and you can type the cost so the cost again is going to be up to you you can just use a flat rate uh, just an average you would spend on ups delivery or something like that so let's say if it's going to be eight dollars something like that and we can hit save changes so as you can see just like that you can add various shipping methods so your customers will be able to choose those methods you can also swap places with these methods so for example once a customer is at a checkout page uh, this is the order he's gonna see shipping methods so he will be able to choose any shipping method he wants to use once you have done those changes don't forget to click save changes all right now we can go to shipping zones right here and as you can see we have a global shipping zone so this is for global audience basically every single person who's using our store no matter where they are from they're gonna have those shipping methods but of course we can create other shipping zones so instead of using this global zone you could delete this one and not to use that one i just wanted to show you how that's done how you can add uh, shipping zones and how you can add shipping methods so now instead of just adding shipping methods now we could add a shipping zone so for example if you truly know that you're gonna do business only in united states of america so of course you want to have a zone that is going to be us all right and now you can choose from the list united states of course you can go deeper into all shipping zones you can create shipping zones by regions but for example if i'm gonna use united states i can add right here shipping methods just for united states if it's not gonna be for united states if it's gonna be for let's say english speaking audiences then you could add some other regions as well so let's say you could add united kingdom you could add a canada and so on and this is how you can create shipping zones so for example i'm just gonna create united states so i'm gonna add us and just like the previous time i added shipping methods so there is a flat rate method so let's click flat rate and now you will need to edit this and you can add standard shipping just like the previous time choose if it's gonna be taxable or not and just type the cost and just like that i added shipping method just to this particular shipping zone that is going to be united states if i would save this zone i would only have one shipping method for this 
shipping zone that is going to be United States. So for example, if I'm going to go back to shipping zones, now you see I have two shipping zones, but now it doesn't really make sense because this shipping zone is shipping everywhere. So instead of shipping everywhere, instead of using this shipping global zone, now we only have one zone that is United States. So for example, if a customer visits your store and he tries to buy something, but he's not from United States, then he will not be able to choose any shipping method. And that means uh, the products are not delivered to his location because there is no shipping zone. And uh, if a customer is from US, now he only has one shipping method. That is standard shipping method. Of course, as you saw it yourself, you can add uh, more shipping methods, uh, different shipping methods with different flat fees. And of course you can add a free shipping method once a customer spends a certain amount of money you can also create just a free shipping method if you are doing free delivery so in that case you would only have free delivery free shipping method but again shipping zones are completely up to you but i believe now you understand how that works all right but before we leave this uh, shipping zones page before we finish with this lesson let's go to other tabs so if i would go to shipping options we don't really need to change anything right here but if you would go to shipping classes you can create shipping classes so for example why this is important so let's say you have products that are extremely heavy you know and obviously those products are gonna need uh, more expensive shipping uh, and uh, let's say you also sell some fragile products in this case uh, those products are gonna require some extra care and it's gonna cost extra so in that case if you're gonna have such products if you're gonna have uh, such unique products you can create shipping classes so for example i'm gonna create a shipping class and I'm gonna name this class heavy products and now once I filled all the information right here I can click save shipping classes and as you can see I have one shipping class and there's no products added to this class because I haven't added any products to this uh, online store yet but once we add products to this online store I will show you where you can set a shipping class to a particular product that requires uh, some expensive shipping or some extra care when handling this product but again it's completely up to you if you want to do that uh, this is one uh, unique situation but it's good to know that such options exist so you wouldn't get lost when looking for ways how you can charge more for particular products for uh, shipping all right so once I added this um, class now I need to add a price for this class how much this uh, shipping method is gonna cost so for example if a customer adds that uh, heavy product to their cart and once they go to uh, checkout page they're gonna see that price that particular price for this product the shipping price I mean all right so now let's go back to shipping zones and as you remember we have one shipping zone if we would click right here edit now we will be able to do changes to this standard shipping so let's click edit and as you can see now we have some more information here so let's say if a product has this shipping class have a product so it's gonna cost our customers let's say 25 dollars and now if I would type $5 right here and let's say if a customer tries to purchase a product and that product has this shipping class attached to that product, then this customer will have to pay $25. If there are some products that do not have this shipping cost, they're just going to need to pay $5 for basically standard shipping so you probably now understand if you want to dive a bit deeper into that you can check even more complicated changes adjustments but i think to have this simple adjustment is quite good and of course it doesn't mean that you're gonna need to use shipping classes but i just wanted to show you where you can do that all right once you have done this we can hit save changes and basically pretty much that's it now you should know how to create shipping zones now you should know how to add shipping methods to those zones as well and uh, uh, the last thing is gonna be completely optional you can create shipping classes for uh, extra care requiring products if they're shipping gonna cost more or something like that so this is how you can create those extra shipping classes and this one is gonna be completely up to you usually talking from the personal experience uh, I usually have free shipping methods so I have free shipping 
shopping method. Once a customer spends a certain amount of money, if it's going to be $100 or something like that, I have a standard shipping method that is usually around $5 and I have express shipping method that is $15. So those are shipping methods uh, my customer can choose. And of course, when you are working with a particular delivery provider, shipping providers, you can look for their plugins and they usually have those plugins. But again, it depends where you are from and where you're going to ship your products to. So this is a bit complicated, a bit more in-depth uh, thing. But like I said, usually those free shipping methods do the job. And uh, let's say if your customer chooses a standard shipping method, you can use any shipping provider, any delivery provider you have, any carrier, and your customer just gonna receive this product uh, based on this uh, standard fee that you have. So basically you're gonna look for the cheapest uh, delivery option. And if your customer gonna choose, let's say, express shipping then of course you're going to look for a faster shipping method where you can deliver your product faster and uh, once the product is shipped you will always send your customer an email notification with his tracking details so no matter what uh, the plugins that uh, other providers use they just kind of automate this part a bit with sending tracking numbers but again usually this simple setup with free shipping zones is more than enough In this lesson, I will show you how to add payment gateways to your WooCommerce store. So in this one, I'm going to show you how to add PayPal payments and payments by card and credit cards. If you would go to payments, as you remember from the previous lessons, as you can see, these are the methods we have right now. But we're going to change that by installing some plugins. So let's go right here. Let's click add new. And the plugin that you want to look for for PayPal payments, it looks like this. This is the plugin you want to install. So let's click install now and let's click activate. All right. Now we're going to install a plugin for accepting payments by card. So let's go to plugins one more time. Let's click add new and let's look for Stripe. All right. This is the plugin we want to install and let's click activate. All right. So now we should go back to our WooCommerce settings and let's select payments one more time and let's see if there are any changes all right as you can see now we have way more payment methods compared to the previous version and the first method that we want to activate is this one all right so make sure that this one is active and then click right here manage and to be able to accept payments by PayPal, you will need to have a business PayPal account. So if you don't have one, I highly recommend you to create one. And when you're going to create uh, this uh, business PayPal account, I highly recommend you to use your business email address because this way your PayPal email account is going to look uh, a bit more professional. So I highly recommend you to do that. But if you already have a PayPal account, you can actually make your already existing PayPal account if you want to and you can turn it into a business account so to do this you will need to log into your paypal account and then go to settings and there you will see an option to upgrade your paypal account into a business account and once you have your business paypal account ready you will need to use three things to activate this payment method so you're going to need to fill those fields right here this one that one and that one so to find this information you will need to log in to your business PayPal account, not uh, just a regular PayPal account, because if you're gonna use just a regular PayPal account, you won't gonna have those settings. Just log into your business PayPal account, select account settings, and in IP access, uh, click create new. In my case, as you can see, it's update uh, because I already have those keys created for myself. But if in your case, you're gonna see update as well, then select update, scroll down until you see manage AP credentials and then select this one and here you want to copy all the IP keys so just copy those keys and you want to paste those keys according to the name of a key so you're gonna have IP username IP password and signature so you want to copy those and you want to go back to your WooCommerce store to your website basically and you want to paste those keys right here so once you have done this you can scroll down 
and hit save changes and just like that you activated payments by paypal and you will be able to accept payments using paypal that's good because this is one of the most popular payment methods all right so don't forget to hit save changes and now payments by paypal are active on your website all right, so now we're gonna activate payments by card. And to do this, you want to go back to all the payment settings. And this is the option. This option is called Stripe. So you want to activate this option right here. And of course, to be able to accept payments by Stripe, you will need to create your Stripe account. Of course, uh, the confirmation of your account can take a couple of days or maybe it's not going to take that much. Once you're going to start receiving payments, they might ask you to send them some proofs, you know, of your identification and other things. So just go to Stripe.com, create your account or you can click right here. And once you have your account ready, you will be able to connect this account to your WooCommerce store by clicking right here. And as you can see, I uh, already signed into my testing Stripe account. And as you can see, I can connect my store. And before we connect anything, before you do all those things, I will show you a quick walkthrough of Stripe. And I will show you another method how you can connect your account to your store. All right. So if I would click right here, enter keys, here we're going to have some keys that we're gonna need to enter so i will show you how you can do that and uh, now you should go to stripe you should have your account ready just log into your account so of course first things first when you will be setting up your account i believe you're gonna have an opportunity to add your bank account to this stripe payment so once you're gonna have enough payments received to your stripe account you can always do a payout to your bank account but if you didn't have this option i will show you how you can do that all right you should go to settings and you should go right here external payout accounts and as you can see i already have my account right here but in your case you will be able to add a new bank account so just click add new if you haven't done this yet and basically now your stripe payment gateway is connected directly to your bank account and you will be able to receive payments from stripe to your bank account all right so now let's go to home page and i will show you how you can add ip keys just like we did with paypal option we had to enter api keys and we're gonna need to do the same with stripe so so now we need to find those keys so to find those keys we're gonna have to go right here in developers and you want to click right here api keys and right here we have standard keys so those are the keys you want to use uh, as you can see right here uh, this is the publishable key and this is the secret key so you want to copy those and you want to paste those right here make sure that you have live version activated this is where you want to paste those keys and webhook secret is just an optional so you don't really need to add anything right here so just paste your keys that's exactly what i'm gonna do myself all right once that's done you can click right here save live keys and now we have active payments by cards right here you can do various adjustments if you want to you can do some customization options you can change what it's going to display and what your visitor is going to see when he is in the checkout page and i usually like to keep everything as it is by default maybe sometimes i like to delete this one stripe and yeah we can leave it just like that and as you can see of course my account is disabled because this was a testing account but in your case everything should be active so as you saw it yourself you have two options but first of all i highly recommend you to set up your stripe account first before you add this option because once you're gonna have it once it's gonna be active you won't gonna have any issues so you will be able to use the first method to connect your store with stripe but the second option where you copy keys api keys also works so now your store has two payment methods so the first payment method is gonna be by paypal and the second one is gonna be payments by cards and the of course those are not the only options for payment gateways there are plenty of them but those two are the most popular and uh, there's no doubt that they're gonna work well and yeah those options work kind of globally so if you live in any other country you might want to explore and you might need to explore other options but those two options are usually good enough all right so this is it for this lesson in this lesson we're gonna start working with products but before we add products before we add simple and variable products we need to have categories so as you remember all the settings all the adjustments related to products can be found right here so before we add our products you have to create your categories 
So let's select categories and there's one category that was created by default and we cannot delete this category. So instead of deleting this category, we can rename this category. So let's click quick edit and right here, just give a name and the slug to your category that you're planning to use for your products. Uh, keep the name and the slug the same. The slug is basically the URL that you will see right here after your domain name slash and so on so this slug will be used in your url of a category so this time i'm just gonna rename this category to wooden toys and when you are adding your name and slug don't forget when you add slug instead of spaces in between the words use dashes all right so we can click update category and now instead of the category that was previously named under categorized now we have our real category to add new categories you have to go right here for now you don't need to add any thumbnail images for the categories but later we're gonna test with this option right here a bit later and you will see it yourself if it's worth it to add thumbnails to categories but for now we can keep it as it is we just want to have the full structure of our website ready before we work on customization options of the whole website itself all right so just like that i will add another category that is going to be called montessori toys all right, so to add this category, just scroll down and click add new category. And just like that, I'm going to add another three categories. So I'm just going to skip this part because you already know how that's done. All right, so I just finished adding the rest of the categories. And if you're wondering what is a parent category, so for example, if you are selling uh, shoes on your store, so obviously you're gonna have such category as shoes, but this category can be parent category to other types of shoes. So for example, sport shoes, sandals, or any other type of shoes you can imagine. And uh, shoes is gonna be the parent category, the main category. And uh, for example, sport shoes is gonna be subcategory for example just to show you how that works i could add a subcategory or a child category to wooden toys so we could add wooden blocks something like that and now you just have to choose your parent category in my case it's going to be wooden toys and i can click add new category and just like that you can add even more categories uh, to make this category as a parent category or any other uh, but it's gonna be completely up to you if you want to do that i just wanted to show you how that works all right so i'm just gonna delete this child category because i'm not gonna need this one and yeah so this is it for this lesson now you should know how to create categories and as you saw it yourself it's quite simple and if you want you can also create parent categories and child categories as well All right, so since we have our categories ready, now we can start adding products to our online store. So to add a product, you have to click right here, add new. And in this video, we're gonna add a simple product. So the simple product is just a regular product that doesn't have any options like size, color, and so on. So it's just a simple product. And variable product is gonna be the product that has sizes or any other attributes. So for example, if you are selling t-shirts, you might have sizes and colors. So those are attributes. And basically you're gonna use attributes to create variations for that product. So if it's gonna be a t-shirt, then you're gonna have different colors or different sizes. But now, Let's focus on simple products that do not have any variations and they are just a simple product. All right, so the first things first, when you are here, you will see that here you can add a product name. So this is where you want to add your product name and this is where you're gonna add product description. As you can see, you have a small text editor right here with some various tools, but I usually don't overcomplicate my descriptions. I just add descriptions. I maybe include some specifications in a list and so on. If we would scroll down, here you will see various information for your product data so as you can see now we selected simple product and the variable product is right here so when you are running an e-commerce store and you are selling physical goods uh, there's going to be two options the most important for you so this is going to be this one and that one so for now let's keep simple product and uh, here we don't need to check any marks here you will be able to add price so as you can see you can add a regular price and add a sale price you can even schedule your sale price when it's going to be active when uh, the sale starts and when the sale ends so this one is up to you if you want to automate sales 
but this is where you're gonna need to add your price and sale price in inventory tab here you will be able to create SKUs so basically it's completely up to you if you're planning to track your stock if you're gonna have any other uh, documents like Google Sheets or Office Excel or anything like that where you're gonna track your products with SKUs so here you can add unique SKU for each product and maybe you might want to use this for tracking your stock and doing all those things and for identifying products as well and here here you can manage stock so as you saw it yourself when I disable this option right here we can only choose that this product is in stock or is out of stock if I would activate this option you can add stock quantity and you're gonna have a limited stock here you can also add a low stock threshold so once your product reaches this threshold you're gonna be notified with email notification that your product is running out of stock you can also do some other adjustments like limit purchases to one item per order so those are a bit more in depth a bit more advanced but i usually use skus to add unique codes for my product so i could identify those products in my sheets where i track all information about those products and of course i add stock quantity right here so those two are gonna be the most important for you if you're gonna decide to track your stock all right let's go to shipping tab so right here as you can see you can add weight of your product you can add dimensions for your product it's completely up to you i usually don't sell too large products to big uh, products that might require me adding weight for any extra occasions but uh, if you're gonna do this this is where you can do that and as you remember we created in the previous lesson when i was showing you how to add shipping zones we created a shipping class so now we can select this shipping class that we created previously so let's say if this product is gonna be extremely heavy product and it requires extra care and uh, the shipping is gonna cost extra then as you remember we had this class ready where the shipping is gonna cost $85 if I'm not mistaking anything and yeah this class will be applied to this particular product so if your visitor or a potential customer let's say gonna add this product to his cart at a checkout he will see that the shipping is gonna cost him more because we have created this shipping class if you don't want to use a shipping class you can disable this one all right if I would go right here in linked products so if I would click right here on upsells as you can see here we have an explanation what are upsell products so in the product page your visitors gonna see some recommended products so once you add more products to your website here you can look for the products you want to upsell you want to show to your visitors to your customers on that particular product page and right here in cross sales as you can see if you would have again more products you could add those cross sell products and those products will be displayed in your shopping cart so this way you can increase the the value of uh, a shopping cart and this way you can make even more sales so this one is very useful I usually use this one every single time when I add new products I like to choose the products that are the best sellers and I'm kind of guaranteed that uh, uh, the customer is gonna add this product and he's gonna buy two products instead of one so that's uh, what I use myself and I highly recommend you to use upsells and cross sells yourself as well okay let's go to attributes so attributes are just um, like information for specification of your products so for example you could add information for a product uh, let's say this the product that I'm adding right now is gonna be a wooden train so I could add such attribute like just like that I'm gonna click add I'm gonna give name material and of course I'm gonna type that material is wood so just like that I can add as many attributes as I need and of course it depends on your products what products you are planning to sell again this one is up to you if you have any attributes to add, just don't ignore that and uh, once we're gonna move to variable product I will show you how you can convert those attributes for example you will add a size attribute and you're gonna list uh, all the sizes available how you can use those attributes to create variations of a particular product all right let's go to advanced tab and here you can basically add a purchase note uh, once a customer places an order he is gonna receive a notification email with a purchase note so this one is up to you if you see any need to add this one all right let's go to that one you can do some adjustments to custom ordering position uh, this one is not extremely important this is for everyone who are looking for a bit more customized experience for their customers but uh, I actually do not use those options right here 
if you will need to add some type of purchase note to a customer if he's gonna purchase let's say uh, this product so he's gonna receive a note to his email notification of successfully placed order and a good example would be let's say if you are selling uh, specified products that require some instructions so for example you could have a PDF file with URL right here you could paste this PDF file with instructions for your customer it's just one way of doing it but of course there are multiple ways how you can do it the same thing but again it's up to you how you want to use those purchase notes so this one is up to you and of course do not disable reviews you want to have enable reviews because you want to allow your customers to leave reviews on your products if you would go to get more options basically here you will find various extensions that you can install to your woocommerce website to your online store so those uh, extensions are usually paid they cost money they cost more than any other extension and other plugin that you would find on themeforest.net so the website that i showed you previously where you can buy uh, premium themes and premium plugins and here this pinterest tab was added automatically when we selected that we want to install pinterest for marketing purposes so basically this one is a part of a plugin if we would go to plugins right here and i would open this one in a new tab let's go right here you will see that we have pinterest just a second yeah we have pinterest for woocommerce and later lesson I will show you how you can add various pixels I will give you an introduction how you can do that but for now let's not focus on that as you can see this is a plugin if we wouldn't have this plugin we wouldn't have this option right here Pinterest so we can close this tab right here and okay what else product short description so this is a short description that can be seen in your product page before you see the main description so again it's up to you if you want to use this uh, I usually don't use this in some cases I use I have used this in the past when I was selling uh, t-shirts that came from China and uh, those t-shirts were smaller sizes so I left a message in this spot right here for my customers letting them know that they should choose one size larger and uh, it was clear message it was uh, easy to see so it was just um, a message to my customers so it's up to you how you want to utilize this product short description all right so this is it with this part now we can jump right here so product image we're gonna set a product image that's gonna be the featured image for our product we will be able to add product gallery images so our product gonna have more images more than just the one that is gonna be the main image and as you remember we created categories previously so these are all the categories we have and if you don't have any category here ready yet you can add new category right here yourself and of course here you can add tags so for example I will be selling a wooden toy that is going to be a wooden train so I could add such tags as wooden toy wooden train train wooden toys so those type of tags right here those tags are basically meant for describing your product just like I told you in the previous lesson so probably you understand this by now all right so let's start by adding a name so I'm gonna give a name to my product and it's going to be wooden train all right so I added wooden train toy so this is how it looks as you can see this is how my permalink gonna look this is the URL of this product and of course we could choose that it's gonna be wooden toys so because it's obviously wooden toy all right right here I'm gonna add description I have description ready so I'm just gonna paste it right here all right as you can see I just added my short description and as you can see it's 111 words and right here if you want you can do some customization options you can bold some of the text again it's completely up to you if you want to do those changes right here but I usually like to keep everything simple all right so the next thing that we could do we could go back to general tab and I'm gonna add a regular price so I'm just gonna add the prices right here all right as you can see regular price is going to be 2249 and sale price is going to be 1499 all right so this is how it's gonna look and in inventory tab I will add a unique SKU code for this product all right, I added my unique SKU code. So basically it says product one. And once I add the second product, it's gonna say P0002. So it's gonna be product two. So this is how I like to do this. But again, it's up to you what system you want to use. It's completely up to you. And I added stock quantity. And right here I have low stock threshold. So it's gonna be two products. Once uh, it reaches two products, I'm gonna be notified with an email message that this product is running out of stock all right shipping I'm not doing any changes to shipping it's pretty small 
small product i don't really need to add any shipping classes or even add weight it's gonna cost not much it's gonna be cheap to send this product so i'm gonna keep it as it is link products right now i cannot add any link products because i haven't added any products yet but in the future i will be able to do this once i have at least one product published attributes so in attributes i'm gonna add another attribute right here and i'm gonna add one more attribute and i'm just gonna give names to these attributes and i'm gonna give values all right as you can see i just added various attributes so the first one is material so it's gonna be wood cotton and ages so from three years and type montessori toy so again this is my situation this is what i'm adding in your situation it's gonna be a completely different thing because you already know what type of e-commerce you are building all right so let's hit save changes don't forget to hit save changes before you move to any other tab because those changes will not be saved if you do not click right here all right so i just added this information now i can add tags so that's exactly what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna type tag and i'm gonna hit enter as you can see once i hit enter this tag is added to the tag list i could add another tag train and i think i'm gonna keep it just like that all right so the next thing we can add our product image so right now i have to upload this product image so i'm gonna click right here and i'm gonna select from the file all right so this is the product image i want to use and i'm gonna click set product image and right now i'm gonna add some other images to the gallery so i'm gonna select image one by one and of course i'm gonna hold ctrl while clicking on each image all right so now i can click add to gallery i can switch places with these images so again it's up to you what do you want to do and now before publishing this product we can click preview let's see how it looks all right so as you can see this is how it looks it looks quite good of course it doesn't look too fancy because we haven't added our theme but now you should understand how to add a product and yeah this is how it looks so now we can close this one and now we can click publish and once we publish we're gonna click view product just to make sure that everything works fine and yeah now we can click right here let's say let's click on this url yeah and this is how it looks this is our product so as you can see if i would click to wooden toys category uh, this is our category and this is our toy so we have one product added to our store and uh, yeah so this is it for this lesson and in the next lesson i will show you how to add a wearable product and do not get discouraged if you think that this doesn't look too good uh, don't worry about that because we are in the progress we haven't done any customization options we haven't installed any theme to our website so this is the default version but now we have some type of a structure so this is it for this lesson all right since you know how to add a simple product now we can add a variable product to our store so i'll show you how that's done it's quite similar but this time we will need to create variations for a product all right let's go to the dashboard let's go to products right here and let's click add new so since you are already familiar with all those settings right here and uh, those options here i'm just gonna paste all the information i'm just gonna add the product name and i will add product description and all other information all right as you can see i just finished adding my information uh, this is the title for this product description as you can see i have product image and obviously i'm gonna have two different versions of this costume it's gonna be in black version and in blue and uh, right now i don't have a category uh, that would represent this product so i can click add new category right here and i'm gonna type costumes and i'm just gonna click add new category and just like that the new category was created so now i can uncheck this category and now i can choose costumes all right so let's scroll down what else we have and as you can see i added two tags so don't overstress yourself with tags if you cannot come up with any tags don't worry you can leave this one empty and you're not gonna experience any issues but let's say if i'm gonna have more products related to batman and uh, let's say if there's gonna be more toys uh, something with batman i will include this tag and uh, let's say once uh, my visitor clicks on this tag in a product page he will go to a new page where he will see all the products with 
at this particular tag. I will show you how that looks later. All right, now the next thing that we have to do, we have to choose that it's gonna be a variable product. Right here, you can type SKU, uh, the SKU for this product, and I'm not gonna activate manage stock because we will do this on each product separately because I want to know how many products of uh, blue version I have for uh, certain ages, and I want to know how many products I have of, let's say, blue version or black version for different range of ages. So basically my product, this product that I'm adding right now is going to have two variations, two attributes for variations. So the first attribute is going to be style that's going to be black or blue and it's going to have age. So it's going to be for certain ages. So let's say from uh, two to three years, from four to five years and uh, anything like that. Okay, now we can go to link products because we don't need to do any changes in shipping tab. And now we can link products. So for example, if I'm going to type wooden, as you can see, I can select this toy that I added previously. So I'm going to do the same with cross sells. And just like that, I added a product for upsells and cross sells. And you can add more products, more than just one. I usually like to add uh, from two to four products to each of these upsells and cross sells. And now we can go to attributes. All right. So now I'm going to click add and I'm going to type the name for this attribute. So it's going to be style and now I'm gonna have two styles so it's gonna be blue and black so I'm gonna type blue I will separate this with this symbol and I'm gonna type black I will select used for variations because I'm gonna use this attribute for variations and let's click save attributes if I would expand this one as you can see this is how it looks all right now I'm gonna add another attribute just like that and it's gonna be age and I'm gonna add values all right so I just added two values as you can see those are my values and of course I'm gonna click save attribute but before I do that I'm gonna select this one that I'm gonna use this for variations and I'm gonna click save attributes of course I could click right here add more attributes where I could mention the fabric and I guess that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna give a name and I'm gonna enter the value and once I added this attribute, I don't want to use this attribute for creating variations of this product because fabric is not used for variations. So I do not need to check this one used for variations. All right, so now we can click save attributes. And uh, again, it's up to you what type of products you're adding. For example, if you are adding t-shirts and you only have sizes. So let's say you have a specific design of a t-shirt and you only have different sizes that are large, small, extra large, and so on. So in your case, you're going to need to add just one attribute for variation. So let's say if it's going to be size instead of style here in values, you will list all values one by one that you have and you're just going to hit save attributes. And just like that, you're going to use this attribute to create variations. If you have more attributes used for variations, let's say you're going to have different colors, all right, uh, pink, yellow or any other. And just like I did, you will have to add uh, this one right here. So in my case, it's age. In your case, it could be like color or anything else. And of course, you can even add more attributes that you're going to use in variations. But in a lot of cases and most of the cases, uh, you are probably going to use one or two attributes that you're going to do variations with those. All right, so let's save attributes one more time. Let's make sure that those are saved. And now we're going to create variations. All right, so let's click right here and let's select this one and let's select go. Let's click OK. OK. And as you can see, now we have four variations. So we have a blue version that is for three to four ages. And we have another blue version and so on. So now let's expand all the variations right here. And now let's set an image for this variation. So this is going to be the image I want to use. All right, right here, I'm going to type my regular price. And if you are managing stock, you can activate this one and type stock quantity. All right, so let's scroll down what else we have. And of course, you have low stock trash roll, just like we had with a simple product. You have weight, shipping classes. Again, you can select shipping classes for each variation separately. So this one is up to you if you want to do that. Okay, let's scroll down. And this is the blue version again. Let's select the same image and let's paste the price. So the price is going to be the same. So I just copied the price. Let's select manage stock. And again, I'm going to type 10. 
and as you can see we have repeat all the things so it depends how many variations you're gonna have this is how many times you're gonna need to repeat those things because you have to treat each variation as a separate product because as you can see you can add uh, all those things like weight you can even choose the shipping class and so on all right so let's add the last one it's gonna be black and as you remember manage stock but before that the price and the stock is gonna be 10. all right and i'm gonna do the same with this one all right once you have finished adding information don't forget to hit save changes if you don't gonna save changes you're gonna lose all information all right now we can click publish and now we can click right here to view our product let's see how it looks if everything works as it's supposed to work all right so we have style we can choose let's say let's choose blue and let's choose age voila we have different image we can enlarge those images we can close those images uh totally understand that it doesn't look too good but like i said we're gonna install a theme we're gonna do customization options and our product page is gonna look much better all right and like i told you with tags let's say if i'm gonna click on this batman tag as you can see this is the tag and these are the products that i have under this tag in this case i only have this product so obviously i'm just gonna see one product all right let's go back all right before i go back i guess let's open this product one more time and let's make sure that everything works all right so right here as you can see we have description and additional information we have uh, additional information that we have style blue black age and fabric if you don't want to display those attributes right here like style because we have style right here and we have age we can do changes so for example i'm gonna click edit this product and if you don't want to display those attributes you have to go right here and as you remember we have style so we want to hide this one from product page and we want to hide age as well and let's click save and let's click update all right and now we can click view product let's see if those attributes are hidden now let's click right here and yeah as you can see we don't have any other attributes those attributes can be seen only right here and that's good all right here you can see people can leave reviews and here you can see our previous product if i would add this product to our shopping cart just a second let's click add to cart all right we can click view cart and as you can see right here we have a cross sell so as you remember we added this product in a cross sell tab and this is where it is displayed and this is how our shopping cart looks it doesn't look too good i completely understand because we haven't done anything with the customization part of our website so all right this is it with this lesson now we know how to add variable product and you also know what are tags and how you can check the products that are added to those tags so this is it for this lesson In this video, we are gonna create a coupon for our store. So as you can see right here, we can type a coupon code, but we don't have any coupons. All right, so to add a new coupon, I'm just gonna open this one in a new tab, just because I would have this uh, tab right here. Once I have activated my coupon code, I could use it right here. All right, let's go to the dashboard. And as you remember, if I would go to WooCommerce, I can select coupons. I could also go right here and select coupons. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, let's click create your first coupon. And right here you have discount type. I usually use percentage discounts, you know, 10% discount, 15% discount and so on. But you can use fixed card discounts. So for example, you could type $5, $3. This is the amount you want to use. And of course you can choose fixed product discount for uh, products itself, all right? But like I said, I usually like to use percentage discounts. Uh, that's probably what majority of e-commerce stores do anyway. And right here, let's say I'm gonna type 10. So it's gonna be 10% discount. You can check this box to allow free shipping. Again, it's up to you. I usually like to keep everything simple. You can add coupon expiration date right here. Just choose the date. And here I like to do some usage restrictions. 
All right, so you can choose how much a person has to spend or if he spends more than the maximum amount that you enter right here, he will not be able to get this discount and those options are up to you. You can exclude products from the discount. So if you don't want to give this discount for a certain product, you can exclude products right here. You can include particular products. So that means this discount can only be applied to specific products and those specific products only. You can do the same with a uh, categories you can exclude categories you can make this uh, discount only available for certain categories of your products so this is where you can do that just simply choose what you want to do if you want to do any of those options and just type the product or type the category so this one is up to you you can even allow email addresses so for example if you already have some customers uh, that are shopping on your online store or you created a unique coupon for a particular customer then you can only allow this coupon for that particular email address so you will have to enter this email address right here but i usually like to do this option right here because sometimes when people find multiple coupons they try to apply both coupons and if you do not uncheck this option those customers will be able to use two coupons when shopping on your online store so i highly recommend you to use this one and of course, by enabling this option, you can exclude sale items. So for example, if items are on a sale and uh, your customer adds those products, those items to their shopping cart and they try to apply a coupon, they will not be able to get a discount if you're going to check this box. All right, usage limits. Again, you can add usage limits. So you can add limits per coupon let's say i'm gonna create this coupon and i'm gonna have just uh, 10 coupons so i will have to enter this one right here 10 coupons you can do limitations to a certain amount of products so let's say if you're gonna enter here five and the person buys six products he will not be able to get a discount usage limit per user so if you're gonna enter here one that means this user uh, or any other future user will be able to use this coupon once it's up to you if you want to do those limitations but usually what i do is i usually use percentage discount and i do restrictions that people cannot use multiple coupons at once and once you have done those things of course you have to create a coupon so let's say i'm gonna name this coupon testing you can also click right here generate coupon automatically and here you can add a description for yourself maybe you're gonna do special promotions so you wouldn't get lost and you would know for what reason this coupon was created all right once you have done this let's click publish and our coupon is live so now we can go back to our cart right here and we can type testing and let's click apply coupon as you can see a discount was applied successfully and this is the discount and yeah as you can see it's 170 and everything works so this is how you can add coupons so now we can close this one and yeah this is it for this lesson now you know how to create coupons Fantastic, you just finished WooCommerce part. So now you know how to use a WooCommerce plugin that is responsible for adding e-commerce functionality to your WordPress website. So basically now you know how to create an e-commerce website by installing the WooCommerce plugin. So now you know how to add products, how the WooCommerce works, what are the most important settings and all those things. So this is very important part in creating your online store using WooCommerce. So great job on that. And in the next section, we're going to start focusing on the colors, on the design part of your website. And uh, yeah, that's great. Now you know how WooCommerce works, you know how WordPress works, and you know, of course, what is web hosting, what is domain name. And uh, maybe before starting this course, you didn't know anything, but now you know quite a lot of things. So congratulations on that. All right, in this section, we're going to talk about the customization of your website. So before we jump into installing our themes, of course, in this uh, course, you're going to have two options to create your website. So we're going to have uh, an option with a free theme and you're going to have an option to create your website with a premium theme. So you're going to see it yourself how those two options are different because with the premium theme, of course, you're going to have way more customization options. But uh, with a free theme, you can also expect good results. But of course, it's 
nothing compared to a premium option the best thing is that the premium option is just gonna cost you one time fee and that's it there's no any hidden monthly fees or anything like that so that's really great looking from this perspective and uh, when talking about the whole customization thing in this section we're gonna focus on making sure that your website gonna look good and it's gonna look professional even though you might not have any experience in setting up your websites in creating them but in this section we're gonna focus on making them look nice without sweating too much so if that's the right way to express so yeah we're not gonna focus on the things that we don't need to use we're just gonna focus on the things that are truly important so like choosing colors so this one is extremely important because i have seen a lot of websites that use random colors and they do not look good and they do not look professional so if your website isn't gonna look professional isn't gonna look trustworthy then you can expect that you're gonna lose quite a lot of customers just imagine if uh, your visitor lands to a website that looks horrible you know not matching colors and anything that website just screams right away that it's not trustworthy you know it doesn't look good and in a lot of cases that's a huge reason why customers do not convert because they do not see a trustworthy website you know the first impression is bad so in this section we're gonna make sure that we focus on this good first impression for our visitors and of course i'm gonna show you some places where i get uh, stock photos and where you can get them yourself as well and i'm gonna share with you free options and i'm gonna share a paid option that i use myself and you know you're gonna need stock photos in any case no matter what type of website you are creating because you want to look professional so if you're gonna use random photos it's not gonna be professional you gotta use stock photos and of course i'm gonna show you those two themes you'll see it yourself how they look i'm gonna give you a quick introduction into each theme and basically i'm gonna show you the website structure so what type of structure you should have and it's gonna be up to you how you wanna do this but i'm gonna share my blueprint just like in all other lessons and it's gonna be up to you if you want to use this blueprint for the structure of your website so basically that's that this is gonna be a short section we're not gonna have a lot of lessons but it should give you a better understanding what makes your website to look professional. All right, in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to choose matching colors for your website. So it's quite simple. You don't really need to know anything about matching color palettes or anything like that. There are tools, there are free tools that can do it for you but i highly recommend you to do that because if you're not gonna have a matching color palettes a good looking color palettes then of course your website isn't gonna look professional so all right what we have right here so as you can see right here i have my logo so i got myself this logo from one of the websites i purchased it myself and it's up to you if you want to buy logos if you want to create them yourself i sometimes like to save myself some time and i like to buy them instead of creating them myself in the past i used to do that but uh, again nowadays it's time consuming and time is money all right so i got this logo for myself and as you can see i have the colors right here on the right side so this is the brown color this is this is the color brown and i have electric color so this is the electric color and i just extracted the codes the color codes uh, of course you have multiple options to do that you can use photoshop you can use uh, paint or any other program to extract colors from the logo or an image so this one is completely up to you so now i know that those are the colors and probably i'm gonna use those colors as my main colors because those colors are in my logo so probably i'm gonna use uh, this color for some of the text maybe this color for some sections or anything like that but i do need some more colors so because two colors are not enough and when you are creating a website i usually like to recommend to use up to four colors not more than that because if you're gonna use too many colors on your website of course your website ain't gonna look professional so how to find out what colors would match to those two colors right here the ones that are brown and electric uh, this is the tool I use 
So that's the tool I like to use and I've been using this tool for quite a while now and it's a free tool and uh, you can generate color palettes using this tool and those palettes gonna match and it's gonna look great. All right, so you want to go right here and choose palette generator. And all you want to do is you have to add your colors right here. If you don't have any colors yet, you can choose right here from the picker. Just choose the color you want to use and just lock that color and like i said you should have up to four colors not more than that i usually go with three colors in some cases i use four colors but in majority of cases i do this just for uh, an extra separate buttons to add an extra color but again it's up to you so from three to four colors it's completely okay so now we can remove one color because we're not gonna need that and since we have locked this color now you can click space button and just like that you will generate matching colors to this one all right if you're gonna hit another time all right you just found a color that you want to use you think that this color gonna match well with this one maybe you're gonna use this one in your logo maybe you're gonna use this for buttons in your website so now you want to lock this color and now if you would hit space one more time you would get another two matching colors to those two colors right here and just keep hitting space as many times as you want until you find the colors you want to use in your website. And once you have found those colors, you can simply copy those codes right here, uh, paste them to your notepad or anywhere else. If it's more convenient for you, you can paste it in your Google Docs or any other document file and just write down that this is the color and do the same with all colors. And later when we're gonna customize our website, we will be able to use those colors to make our website with matching colors, to make it look professional and basically appealing. All right, so this is how you can do that. And and just like I showed you previously, I had the code of my colors. So this was uh, one of the codes for brown color and you can paste the code if you want to do it this way. So as you can see, I just pasted this code and I'm going to do the same with electric color. And just like that, I actually got those two colors right here. By using those two main colors, I generated other two colors and now I will use those colors in creating my website. All right, so like I told you before, just go back and paste the code right here and make sure that it's locked. And again, if you're gonna hit space, you're gonna generate more colors, more matching colors to those two colors right here. So yeah, basically that's it for this lesson. Now you know how to choose matching colors. And if you need for an inspiration, you can always do Google search, look for color palettes, just type color palettes. Uh, let's say you could type red, brown color palette or anything like that, just to look for inspiration. But if you already have some type of an idea how you want to make your website look, what colors you might want to use uh, this is the tool you can use to generate matching colors and don't forget don't use too many colors in most cases three colors are more than enough and four colors might be a bit more than you need but it's still okay and of course don't go with extremely bright colors or any other like marker type colors so for example don't go with those type of colors on your website it's just not gonna look good you know you don't want to do that you want to make your website as nice looking as possible so try to avoid these extremely bright colorish colors all right so this is it for this lesson now you know how to generate colors and how to make your website look more professional later on we're gonna use that when we're gonna be customizing our website All right, so in this lesson, I'm just going to show you the places, the websites where you can get free stock images. And it's going to be helpful for you, not just for creating this website, but uh, for the future projects, because it is important to have a nice looking photos, not just for your products. But let's say if you're going to decide that you want to add blog posts to your website, it's always good to have a nice featured images for blog posts. And of course, it's also important when you're going to create your homepage, let's say you're going to want to add a hero image on your website. So the hero image is the most important image 
on your website basically this is the first image the first thing your visitors gonna see once they land on your website so knowing where to get stock images is important you cannot just use google to look for images because you're gonna get copyrighted and you don't want that to happen for you you want to use free stock images instead of that all right so the first place where i get my stock photos is this one this is how it's called unsplash.com uh, there's plenty of various images available for various purposes and uh, i have no doubts that you will be able to find some great stock photos for your website for any website not just for this one but yeah I highly recommend you to use unsplash because there's plenty of free stock photos available uh, the second option that I use quite a lot is this one pixabay it also has a lot of free stock photos and I highly recommend you to check this one I use this one quite often as well and the last one that I use myself I've been using this one for quite a while now and this one is really good because you can find even logos right here so if you're gonna look for logo inspirations or you're gonna look for color palette inspirations or anything like that you can use this one freepick.com i highly recommend you to check this one out it has a free version and paid version uh, with a free version you will be able to find the free stock photos and with a paid version it's gonna be around 15 dollars per month so you can get a plan for one month and you can download as many photos as you need for your project 15 dollars for all the photos you need is dirt cheap compared to other stock photo places where you can buy them usually you you can pay up to $15 for a single photo for one photo so $15 for a month to download as many photos as you want I think it's a good deal so I just wanted to share this one with you as well of course it's kind of limited compared to some other big players like Shutterstock or Adobe images or anything like that but it's still good and it just costs $15 so if you want to make your website even more professional looking then you might want to try some paid options for let's say stock photos so this is what I like to use myself and you can also use this one to download logos so yeah that's a huge advantage of freepick.com and I highly recommend you to check those free websites out and I believe you will be able to find what you are looking for so this is it for this video now you know where to find stock photos where to look for them and do not use Google just to download images from Google because you're gonna get copyrighted and you don't want to get copyrights because it's just not good for your website so in this course you're gonna have two options to create your website so like I mentioned you before you're gonna have an option to use a free theme that is called Astra theme and you're gonna have a premium option to use a theme that is called Flatsum. I myself I like to use a premium option. I have three websites running using this theme and I kind of like this theme because it's highly customizable, it loads fast and it has a huge community where you can ask any questions you want. It has a Facebook group so I think it's a really great choice but like I said it's important for me to show you two options based on your budget and to show you what are the possibilities. So in this video I'm just gonna show you what are the possibilities of Astra theme so right now I'm gonna open a website that was created using Astra theme so basically this is the e-commerce store that is using an Astra theme this is a WordPress website and as you can see how it looks it looks quite good it looks professional and if I would click right here on this product right here as you can see this is how the product page looks it's nothing too fancy nothing too big and uh, once you click on any other product you'll see it yourself that it is the same right here we can choose the quantity of an item and if I would click add to cart I can click right here view cart it's quite simple looking theme as you can see it's not too fancy or anything extraordinary it's simple it's minimalistic and it looks good so actually when you think about it what else do you need so here you will be able to apply coupon codes it looks quite simple and if I would click right here proceed to checkout as you can see this is how the checkout page looks of course we will be able to do some customization to this page uh, not too much but we will be able to do some changes all right so this is how it looks this is how the checkout page looks and if I would go to groceries category right here as you can see this is how the category page looks it looks quite good I cannot argue with that because it, everything looks fine this is the footer of our website and it makes sense it looks professional 
except uh, these colors right here could be white but i guess it's some type of issue but no worries about that so we have social media icons right here and most of all the home page looks absolutely gorgeous so we have a nice home page and this home page was created using another plugin that is elementary plugin it is for building pages so that's exactly why this plugin was used right here it was used to create this page so using this plugin i will show you in the later lesson when i will show you how to work with this answer theme how to use elementor all right so it looks quite good and it's quite simple it's kind of minimalistic looking design but it looks good all right and if i would go to a flatsome theme that is a premium option and in later uh, section after the astra theme section i'm gonna show you how to create your website using this theme all right so as you can see this is how it looks this is a kind of different looking website it's a bit more interactive as you can see it has this quick view and it looks a bit better and it's like a completely e-commerce looking store so if i would click on a product page right here oh actually it's a category so this is the category this is how the category is gonna look and it looks cleaner a bit more minimalistic i guess you could say and if i would click on a product as you can see we have a completely different looking product page and the good thing is that we will be able to customize this product page and we can make it look a bit different but if i would go right here if i would go back to our astra theme and i would click right here on this product uh, basically with this product page we are kind of limited we will not be able to do too many adjustments so if this look is good for you if you don't have more money to invest into your website then of course you can choose astra option but if i would go back as you can see it looks kind of different and if i would click add to cart as you can see we have a bit more interactive website and if i would click view cart the cart looks different so yeah this is the difference uh, with this theme and that theme basically this theme that i just showed you i'm just gonna go back is more customizable you're gonna have way more customization options because of course it is a premium theme so compared to this one you will be kind of limited you will be able to do adjustments to your home page you will be able to create your own unique home page you will be able to do adjustments to your header to add your pages categories and so on of course you will be able to work on the footer right here and if it's gonna be enough for you that's fine it's still a good looking e-commerce store but with this flatsome option you're gonna have way more customization options so it's up to you what option you want to use but i highly recommend you to go through both options i'm talking about the sections of this course where i will show you how to set up your website using astro theme and where i'm gonna show you how to set up your website using flatsome theme and you will see it yourself how different those two themes are and compared astra to flatsome you'll see that flatsome gonna have way more customization options so this is it for this video hopefully now it's gonna be easier for you to decide which theme you want to use all right so before we move on to the next section of this course i just wanted to talk about the structure of a website so if you're gonna know the structure of the website in the next lessons is gonna be much easier for you to work on your website because you have to understand the basic structure of the website all right so let's start with the first thing that every single website has and your website gonna have it as well so i just open a new website that i manage and uh, let's start with the first thing that all websites have so the first thing that all websites have is header so this is the header of your website this is gonna be the header so no matter what type of website you're gonna create no matter what type of project you're gonna start every website has the header in the header you usually include uh, such things as a uh, cart as uh, login and registration option for your customers and of course you include your categories so it's gonna be up to you to decide what you want to include in your header besides those things like categories like search bar and all those things 
and uh, this is basically how it looks this is basically how one of my website looks and as you can see also included blog in this header so it's going to be up to you if you want to start writing blog posts i will show you how you can include this blog as well so this is the header and in html it's going to be called head of course you don't really need to know anything about the coding aspect of the header but it's called head so it is the head of your website this header is going to be on every single page no matter where you're going to go you're going to have the same header as well gonna be a sticky header as you can see it doesn't matter if I scroll it still stays right here so this header gonna be on every single page no matter where you go so this is the head of your website next thing we have body so this is the body of your website what's beneath the header is called body all right so this is the body of your website so every single page every single product or blog post is gonna have a different information in later stages we're gonna focus on the body aspect a bit more when we're gonna work on the home page of our website so the home page is gonna be the front page of your website basically where people land once they visit your website it's gonna be the storefront of your website so this is the body right here so what What's beneath the header is your body so it's similar to the human body structure you have head you have body and what's next of course you have feet so similar to that this is the footer of your website so this is the footer the footer stays the same on every single page as well just like the header except it's not sticky as you can see it yourself so in the footer you usually include information that is going to be important for your customer so as you can see right here we have some information about the website privacy policy returns and refunds shipping and delivery and so on you can also include such things as your social media icons and of course you can include even more information like latest posts if you're gonna write blog post again this one is going to be completely up to you you will have an opportunity to explore everything yourself to try out and see what works the best for you but uh, like i said in this course i will share my blueprint that uh, works that works for me that works for my customers and it's going to be up to you what type of footer you want to build it's going to be as well up to you what type of header you want to build all right so this website was created using flatsome theme so as you can see this is how it looks and if i would go to this website right here it was created using an astra theme so no matter what theme you are using no matter what uh, type of website you are building you're gonna have the same structure of course it might look a bit different but as you can see right here at the top we have the header so this is the header we have a logo we have some information right here as you can see right here we have a store page with categories so again it's going to be up to you what type of header you want to have what things you want to include but in this case as you can see this header is a bit different because this e-commerce store is much smaller than that one so it doesn't have too many products doesn't have too many categories so this is how it looks so right here we have about us page contact us page my account page and a shopping cart so this is how it looks so this is the header and again this is the body as you can see this header is not sticky and this is the body like with the previous website i showed you and if i would scroll down it also has a footer so basically this is how it looks and if you are looking for inspiration how you want to make your footer look you can check some websites you like and you can try to replicate the same structure so again it's going to be up to you all right so now you are familiar with all the structure of the website and from here we're gonna start building our website so this is where our website gonna start taking its shape all right so this is it for this lesson hopefully now you understand the structure of the website great job now you know what it takes to create a professional looking website so usually less is more and less looks better so now you know everything you know how to match colors where to look for stock photos and that's very important i see a lot of people who make the same mistakes uh, they choose not matching colors they don't use stock photos a lot of people just look up for images on google and they try to use that don't do that because you might get copyrighted and you don't want this to happen to you so use stock photos use the tools i showed you and definitely you will be able to create a professional looking website so even though maybe you're gonna finish this uh, section and you're gonna move on on other sections 
I highly recommend you to come back to this section and just look through it. Uh, try to understand everything better. Maybe you won't like how your website looks. So this is where you will go through the old tools I just showed you. And this will help you to create a professional looking website. And professional looking website, a good looking website is very important for e-commerce stores because you can expect higher conversion rate. And it's very important because if you're going to have a higher conversion, you can expect more sales. So imagine if you're going to have 2% conversion rate or you would have just 0.5% percent conversion rate so that's a huge difference so having a professional looking website is a huge thing because you can expect the higher conversion rates you can expect more sales and of course that's extremely important when you are creating your online store so great work on that and in the next section we're gonna dive deeper into giving looks to our website so this is where you're gonna have the first option the free option to create your website using free tools and in the later section we're gonna use a premium theme so with the premium tools and you will see it yourself how those two options are different and uh, you will be able to use the knowledge that you just learned in both of these sections so that's all for now great job all right so in this section we're gonna set up our website we're gonna create uh, the website we're gonna basically design our website and it's gonna take the final shape with the help of astra theme so this is the theme that is called Astra and probably you remember when I was talking about themes you might have seen this theme. So this is a very popular theme and it's popular for a reason because with the free version you can create a quite good looking website. So it can be an e-commerce store, a blog or just a regular business website to represent your brand or business. So this theme is quite versatile and it looks quite good. So we're gonna use this theme, uh, we're gonna use the free version of this theme and and in this section, I will show you how to install this theme, how to install a starter template. So basically the starter template is going to be the template that's going to help to give our website a structure. So it's going to be a template, basically a demo content that's going to look like a complete website. But uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to edit this content. And in the next section, when we're going to work with the premium theme, we are not going to use any templates because with this premium theme, it's going to be a bit easier to start without any structure. But that's what we're going to do with this Astra theme. All right, before we install this theme and start our templates, let's look around the templates itself. So you want to go to this website website right here wpastra.com and if I would go to starter templates I would be able to check all the templates this theme has to offer so as you can see we have free templates and we have premium templates so those are for premium version for a pro version of this Astra theme and by the way if you're gonna decide to purchase a pro version you're gonna have to pay each year so it's not like you're gonna purchase this theme and it's gonna be yours and uh, not like with the next theme that I'm gonna show you uh, to build your website with so this is uh, on the early basis but with the free option we're still gonna have good results except we're not gonna have so many customization options all right so those are templates as you can see we have over 240 templates and if I would go to this section e-commerce I can select that I want to check all the e-commerce templates so as you can see this is how it looks so if I would click on this template we can click live preview so this is what you can expect to have using this theme. So as you can see, those are the products. And if I would click on a product, this is how the product page is gonna look. It looks quite good, I won't gonna lie. It looks quite good, even though it is a free theme. But yeah, like I said, this theme is popular for a reason. So just look around all the options right here, check free options. If you want, you can check premium options, compare those options to free options. And I highly recommend you to decide what theme you would like to use, because in next lesson, we're gonna focus on editing this template so basically we're gonna replace the information that is in this template with our information basically that's all we're gonna do we're gonna edit this template so look around try to decide what template you want to use understand that it might be different from the template I'm gonna choose but actually the whole editing part is gonna be the same so everything is gonna be the same no matter what type of template you choose except a different template has different information in it maybe different structure maybe different layout but nothing else is different when we are looking into editing
interesting aspect of this template. So just look around, see what template you would like to use and basically just decide if this is the template you want to use. But you can also follow the whole editing part with the template I'm gonna choose. All right, so this is it for this lesson. I gave you a quick introduction into Astra Beam. In this video, we're gonna install Astra Theme and we're gonna install a starter template. All right, so let's start doing this. We can close this tab right here and let's go to our website. So we want to go to the dashboard of our WordPress website and we want to go to appearance. Let's select themes. All right, so we want to click right here, add new theme and we're not even gonna need to use search because this is the theme we want to install. So let's click install and let's click activate. All right, so the Astro theme is active and now we can visit our website and let's check how our website looks. All right, as you can see, it doesn't look good at all and it's because we haven't installed a template to our website. So Astro theme without a template, it just looks ridiculously awful because you will need to edit everything yourself from the bottom, but with starter templates, the whole editing and the, the creation process of your website is much faster. So we want to install starter templates. So let's go to the dashboard and the starter templates is a plugin. It adds a new functionality to your website. So let's go to plugins and let's click add new. All right, now we want to search for starter templates. So just type starter templates and this is the plugin we want to install. So let's click install and let's click activate. All right, so we successfully installed our starter templates plugin and now we have to choose a template. So let's click right here, see library. Let's click build your website now and let's choose a page builder plugin. Basically a page builder plugin allows you to create a quite good looking pages without needing of course to code, without needing to edit everything too over complicated because with a plugin such as Elementor you just have to drag and drop various elements uh, to your page and this is how you create your pages, your home page or any other page. So let's choose Elementor since it is the most popular one. And now your goal is to choose a starter template. So like I told you before, it's up to you what template you want to use. But in this particular case, in this course, I'm going to use this template because I feel that it's going to be the easiest template for me to edit and I'm not going to need to make too many changes. So I'm just going to click right here. If you have your logo, you can add it right here. Just remember that those are recommended dimensions. But in later lesson, I'm going to show you how you can upload your logo without needing to add it right here if you don't have one yet. All right, so let's click right here, skip and continue. So now your goal is to choose your color palette because if you're going to choose it right now in the next lessons, you're going to have less editing to do, less customization to do to your website. So just choose your color palette. I guess I'm going to go with this one. I feel like this one suits my brand the best and choose your font. So those are going to be the main text fonts. As you can see, if I'm going to choose this one, we have the changes right here. And I actually feel that this font looks the best and I'm gonna keep it to this font right here. Of course, it's up to you what type of font you want to use. Let's click continue. Right here, you do not need to add anything. You can click right here. And just wait a minute until your website is ready. And after that's done, we're gonna check how it looks. All right, fantastic. Our website is ready. And now we can click right here, view our website. All right, since we open our website in a new tab, we can close this previous tab. And as you can see, this is how our website looks. It looks quite good, doesn't it? Of course, you're gonna need to change this whole demo content, but now you have a fully functioning website, to be honest. Of course, it doesn't have your products yet, but as you can see, you have a professional looking website and you're just paying $8 per month for this website. Uh, later on, of course, it's gonna cost $10 per month, but of course, it's much cheaper than running your website on Shopify or using almost any other option. So as you can see, this is how it looks. And if we would go to our shopping cart, you will see that we have our previous product that we added added uh, to our shopping cart in the previous lesson. So if I would click on this product right here, as you can see, the product page looks completely different compared to the previous version we had. And everything looks much better than it used to look with a default theme. And yeah, this is how it looks. And later on, we're gonna do 
more changes to make this website to represent our brand so we can even check some of the pages how they look so if i would go to cookie policy as you can see it looks a bit different i think it looks much better than the previous version and if i would go back to my home page this is how it looks so congratulations you have a fully functioning website of course we still need to replace some information we're gonna need to do some customization options but as you can see with a free theme with a free tool Tools, you can actually create a good looking website. When we installed the Astra theme and we installed starter template, it also came with a lot of demo content that we're not gonna use at all. So this starter template installed some products that we actually don't have on our store. We are not selling those products. And this starter template as well installed some pages that we're not gonna use at all. As you can see, we even have some duplicate pages. So we have to fix everything right here. We have to delete some of the pages we have to delete the products we're not gonna use and I believe it also installed some categories all right so before we add our content we have to make sure that we don't have any of demo content that we're not gonna use so let's go to the dashboard and let's see how our dashboard looks now and as you can see our dashboard looks a bit bigger with more tools because this Astro theme and starter templates installed some plugins too so it installed this plugin it also added this tool right here so it is a tool for customizing your Astro theme and we have starter templates all right so now our goal is to find out what demo content we're not gonna use so let's start with pages let's see what pages we have and we don't really need to use all right so we have about page so this about page was added by this starter template so we can click view and let's see how this about page looks because right now it's a different about page so as you can see this is how it looks it looks a better than the previous version we had but we actually created the previous about page just because we needed to add some information i just wanted to show you how to add those pages that you need all right so we actually don't need this about page but if you want if you like the design of this page you can keep it and later you can edit it so it's gonna be up to you but I'm actually gonna show you how you can do that yourself if I would go back we can check how our previous about page looks so if I'm gonna open right here well it should be a, just a simple page and as you can see it looks a bit better the design looks better if you are fine with this one you can keep it but again I will show you how you can work on some other pages to make them look more appealing all right so now we can close this tab and now we can actually delete this page as well as you can see this page says Elementor so that means this page was created using Elementor but we're gonna talk about that more in depth in the next lesson all right so we're not gonna use this page we can delete this one because we are not going to use duplicated card page since this template installed this page for us all right we can keep this page we don't really need to delete it we can delete this duplicate page we can delete this one we can keep our previous page let's keep cookie policy of course we're gonna keep our home page and we don't need my account page since it's a duplicate page as you can see privacy policy let's keep this one we can delete this one because it's a draft from the previous lessons let's keep shipping and delivery let's delete shop since we have a new shop page as you can see right here and basically those are the pages we don't need so once you have selected those pages let's choose move to trash and let's click apply all right the next thing that we have to remove is products since we're not gonna use those products that this starter template added for us so let's go to all products and let's see how many products we have so as you can see we have two products that we added ourselves and we have quite a lot of products that we don't really need in total we have 12 products that were added with this starter template and we don't need those products so we can select those all products let's deselect our products that we added ourselves all right let's do that and now we can click right here move to trash all right let's move those products to trash all right next let's make sure that we have all the categories that we created previously and we do not have the categories that were added with this starter template this is the category i created this one as well that one that one this is not the category i created so we can select this one 
and that one. So those two categories were added with this starter template and now we can click right here delete just like that we're gonna delete those categories just a second and we actually don't need this and categorized so we can delete this one as well all right so now we have all our products and we have all the pages we need and let's take a look how our website looks now so i'm just gonna open this one in a new tab and let's see how it looks all right so now we do not have any categories right here we do not have anything here basically but later we're gonna add information all right so if i would scroll down as you can see we don't have any best-selling products because we removed them all and we don't have any trending products as well let's see what pages we have so we have all the needed pages we do not have any duplicates anymore and that's great so this is it for this lesson now you know how to fix how to remove all the demo content that came with a starter template and from here we're gonna start working on our content we're gonna start adding our images we're gonna start working on the home page and this is basically where we're gonna create the final form of of our website using Astra theme. So that's all for this lesson. All right, so we removed all the demo content and now we have to start working on the pages. As you saw it yourself, some of the pages had Elementor next to the page. So let's go back to our dashboard and let's click pages right here. Let's select all pages. And I'm gonna show you real quick what is that. So as you remember, about page had next to it Elementor. So it basically means that this page was created using Elementor. So our plugin starter templates imported this page and this page was created using Elementor. As you remember, when we were creating those pages, I'm just gonna open this one in a new tab and let's go to this page. So to create this page, we used WordPress text editor. We used some of the Gutenberg blocks right here from the list and this is how we created this page we dragged some of the blocks right here and that's how basically we created this page and elementor is a different type of editor so right here we have a wordpress text editor and right here we have edit with elementor so if i would click right here i would edit this page using elementor instead of using wordpress text editor so that's how it works. All right, so I'm gonna close this one. Later on, we're gonna edit this page to make it more appealing. And uh, right now, as you can see, all other pages, just like cart page, checkout page, they are just the regular pages. It's a cart page. It doesn't have anything next to it saying Elementor, but our home page, that is front page of our website, was created using Elementor. So this is what Elementor is. It is a page builder. Using Elementor, you can create a much better looking pages then you would be able to create using WordPress text editor. So that's the purpose of this plugin. So now you know what is Elementor and now we should check how it works. So let's go back to our homepage. This is the homepage of our website and this page was created using Elementor. Elementor is not the only page builder plugin. There are quite a few page builder plugins available like Beaver Builder, like WP Bakery and others. But now let's focus on Elementor. All right, let's click right here, edit with Elementor because this page was created using Elementor. And before we start diving deeper into this plugin, I just wanted to tell you that I highly do not recommend you to create every single page using Elementor. You shouldn't focus on creating every single page uh, using this plugin because it might slow down your website. Of course, it is possible that this won't happen, but it's better be safe than sorry. So if you are using Elementor, just create your home page, about page, maybe some other pages, and it's gonna be more than just enough. All right, so now we are editing this page with Elementor. So as you saw it yourself, when we were editing page with WordPress text editor, we had a different panel but now when we are editing this page the whole information that is on this page we are editing this page using elementor page builder so there is no such thing as wordpress text builder anymore all right so before we're gonna edit our home page in the next lesson you have to understand how this plugin how this page builder works so on the left side we have elements so we have various elements just like we had with our wordpress text editor it had blocks but right here we have elements so as you can see we have some basic elements like heading 
like intersection, like text editor. So it's basically the paragraph. We have image, we have videos, we can embed videos, buttons, spacers, dividers, Google Maps, icons. And right here we have some pro elements. So those are only available with a paid version of Elementor. Not with a paid version of Astrophim, but with a paid version of Elementor. So those are all locked elements because they come with a paid version of this Elementor plugin. And if I would go down, right here we have some other elements. Uh, those are free elements to use. And as you can see it yourself, we have quite a lot of elements. And talking from the personal experience, I can definitely tell you that uh, with the free elements, you can actually create a quite good looking pages, a really good looking pages actually. And you don't really need to use those pro elements because it's not going to change much. Even though this plugin is offering you a pro option, uh, there's a huge chance that you will never need to use that. All right. So right here on the left side, we have various elements. All right. So those are all the elements. If I would go right here, you would have your favorite elements. If I would click right here, global elements, as you can see, we have to upgrade. But like I said, you don't need a paid version to create a good looking pages. So let's go back to elements. If I would click right here, as you can see, we have some settings. We have some global settings. Uh, those are up to you to explore if you want to do some adjustments to the style. Right here, we have various other navigation tools. And if I would click right here, we could view our page. All right, let's go back. And if I would click right here, as you can see, this is where I am already. So if I would click here and I would click here, I would go to the whole elements. So those are elements right here. All right. Right here we have some other settings. So those settings are for the whole page itself. Right here we don't need to change anything. Uh, here you can do various padding adjustments and so on. And here we have some advanced tools, but those are only for pro version. I usually don't change anything right here because everything is as good as it is by default. All right, so let's go back to all elements. So right here we have all elements. To add an element, just drag it and drop it anywhere you want so that's how you add elements on the right side right here we have a navigator so as you can see this page this whole page was created using sections so as you can see this is how many sections we have and if i would go up as you can see this is the first section this section is even marked in this blue line right here you can delete a section, you can do adjustments to the section, to this whole section right here that is marked in blue, and you can do various changes to this section. As you can see, we have layout adjustments, you can do some structural adjustments. Right now, the structure of this section is two columns, 50 by 50. And if I would go to style, you can do various style adjustments to this particular section. This is the section we have selected this section. It's marked in blue. And if I would go to background overlay, as you can see, we have this image set. So this is the image. This is the image that you can barely see. As you can see, there are some opacity adjustments. If I would change this opacity, as you can see, this is how it looks. If I would go back, it doesn't show up that much. And yeah, this is how it looks. So this is the first section. If I would go to advanced settings right here, we can do some layout adjustments. All right. So you can change padding. As you can see, it changes. It's moving down and up. If I would do changes right here, as you can see, it's shrinking. And if I would go back, it's getting bigger. So this is the first section. So every single section has the same adjustment. So it has regular layout adjustments it has style adjustments and in advanced tab it has a bit more advanced let's say layout or style adjustments all right and if i would hide this section right here it just disappears so like i told you that section was marked in blue line this is the second section so this is the section that is also marked in blue line and as you can see if I would hide this section, it disappears. So let's unhide those both sections and let's talk the structure of the section itself. So this section has, as you can see, some elements in this section. So it has an image element right here. It has some other elements here. So in this column right here, it has an image element. 
it has a heading element, it has another heading element with some text and it has a button. So like I told you before, to add an element to a section or to a column, you just have to select it, drag it and drop it just like that. So that's how it works. If I would expand this section, as you can see, we have two columns. So when you are adding sections to a page using Elementor, you can choose how many columns you want this section to have. Because with columns, when your section is divided with columns, it's much easier to work on the section and it's much easier to add information. So this is the first column. As you can see, it's marked in this dotted line. And if I would click on this column right here, it's also marked in this dotted line. If I would hide this column, it disappears. If I would expand this column, as you can see, like I said, it has image element in this first column. And like I told you before, once you click on the section, once you click on the column, you can do adjustments to these things. So when I clicked right here, I was doing various adjustments to this whole section. If I would click on this column right here, here on this gray marked icon, I will be doing adjustments to this column only. If I would click on this image itself, I'm doing adjustments to this image only. So I'm not doing any changes to column or the section, I'm doing changes only to this image. So as you can see, there is a structure when you click on a certain element, when you click on the column, when you click on the section, then you're doing changes to your selected item column or the section. And those settings are very similar. All right, so this is the column. It has, as you can see, image. If I would click on this column and I would expand it, as you can see, it has more things. So it has an image right here. It has heading element. It has image box. So it is an image box and it has a button. All right, so that's how Elementor works. First of all, when you are editing your page, you add a section. When you add a section, you choose how many columns you want to have in your section. Once you add this section with a selected number of columns, then you start adding elements from this list right here. All right, so now you should understand how it works. I hope I uh, explained this in a simple way to understand. Don't think too overcomplicated. It's actually simple. You just have to select the structure and then you just drag the elements you want to use in this particular section. Once you have added this section, you can add another section. As you can see, we have quite a lot of sections. And when we're gonna work on this home page, we're gonna delete some of the sections and we're gonna do adjustments to other sections. All right, but before we leave, I just wanted to show you how you can add Add a new section so you can either click right here to add a new section or you can scroll down of course until you see the bottom and as you can see we have the same window right here and we can start working on this section we can start creating the section but let's go back up and let's start doing changes to the section we are about to create so once you are here you want to click this plus button and like i said select your structure so it's up to you what structure you want to use if it's gonna be just a single column if it's gonna be two columns three columns four columns or any other structure in this case let's choose two columns all right so as you can see, this is how it looks. So we have two columns. Basically, this is the same section, all right? This is the same section, except uh, the newly created section doesn't have any information. So for example, let's go to all items and let's try to replicate this section. So let's drag and drop the image, all right? And now to select an image, we already selected this image element. We have to choose image. Let's click on this one. And this is our media library. So if I would click right here, insert media this is how it looks all right and if i would like to do some padding and margin adjustments to make this section the whole section itself a bit larger i would have to click right here edit section as you can see the blue marked line and i would have to go in advanced tab and now i'm just gonna unlink dependencies and as you can see if i keep going like this the section expands so for example let's keep 70 and i'm gonna add 70 to bottom as well and uh, this section just got bigger now what we could add we could add uh, an image element right here just like that and this time let's choose a smaller image so let's scroll down just a second let's see this is the image we would like to use let's click insert and as you can see, this is how it looks. You can also change the alignment of this image. So if I would click right here, this is what we get. If I would go to all elements, 
let's choose heading element and I'm just gonna drag it right here underneath this image element and just type your text. So as you can see just like that you can create sections, you can add elements to the sections and basically when adding sections to your page you basically create a page. So simple as that. Uh, don't think too over complicated because you just have to drag and drop elements. So you first of all you start with a section and then you choose how many columns you want to have and then you start adding elements to this section and once you add all the elements you can do some adjustments like layout adjustments, advanced adjustments to play around with style, to play around with layout and like I always like to say don't be afraid to explore everything yourself to get used to this tool to this plugin because this way you're gonna learn how to use this tool much better. Alright so now we can delete this section because we're not gonna use and now you kind of know how Elementor works. So in the next lesson we are gonna start editing our home page and we are gonna create our own unique looking page. We are gonna replace this whole information here with our information. In this lesson we're gonna start working on our home page and as you probably know the home page is a very important page because it's basically the front store of your physical store and leaving a good first impression for your visitor is important. Alright so as you can see now things look a bit different it's just because I updated Elementor plugin and now instead of having this blue line right here that marks our section it's now in purple color so probably that's the biggest change we had after updating this plugin and like I mentioned you before in the lesson when I was talking about themes and plugins it is important to keep everything up to date so do not ignore updates try to keep everything up to date all right so we're gonna work on our home page and when i'm working on a home page i like to have my blueprint for a home page basically the layout so this is my layout that i usually use for my online stores this is the same layout i used to use when i was building online stores for customers and it's quite simple layout so this is the first section we're gonna have a first section with a hero image and click to action button so basically we have right here the same we're just gonna do some changes so basically we have a hero image image and we have some text and click to action button shop now and as you can see right here I'm planning to have another section with best selling products so I'm gonna show four products right here and after this one I'm gonna have a section with uh, showcasing some advantages of my online store so I'm gonna offer free shipping low prices fast delivery so I'm gonna have this section right here after that I'm gonna have a section with categories so I'm gonna show the categories that I have on my online store I'm planning to include only four categories and I'm gonna have the last section that is gonna be with trending products. So in total I'm planning to have one, two, three, four, five sections. If we would go to our homepage that we have right now, the current version, as you can see we have quite a lot of sections. So the first things first when working on pages I like to identify, not just working with pages but when I'm working with templates, I like to identify the sections that I'm not planning to use and uh, the sections that I'm planning to keep. The sections that I'm not planning to use of course I'm gonna delete those sections. So right I'm gonna keep this first section. Uh, this right here is gonna be my other section. It's gonna be third section where I'm gonna showcase the advantages of my online store. So I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna keep this one best selling products and I'm gonna keep this one as well except now I'm gonna have four categories so as you can see right here we have categories of our products that's just basically the template uh, that had three categories but now we're gonna have four so we're gonna do some minor changes to this one right here again it's up to you how you want to make your home page look but I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna do this with my blueprint with my layout so I'm not planning to use this section so I'm gonna delete this one just like that and I'm not going to use this one as well so I'm gonna click right here and just like that I deleted this section I'm gonna keep trending products section and uh, what's next I'm not gonna keep this one because I don't have any customer reviews yet and I'm not planning to use this section right here because it just doesn't make sense it was added with a template all right so I'm gonna delete this section and as you can see how many sections we have right now we are supposed to have five sections so one two three four five six 
So let's find the section that we are not going to use. Oh yeah, this is the section. So this image was added as a section. So let's delete this one. And now we have five sections to work on. All right, so let's make that we have the structure I'm looking for. So the first section is gonna be this one with the hero image. So it's in the place. And as I can see, this section is supposed to be below this best selling product section. So as you can see, this is the section and we can move this section down underneath best selling product section. All right, so now we are getting closer. All right, and let's check what else do we need to change. So we have first section, it's in place. We have this section in place. We have the third section in place as well. And now we are supposed to have categories and trending products. So let's check what we have. So right, we have categories. So this is gonna be our categories. And right here, we're gonna have our trending products. All right, let's see what we have to change. So right here, I'm supposed to have four categories instead of three categories. So you might be wondering how you are gonna add another category right here? It's simple, just click on any category right here on any column, the right mouse button, and let's click duplicate. All right, so now I have four categories. So this is where I'm gonna showcase my categories. Right here I have more columns than I'm supposed to have. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna simply click the right mouse button on this column right here, and I'm gonna delete this one. All right, so now we are getting closer. Okay, what's next? I don't want to have this image right here, so I'm just gonna click the right mouse button and I'm gonna delete it. All right, I'm gonna do the same with this one. Okay, let's delete it and let's scroll up and let's see what else we can change. All right, so I'm not gonna use this right here. So I'm gonna click delete. So my first task is to find the things that I'm not planning to use. So I identify the sections that I'm not planning to use and I'm going through the sections itself and I try to locate the elements that I'm not using as well. All right, so now my goal is to work on this first section itself. So I want to change the image right here. And I don't like this image because it doesn't represent my brand. And my goal is to add an image. So I have multiple ways to do that. But um, instead of replacing this image right here, I'm just gonna add a background image for this whole section itself. So I'm gonna click right here. And once I click on this button here, I'm doing changes to the section. So those are adjustments right here. And uh, when I'm doing some changes, no matter what uh, tab I'm using, if it's layout, style, advanced, I'm doing changes to this whole section and not to a separate columns or uh, separate elements, but to this whole section right here. All right, so my goal is to add a background image. So those changes are done right here in style tab. And right now I want to add a background image. So as I can see, we have background overlay. All right, and I don't want to use this background overlay. So I'm just gonna delete this image right here. And let's change the opacity because I'm not planning to use this overlay at all. And actually we can disable this overlay by clicking on this button right here on this paintbrush. And now I just want to add a background image. All right, so I'm gonna click right here. I'm gonna select classic and I'm gonna choose image. So I already uploaded some images, so I wouldn't waste your time. Uh, those images that I'm using right here are downloaded from one of the stock photos website that I showed you previously. All right, so this is the image I'm planning to use. I'm just gonna select this image and I'm gonna click select. All right, so it doesn't look good, I understand, but just bear with me. All right, so let's choose that position is gonna be center center. So now let's choose display size. So let's click right here and let's choose cover. So now it's covering whole this section, all right. And now we are not going to use this image. So let's click the right mouse button and let's delete this uh, image right here. Okay, this is how it looks. All right, now this whole section is a bit narrow. I want to make this whole section right here a bit wider. So I'm gonna click right here once again and now I'm gonna go to advanced settings. All right, so as you can see, we have some padding adjustments. So if I'm gonna move this up like that, all right, I'm gonna make this one 145 
and I'm gonna change bottom to 145 as well and it's a bit bigger right now so right now I'm just gonna replace the text right here and I'm gonna add some of my text that it's gonna say that it's a toy store and I will add a short description about my toy store so that's exactly what I'm gonna do all right, so I just added my text and this is how it looks. And again, your situation is probably completely different. So it's gonna be up to you what you want to include. But I usually like to include something interesting and fun. And uh, now this is how it looks. All right, what's next? All right, so right here, this is the button. And we should do some changes to this button because I don't like the style of this button. So just click on the button right here. And as you remember, all settings related to style can be done right here. But like I always always like to say don't be afraid to explore everything yourself and uh, try various different settings adjustments to see what works for you the best and do not be afraid because all changes are reversible all right so let's go to style adjustments and I can add the color I can change the color of this button so if I would click right here I can choose the color and I have one color prepared for myself in advance as you remember we had this coolers tool that generates colors matching colors so I have this color copied to my note and I'm just gonna paste this code right here. And as you can see, this is how it looks. I feel like it looks quite good. And now this button looks good, but it's not functional, all right? So if I would go right here, as you can see, link is set to hashtag, and it just means it's inactive. So let's add a link to this button. So once our visitor clicks on this link, I want him to go to all the products I have. So basically to a shop page. So to find your shop page, just go to your website. So in my case, it's baconavocados.com and I can tell you that the default version of the shop page is supposed to be slash shop so that's exactly what I'm gonna enter and let's hit enter and let's see if it's our shop page all right so this is our shop page and as you can see the permalink says instead of shop it says shop dash two so that means we should do some changes to this page so as you remember we should go to our dashboard and it's a page so we have to do changes to a page so if I would go to pages I would select all pages of course it's not crucial or anything like that but I like to make things look professional and good and I don't want to anything look unprofessional so in my opinion that having this number two at the end of this page it, it just doesn't look good maybe in your case it's not gonna show up like that but let's say if it's gonna show up just like that we can do changes so as you remember we have our shop page and this is our shop page it even says that it's set to display products so it says shop page so let's click quick edit and let's see what we have all right we have the slug that it's shop dash two so we can delete the end of this slug and let's keep it like that and let's click update all right now we can click view and it looks good it looks as it's supposed to look all right but just in case you experience some issues I know it has happened to me in the past once you click view you might see that it's just showing an empty page so if that happens to you your solution to this problem is you should go to the dashboard you should go to your pages one more time and then you should click on this page right here edit and then you should click preview all right, let's click preview a new tab and everything should work. If that doesn't help, I'm going to show you another solution. So you should go to your dashboard. You should go right here and you should click purge all cache and that should solve your problem. I'm not saying that this is going to happen to you, but if this happens to you, you will know how to solve this issue and you shouldn't have this problem. Uh, I know this happened to me once in the past and I know one person whom I helped to build an online store, uh, this happened as well. So I just wanted to show you how you can solve this issue, but it doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to happen to you as well. All right, so now let's go to all pages one more time and all we want to do is we want to know the URL of our shop page. So let's click view one more time. And now we can copy this URL right here because we're gonna use it for our button. So now we can close this window and now we can go back to our button right here. At the moment it's inactive, but once we paste our URL of our shop, it becomes active. All right, so now we are done with this section right here. 
But before we move on to the next section of our page, let's make sure that everything looks great on other devices, not just on a desktop device, but on mobile devices and on tablets as well. So if I would click right here, responsive mode, I can select if I want to check how it's gonna look on mobile device. All right, it looks good, but it's hard to read text. So we have to do some adjustments to this section right here one more time. But now when we are doing those changes here, we are only doing changes to the mobile version of our website. So, all right, let's go back to style and now we can select our image. So let's select our image one more time. It is gonna be the same image. So let's click select. And now we have to change the position. So let's select position and let's choose custom. All right. So now let's play around not with this axis. All right. So I'm just going to keep zero. Let's move this one to the left until it looks like that. All right. So now it makes sense. It looks much better. Okay, let's make sure that it looks good on tablets as well. On tablets, it looks good, so we can keep it as it is. We don't really need to do any changes right here. All right, let's go back to our desktop view. And all right, let's scroll down what's next. So we have best selling product section right here. And actually, we're not going to do too many changes to this section because it's quite a simple section. And our main goal is to change the padding, the margin of this section, because as you can see, it's a bit too low compared to this section right here. So if I would click right here, I will be doing changes to this whole section right here. So let's go to advanced settings and as you can see padding top it's set to 140 and let's make it 90 let's see how it's gonna look when we're gonna set this one to 90 and I think it looks much better and what's next now we have to feature our product so let's click on this area marked in gray color and as you can see now we have this short code it says that products limit so it's gonna display only four products and it's gonna display only four columns visibility featured so it's gonna display featured products and I'm gonna show you how you can feature your products and it says that it's gonna take products from the category groceries so so as you remember this category came with our starter template and now we have different categories than the, the ones it came with so let's go back to our website one more time and let's check our categories what categories do we have so let's go to dashboard and let's go to products let's select categories and as you can see those are the categories we have so simply all you have to do is just copy the categories you want to use so for example i'm gonna copy this category right here just a slug and i'm gonna go back to our home page here and i'm gonna paste this category category right here instead of groceries this is the category I'm gonna use and now once we save everything and once we set that we want to display a certain products I will show you how that's done in later stages we're gonna display only products from the wooden toys category you can add more categories just uh, type comma space and add another category just a second, let's make sure that I'm not mistaking anything. Let's go to this one right here. And as you can see, uh, all categories are separated by comma. So just like that, you can add more categories. Now let's work on this section, on this part right here. Let's fix both parts uh, for featured products. So again, let's add wooden toys. And now let's add another category. So I'm just gonna copy costumes category right here. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna paste this category here. All right, and just like that, I can actually add more categories. Let's say I could add bath toys as well. So I'm just gonna copy this slug. I will go back to this window right here. I'm gonna add a comma. I'm gonna make a space and I'm gonna paste this category as well. So now in trending products, we have three categories set. And once we select that, we want our products featured right here from those categories. And like I said, in later stages, I will show you how that's done. And those products will be displayed right here. If we would go back right here, now we only have in this part, only products from the category wooden toys. So once we select that we want feature toys from that category, those toys and those toys only from this category will be 
be displayed right here. All right, in later stages, we're gonna play around with those adjustments, but right now, I think everything looks good. Okay, so we are actually done with the second section as well. So as you remember, this was our second section and it has four products to display. Later, I'm gonna add more products. Actually, I'm just gonna duplicate some of the products uh, just to show you how that works. In your case, you will add all of your products yourself and you will be able to play around with those adjustments. All right, let's go back and let's play around, uh, not play around, let's work on this section right here. So in this section, I'm gonna showcase that I offer free shipping and uh, I'm planning to offer free shipping for orders above 50 only. So all I have to do right here is just type zero. All right, so now it's good. And what else? What else? I'm planning to showcase that uh, huge savings. All right, I'm just gonna keep this one huge savings because I'm planning to have low prices. So it's basically the same. And fast delivery. So next to free shipping, I'm gonna include fast delivery. So I'm just gonna replace this text right here. I'm gonna add fast delivery. All right, so I just changed the text. And as you can see, now I say that I do free shipping fast delivery, huge savings. But again, this whole editing part, the information you want to include is all up to you. It's just like in my case, I like to offer free shipping for orders above, let's say $50. And I usually focus on fast delivery. I usually like to ship products within 24 hours if that's possible. And I usually don't charge my customers much for products. You know, I'm not too greedy. But again, it's up to you how you want to do this. What uh, what way you want to go but I just wanted to show you that this is how you can do it and uh, all settings all the text everything like that will be up to you but as you know we are practicing right now so your final work is probably gonna be different from mine all right so now what is that I don't like so as you can see this icon right here doesn't represent that it says fast delivery so we can replace this icon so if I would click on this icon right here as you can see I have some options for this icon. So I can click icon library and I can look for shipping. All right, I think this icon will work and I'm gonna select this icon. I'm gonna click insert. All right, so now it makes sense. But now I don't like how this section looks. It's too dark. It just doesn't look too good with my uh, general design. So I'm gonna click right here to do changes to this whole section. And uh, the style adjustments are done here, as you remember. And as you can see, we have background color. It's a bit too dark. I want to change it and I want to make this color the same as this one. So I'm gonna take the color sampler and I'm gonna click right here. And I think I'm gonna use this color. All right, it looks much better. And now what's next? What could we do next? we could change those columns, the style of those columns, because they are too dark. All right, let's click on this column. Of course, we can click the right mouse button and we can click edit column. And as you know, adjustments to style are done in this tab right here. And now it's activated as a background overlay. So I'm gonna expand this one. And as you can see, it's set to 0 0.9. And if we would move this a bit to the left to 0 0.4, I think it looks better but now our icon doesn't look too good it's hard to see what it is so let's click on this icon let's go to style and we can change the color so if I would use color picker I think I could go with this color let's see how it's gonna look all right it looks much better okay so let's keep it this way and I'm gonna do the same with this column so I can click right here and I can go to style and as you remember background overlay and I set it this to 0 0.4. So yeah, just like that. All right, so I'm gonna click on this icon. I'm gonna go to style. I'm gonna choose the color. I'm gonna select color sampler. I'm gonna choose this color, boom. And this is how it looks. Okay, I'm gonna do the same. So I can click here or I can click the right mouse button, edit column, and I can go to style. And again, background overlay, 0 0.4, yes. And let's change the color of this icon. All right, let's change the color right here. Okay, let's choose it just like that. And boom, this is how it looks. All right, now I feel like it looks much better.
Okay, like I said to you before, don't be afraid to explore everything yourself, because this way you will learn how to use Elementor much better. Alright, so what's next? Now I'm planning to showcase my categories right here. Alright, so how I'm gonna do this? It's very simple. My first mission is I have to change the text right here. So I'm just gonna type that this is wooden toys, right here Montessori toys, educational toys and bath toys. And right here I'm gonna add some text. So as you can see, once I click on this section, not section, but on this element right here, I can click on this element itself, I can click right here. And as you can see, I can change the title. The title is here, Farm Fresh Fruits and Descriptions. So instead of using those descriptions right here and the titles, I'm gonna add my own to represent my stock, to represent my categories. All right, so as you can see, I replaced the text and now it kind of represents my brand, my business, my online store. So we haven't done yet because we have the images right here that do not match uh, the things that we say right here. So to replace the image, let's click right here to edit this whole column itself. Let's go to style and let's go to background overlay. Probably it's set for background overlay. Yes, it is. So let's click on this image and wooden toys. So I'm going to use this image and I'm just going to click select. All right. It looks good, doesn't it? And let's do the same with this one. So let's click right here. Let's go to style and let's go to background overlay. Let's click on this image. And now let's select this one right here. All right. Let's click select. All right. It looks good. And let's do the same with the third one. Let's go to style. Let's choose the image. And this time the image is going to be this one. Let's click select. Okay, just a second. Why it's not updating? Just one more time. Let's go to this image. Maybe let's try with this one. Okay, it's not saving for some reason, but it's supposed to save. All right, let's click right here one more time. Let's replace this image here. Let's choose the image the one I'm planning to use and uh, just a second let's select that we want to work on our positioning so for some reason it's not updating but no worries about that we're gonna fix that right away all right so for now let's keep it as it is and let's go to work on the last column that is right here let's go to style and background overlay and let's choose the image. So this time, this is going to be the image I want to use. All right. So now it works. So our goal now is to make this image go a bit lower. All right. So right now, let's choose position. Let's select custom. And let's play around with this axis right here. And yeah, I think it looks good. All right. Let's try one more time to work on this right here. All right, let's make sure that we have selected the image. All right, it doesn't work, but no worries about that. Sometimes things like that can happen, but it doesn't mean that we will not be able to solve this issue. All right, before we do any changes, let's make sure that everything looks good on other devices. All right, let's click right here. All right, it doesn't look too good, but again, we will be able to do changes. All right, let's click right here. And on a tablet, everything's gonna look great. As you can see, everything's gonna look great, except maybe right here, we could do some changes. So as you can see right now, it's displaying like this and it just doesn't look too good. We could make everything to display in one line. So let's go right here and let's go to advanced settings here. And just a second, if we're going to play around with bottom, no, it's not helping. So let's go back. Let's keep to 25. So things like that do happen. And sometimes when you are building a website, it's all about problem solving. But no worries about that. We can fix this issue. So if you are doing a changes to the section and it's not helping, the things are not changing as you wish they were changing. So that means your second option is to start doing changes to columns before you do any adjustments to, let's say, not columns, but to elements. So first you do changes to the section right here. And if it's not helping, then you go to the column right here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's select the first column here and let's go to layout adjustments. All right, so let's change the column size instead of 50. Let's make it, let's say 100. Let's do 100. All right, so let's make it 100. And let's go to this column as well. 
and instead of 50 let's make it 100 as well and i think it's gonna look much better than the previous version all right 100 looks good and now we have to do the same with this one all right let's go to layout adjustments and let's set it to 100 all right let's make it 100 and now everything looks much better all right so now we have done some changes to the desktop version as you can see desktop version stayed the same no matter that we did some changes to tablet and yeah now it looks good except this image is right here the same so we're gonna fix that a bit later and let's go to tablet let's make sure that everything looks good all right everything looks great and let's go to mobile view all right in mobile view it looks good as well but right now just a second let's scroll down as you can see here we have some issues with our categories so before we add uh, urls to these buttons let's make sure that everything looks good on each device so what we want to do here is we want to click right here and let's go to layout adjustments and just a second no let's go to advanced tab and here we have to do some padding adjustments all right just a second let's make this one just let's keep going let's keep going nope it's just too much right now all right let's make it 60 and it still doesn't look too good but again no worries like i said it sometimes when you're building a website it's all about the problem solving so obviously what's our next step is we want to unlink values and let's see what we can get if we're gonna do some adjustments to bottom right here so if i'm gonna keep increasing this value right here as you can see this column is expanding and i think i'm gonna keep it to 160 and i'm gonna do basically the same with each other column but before i do that i just want to make sure that this image right here is properly positioned so as you remember the changes that are to images and anything like that are done right here in style tab and as you remember we set this image right here so it was set as background overlay and let's make sure that we have have the same image set so this is the image we want to use let's click select and now let's choose the position so let's choose custom and now let's change not this axis just a second let's keep it this one as zero and let's do changes to this one all right now everything looks much better all right so next we have to change this column right here so let's click right here and let's go to advanced and as you remember first of all we set everything to 60 so let's do the same right here let's make sure that we have set the value 260 let's unlink other values and now bottom adjustments are supposed to be 160 so this way we're gonna fix every single column right here and everything is gonna look just great all right so instead of 100 and over 60 let's make sure that it's 160 and now once again we can do changes to the image so let's go to background overlay let's make sure that we have the same image right here just in case it just disappears and now we have to change the position so let's select uh, custom right here and as you remember we have to change the numbers here and i think it looks good i think it looks good and we can do the same with educational toys so let's click educational toys right here and uh, the image is set so just one more time let's try this one more time let's try to set this image right here let's see if it's gonna change now it's not changing but like i said you before i will show you how to fix this issue all right so now our goal is to change padding so just like the previous time we set it to 60 let's make sure that it's set to 60 as well every single value now we can unlink values and now we can actually set this one to 160 so instead of increasing the number i'm just gonna add one and now it's set to 160 all right so now let's work on this last column as you see in my case this image is not changing but i will show you how you can fix this issue maybe in your case everything's gonna be fine and you won't need to do any changes but in my case as you can see we have some bugs all right so let's select the last column right here let's go to advanced tab and as you remember we must have 60 to each of these values so we have to add 60 to each of these values and now it looks much better let's unlink this one and bottom is supposed to be 116.
Okay, so now everything makes much more sense, but before we leave, we still have to do changes to this image. So let's go to style, background overlay, just like the previous time. And uh, let's make sure that we have selected the right image. Okay, let's select this image one more time and position. All right, so the position is supposed to be here just like that. I think it looks good. If it doesn't look too good for you, you can still play around with various adjustments. And like I said, don't get discouraged. Don't be afraid to play around with various tools, various settings, because this way you will learn how to use this uh, editor much better. So let's make sure that everything looks good. So the first section, yes, it looks good. Best selling products. Later, we're going to showcase our best selling products. We have... Uh, this information right here that is properly displayed now we have our categories everything looks good and right here we're gonna have our trending products so we are almost done with all the home page editing and let's go back to tablet view let's make sure that everything looks good right here and yeah almost everything looks here good but right here we have to do some changes to this image as you can see it's not properly aligned so let's go to style let's make sure that we have this image selected and just a second let's click this image let's select this image and now we have to set to custom so it's already set to custom and now we have to change this axis right here all right now everything makes sense all right except maybe we could you know change this right here instead of uh, showing everything in, an, in the new line we could delete the space and we can show everything like that so just a second let's make sure that this looks like this as well if everything's properly aligned and everything looks good i think everything looks good i like the way everything looks let's make sure that every single column is properly aligned because as you can see this column has a space in between this column and this one as well but this one doesn't have it so let's check what is the issue so let's start with the first column right here and let's go to advanced and let's see what we have margin we don't have any margin adjustments here how about this one let's check if this has any margin adjustments it has 15 15 so i think it's good and how about this one it doesn't have any adjustments so we should try to make no let's keep it zero and i think this one should have some other changes other values so this one should have 15 all right so this one didn't have 15 and bottom we could also set to 15 as well all right so now everything looks properly aligned and how about on mobile view one more time let's check if mobile view looks good all right so now everything looks quite good and yeah if you don't like the way it looks the sizing and everything you can do changes as well to make everything fit perfectly but just because to save you some time i'm gonna keep everything as it is and uh, yeah actually i'm just too picky i cannot leave this one like that so i'm gonna go back to style and i'm gonna go to overlay and i'm gonna change the positioning all right i think <laughs> this way is gonna be much better all right let's go back to desktop view so let's make sure that every single view looks as it's supposed to look all right so now everything looks good we have our first section that is right here as you remember it has a hero image and everything but actually we are not done yet because we still have to do some adjustments all right so before we leave and save everything we still have to add buttons right here okay as you can see the things are not properly aligned for some reason just a second yeah we can actually you know what we can actually delete uh, this right here montessori it's kind of obvious that it's gonna be montessori toys and educational toys maybe let's change this for education all right so now everything is properly aligned uh, just a second let's make sure that this one is in the place and once again let's go to advanced settings right here and no not advanced we have to go to style background overlay and we have to do some adjustments here all right so now everything is perfect 
Okay, so the next thing that we could do and we have to is we have to add buttons. We have to add URLs to these buttons right here. So if you want to change the color of this button, you can easily do that in style adjustments as you remember. But I think this color, it kind of looks good. I think I like this color and I'm just gonna keep it this color as it is just to save you some time. And now we should add URLs. So as you remember, we have our categories right here so these are wooden toys i'm just gonna click view so we have bath toys i'm just gonna click right here educational toys view right here and montessori toys view one more time all right so now i'm just gonna copy this url wooden toys and i'm gonna go back this is the category of wooden toys and i'm gonna paste this url right here so i'm gonna do the same with each of these urls right here with each of these buttons as well okay so i just finished adding urls to my buttons and now everything should function properly all right so i think i like how everything looks and now i can click update so let's click update and now we can go right here view page all right so this is how everything looks and now let's try to solve an issue with this image right here so maybe this didn't happen to you but if this happened to you as well our first solution to this problem is always clearing cache so to clear a cache you should go to dashboard and you should go right here breeze and you should click purge all cache so this solution works with almost any scenario with any issue that might happen to you so let's say you're working on a blog or let's say you're working on your home page and you save uh, the changes and uh, you cannot see those changes go live so in that case you should go to your dashboard you should go right here and you should click purge all cache usually this solves the problem let's see if this helped us all right, let's scroll down. No, it didn't help us. So in this case, what we could do, we could actually go to our page builder Elementor and let's try to figure out what caused the problem. Okay, I have one solution ready and let's just make sure that uh, once we click right here, we have this image set. So we have this image. Oh, I know what happened. You know what happened? We just need to delete this image and you know what happened we changed the wrong image so this is the image we were supposed to change i'm very sorry about that but like i said it's sometimes all about the problem solving all right so now we can change the position all right so again let's choose custom and let's change the position right here and now everything should be good so you gotta be careful when you are working on sections on columns just gotta be careful and you gotta uh, be sure where you are making changes as you can see we have background right here and we have background overlay so you gotta be sure where you are making those changes because you might get confused once you see that it's not working all right so we fixed this issue and now we can click update and you shouldn't feel like i wasted your time because it's actually a blessing in disguise because uh, once uh, those things occur like once you add uh, an image or something like that and uh, those changes do not appear i just showed you that you should clear cache once you go to your dashboard and usually this fixes all the issues all right let's make sure that everything functions properly so for example if i'm gonna click shop i want to go to our shop page all right it works okay let's go back to our home page and as you can see right now we have best-selling products and we have trending products but we do not see any products right here so what we should do so like i mentioned you previously i'm gonna show you how you can add those products right here so now let's go to the dashboard one more time and let's go to the list of all our products let's go to the products right here and as you can see next to our products we have those star symbols so that means if i'm gonna activate this star right here this product is featured all right and if i'm gonna activate this star right here as well this product is also featured right now and if i would go to my home page we should see our products all right as you can see the products are showing we can see them right here and uh, everything looks quite good everything looks great and uh, as you can see just a second yeah those products are showing up and uh, it looks good doesn't it 
except right here we can see that we have different variations for this product it's good i guess it's good because you can check how it looks maybe it doesn't look too good right here but again if this happens you know you can change that and you can hide those settings but in this case to hide those settings you would need probably a premium version of this uh, theme but there's a workaround uh, i believe you won't gonna have all the products that have those uh, variations right here so instead of just selecting featured product that has a variations you could uh, go back to your dashboard right here and since you know that this product this particular product has variations uh, let's go to our products right here all products all right as you can see this product has variations we could deselect this product so if we're gonna deselect this product it's not gonna be featured all right so now to make everything look much better and easier to understand uh, i'm not gonna add every single product you know i'm not gonna add every single product you know what i'm gonna do instead of adding every single product uh, one by one i'm just gonna go right here and i'm gonna duplicate products so i'm just gonna duplicate more versions of this product i'm gonna change the title and i'm gonna change the featured image and once i'm finished with doing that we will go back to our home page to see how it looks now all right so i just added some more products i simply duplicated the previous products and i changed the image but i kept the price the same so just to show you how your home page is gonna look once you add more products so as you remember to feature a specific product you just have to activate a star right here to make it featured simple as that and now we can go back to our site and as you remember this is the first section of featured products and right here we only activated to show products from the category of wooden toys so now it's only showing the products from this category and the products that we activated as featured from that category and right here i'm displaying products that are from wooden toys costumes and if i'm not mistaking anything i probably added another category that was bath toys so once you select that you want to feature products from the specific categories those products are gonna be only featured from that category if you have activated this product as featured in the products and if you haven't added this category to this code right here and you select that product that you want to feature that product and this product is from completely different different category then you add it right here it's not going to be featured all right so this is how it looks and before we leave let's make sure that everything looks perfect so let's click edit with elementor for the last time and like i told you before once we click right here as you can see we have that it says wooden toys category so no matter if you're gonna select uh, that we want feature products from other categories those products not gonna show up here just because this category wasn't uh, added right here so if you want you can add all the categories one by one separated with commas and in this case right here as you can see once i click here we have more categories wooden toys costumes bath toys so once i selected that i want to show this costume as well featured it's going to display right here it's not going to show up here because i haven't uh, added that i want to display products from category costumes so i just wanted to show you how that works okay so let's make sure that everything looks great so right here with this element we could do some padding adjustments if i would go right here let's make sure that bottom padding just a second let's set bottom padding to 30 let's make it 30 and right here once we are in this whole section now we are doing as you remember changes to this whole section let's do some changes to padding but this time to top instead of 90 let's make it 60 or 50 i guess 50 is gonna look better all right so now everything looks much better and just a second let's make sure that this looks as it's supposed to look let's click apply all right let's scroll down and this is how it looks and it looks good let's go here one more time and let's make sure that everything is shown properly and let's go here and once again let's change the padding right here for this section because it's too far away from this section right here okay let's go to advanced and top as you remember top we set to 60 or 50 all right let's set it to 60 60 should be good 
All right, let's make it 50, all right? 50 should be good. And right here, let's do some changes to this heading, just like we did with the previous heading. And now we want to do changes to bottom. So let's make bottom 30, all right? Just like that. Okay, now we can also check how it's gonna look on mobile devices, if everything's gonna look good. And yeah, everything looks good. And uh, this is how it's gonna look on mobile devices. And this is how it's gonna look on uh, mobile devices as well. So if I would go to this view, this is how it's gonna look. Uh, we can actually do changes. No, we cannot do changes just to tablet right here but we can do changes to all views, tablet, desktop and mobile included. And those are universal changes. But again, this is the biggest downside of uh, free themes because you don't have a lot of customization options. So you have to improvise in a lot of cases. But as you can see, the final results are quite good, but it's a huge downside when you are working with a, a free theme. So if I would go to view page one more time, and as you can see, this is how it looks. For some reason, it's not showing add to cart. And it just happens. This is the biggest downside when you are working with free themes. Like I said, you're going to have way less customization options. And when I'm talking about customization options, I not just mean that you won't be able to change certain colors or something like that. I mean that you will not be able to do some important changes like positioning or anything else similar. So that's the biggest downside of using free theme. But as you can see, it looks quite good, doesn't it? It makes sense, it looks good, everything is in place. And in later stages, we're gonna do some more uh, adjustments. We will see how we can change the colors right here. And yeah, it should look much better. But uh, to be honest, even with the free theme, I think it looks quite good, doesn't it? And later we're gonna work on the header right here. We're gonna do some changes. And of course, we're gonna do some other adjustments. We will see what can we change. But like I said, this is the biggest downside when you are working with a free theme because you don't have a lot of customization options. So that's why I always recommend to choose a premium option and in later section when we're gonna work with the flat some theme you will see it yourself that uh, compared to this theme it's way more customizable but we can still get quite good results so this is it for this lesson now you should know how to edit your home page and once again the whole editing part for your home page is completely up to you but this is the blueprint this is the template uh, the layout I like to use myself and it just works all right, so this is it for now. In this lesson, we're gonna create our contact page. So we are done with our homepage. Later on, we're gonna do some style adjustments, but those style adjustments will be done uh, globally for this website. So those adjustments will be done not just to homepage, but for all other pages as well. So now we can close this layout uh, since, like I said, we are done with our homepage. And let's scroll down to our contact page. So this is our contact page. This is how it looks. And it doesn't look good because it doesn't have any information in it. But we're gonna change that right away. So we could add uh, some contact details like our phone number, social media icons, and maybe your address if you have a physical store. But if you don't have, it's gonna be up to you what information you want to include. And of course, I usually like to include a contact form to my contact page so my visitors, my customers can easily leave me a message without needing to go to their email inbox and send me a message. All right, so what we want to do right now, we want to go to our dashboard and I want you to install one plugin. Uh, this plugin will be used to add forms. So let's go to plugins right here and let's click add new. And the plugin you want to look for is called Fluent Forms. All right, so this is the plugin we want to use. I've been using this plugin for quite a while and I know that it works well. All right, let's click activate. 
and now before we create our first form I uh, would recommend you to delete a plugin that came with our starter templates with our Astra theme and this plugin is called WP Forms. It's also a quite good option for creating forms but it's very limited and there's a huge chance that you will need to purchase a paid plan just to get all the features of this plugin. Alright so we deactivated this plugin and now we can click delete. Let's click delete and now our Fluent Forms plugin is active. So to find our forms we have to go right here and what we want to do right now is we want to go right here new form and we're gonna create a new contact form so it's gonna be a simple and straightforward contact form so we're gonna use this form we're gonna use this template and now it's gonna be up to you what uh, fields you want to include but I usually like to include just the name field I don't like to include the last name and uh, of course uh, as you can see our users will have an option if they want to add their first name or not but they're gonna need to add their email address and their message it's just because this is how things work because you will need to reply to them all right so now we have this form kind of ready but we should do some changes we could change the style of this button and we could change the color of this button if we would go to advanced settings no not advanced settings but in submit button and we should go to button style and let's select color all right so if we're gonna select no style if we're gonna select red button and yeah I think the red color will look great with our our uh, theme with our style and uh, if it's not the option you want to use you can use any other option that will work for you I'm gonna go with red and I think it looks good so before we save this form let's make sure that we are done with all right let's stay on this page let's click save and before we leave this form uh, let's do some settings right here so right here as you can see confirmation settings so once our visitor, once our customer or potential customer types a message and he sends us a message, he will see this message. Thank you for your message. We will get in touch with you shortly. All right. So we can keep it as it is. And right here, email notifications. So right here, you want to be notified once a customer leaves you a message. So let's activate this one. And now we have to do some adjustments right here. Those are very important. And you want to go right here, send to email. So it's up to you what email you want to use, but I highly recommend you to use your business email. The one you created previously from the previous lessons where I showed you how to create your business email address on Zoho. So just type this email address that you created because right here, you don't want to use your WordPress administrator's email address because in this case uh, the forms won't work and you will not be notified to your email address that someone left you a form. So just type the email address you created previously. In my case it's gonna be support at baconavocados.com. All right, so once you have done this, we can scroll down, save changes. All right, let's go up. And now let's go to all forms and uh, just a second yeah this is the form we just created and we can copy this short code right here because we're gonna need this code a bit later and uh, just a second let's preview this form one more time and let's make sure that this is the form we created yes it is this is the form and now we can go to our pages let's go to all pages and let's find our contact page so this is our contact page and you want to click right here edit and since we have Elementor installed to our website, we can create this page using Elementor. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, our contact page is going to look much better. So let's click edit with Elementor. And uh, the big advantage of having an Astra theme and starter templates is that we can import a pre-made template. So we wouldn't need to create everything ourselves, like by creating sections and dragging elements. We can actually click right here and we could select blocks. And now let's choose that we are looking for contact. Let's choose contact. And now it's completely up to you what uh, type of uh, form you want to use, what type of layout you want to use. But in this case, I believe I can go with this one. Let's choose this one and let's select import block. 
All right, so we successfully imported this contact block and as you can see, this is how it looks. But just in case it didn't work for you properly, sometimes in rare occasions, uh, the things just get stuck. And uh, instead of waiting, you can simply refresh the page itself, the whole page itself and everything should work fine. All right, so now we have this block right here and we have to add our contact form. So this is where we're gonna add our contact form and to add this form, we want to look for element that is called short code. Just a second, let's scroll down. This is the element we want to use. So just drag it and drop it and right here, just paste the code that we basically copied previously when we created our form. All right. So this is how it looks. And right here we could replace the text and it could say send us a message. Okay, it looks great. Now you can replace the phone number and if you don't have address to display or you don't want any address to display, the second thing that is important and that I like to display myself is my email address. So my business email address. So I'm just gonna type email address. All right, so I just added my email address. I always like to include my email address just in case uh, the customer weren't able to contact using this form, but it doesn't really happen, but it's good to include your email address. All right, in social icons right here, you can add your social profile. So simply click on those icons right here. And here, once you click on the profile, you can add your URL of your profile. So simply, paste it right here. If you have a Facebook page, just paste the URL of your Facebook page. If you want to include LinkedIn, you can paste your profile right here. If you don't want to use LinkedIn and you want to use, let's say, Instagram, you can click on this icon and just use search to look for Instagram. All right. And just like that, you'll find Instagram icon. Let's click insert. And this is how it looks. And if you don't like the size of these icons, you can change that right here and you can adjust the size. All right. Just like that, you can make your icons much bigger and I think it looks good. You can also change the colors of those icons. It's going to be completely up to you. All right. Let's click update. And once we have updated this page, we can click right here and let's select view page. Let's see how it looks. All right. And as you can see, this is how it looks. This is our fully functioning contact us page. So using this page, our visitors will be able to reach out to us and we will be able to help them out with any questions. And before we leave, maybe we could change the text right here. Instead of saying submit form, we could say send message. All right, let's go right here to the dashboard one more time. And as you remember, we created this contact form using Fluent Forms and we want to select all forms. And now let's click edit right here. And let's click right here, submit form. And instead of submit form, let's say send message. All right, let's click save form and let's go back to our site and let's see how it looks now. Let's click contact and as you can see, send message. Everything looks great and uh, I could actually test this form out. So we could type the name, email address, subject and message. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, let's hit send message. All right, so it says, thank you for your message. We will get in touch with you shortly. So it should work. And right now I'm going to open my email account and I'm just going to test if this works to see if I received a notification of a submitted form. And as you can see, we successfully received a notification email that someone left us a form. So don't forget that it is extremely important to add your other email address instead of using the WordPress administrator's email address. So just a second, we will go back right here. Let's go to our forms just to make sure that you have entered the other email address, because if you haven't done this, those forms will not work. And by the way, uh, once someone leaves a form, you will see right here, not right here, but here as well in entries. And here in entries, you will see that someone left you a form, but you will also be notified to your email address. So most importantly, don't forget that in all forms, once you're here, this is the form we just created. And uh, once you go to settings of this form, 
don't forget that you want to be notified to other email address not the same as you use to log into your wordpress dashboard otherwise it will not work so once again let's make sure that right here send to email is your business email address because in any case it's the best to keep everything in one place in the same place and to receive a notification email of a placed form of a message to your business email address is just a good practice because once you get a message once you are notified that someone left you a message you can easily copy this email address and you can uh, reply to this person right away simple as that all right so make sure that you have added your email address right here all right so basically that's all for this lesson now you know how to create your contact us page with an active contact form in this lesson we are going to create our main menu and i usually like to include my product categories in the main menu and uh, display this main menu right here in our header so that's exactly what we're gonna do in this lesson we're just gonna create our main menu and in this menu we're gonna include categories product categories because this is a quite simple layout and it's very easy to understand for our visitors all right so let's go to the dashboard and before we create our menu first we should know the urls of our categories so let's go to products right here and let's open categories in a new tab okay let's go to the categories and as you can see this is our category tree this is what categories we have and we're just gonna copy the urls of these categories and we're gonna add them to our menu all right so let's go back to this tab right here and now we should go to appearance right here and let's select menus as you can see right here we have menu editor and uh, if you would go right here as you can see we have more menus not just the one menu that is right here main menu we have quick link secondary menu and if you would click right here you could create as many menus actually as you want it's completely up to you but in this course and in this lesson I'm gonna show you how I do it myself and if you will ever want to create a new menu you can simply click right here and this new menu will pop up here and you can add any type of menu if i would go right here manage locations we're not gonna do anything here because uh, once we're gonna edit our header and our footer we basically be able to access all those settings right here but in a different location so we don't need to do anything here and okay let's go back to menus and uh, as you can see right here if you would select uh, menu location so you can select menu location but right now everything is good as it is by default all right so our goal right now is to create a new uh, menu item so we can add this menu item to our menu all right so let's use custom links so right here you want to add the url of your category so let's go back to categories and let's open this category in a new tab as well let's click view and now we want to copy this category and let's go back to our menus and just paste this url right here and add the title of your category all right let's click add to menu and as you can see we successfully added a new menu item now we can actually delete this menu item that was created by default because we're not gonna use it and we can click right here remove all right so let's go back to all categories now we can close this category and let's open bath toys in a new tab just like we did with the wooden toys and again let's copy this category let's go back to our menu editor and right here just paste the url and give the title to this category all right let's click add to menu all right as you can see we successfully added two menu items and if you will ever want to create any different type of menu you can also include uh, pages right here from the list as you can see you can even include blog posts if you will ever want to do that and you can also include woocommerce endpoints again this one is going to be up to you maybe in the future you will decide that you want to do some changes to your current menu version but for now let's focus on adding custom links and just like i added those two right here i'm gonna finish adding all the rest of the categories to my menu all right as you can see i just finished adding my all categories to my menu and this is how it looks 
And if you don't like how it looks, you don't like the positioning of each element, you can swap places. If you would move, let's say this element right here, it's gonna be the first element. You can also create categories and subcategories. So for example, let's say if you have right here educational toys or maybe not educational toys, let's say, let's go to painting right here. So let's say our painting would be the main category and you're gonna have subcategories like child categories for brushes, for paper or something else similar. And you want to make this category right here the main one and you want to create a drop down menu. So in this case, you would have to take your subcategory. Let's say this is the subcategory with paint brushes. And if we would move it to the right side, just like that, we will be able to create a drop down menu. Let's not do this right now because we don't have any parent and uh, child categories everything is good as it is so we can move it back and i'm just gonna swap places with this one right here and i'm gonna make this one the last and i feel like it looks good i feel like it looks good and now we can click save menu all right let's click one more time save menu all right so now we can preview how it looks so i'm just gonna open this one in a new tab one more time and let's click and let's see how it looks and yeah as you can see now we have our main menu ready so this is how it looks and later stages when we're gonna edit our header we're gonna change the positioning of this menu right here we can position this menu to the right or to the center it's gonna be completely up to you but for now as you can see we successfully created our main menu so if i would click on costumes category right here as you can see i go to my costumes category all right, let's go back to the home page of our website and uh, just to show you an example how the drop down menu works. So let's go back to our menu editor and let's say I'm going to make costumes uh, category my parent category and child category is going to be bath toys. In your case, of course, it's going to be uh, different categories and subcategories, but I'm just showing you this, how it's going to look. All right, so I'm going to take educational toys as well as a child category for costumes that that is a parent category in this case and I'm gonna move this one to the right side and now I'm just gonna click save menu and we're gonna check how it looks and you will see yourself that by moving menu elements to the right side we can create drop down menus all right let's check how it looks and if I would hover over costumes as you can see we have a drop down menu so just like that you can also create a drop down menus but in this case I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna make it as it was previously all right so we are back to the first version of our menu and as you can see everything looks great and just like that you can easily create your menus In this lesson, we're gonna start customizing our WordPress theme. So to start customizing it, you have to click right here, customize. All right, so as you can see, this is how our customization options look. And sometimes in rare occasions, uh, once you click on customize, it could freeze and uh, it might not load. So in this case, try closing your browser and opening it one more time. But I think it shouldn't happen to you. But again, if this happens, if once you click on customize, you're not seeing anything and just freezes uh, try refreshing your browser or restarting your computer and it should help it just happened to me a couple of times but probably it was the fault of my computer all right so let's check the sidebar of all customization options so as you can see if we even have this uh, notice right here if you would use astra pro version you would have more customization options so this is the biggest downside when you are using free themes is that you are lacking customization options but in any case no matter what uh, type of theme you are working on you still can squeeze out uh, this theme and you can get good results so that's exactly what we're gonna do in this section and in later section where I'm gonna show you how to edit everything with a premium theme you will see yourself how many customization options you're gonna have compared to this Astra theme all right so let's start with global settings right here and as you can see if I would go to typography tab I can change the font on my website so as you remember when I was installing a starter template I 
had an option to choose uh, what font and uh, what color palette I want to use. So if you chose a font and you don't like it anymore, this is where you can change it. All right, let's go back and in colors. So in colors, of course, you will be able to change the color palette of your website. So if you don't like the color palette you chose previously, you can change it right here. Okay, let's go back. Container, we are not gonna do any changes in container because everything is good as it is by default. And once again, I like to say that you should explore everything yourself and try out different options, different settings. Maybe you will decide that you want to make your website look different, not just to follow this course that I'm making, not just following my lessons, but maybe you will want to make something different so don't be afraid to explore everything yourself all right let's go back buttons so obviously right here you will be doing changes to the buttons and uh, here you can find various different style adjustments for buttons you can change colors and do all other adjustments so this one is up to you but i feel like everything is good as it is by default all right if i would go right here and i would activate this one enable scroll to top uh, just a second i'm gonna scroll down once it's active as you can see, it activates this option right here. If I'm going to click on this icon, I will go to the top of my page. So it's up to you if you want to activate this. But I usually like to keep everything simple and I do not use too many features on my website. All right, let's go back. Accessibility, we don't need to change anything because everything is good. Let's go back. And if you would go to block editor, you don't need to change anything right here as well. Okay, let's go back and here actually right here we're not gonna need to change anything as well because everything is good okay let's go back so now you are a bit more familiar with all the global settings so global settings are basically related to style and it's up to you if you want to make any changes okay let's go back in header builder we're not gonna do any changes right now because i have a completely other lesson for working with your header that is right here and of course i'm gonna have a separate lesson for working with your footer that is right here all right let's go up and breadcrumbs we don't need to activate any breadcrumbs because it will mess up the way our layout looks so for example if i'm gonna click on this product right here and if i would activate breadcrumbs let's say just like that as you can see we have breadcrumbs basically we have a short map of our page the current page we add the category and the home page but again with e-commerce stores i do not use that and you don't really need to use that as well okay let's go back all right just a second let me see all right let's go back to global settings and i just wanted to check uh, something with colors oh yeah so some Something is important here after all info like I said those settings are completely up to you again don't be afraid to explore everything yourself but here the one thing that is important to me is that I don't like this gray color right here as you can see my image is with a white background and I would like to have this gray color in white as well so this is that option side background I'm gonna click right here and I will choose this option and I feel like it looks much better yeah it looks much better all right so let's go back and if you will need to do this change to change the background just remember that all settings related to colors are done right here all right let's go back so breadcrumbs you're not using uh, we're gonna skip blog tab because we haven't uh, added any blog post we haven't set a page for displaying blog posts so i have a completely separate section for working with blogs so again it's gonna be up to you if you want to start posting blog posts but i always highly recommend to post blog posts because this way you can attract more visitors to your website all right let's go to pages and right here if we would do any changes we would make changes to pages so as you remember pages that were not created using elementor so those pages are cookie policy returns and refunds and all other uh, legal type of pages all right so here we're not gonna need to change anything because everything is good so let's go back again let's go to sidebar so this one is optional if you want to activate sidebar for your website so for example if i would activate this sidebar right here as you can see i have a sidebar and in this sidebar i can include some information but i don't really do that sometimes i activate this option when i'm working with business websites you know to represent brands but when working with e-commerce stores i like to keep this option right here without a sidebar i think it looks much better all right let's go back footer builder so i have a completely separate lesson for this so now we can skip it custom post types if i would go right here uh, we do not need to change anything 
because we haven't added any blog posts and uh, actually the current layout that we have right now is gonna be fine and uh, later once we start adding blog posts where I'm gonna show you how that works maybe we will come back to this option right here to check uh, what uh, options we have and uh, we're gonna test out some different layouts but for now we do not need to change anything because everything is just great the way it is all right if I would go to WooCommerce so obviously right here we will be doing changes to the WooCommerce part of our website so we can do changes to product catalog right here we can do some general adjustments if I would go to general adjustments again we have some layout adjustments that we do not need to change to work on so if I would go to product catalog just a second it's gonna open our product catalog so this is our catalog and this is how it looks so we can change the layout we can change how many columns we want to display and you can do various other adjustments you can hide let's say price if you do not want to display the price of your product you can activate price back you can activate add to cart if you want to all right just a second this is how it's gonna look but i usually like to keep everything simple so i'm just gonna deactivate this one and we're not gonna change anything so we can go back all right just a second if i'm gonna go back to this product catalog tab and if i would go to design tab as you can see i can change the alignment but we are limited right here because we are not using a pro version of astro theme so we can go back and single product so if I would go to single product I will be doing changes to a product itself to the product page so for example I'm just gonna open this page and as you can see this is how it looks and if I would do changes like layout I can disable and enable some of the elements as you can see right here I just enabled that I want to show category so in this case I could disable meta element right here and as you can see it disappears and now we only have category but I usually like to keep it this way and I can disable the category because if we're gonna show everything this way with meta enabled as you can see we have category and we have tags for this product payments we can enable this one you can let your customers know what type of payments you accept and as you can see we have Visa we have MasterCard and all other options you can even add other options like if you type PayPal you could add an icon so for example if I'm gonna look for PayPal icon as you can see I can add a PayPal icon just like that all right just a second and this is how it's gonna look so we can keep it this way it should increase our trust to our customers we say that guaranteed save checkout usually such simple tricks work and you could expect increase in conversion rate all right let's scroll down what else we have so we could disable free shipping this text right here as you can see we have plus free shipping so of course it depends if you are offering free shipping so in this case you might not want to disable this option but in my case i'm not offering free shipping i do offer free shipping but uh, my customer has to spend at least 50 dollars on my store to get this free shipping all right so this is how it's gonna look and yeah let's go to design tab and yeah we don't have any options right here because once again we are using a free version of astra theme all right let's go back and if i would go to card page obviously right here i will be doing changes to the card page so i should go to my card page right here just a second all right so this is my card and if i would activate this option I could change the text right here proceed to checkout I could add any other text I want but I usually like to keep this way I think it looks good all right let's go back and right here we have various adjustments for the checkout page so once again let's go to checkout page and as you can see we have company name field enabled right here and we don't really need to have this field because obviously it's just too confusing for our visitors for our customers unless you are doing business to business you know then you might want to have this option enabled but in my case and in most cases you should disable this one and once again with street address uh, you can keep uh, two fields right here but I usually like to disable this field and I only like to keep one uh, field for street and address because it's just easier for visitors for customers to understand everything all right so I think everything looks great and other than that we don't really need to change anything here we can go back 
and right here we're not gonna activate any options i think uh, everything is good as it is by default so let's go back product images here you can do changes to the product images to the size and everything like that but uh, i feel like everything is good as it is by default so we don't need to change anything store notice so this one is completely up to you if you want to activate it so for example if i'm gonna activate store notice right here as you can see this is how it looks and uh, now we cannot see our header so we should activate this option right here and as you can see this is how it looks and yeah it doesn't make sense we do not need to show this message but you know i usually like to include that i offer free shipping for orders over 50 dollars or something like that so in this case i'm just gonna type exactly that and as you can see this is how it would look i can also change the color oh this is where i'm doing changes to the text color but i can change the color of this bar right here so i think this color should fit my style you know what actually i have color ready so i'm just gonna paste the code right here all right as you can see this is how it would look and uh, once again it's completely up to you if you want to display this message but uh, it's one of the ways you can do that and you can say that you are offering free shipping but in this case i'm just going to disable it i just wanted to show you how it works all right let's go back and what else we have uh, we don't really need to change anything here because this is it actually we don't have any more options so we can go back and inside identity we are gonna add a site icon so this is quite important site icon is shown right here because right now we have a WordPress icon and I'm just gonna upload a site icon so I have my file ready all right so i just uploaded my image and uh, this is the dimensions 512 by 512 pixels and uh, let's click select and as you can see now we have my icon all right let's go to site title and logo settings let's change the logo so let's click right here and this is the logo i uploaded uh, this logo previously and let's do some cropping right now all right let's make this a bit bigger and let's click crop image and now we can do some adjustments to logo size we can make it a bit bigger i think it looks good and uh, here you can check some other uh, settings some other options but i think everything is good as it is just now as you remember when we were doing some general settings to our wordpress uh, settings itself we added site title and we added tagline so we have the same two things right here so we don't need to change anything all right let's go back and yeah this is the header builder so we're gonna come back to this header builder in the next lesson all right if we would go to menus as you can see right here we have our main menu so basically this is the main menu and you can change the locations where you want to display this menu but uh, right now everything is good as it is and we don't need to change anything but yeah you can explore this tab yourself if you'll ever need to add more menus so this one is up to you how you want to approach this but yeah i'm not gonna change anything here because everything is good all right let's go to widgets so right here in widgets uh, let's go to woocommerce sidebar we can add some widgets so here i like to display categories i have so widgets are basically small pieces of content of um, information you could add an image let's say if you would click right here and you could click browse all and if you would look for an image let's say you could include an image that uh, says that you are offering some type of sale uh, it's just one way you can do it this is just the one of the widgets you can add but i usually like to include my category so if i'm gonna scroll down as you can see we have woocommerce widgets so just a second where is this featured category just a second yeah this is the widget so i'm just gonna click right here and as you can see this is how it looks so we can keep it just like that and now we have this widget and our visitor is gonna see uh, how many products each category has and it's gonna be easier for them to navigate our website all right so we can keep it just like that let's go back uh, home page settings so right now we're not gonna change anything in later lesson when we're gonna talk about blog aspect of our website this is where we're gonna do some 
some changes. So right here, we're gonna create a blog page and we're gonna set this blog page to display blog posts. But for now, we're not gonna do anything. If you would go to additional CSS, this is where you can uh, do changes to style by using CSS uh, code. And yeah, this is for advanced users who know a bit of coding, but we're not gonna do anything here. All right, so once we are done with all those changes, don't forget to click right here, publish. And now we can close this sidebar. All right, and this is how our website looks now. And it's starting to look better, much better. And right here, as you can see, it maybe would be better to have this that says sale in white color and in this uh, electric color bubble, but uh, we don't have those adjustments. It's just because we have a free theme, we are using a free theme. We could though do some changes with uh, CSS code, but it's still good, it doesn't look that bad. And in later section where I'm gonna show you how to customize your website using a premium theme, you will see yourself that those changes like uh, changes to sale bubble, they are easily done with the premium theme. All right, so let's make sure that everything looks good. Let's go to our product. Let's see how our product looks. And everything looks good. Actually, we are getting quite good results even though we are using a free theme. So basically, this is it for this lesson. Now you know how to customize your theme. And just so you know that each theme usually has different customization options. So you will see it yourself that in the next section of this course, the other theme is going to have different customization options. So that's all for now. In this lesson, we're going to work on our header right here. Just like I told you in the previous lesson, we're going to come back here. And as you can see, I'm back to my customization options. And to start working on our header, let's click right here, header builder. And before we start working on various elements right here, I just wanted to explain to you what is transparent header. So if you're going to click right here, transparent header, we can activate a different kind of header that is transparent because right now we have a classic header and I I actually think that classic header works very well with e-commerce stores and maybe transparent header is a good option when you are working on business websites to represent brand or business and for example if I'm gonna activate this type of header right here as you can see, this is how it's going to look. So basically, our section with the header just disappears and it goes on top on this first section. So when you activate a transparent header, you got to take an account that you have to change your image, the background image for this section. You got to adjust this image to make it work with your transparent header. So like I said, usually this works very well with business websites. But when I'm working with e-commerce sites, I usually like to keep the classic header. And right here, you can also enable or disable this type of header for various different pages. So for example, you could disable for blog posts, for pages. You could also disable it for WooCommerce product pages because if we would go to our product page right here. So for example, I'm just going to open this product right here. As you can see, it doesn't look good. And if I would disable it, this transparent header just for my product page, we would go back to our classic type of header. Again, it's up to you what type of header you want to use, but I usually like to to keep everything simple when I'm working with e-commerce stores and I like to disable this option. But before I disable this option, I also wanted to tell you that you can choose if you want to enable this particular transparent header just like this one right here on mobile devices or just desktop devices or for desktop or mobile devices together. So as you can see, this is how it's going to look. But let's disable this one. I just wanted to show you how that works. Maybe in the future, you will decide that you want to work a bit more on the style of your website and maybe you will want to activate a transparent header. All right, let's go back. And the first things when I'm working on my header, I just like to make sure that everything is in place and everything looks good. So as you can see right here, we have three levels for our header. So we could create multiple layers for our header, but I usually like to keep everything simple and easy to understand for my clients, for my visitors. And as you can see right here, we have our secondary menu added to this header, but we are not using such thing as secondary menu. So we can remove this one and I believe it's going to look much better if I will move our primary menu in the center right here. 
and I feel like it's gonna look much better if I'm gonna move the card page to the right of this header. I know now it doesn't make too much sense because we cannot see our account element. So let's work on this element right here. So this element will let our visitors, our customers to log into their account. All right, so instead of using avatar, let's use text. I like to use text because it's straightforward and easy to understand. And right now account URL, it just doesn't make sense because we don't have such URL on our website. And if I would go to login URL, it's a completely different URL from my website. So we have to find out what is our URL, what is our URL of our account page. So to do this, let's open our website in incognito mode. So I'm just going to open this in a new private window. I'm just going to go to my website. As you can see at the moment, this is how it looks. And uh, if I would click right here, this is my account page. So if I'm going to click on this one, as you can see right here, we go to a completely different website that is not ours. So let's go back and we have to fix this issue right here. So our goal right now is to find our my account page. As I remember, I saw it in the footer. Yeah, this is our account page. So if I'm going to click on this my account page, as you can see right here, it says my account dash two, just like we changed this with our shop page. Let's do this with my account page because it just doesn't look good. And let's minimize this window later. We're going to go back to this window and let's open a new tab and let's go to our website. We want to make sure that everything looks as good as it can look. So we have to do changes to this my account page. Let's go to the dashboard. So as you remember with shop page, we went to pages and now once we are here, let's scroll down and this is my account page. So let's click quick edit and now let's delete this dash two. All right, let's click update. And now to make sure that everything works, we should go to WooCommerce. Let's go to settings and let's make sure that we have the right page set for our account page. So let's go to advanced tab. And as you can see right here in my account page, we have page that has ID 99. So this is the same page that we did changes to. And now we want to save changes. Even though we didn't do any changes, let's do this because this will help us to put all changes in place. All right, before we leave, let's purge all cash. And now we can close this tab here. And let's go back to our incognito mode. And now we can go back to our home page because we want to repeat the whole steps. So let's refresh this page before we go to my account page and let's scroll down and let's select my account. And as you can see, now the dash two is gone. So now we want to copy this URL right here because we're going to use it for this element here. Let's close this incognito mode. And now we can paste this URL here just a second, just like that. And now you want to copy this part slash my account. Let's copy this one here and let's paste this right here. So make sure that it looks just like that. All right. So now once our visitors, once our customers click on this my account element, they're going to go to their account page. And if they don't have an account on our website, they will be able to create one. All right, let's go to design tab and let's change the color of this element because I don't think that it's going to look good in this color. So let's go right here. Text options. Let's choose the color. I think gray color will look great. All right, I think it looks good. Okay, so now once we are done with this part, let's go back and we can click here to do changes to our card right here. But instead, we can click here. It's basically the same. All right, so here you can choose what type of card you want to have. I think this icon will look much better. All right, it looks good. And here you can add cart label. As you can see, this cart label says how much worth is our card. So right now it's 1697. So you can change that here. You can even hide card total label. So for example, if I'm going to activate this one and nothing happens and it's completely normal, it just works when your card is completely empty. So this one right here won't show you zeros. So instead of doing this, I usually like to keep everything simple. I'm just going to delete this card label and it just disappears. All right. 
if I would click right here, I could choose any different types of labels. But like I said, I usually like to keep everything empty because this way it's going to look much better on other devices as well. All right, what could we do? I think we could change the color of this icon right here. So to do those changes, we have to go here, design, and let's change the card color. I want to make card color the same as my logo color right here. So I have this color ready. I'm just gonna open this one here and I will paste this color right here. All right, this is how it looks. You can barely see changes, but I think it looks better. All right, count color. We can change the count color to white. I think it's gonna look much better. All right, so if I would hover over this element here, as you can see, it turns black. So I could change this one here as well into white color. And if I'm going to hover one more time, nothing happens. So we could actually change the hover color. So if I would click right here and I would choose this color, as you can see, it's a bit different than this color here. And just a second. And if I would hover over my card icon, as you can see, this is how it looks. And I think it looks quite good. I usually like to keep uh, this type of minimalistic and simple header because I usually like to make everything as easy and simple to understand because I think uh, this helps for our customers. And yeah, I like to keep things simple. And before we leave, before we publish all the changes, let's make sure that everything looks great on other devices as well. So if I would click on tablet view, as you can see, this is how it's going to look. Of course, I can see that it doesn't look too good. The whole homepage layout, it looks quite messy, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to look on tablets. Sometimes it just freezes and you have to check on the tablet itself or on mobile device. And if you see that it's not working, it doesn't look good. The whole layout, just like the homepage layout that we worked on previously, doesn't look good. As you remember, you should do some adjustments in your homepage like we did on sections, like we did with columns, because sometimes those changes, they just disappear. They do not save. And like I said, it's the biggest downside when you are working with the free themes because you are lacking a lot of of customization options and you have to work on the, those settings on those changes a couple of times all right but before we leave let's make sure that we have a good layout so the layout i like to use i like to keep my site logo in the middle just like that and on the left side i like to keep my menu i think it looks good uh, we could change the color of this menu so if i'm gonna click on toggle menu as you can see we can choose the icon style we can change the style, but do not expect big changes. So for example, if I'm going to choose outline, it's not going to look too good. But like I said, uh, we are working with the free theme and we are limited with customization options. All right, so let's go to design and let's make sure that we have the same color as we have for our card or our logo, because I believe it's going to look much better. All right, so I have this color ready, so I'm just going to paste it here. All right and I feel like it looks better. All right, let's check how it's gonna look on mobile devices. And as you can see, this is how it's gonna look on mobile devices. Maybe it doesn't look too good because once again, we are working with a free theme and uh, you shouldn't expect extremely good results because we are working with the free tools and uh, you shouldn't forget that uh, such tools, uh, they have premium versions for a reason because when you are limited with customization options, usually people tend to get a pro version. All right, so let's go back to our desktop view let's see how it looks and I feel it looks good so once you are done with those changes let's click publish and once again when you're working on any part of your website do not be afraid to explore everything yourself if you do not publish any changes you will not mess anything up so you don't need to worry about anything all right so we are done with those changes and now we can close this sidebar all right, so I feel like it looks quite good. And you know, before checking all the changes, let's go to the dashboard and let's click right here, purge all cache. Let's make sure that all changes are live. All right, let's go back to our site. And now I'm just gonna go back to my website in incognito mode and I'm just gonna go through some of the buttons to make sure that they work. 
Alright, so this is how it looks and I think it looks much better than the previous version. And right here we do not have text my account. So to have this text, first of all you have to log into your account. Your users, your customers will have to log into their account to see this text. Alright, let's click on this icon here to make sure that everything works. And yes, everything works. So our users can use this page to log into their account or they can register. So as you can see, we have a functioning header, it works. And if I would go to any category, everything works. All right, so I'm just gonna close this one. And this is it. Now you know how to customize your header. And if you do not like this layout that I showed you, you can try to come up with any different type of layout, but I usually like to keep things simple. All right, that's all for this lesson. So once again, we are back to our customization options and this time we're going to work on our footer. So we can click right here, footer builder. And as you can see, this is our footer. This is our footer builder. As you remember, our header had a similar structure and this time we are working on our footer. So it's kind of similar, but except uh, this one is at the end of your website. All right. So as you can see right now, we are using two layers out of three. And once again, it's up to you how many layers you want to use but I usually like to make everything look simple and easy to understand but if you want to experiment you can try out uh, some different uh, looks some different uh, structures of your footer if you need some inspiration just visit some of the websites you like and check their footers and try to replicate their settings but once again in this course I'm going to show you probably the easiest way to make a footer and it's going to be a kind of clear footer all right so the first things when I'm working on footer I like to use for columns so right now it's using three columns so we should click right here and this is where we're gonna work on this row right here so as you can see it's set to three and we want to set it to four and right now we have to move this widget right here because in this column it had two widgets so we want to make one widget per each column all right, so we are getting there, but it still doesn't make too much sense, understand. So let's start with the first widget. So when you want to add information to your widget, you have to click right here, just like that. And right now we are working on widget. So widgets are small pieces of content that can be displayed in various places of your website. Sometimes if you want, you can display widgets in the sidebar of your website if you have activated the sidebar, but I think the sidebar works very well with uh, other times types of websites and not particularly with e-commerce websites. All right, so now we have to add blocks. So it's similar to adding blocks to your page or to a blog post. So right now we have to add a heading block and just click on this block and simply just like that, you will add it to your footer. All right, so I usually like to start the first column with information for our customers with help information, helpful information like contact page, shipping and delivery, payments and other. All right, so I'm just going to type help right here. All right, and right now it's a bit too large, so we should change the heading level. So I'm going to choose the third level and I think it looks better. All right, so now we should add another block and this time we're going to use block that is called list. If you cannot see this block, just use search type list and you will find this block. All right, so I'm going to choose list and right now I'm just going to list the pages I want to display right here. So I'm going to include contact, shipping and delivery, refunds and returns. And if you will decide that you want to add such page as payments, sometimes it's a good option to add this page. It's just some extra information for your customers so they would know what payment options are available on your website. In this course, we haven't created this page, but now you have enough experience to create this page yourself. You can either create this page using WordPress text editor or you can use Elementor. This one is going to be up to you if you want to have this page at all so I'm just gonna list the pages I want to display here I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna list another page and just like that I'm gonna list all the missing pages all right so I just added the pages I'm planning to display and like I said you can also include such page as payments you can create one it's kind of helpful for your potential customers and now we have to add URLs to these pages right here because right now they are inactive this is just a text so to add URLs we should go to our website and uh, as you remember we should go to all of our pages if we want to know 
know the links of those pages so let's go to the dashboard of our website let's go to pages let's click all pages and I'm just gonna show you one example how you can do that so once we are in all pages we want to find the pages we want to include in particular columns in our footer so we have a contact page so I'm just gonna click right here view I'm gonna open this one in a new tab and this is our contact page so we want to copy this URL right here I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna select contacts and right here I'm gonna choose this option and I'm just gonna paste my page and I'm gonna click this one right here so now this is an active page all right so just like that I'm gonna finish adding those two other pages all right so we are done with this widget right here we have all the needed pages uh, later on we're gonna do some adjustments style adjustments but for now we can leave it as it is all right let's go to the second widget right here so let's select this widget and before we add our information we have to delete all the previous blocks that this widget had so simply select a block and click right here and click remove paragraph in this case it was a paragraph let's click right here now it's a column so let's remove this column and just repeat this procedure let's remove this one let's remove that one and we have to remove this one as well all right so now let's add our heading element so let's select heading and as you remember we are supposed to select the third level of our heading and right here I'm gonna type information all right so as you remember now let's click right here and we want to choose list so let's choose list and here I'm gonna list such pages as about us privacy policy terms of service and cookie policy and as you remember to add pages to make those links functional we have to go to our pages and I'm just gonna open about page in a new window just like that and I'm gonna copy this link right here and I'm gonna go back now I can close this tab and I'm gonna select about us and just like that I'm gonna paste it right here and yeah as you can see we have an active link don't worry if the color isn't matching later we're gonna do final changes and everything's gonna match just fine all right so just like that i'm gonna finish adding all the other urls to these pages all right so i'm done with this column right here with this widget and i'm gonna move on to the next widget so let's select this widget and once again we have to remove blocks that were added previously so this is the block let's select this block and let's click right here and let's select remove so let's remove this one as well and as you remember once again let's select heading element and let's choose the third level and right here in this column i like to include the information pages for customers so that's exactly what i'm gonna type right here all right let's add the final block it's gonna be the list and right here i like to include such pages as my account my orders and account details so that's exactly what i'm gonna type all right and now we have to add those pages so to find those pages those urls let's go to our website let's go to our home page let's click right here my account and obviously this is the page this is the url we want to copy because this is my account page so let's copy this one let's go back let's double click on this text right here let's choose this option and just paste this url here my orders so let's go back to this page and let's click orders so we want to copy this one right here let's go back let's select my orders let's add the url and let's click enter account details so let's go back to this page and let's select account details and just like that we can copy the url let's go back let's select account details let's add our url and let's select this one all right so now it's gonna be more convenient for our users for our customers potential customers to access this important information all right so we are done with this one now we can move on to the last widget and in the last widget in the last column right here i usually like to include a newsletter subscription form so that's exactly what we're gonna do so we're gonna click right here we're gonna add heading 
and we're gonna type newsletter. All right, so now we want to change the level of this heading. Let's choose the third level. And now we have to add a subscription form. So to add this subscription form, we're gonna use the same plugin, the same form builder that we used to create our contact page. So let's go to our website. Let's go to the dashboard. And as you remember, the plugin was called Fluent Forms. So we want to click right here, new form. Let's choose this form. I believe this form will look great on our footer. All right, so now we have to do some changes. So let's start with this button right here. Let's choose here. And this is the minimum width and we want to change that instead of using 100%, let's make it 30%. I think 30% will look great on our footer. And now we could change the color of this button. As you can see right here in button style, once it's set to custom, we can actually add our color. So now I'm just gonna add my color that I previously generated using coolers generator and this is gonna be the matching color. So I'm just gonna paste this color code right here. As you can see, this is how it's gonna look and now I want to change the border color as well. So I'm just gonna paste this code and I'm gonna click OK. So let's go to hover style and let's change the text color. So let's choose the same color because I think it's gonna look good. Just a second, I'm gonna click right here, paste. And I'm gonna do the same with the border color. I'm gonna paste it right here. And I feel like it's gonna look much better. So we have subscribe button. And now we should do some changes to this field, to this input field. And right here, email. So we can actually disable this one required because we don't want to show this star here. And in any case, uh, our visitors will know that they have to enter their email address to subscribe to our newsletter. So we don't need to activate this required field. Let's add element label. So this label will be displayed above this form in our footer. So I usually like to encourage our visitors to subscribe to our newsletter. I usually don't call this as just a newsletter. I like to call this as a special members club, something like that, because you know, newsletter doesn't sound too good and uh, we want to be a bit creative with this one. So I'm gonna add a label. All right, I believe it's gonna look good. And now we should change the title of this form so we would know that it's a footer newsletter form. So we can add the title footer newsletter. Let's click rename. And now we should go to settings and integrations just a second stay on page and we want to click save form so before we move to settings and integrations let's save this form all right let's go to settings and integrations and we want to change thank you message so thank you for subscribing to our newsletter all right i believe it's gonna look good now we can click save settings and now you just have to remember that this is the number seven form this is the idea of this form and now we can go back to our footer builder and right here let's click plus and let's use a search to look for fluent all right let's choose this one and everything should position properly if it's not gonna work we're gonna do some changes so no worries about that all right so now we should do some changes to the style of these widgets right here but before we do that I just want to change the background color of this footer itself. So I usually like to go with a neutral colors. So let's click right here and let's go to design tab and the neutral color is gonna be a light gray color. So let's go right here. Maybe let's choose this one here and I feel like it's gonna look good. And now we should do changes to these widgets because I don't like the colors. So let's do some changes to this widget right here. So to do changes to this widget, let's click right here design all right so now let's go to link color and i guess we can choose this color all right and once we hover we can choose this color let's see how it's gonna look no actually we could choose this color yeah with this color it's gonna look better all right so let's do the same with this widget let's click right here design and let's choose link color so the link color is gonna be this one our color is gonna be this one and let's see, yeah, this is how it looks. Let's do changes to this widget. Just a second, let's select design. Let's click on the link color. Let's choose this one and let's choose our color. It's gonna be this one. All right, so now everything is looking much better. And now we should do some changes to the bottom part of our footer. So first of all, let's change the color of this one. We could go with a bit darker. 
gray color so let's go right here let's choose background and i think if i'm gonna choose this color i could go with a bit darker version just like that and i feel like it's gonna look good we could also change the color of the copyright if you want if this color doesn't look too good we could go to design tab and as you can see we can change the color so if we would go with this color it's not gonna look that good all right with this color it's gonna look a bit better all right we could actually change this color to a bit lighter gray so let's go to design and let's choose a bit lighter gray i think it's gonna look perfect all right so now we can add our social media icon so let's click right here social and simply just add your social media icons if you have a facebook page you can add this url right here if you have a twitter profile add url right here same goes with instagram if you don't have yelp of course you can disable this one we are not gonna display this one and if you want to add any other profiles like reddit pinterest or anything like that just select click add and just add the url right here and we could actually do some changes to design because we can barely see our icons so let's choose the icon color all right i think this color will look great and what's next we could change the size of these icons as well so let's make them a bit bigger all right i think it looks great all right so now everything should look great and we can actually click publish and let's close this sidebar let's scroll down all right as you can see it doesn't look too good subscribe to our newsletter so we should do some changes to this text so we want to go back to our form and here let's do some changes so let's go to our footer newsletter editor right here and you know what instead of displaying this label right here we could delete this label because as you saw it yourself it doesn't look too good so we can copy this label let's delete this one right here let's click save form and as you see yourself sometimes when you are building a website it is about problem solving but no worries about that we're gonna solve this problem right away all right let's go back to our home page let's click customize let's choose footer builder let's go to this widget because it was the last widget and we want to add another block and this time we're going to use a paragraph block and in this block let's paste our text all right so this is the text we were supposed to have just a second i'm gonna type this text join our members club and get the best deals and offers all right so i just entered the text and now we can move this block a bit up and let's click right here on this form let's make sure that we have selected this form newsletter and now we can click publish no worries about the text beneath this form because it's gonna disappear all right so we published all the changes so now we can go back to the all customization options and you know what i'm just gonna go to my home page in this tab right here and uh, let's refresh this page one more time and let's see how our changes look all right so as you can see now it looks this way i think it looks a bit better and just like that you can edit and create your footer it might not be the best looking version just because we are working with a free tool but it's helpful it's helpful for our customers and this is the most important thing and let's say once your visitor subscribes to this form right here so let's say i'm just gonna show you how it's gonna look i'm gonna type my email address let's click subscribe as you can see we got this message and now we can go to our dashboard and i'm gonna show you where all those emails go all right so if you would go to fluent forms right here let's select all forms and as you can see these are all the forms we have so this is the contact form if you would click right here you could see all the contact messages that your visitors left to you but as you remember yourself you're gonna receive those messages to your email address but it doesn't work with the footer those entries stay right here so let's click on entries here as you can see we have one entry and this is the email uh, entered so once you're gonna have more emails you can select them all just like that and you can export those email addresses by clicking right here 
and later you can use those email addresses for email marketing. So for this, you're gonna need to use email marketing tools like uh, MailerLite or any other. So this one is gonna be up to you. All right, so here you will see all the emails, all the subscriptions, and now we can close this one. And yeah, so basically we are done with our footer and we are almost done with this section where I show you how to create a website using free tools. All right, before we finish with this section, we have some final touches, final things to take care of before we are finally done with this section where we were working with a free theme called Astrum. All right, so since we are in the, the customization options, you know what? We could actually add one thing to our header. It might not be so important if you have a small website and you don't have too many products to display. But if you have more products and maybe in the future you're gonna add some more, then it would be a good thing to add a search option for your customers, for your visitors. So usually I like to include this one in the header. So let's click on the header. All right, let's click right here, just a second. And right here, we could add a search option for our visitors. So let's click here and let's choose search. And just like that, you can add search to your website. All right, if I'm gonna move this to the right side, this is how it's gonna look. All right, I feel like it's gonna look good if I'm gonna click on this one. All right, right now it's not functioning, but no worries about that. Later, it's gonna function just fine. All right, in design, we could change the color and it's completely up to you if you want to change colors. But as you can see here, it works. No, just a second, wait, I'm doing changes to the header. So I'm supposed to click on search right here. And if you would go to design, you can choose the color. So I'm gonna choose the same color as I'm using for my logo all right so i just pasted my color and as you can see this is how it looks and if we would click publish we can close this sidebar and let's click on the search and as you can see we can look for products it's fully functioning so it's up to you if you want to include this but i believe it's very useful for customers and especially once your store grows and you're gonna need to have this search option all right so now we are totally and absolutely done with our header with our footer and the next thing that we should take care of let's make sure that we have activated some options for our visitors to create account so let's go to woocommerce right here let's go go to settings as you remember all settings related to WooCommerce can be found right here in WooCommerce tab settings all right let's go to accounts and privacy and let's allow our customers to log in into an existing account during checkout it's gonna be very convenient for them if they're gonna have an account and let's allow our customers to create account during checkout so this one is also quite important and other than that everything looks great now we can click save changes and while we are here we could actually go to our plugins just a second right here in plugins and let's go to installed plugins and this theme with starter templates they actually installed some plugins that we do not need at all so we can disable some of those plugins just like this one right here it's called card flows it is quite useful plugin if you use a paid option but this plugin costs quite a lot and uh, so we're not gonna use this one obviously we are not using this one so let's scroll down what else we have you can keep this one spectra it might be convenient for you when you're gonna create blog posts uh, this one adds uh, some more blocks to your wordpress text editor so it's convenient but it's not necessary to use you can actually deactivate this one as well i usually don't use this one at all but if you want to explore things you can keep this plugin and later when i'm gonna teach you how to add blog posts you will see what blocks you can add so this one is gonna be up to you so you can disable this one and you can delete this one all right we are not using this one as well so we can deactivate this and now we can select the plugins we are not using this one that one and spectra and once again it's up to you if you want to explore uh, this one but uh, to be honest you don't really need it just adds some extra blocks and with default blocks uh, of your wordpress text editor you will be able to create a fine blog post all right so let's select this one let's go right here 
and let's select delete and let's click apply all right let's click ok and while we are here we could actually update this plugin right here all right fantastic we deleted all unused plugins and if you're not using any plugins or some plugins just delete them there is no need to keep them on your website especially if you're not using them all right so we are done with this part and now the last thing that we could do you know what we could actually go to our pages let's select all pages and right here we're gonna practice elementor one more time but this time we're gonna do things a bit differently all right so as you remember we created about page using wordpress text editor so let's click view in a new tab because we're gonna copy the information right here that we have here and as you can see right now this page just doesn't look good and as you remember when i tried to move around uh, this image it just didn't work for some reason sometimes this can happen but it doesn't mean that it's gonna happen to you but once again we want to make our website look as nice as possible and now this about page just doesn't fit our design so we should create this page using elementor so right here we're gonna practice elementor one more time but this time we're gonna do things a bit differently all right since we have created this page and we already published this page it has a bit different styling options so we should create a new about page but before we do that let's change this page a bit let's add the slug let's say 21 and let's hit update and uh, we are doing this because we want to create a completely fresh about page so if we're not gonna change the slug in this old page our newly created page gonna have slug not about but it's gonna be about dash two just like we had with some of the other pages all right so now we can click right here add new page i'm gonna type about and let's click edit with elementor all right so now we are editing this page using elementor and if i would go right here as you can see we have some text that we're gonna copy so let's go back to our newly created about page and it's up to you what you want to use if you want to create everything from scratch but this time i'm gonna use template so let's choose a template let's go to blocks and if you would look for about blocks this is what we get so right here it's actually up to you what you want to use to make your about page better this one is gonna be your homework and it's for you to create your about page and uh, just practice elementor and uh, this about page is quite simple so work on this one in my case i'm just gonna use this block right here i'm gonna click import block and i'm gonna import another block just like that i will go to blocks one more time and at this time i'm gonna use this one all right so just like that i'm gonna import another block and here i'm just gonna replace this information that's all i'm gonna do all right as you can see i've finished adding information and this is how it looks instead of using images i deleted those images and i added overlay to this column as you remember if i would click on the column i would go to style and i chose background no instead of choosing overlay i chose background so as you can see i added background image and this is how it looks i selected display size cover and it fits perfectly right here i did the same with this one as well and now we can click publish and let's click have a look and as you can see we are in about page as we are supposed to be and this is how our page looks now and as you can see it wasn't so difficult it was quite easy we just imported some pre-made templates blocks and we replaced the information let's compare it to the previous version yeah it looked horrible and this version looks much better it's cleaner and it's easy to understand all right so since we are here all right just a second now we can close this one we can go to the dashboard let's make sure that we don't have this page the previous page that we renamed yeah this is the page and we can delete this page this is the old about page as you can see it doesn't have nexted elementor all right so now we have all the needed pages we have fully functioning website let's check our website one more time 
and as you can see this is how it looks so this is what we were able to squeeze out using a free astra theme of course there are more customization options with this theme but to access those options you would need to get astra pro version an astra pro version gonna cost you on the early basis or you can purchase the lifetime license that costs over 200 dollars. so that's quite a lot but you're gonna get more customization options but i believe with a free version we were able to squeeze out quite good results we have fully functioning website and let's check one more time if our about page functions let's go to costumes category and as you can see this is how it looks if i would select this costume right here i can add it to cart so let's make sure that everything functions as it's supposed let's click view cart and yeah we can select our shipping methods we have some cross sales let's go to the checkout and yeah everything works and everything looks great so yeah this is how it looks and just like that we were able to create a website using a free theme in the next section you're gonna see how the premium version looks how many customization options it has compared to this one but i believe with a free theme we were able to create a quite good looking store great progress so far so if you finish this section and now you have your final version of your website if you will decide to use a free theme so in this case we used Astra theme and we used elementor as our page builder so as you saw it yourself you could get quite good results by using this free theme and of course free themes are quite limited why else they would offer you premium themes because with premium themes or with a paid option of this uh, Astra theme you will have more customization options but as you saw it yourself with the free theme you can also have good results and uh, trust me i have seen even worse looking e-commerce stores and they are making a lot of sales but as you saw it yourself with a free theme you are kind of limited but most importantly in this section you learn how to use elementor that is page builder plugin and this elementor page builder plugin is the most popular page builder plugin so if you will ever decide that you want to create any other type of website and you want to use elementor to create your pages so this is where you're gonna have some solid information solid foundations working with elementor so that's another great thing that you learned in this section but if you didn't like the way your website looks maybe you want to try something different uh, the next section is gonna be all about the premium tools about the premium theme that i use myself and i actually use the same theme for three of my e-commerce websites i really like that theme and it works just well it loads fast and it looks great i highly recommend you to watch this section that you just watched of course you watched it and the second one so it's gonna be much easier for you to decide which option you want to choose but of course you can start with the free theme and later you can upgrade to a premium version so it's gonna be up to you so congratulations now you have a kind of fully functioning website okay so in this lesson we're gonna start customizing our website using a premium theme a premium option and you will see it yourself how different it is and how many customization options it has compared to astra theme i'm not gonna reinstall the wordpress or anything like that i'm just gonna download the theme i'm gonna replace my current astra theme with the new flatsome theme i'm gonna deactivate some of the plugins and you will see it yourself how that works uh, just in case maybe in the future you will decide that you want to, to switch themes uh, it's gonna be a good practice for you but like i said in this lesson i will show you how to install a theme when you already have a theme installed but if you don't have installed astra theme to your website and you decided that you want to go with this option flatsum everything's gonna be easier for you so you will see it yourself how that works and i will make sure that everything looks the same even though you haven't installed astra theme to your website all right so the first things first you want to go to this website right here themeforest.net and look for a theme called flatsum so this is the theme that we want to use and as you can see this is number one best-selling woocommerce theme it's mobile and speed optimized so i do really like this theme i use it for free off my websites and i highly recommend you this theme all right so just purchase this theme and once you have purchased this theme you want to go right here to your profile select downloads 
and as you can see I have quite a lot of things all right so this is one of the license I could use but I have the other license that I have deactivated and I can activate on this current website all right so this is the theme in your case you're just gonna see this only one option right here so you want to click right here and let's select installable WordPress file only so you want to download only installable WordPress file and you want to download license certificate and purchase code so this is the code of your theme that you're going to use to activate your theme so right here in item purchase code you will see the code that you will need to use to activate your theme so remember that and of course before we go back if you want you can actually check how this theme looks you can check some of the demo websites if i would click right here as you remember you could check how this website looks so we have various demo websites you can check out and see what are possibilities of this theme so it's up to you if you want to do that but I just wanted to show you that uh, such option exists all right let's close this tab right here let's go back to our website and let's go to the dashboard now we're gonna need to install this theme so like I said no matter if you followed my previous section where I showed you how to use Astro theme or not uh, the whole steps are gonna be the same so just go to your dashboard let's go to appearance tab let's select themes and now let's click add new and let's click upload theme let's choose browse and just select the file you just downloaded so this is the file let's click open and let's select install now all right now we can activate this theme just click right here and here we have a setup wizard all right so let's click let's go now we will have to enter our purchase code here so let's go to our pdf file we just downloaded and you want to copy this one item purchase code that is here so that's exactly what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna copy this code i will go back and before i paste this code i can close this tab and i can actually close this tab as well all right so i'm just gonna paste this code here i'm gonna select confirm and i'm gonna click register all right so the registration was successful now we can click continue let's create a child theme all right let's click continue here you can install some plugins but actually you don't need to install this first plugin contact form 7 because we are using another plugin for adding contact forms and right here next and social login i'm not using this plugin at all because i usually like to keep everything simple like i said and just a regular login with email address and password works just well and if you want you can actually install wishlist so your customers your potential customers will be able to create their wish lists so it's quite good especially if you have more products but if you're planning to create this website in other language not in English then you will have some problems with this plugin because it's gonna be quite difficult to translate some of the English words and if you are creating your website for a native speaking audience then your website might look quite messy but if you would like to have this wish list and you are creating a website for English speaking audience then you can click right here and just install this plugin it's completely up to you and once you have this plugin you don't really need to change anything and no matter what way we go if I'm gonna choose to install this plugin or not we're not gonna do any changes to it so just to be safe uh, because in later sections I'm gonna show how to translate your website I'm not gonna install this plugin but if you want you can install it and have wish list all right so we can click skip the step all right so here we do not want to install any demo content in the previous section when we worked with astro theme it was quite convenient because we were just starting out we didn't have any experience working with themes and the various plugins but now after you have watched this previous section i believe you have enough understanding and uh, this time it's going to be much easier to set up your website without installing any demo content it's going to be much easier for us so let's not install any demo demo content let's click skip this step and if you want you can select any preset it's just gonna create you a header it's just gonna add the style to your theme but actually you don't need to do that because like I said in this section I'm gonna show you how to customize how to give your website a good look without needing to install any demo content so we're gonna start from the bottom up and we're not gonna need to use any demo content we can also skip this step 
and here you will get some customer support if you're gonna need any of this support but i believe you ain't gonna need uh, any support uh, from the theme developers because once i show you how to create your website using this theme i believe you will not have any issues all right let's click agree and continue all right so now we are done and we can click view your new website all right so in my case as you can see uh, what i still have so i still have this menu right here the main menu that i created previously and in later lesson i will show you how to create a menu one more time just in case you didn't watch the previous section where i showed you how to create a menu using astro theme it's basically gonna be the same but we're gonna go back and gonna work on that a bit just to show you how it works as well as you can see we have our home page so this home page was created using elementor it's from the previous section where i was working on astro theme so we're not gonna use this home page at all and as you can see right now we have different sale buttons different style and you can customize those uh, sale bubbles not buttons and it's extremely customizable this theme is customizable so that's the huge advantage of this theme compared to astro theme and let's scroll down what else we have so we have our footer and right now it doesn't look good at all and no worries about that and it even doesn't matter if your footer looks different because in later stages when we're gonna edit our footer i will show you how to create it and no matter what type of footer you have right now you will still be able to follow this lesson all right so right now we should do some changes we should go to our dashboard and i just want to make sure before we move on to the next lessons that i have disabled the plugins that i'm not going to use so in this case let's go to install plugins and the first plugin that i'm going to disable is going to be elementor we are not going to use elementor at all we can click skip and deactivate because this platform theme has its own page builder and it's quite good it's quite flexible as well so we're gonna work with that as well we can disable starter templates plugin because we're not gonna use it as well all right so now we can select those two plugins here and let's click delete let's select apply okay all right so now those plugins are gone and i really like that we do not overcrowd our website with too many plugins because if you're gonna have too many plugins on your website there is a chance that uh, there's gonna be some issue i'm not saying that it's gonna happen but uh, there are some cases that some plugins can slower your website and if you are using not too many plugins especially if you are using let's say the same type of plugins for the same purpose like two plugins for creating pages then i highly recommend you to not do that because it's just not how things work and it might slow down your website but right now we have eight plugins and that's just perfect all right let's go to our site and let's see how it looks now all right as you can see we don't have our home page it's completely gone we still have best-selling products we still have trending products but we're gonna replace this home page with a newly created home page so like i said no matter what you see here maybe you see a different information maybe you have different menu here maybe your home page is completely empty it doesn't really matter because you will still be able to follow this section through all right so this is it for this lesson now you know how to install a premium theme and as you saw it yourself you have to download it from themeforest.net and you have to upload it to your website and of course you have to activate it and if you would try to use a search in the wordpress themes in your dashboard you wouldn't find this theme all right so that's all for this lesson in this lesson we're gonna check ux builder so just like in the previous section when we were working with astro theme we were working with elementor page builder and right here we have a page builder as well but this builder comes together with the flatsome theme it's their own builder and it might not have so many options as elementor but it's still flexible and in this lesson we're gonna explore this page builder all right so let's go to the dashboard let's go to all pages and in this lesson we're not gonna do any changes we're just gonna go through the page builder itself to show you how it looks and as you can see uh, previously we had an option to edit pages with elementor but now we have an option to edit page with ux builder and if i would click on this about page as you can see here we have option to edit this page with ux builder so instead of using this wordpress text editor right here that we have here 
we can use UX Builder just like we could use in the previous section Elementor. So let's select UX Builder and just keep in mind we're not gonna change anything here. I just want to walk you through the UX Builder itself to show you how it works and we can keep the text, we can keep the information here and we're not gonna change anything. I'm just gonna walk you through this builder. All right, so this is how it looks. On the left side we have our navigator. So this is our navigator. We have sections, we have elements here and on the right side we have different modes so we can view our website on tablet mode on mobile mode and when we are doing changes we can do changes to separate device not just do changes to all devices globally but to separate device so for example I could do some changes to desktop device I can move around elements then I can switch to tablet mode if I don't like how the layout looks I can do some changes to the tablet mode layout and I can do the same with mobile all right let's go back to desktop view if I would go right here I can do changes to the page Page itself but you usually don't need to do any changes here actually to be honest I have never done any changes right here because everything is good as it is by default all right let's go back and as you can see right here we have text elements so in Elementor you usually have sections and then once you create a section to this section you add elements but it doesn't apply to UX builder you can just add elements without creating sections it's simple as that all right if I would click right here I could add another element so as you can see here we have layout elements so we can add a row here so if I would click this one we would add some rows and in those rows we could add elements like images buttons text images uh, let's say here you could showcase your categories or something like that you can also choose how many columns you want to have what layout itself you want to have but we can close this one and as you can see this element was added successfully and now when I'm doing changes to the row I'm doing to this whole part right here to the row changes so I can work on some layout adjustments style adjustments and uh, it's for you to explore everything yourself to try out different changes just uh, to check how it works how everything functions and in later stages when we're gonna work on our home page when we're gonna work on contact us page and when we're gonna work on about page we're gonna take everything into practice and we're gonna take care of the layout of the home page of the about page of the contact page with all those adjustments but for now you can explore everything yourself you don't need to save anything just try to add different elements see what uh, settings they have and uh, try to figure out how everything functions and work all right let's go back and as you can see now I'm in my navigator so here we have text element and here we have row so this row has one two three four columns so in those columns you can add images so let's say here you can add an image button so if I would click add elements right here as you can see I can choose from the same list of elements and here all elements are free so unlike with Elementor where you had to purchase a pro version to get access to some better elements here all elements are free to use and it's up to you to explore all those elements all right so let's close this one and as you can see this is the row with various elements and I can delete this row if I'm gonna click here I can do options I can duplicate it copy options copy a short code and do all other adjustments but I usually don't focus here too much and I get good results without focusing on those other options so I'm just gonna delete this one and let's click right here add element one more time so like I said here we have layout elements here we have various content elements we have buttons text html codes banners accordions so if i'm gonna choose accordion as you can see here you can expand this accordion you can add a heading right here and you can add text all right so for example how much the shipping cost uh, right here and once you expand you can explain how much the shipping cost there are many ways of using this accordion so it's up to you how you want to use it but let's go back and as you can see this is the navigator this is how it looks and if you would click right here you can add another accordion and just like that you can do changes to this accordion all right we can delete this one and the last thing that i wanted to show you let's go to add elements is gonna be not here but just let's scroll down through all elements and as you can see here we have various shop elements we can add products custom products and the best-selling products so for example if I'm gonna click this one we're gonna have 
best-selling products we can do adjustments to columns to the number of products we are displaying and once again this one is up to you to explore and okay we can delete this one and we can go to add elements and here in import we're not gonna use that let's not over complicate ourselves with too many adjustments so let's go back to elements and if I would go to flat some studio as you can see here we have various pre created layouts so if you watched my previous section where I showed you how to create a website using Astra theme and starter templates you saw it yourself that from the starter templates you can import pages you can import the whole website itself or you can import blocks so the same goes with uh, this theme you can import various e-commerce pages you can import about sections and you can import various other things so it's up to you to explore what you would like to use in later lessons we're gonna use some of them but once again it's up to you to explore everything and no worries about anything if you're gonna import something and you're gonna delete something or you're gonna save anything you won't mess up your website in any way and if you're gonna have any questions or any struggles just join my facebook group and i'm always here to help you so if you're gonna have any questions don't hesitate to ask and just shoot me a message and i'm gonna help you right away so as you can see right here we have various pre-designed layouts and it's up to you what layouts you want to use and like i mentioned you before in later lessons we're gonna use some of these templates but yeah once again you can click import so for example if i'm gonna select import i can choose if i want to import with images but why do i need those images unless i want to see how it's gonna look so i'm gonna import this one without images and i'm gonna click start and as you can see it just imported this pre-created layout so as you can see it has sections so just like with elementor uh, this template was created using sections and then to those sections we have some elements so we have row in this row we have columns and right here if i would expand as you can see we have text and all other things if i'm gonna minimize this one it just goes like that if i'm gonna click right here delete as you can see this section disappeared and this is the second section the reason why it's on top of the text it's because of uh, layout adjustments and later once we're gonna work on those settings i'm gonna show you where you can take care of those adjustments if you want to go over top of some other elements but let's click right here real quick in options and if i would scroll down just a second no it's not this one so it's just done to separate column right here so if i'm gonna click on the row just a second on the columns just a second yeah yeah on the row on this one if i'm gonna go to options it should have some adjustments all right it doesn't have but i should go right here and if i'm gonna go to the column itself yeah as you can see we have padding adjustments and that's why it looks this way so explore everything yourself try to decide what will work for you what maybe you would like to use yourself and it's gonna be up to you if you want to go my way or if you want to try something different but if you're gonna have any questions do not hesitate to send me a message and i'm gonna help you out all right so hopefully now you understand this ux builder a bit better i know it was a quick walkthrough but in later lessons once you're gonna start working on the pages you will see it yourself how it works once we have finished with the first section of a page you're gonna have a good understanding how everything works and if you watched my previous section where i showed you how to work with elementor trust me this time it's gonna be much easier than working with elementor all right we can close this one right here let's not save any changes all right let's go back to all our pages and basically that's it for this lesson now you know how ux builder works it's a simple page builder it's much easier to use than elementor but it is flexible as well all right so that's all for this lesson okay in this lesson we're gonna create our home page and this time we're gonna use ux builder to create our home page in the previous section when we were working with astra theme i was using elementor and if we would go to our home page i'm just gonna open this one in a new tab just to see how it looks as you can see this is how it looks it looks quite messy and it's because it was created using elementor and now we are not using elementor at all so no matter what is your situation maybe you have the same looking page 
maybe you have a completely empty page, you will still be able to follow this lesson because we're going to create a completely new page for our home page. All right, so I'm going to close this one. And if you forgot, this is our layout. So this is the same layout I used to create a home page when I was working with Astro Theme and I was working with Elementor. So as you can see in the first section, we're going to have our hero image with click to action button. And for this, we're going to use banner right here. We have products. So for this, we're going to use products element. Uh, this section we're going to import from Flatsome Studio. So we're going to have a pre-created template. So it's going to help us to work more efficiently. And right here we're going to add categories. So for this we're going to use category element. And the last element is going to be products as well. All right. So now we can go back to all of our pages. Let's click add new. Let's give a title to this page. Let's call it home page. And let's click edit with UX builder. All right, so right now we have a completely empty page and let's click add element. Let's choose banner. So before we do any changes, let's make sure that we have all the sections we need to make sure that this is the layout we have. So let's go back. Let's close this one here. And now let's go back one more time. And now we have to add a title. So let's click add elements. Let's choose just a second. Let's choose title. Just a second. Where is that title? Yeah, this is the element we want to use. All right, let's use title and let's center this title right here and let's go back to our layout. So we're going to have best selling products. So let's type right here best selling products. All right, I think it looks good. We can change the size. Let's make it 120. I think it's going to look much better. All right, let's go back. And now we want to add a new element. So this element is going to be product. So let's use search to look for products. All right, this is the element we want to use. Let's select this element and let's click apply. And now to display the best selling products, we have to scroll down just a second. Let's scroll down and now let's select order by sales decreasing so from the best selling to the least selling product so this is how it's gonna look once you're gonna start getting orders uh, this is how it's gonna be displayed so from the best selling product to the least best selling product all right so let's keep it just like that let's click apply and now we're gonna add another section so let's go back to our structure and now we need to add this section right here to showcase our advantages so let's go back let's click add elements and now instead of using any of those elements right here, let's select Flatsum Studio. And uh, don't be afraid to explore everything yourself. Maybe you'll find some elements that you would like to use yourself to make your online store a bit more unique looking. So this one is up to you. You can explore everything yourself. But in this lesson, we're going to use this one services icons and just a second let's choose this one right here let's select import let's import images as well let's click start and this is how it's gonna look all right so what's next let's go back and now we're gonna showcase our categories so before we add our categories we need to add a title so we can use this title right here so we can duplicate this title just like that and let's type categories let's click apply and now we can move this element right here just down beneath this section here and this is how it's gonna look now let's click add elements and now let's search for categories all right so this is what we want to use let's click add and yeah this is how it's gonna look i know we don't have any images right now but later we're gonna fix that so we can keep it just like that it's gonna look good all right, let's click apply. And what's next? What's next? We have to add trending products. All right, so let's go back. And now let's duplicate this title one more time. Let's click duplicate and we can add trending products. All right, let's click apply. And now let's move this title just down below our product categories element. All right, so now we have to add products element. So we can duplicate this previous element. Let's click duplicate and now let's do some changes. All right. So instead of ordering by sales, we can select random. So it's going to display random products. And again, it's up to you what type of filter you want to use. I usually like to go this way. Let's click apply. And now we have to move this product element just below this title right here. 
and this is how it looks all right so now we have everything in place and uh, we have to do changes to the first section so this is our banner so this is our hero image all right so let's click right here options so once i click on options i'm doing changes to this whole section right here to this banner itself so now i want to choose a background image so the background image is going to be the same i used in the previous section when i was working with elementor so just a second let's look for this image yeah this is the image and i'm gonna click use this image and this is how it's gonna look and now i want to make it full width so to do that we should do some changes to this whole page itself but before we do that let's make sure that we have the right size selected I want to use this size, let's say, because I want to use a better quality of this image. All right, so this is how it's going to look. And I can change the height. So I don't like that it has 500 pixels. Instead of that, I'm going to use 600. All right, I think it's going to look better. So now I want to make this full width. So I'm going to click right here to do changes to this whole page itself. So I'm going to choose template. And this is the template I want to choose. All right, so this is how it's going to look. All right, so we are not done yet because it doesn't look too good right here. So let's do some changes to this text element. Let's move it to the right. And here, let's just a second, I'm going to move it a bit up. And here I'm going to change the text. So I'm going to click right here, open text editor. And here I'm just going to replace this text with my text. All right, so this is how it's going to look. Now I'm going to click OK and I don't like the size of the text so I can change that right here. So I'm going to move this a bit to the right just like that. I can expand this area right here a bit more. OK, just a second. I can do some changes to this text a bit more. So I have to change the heading element right here. Let's choose number four. All right. This way I feel like it's going to look better. All right. So we can increase the font size and I think it's going to look good. Just a second. I'm going to go back to text editor. OK, I think it looks better. And now we can change the color. So if I would click right here, I can change the color of this text. I feel like this color will look great. So let's keep it just like that. And now I want to add a button right here. So to add a button, let's go here. We can click add to text box and let's choose button. All right. So this is the button we're going to use. You can use any other preset if you want. So I'm just going to click apply. All right. So now I need to add text. So I'm going to add shop now. All right. Let's do some style adjustments. Let's choose the secondary color. At the moment, the secondary color is set to be this orange color. But later, once we're going to work on the customization options of this theme, we're going to do changes. We're going to replace this orange color to red color. And the same color is displayed right here for sale bubble. So we're going to work on that in a later lesson. All right. What else we could do? We could add a URL to this button. So let's make this button active. So this time I want to include a URL that takes our visitors to our shop page where they can see all of our products so if you remember the shop page is slash shop so this is the page we want to use so let's copy this page right here now we can close it and we can paste it right here all right we can also add an icon so if i would add arrow right this is how it's gonna look and i can choose visible on hover all right so this is how it's going to look. OK, I could also do some other adjustments. I could expand this button as well and I could change the size of this button. Let's make it large. All right. I feel like it looks good and I can change the radius as well. So if I'm going to move this one a bit to right, this is how it's going to look. And I feel like it looks good. All right. So once again, everything is up to you. Those all change the style adjustments are up to you. But if you're going to follow my lesson, you're going to have a solid foundation and you will understand how to create your homepage by following this lesson. All right. So let's make sure that everything looks good. So now we can change the text right here. So I'm offering free shipping for orders over $50. And uh, we can keep uh, free returns. Again, it's up to you. And uh, customer support. So I'll offer customer support, 24-7 customer support. So I can add that right here. So I'm going to click 
on this text here and I'm gonna open this one in a text editor and I'm just gonna replace information right here. All right, we can click OK and this is how it's gonna look. Okay, we can go back. So we did changes to the text. All right, here we can also include pre returns. So let's keep it just like that. I'm just gonna open this one in a text editor and I'm gonna add the information right here. All right, let's click OK. So the next one is gonna be this one. So I'm gonna let know our visitors that I offer great customer support. So I'm gonna type 24 seven support. All right, we can click OK. And right now this icon here doesn't make sense because we are offering support so we can change that. So if you would click right here on this icon, you can replace this icon. So I'm gonna click right here, change media. And I already uploaded my icon. So this is the icon I want to use. I'm gonna click use this image. And if you are using SVG images, you can change the color of these icons. So right here, I can change the color of this icon. As you can see, I can make to look similarly to this color right here, just like all other icons. So it's up to you what type of icons you want to use. And I'm gonna show you the place where I like to get my icons for free. So the place where I like to get my icons, in just a second, I'm gonna paste this URL right here. And as you can see, this is the place where I like to get icons. You can find any icon you want to use and just select the icon. You can use search to look for those icons and you can download SVG file and you can use this file right here. So this one is up to you what type of icons you want to use. Uh, this is where I found this icon right here. So it's up to you what icons you want to use. You can explore that website and uh, just check the icons. Maybe you'll find the icons you would like to use instead of those. But right now let's keep everything as it is. All right. So this is how it looks. And I feel like everything looks quite good. But before we leave, let's add some gaps in between some of the elements. Because right now this uh, product element is right above our footer and we want to have a gap. So how to add a gap you might be wondering. So let's click right here, add element and let's type gap. And this is the gap we want to use. We can select this gap and we can change the height of this gap. So I'm gonna type 50 pixels and I feel like it's gonna look good. All right, so we can click apply and this is how it looks. And we could actually add another gap right here. So we can duplicate this gap that we already created. All right, let's test with the 50 pixels. Let's see how it's gonna look. So it's gonna be just below our banner. All right, so this is how it's gonna look and I feel like it looks much better. I could also add another gap right here. So I can duplicate this gap just like I did previously. And right now I can take this gap just a second and I can put it right here. So this is how it looks. I feel like it looks better. All right, before we leave, before we publish everything, let's make sure that everything looks great on other devices. So let's click to see how it's gonna look on tablet devices. Everything looks great. So we have our slider, it's properly functioning. And let's scroll up, let's see how it looks. All right, so now our text doesn't look too good. So we can change that. We can expand this text just like that. We can move it a bit up. I feel like it looks better. So this time when I did those changes, those changes only applied to tablet device. Let's check how it's gonna look on mobile devices. All right, it doesn't look good at all. So we can resize this one just like that. All right, I feel like it's in the center. Now we can do some changes to this image. So we can barely see our text. So let's move this one just like that. All right, I feel like it looks quite good. It's easy to understand and it looks much better. So if I'm gonna go back to desktop view, nothing changed, all right. So this is a huge advantage of this uh, flatsome theme because it's uh, highly customizable. So as you can see it yourself. All right, so I feel like everything looks great. We have all the sections we need and now we can click apply. All right, let's click publish. All right, now we can close this one here. All right, so this is our homepage. Let's click right here, view all pages. Now we can close this tab right here. And now we have our home that was created previously and we have our homepage. So we have to replace this home with our homepage. So to do that, you want to go to settings right here. Let's choose reading 
and right here in home page let's select the page we just created so this is our home page let's click save changes now we can go back to all pages and you will see it yourself that now our home page is set as a front page so now we don't need this page we can click trash all right let's go and check how our website looks now and as you can see this is how it looks i think it looks much better than the previous version but actually we are not done because right now we don't have any images right here so to add images to our categories we have to go to the dashboard let's go to products tab let's choose categories and right here in the wooden toys i can click edit and once i'm here i can select thumbnail so I'm gonna click right here, select thumbnail, and I have already uploaded some images. So those are the images I'm planning to use. So I'm just gonna select this image right here. I'm gonna click use image. I'm gonna click update. All right, let's go to categories. All right, so this image is now active. So I'm gonna do the same with all other categories. So I'm gonna add thumbnails. All right, as you can see, I just finished adding images, thumbnails to my categories, and this is how it looks. Of course, I get it that for customs, I maybe used the wrong image, but it doesn't really matter much. Uh, we are working on this homepage just to show you how it looks, how it works. So uh, in your case, of course, you're gonna use different images, but in my case, these were the images I uh, decided to use. All right, so now we are done with adding thumbnails. Now we can click right here and we can check our homepage let's see how it looks all right so this is how it looks we have categories uh, those categories look this way and if you don't like how those categories look because right now uh, this category here doesn't look too good i get it so we can do some more changes so if i would click right here no not here uh, right here edit with ux builder let's make sure that everything looks great all right so let's make sure that everything looks great all right so if we have some style issues we're gonna fix that all right so let's select this element right here product categories and now if i would scroll down right here just a second in height we can select one by one and it's gonna look perfect all right i feel like it looks great okay we could also do some changes how it looks so to style to badge we can select label with label it doesn't look too good if you're gonna select push i think it's gonna look much better so we can keep it just like that i feel like it's gonna look much better and we can click apply let's click update now we can close UX Builder and just like that we created our homepage. And compared to the previous version when we were working with AstroTheme, I feel like this homepage looks much better. We have a functioning button and everything looks great. And later in other stages when we're gonna work on the customization options, we're gonna do changes to the colors here. But right now everything looks great. So that's all for this lesson. In this lesson we're gonna create our contact us page so if you watched my previous section where i showed you how to create contact page using astro theme and elementor uh, this time is gonna be similar but if we would go to the page that we created previously in just a second uh, we cannot find this page right here oh no this is the page we created previously as you can see it looks quite messy so instead of using this page maybe you haven't followed the, the previous section and you decide Decided to go with the premium theme no worries about that we're gonna create a completely new contact page so to do this let's go to the dashboard let's go to all pages let's select all pages and before we move on let's do some changes to the page we created previously so let's click quick edit and at the end of the title and slug let's type 2 and we are doing this because we're gonna create a completely new page and if we're gonna create our new page contact and we're gonna give the same title it's not gonna have the same URL it most likely gonna have contact dash 2 so to avoid that let's rename the page we previously created and now we can click add new all right let's type contact and let's click edit with UX builder all right this time let's click add elements and let's add a row so let's choose two columns and let's click apply so in the first column right here i want to include 
contact information like email address, phone number, and if you want, you can also include your address. And right here, I'm gonna include a contact form. So if you didn't watch my previous section where I showed you how to create contact forms, no worries about that. I'm gonna show this right here as well, but I highly recommend you to check the previous lesson where I showed how to create contact page using Elementor using Astro Theme. All right, so let's start working on this page. All right, so the first things, let's click apply. And right here in this first column, I want to include a text element. So I'm gonna click right here, add to column, and I'm gonna choose text. Okay, I'm gonna click apply, and I'm gonna open this in text editor. And right here, I'm gonna type the heading for this text element. That's gonna be contact. And I'm gonna choose the second level of heading for this one. And I'm gonna click enter. And I'm gonna enter my email address, phone number, and it's up to you if you want to include address. All right, so this is how it's gonna look. I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna go back, and here in the second column right here, I'm gonna click Add to Column, and once again, I'm gonna choose Text, I'm gonna choose Paragraph, I'm gonna open this in Text Editor, and right here, using the second level of heading, I'm gonna type Send us a message. All right, so as you can see, I chose the second level of heading just like that. Just a moment, I'm gonna choose the second level of heading one more time and I'm gonna click OK. Alright, so now let's go back and here I'm gonna click Add to Column one more time and this time I'm gonna use HTML. Alright, and here I have to include HTML code of my form. So if you don't know how to create a form, I showed you in the previous section where I was showing you how to create contact forms. But if you didn't watch that lesson, I will show you how you can do that. All right, so let's go to our website in a new tab. All right, so right now I'm in the post section. So basically I'm in the dashboard of my website. And as you remember, we installed Fluent Forms plugin. I highly recommend you to watch my previous lesson from the previous section where I was showing how to create contact forms because in that lesson I showed you how to install Fluent Forms plugin. And once you install this plugin, you will be able to create forms. So if I would click right here in all forms, as you can see, I have some forms ready. So in the previous lesson, I created this form. So if you don't know how to create form, just watch my previous lesson. But if you don't want to watch that lesson, I can show you how that's done. So for example, let's click add new form. Let's choose this one. I usually like to remove the last name. So we're not gonna use the last name. And right here, instead of using submit form, we can change that to send a message. So right here, I'm gonna type send message. We can change the style of a button right here. So let's say I'm gonna choose red. I feel like it's gonna fit perfectly with my design. And this is how it's gonna look. All right, so before we leave, let's click save form. And also we could change the title of this form so we would know what form we are using. So I'm gonna type the title for this form. I'm gonna call this contact form two because in the previous lesson, in the previous section, I already created the first form. So it's gonna be contact form two. All right, let's click rename. And this is the ID of our form. So we want to copy this ID right here. And there's one very important setting adjustment that we have to do. We have to click right here. And as you can see, this is how the message of our form will look once uh, our visitor submits a form. So we can go right here in email notifications and let's make sure that we activated email notifications. Once a customer, once a visitor leaves us a form, leaves us a message, we will be notified to our email inbox. But before we leave, we must do some very important adjustments. Let's click right here and send to here. You have to type your business email address. So type the email address that you created previously where I showed you how to create your business email address because if you're not gonna do any changes here, you will not be notified to your email address. So make sure that you add your business email address right here. So I just entered my business email address. Now I can scroll down and I can click save notification. All right, so make sure that you copy this one right here. Now we can close this here and let's paste this code right here. Okay, now we can click apply. And before we leave, I feel like we need to add a gap. So let's look for a gap element. Let's select this element and uh, let's use 50 pixels. 
let's click apply and now I'm gonna duplicate this one right here let's click apply and now I'm gonna bring this one to the top so I have the same gap at the top of my elements and at the bottom so now we can click publish all right we can click update now we can close this UX builder all right let's go to all our pages and as you remember we renamed this page so we can put it to trash bin and now we can view our contact page and this is how it looks all right so contacts right here it seems quite minimalistic so i just decided that i wanted to include my email address and phone number but it's up to you if you want to include your address as well maybe your working hours i decided to go the simple way just to show you how everything works i also like to include some information for my customers that i usually reply within 24 hours to messages to emails so just to fill up this column right here a bit more but as you can see this is how our contact page looks right now and it's fully functioning contact page it will work just great maybe we didn't need to add a gap right here but we can fix that if we're gonna click right here edit with ux builder and we can remove the gap that we previously added all right so let's delete this bottom gap because uh, we already have a good gap in between the elements we can click update all right we can close this one all right so as you can see this is how it looks and i feel like our contact page looks great uh, it does the job our customers our visitors will be able to contact us leave us a message and what else you could ask all right so that's all for this lesson In this lesson, we're going to go through the creation process of the main menu, of the menus itself. So if you haven't watched my previous section where I showed you how to create menus, it's basically the same. No matter what theme you are using, no matter if you're using any page builders or anything like that, menus are part of the WordPress itself. So if I'm going to go to my homepage as you can see this is the menu we have and no worries about that this menu doesn't fit our header later we're gonna do adjustments to this menu but right now this is the menu we want to have this is the exact menu we are planning to use for our website so how i created this menu so we should go to the dashboard right here and if i would go to appearance section right here i can choose menus so here i created this menu and as you can see here we have various different menus so i can choose from the list so i have main menu i have menu of quick links i have a secondary menu site links but in this course we are only focusing on the on the main menu because that's all we're gonna use in this course so i'm gonna select this main menu and i'm gonna click select and of course if you will need to create a new menu you can click right here and you will be able to create a new menu and later this menu will be added to the list of all menus and in later stages when you're customizing your theme when you are customizing your website you can set this menu newly created menu let's say to display in a certain place of your website but right now our main focus is on this main menu so as you can see we have all the categories and that's exactly what we want to have and if you are wondering how I created this menu so I simply used custom links so right here so I added the text let's say costumes so I added the text costumes and I added the URL of the costumes category so if you're not sure how to find those URLs you can click right here products let's open categories in a new tab and let's go to categories and let's say costumes so this is the costumes category I can click view in a new tab and this is the URL of our costumes category so we can simply copy this URL and if I would go back to my menu right here I can add link text costumes and I will paste the URL once I click add to menu this menu item will be added right here so as you can see right here we have costumes i'm not adding this one because we already have this added to our main menu and our main menu is fine we don't need to do any changes so just like that you can create menus also you can choose from the categories 
if I would go right here, no, sorry, it doesn't work. So this one right here, menu items looks a bit different from the previous version when we were working with Astro theme and it's just because we are working with different theme. So different themes usually have different options, but in this case, when you are creating a menu, you're gonna need to use the same option, custom links, just like we used in the previous section when I was working with Astro theme. So right here, don't forget, paste the URL of your category, add the text and click add to menu and just like that you will create your menu and here of course you can set your menu to be displayed in various different locations but you don't need to focus on that because in later lessons we're gonna do changes to the locations of our menu that will be displayed on our website so no worries about that you don't need to focus right here at all and yeah once you're done with your menu don't forget to save menu and if we would go back to our website so i'm just gonna go to this tab right here i'm gonna click visit site as you can see this is the menu we're gonna have so i'm gonna close this tab right here and if you are wondering how to create a drop down menu i actually showed this how to do in the previous section but i'm just gonna show this one more time so for example if you have parent category costumes and you have child categories like Halloween costumes, Christmas costumes, something like that, and you want to make a drop down menu. So let's say this is gonna be your costumes and this one is gonna be Halloween costumes. So just move it to the right side, just like that. Hit save menu and let's go back to our homepage. Let's refresh this page. And as you can see now, costumes is a drop down menu. So it has bath toys, but in your case, it might be Halloween costumes and maybe you're going to have the second item, Christmas costumes or anything like that. So this is how you create a drop down menu. All right, let's go back and let's make it as it was previously. So we have to select this item right here. Let's move it to the left. And just like that, we're going to go back to the previous layout. Of course, you can swap places with menu elements just like that. So it's up to you. So once you do any changes, don't forget to hit save menu. And now we can go back to our homepage. Let's refresh this page. And as you can see, now costumes is not a drop down menu. All right, we can close this tab. So just like that, you can create menus. And if you're not sure about the menus, you still want to learn a bit more about that. Don't forget to watch my previous section where I showed you how to work with Astro theme and you can check the lesson where I showed how to create menus. So no matter what theme you are using, no matter what page builder plugin or anything like that you are using, the creation process of your menu is going to be the same. But uh, at the later stages, when we are working on the customization options of our website, we can set our menu to be displayed in certain locations. So our goal is going to be to set this menu to display in our header. Right now, it doesn't look too good, but we're going to do some customization options in later lessons. All right, so that's all for this lesson. Now you should know how the menus work. And if you need some more information, don't forget to check my previous lesson in the previous section where I showed you how to create menus. Okay, in this lesson, we're gonna start customizing our theme and you're gonna see yourself how many customization options this theme has compared to our previous theme that we worked on. All right, so let's click right here, customize. And as you can see here, we have all the customization options. We have a bit more options, but once we click, let's say on the header right here, as you can see, this is how many options we have. So right here we have our header builder. We can set different types of headers for desktop devices, for mobile and tablet devices. And right now we're not gonna work on our header because there's quite a lot of things to talk about it. And the later lesson, we're gonna focus on the header a bit more and we're gonna work on that in the later lesson. All right, so let's go back and let's go to style. So once again, in style, you obviously gonna do changes to the style. So to the fonts, to colors and so on. So if I would click right here, typography, as you can see, I can choose my font families for different types of text. So right now, as you can see for headlines, so this is the headline, this is the headline, it's said to be this font and uh, this is the variant. It's up to you what type of font you want to use. I usually don't overcomplicate myself with the uh, font families 
and it's up to you it's of course the matter of taste but lots of websites i know use Roboto font they also use some other popular font families and you can google if you want you can check other popular font families that most of the websites use but as you can see this font looks quite good and if you would choose from the list as you can see we have various different fonts available and it's up to you if you want to explore this option right here so like i always like to say don't be afraid to explore everything yourself because you're gonna learn how to use this theme or tool much better and as you can see right here we also have uh, the different fonts for base text so if i would click on my product right here this is the base text so this is the text will be used for product descriptions reviews and your blog posts and so on so this is where you can do changes to this type of text navigation so if you're going to choose different font for your navigation it's going to be applied right here it's up to you and just to let you know it's not a problem to use two fonts on your website you can absolutely use two fonts on your website you can use different font for your headings or for your base text you can even use a, a completely different font for navigation menu but just keep in mind that those fonts they gotta match together all right so this is where you can do those changes you can also change the text transform right here so as you can see right here breadcrumbs right now are set to uppercase if I would activate this one as you can see instead of being an uppercase this section right here is displayed in normal letters all right let's go back to uppercase and yeah once again it's up to you to decide what you want to use how you want to make things look because once again it's a matter of taste and if you would just follow my course completely blindly uh, you would probably end up with the same looking websites so i think the uniqueness is very important so you should explore everything yourself all right let's go back and in colors all right so as you can see right here we have primary color secondary color and when we were working on our home page just a second yeah this is the home page and as you can see this is how our home page looks and as you remember when we were working on this first section on this banner and when we added a button we had an option to choose what color we wanted to use so we went with the secondary color and as you can see the same color is used right here and right here since it's the secondary color the primary color is right here so i'm just gonna change those colors here i'm gonna add link colors our link colors and all that and once again this one is up to you because you're working on the style on the colors and just keep in mind the best case is to make them match and to make colors matching as you remember i showed you in the previous lesson a while back ago where i talked about how to use coolers tool to generate matching colors so right now i'm just gonna replace all those colors with matching colors all right as you can see i just finished replacing all the colors and this is how it looks and now everything looks a bit better uh, like the way everything looks and uh, since of course we have all the matching colors in place and if i would scroll down this is how everything looks and once again those all style adjustments are up to you but uh, just keep in mind you should use matching colors and if i would scroll down as you can see i can do changes to the separate items to the separate areas of my website on my theme so for example i could choose a completely different color for the sale button so instead of using the secondary color as you can see right here i could choose a color for the sale bubble so it's gonna be not the secondary color but it's gonna use this color if i would decide to set it right here and as you remember i told you before you shouldn't use too many colors on your website because it's not gonna look professional but if you will decide that you want to make sale bubble different or add to cart button different or something like that uh, don't be afraid uh, using four colors or up to five colors is good but just keep in mind that you should match all those colors so you can explore those settings right here yourself and now we can go back and if i would choose global styles right here we're not gonna change anything because everything is good as it is by default so let's go back and custom css so since i told you in the beginning of this course we're not gonna work with any code and we're not gonna do that but if you would need any extra customization options to go even more in depth to dive even more in depth to change colors for a separate small elements this is where you can do that but to do that you should know how to code so you should know css coding language 
Of course, it's for advanced users. All right, let's go back. And image light box. We're not going to change anything because everything is good as it is by default. All right, let's go back. And in blog, we're not going to change anything because we haven't started talking about blogs. And for this, I have a completely separate section. So if we wanted to do those changes right here, we should have blog first and we don't have that yet. But right here, you're just going to be able to do changes to your blog posts, to the categories. And once again, it's the matter of taste. Once you're going to have your blog posts ready, this is where you will be able to do various adjustments. How your blog posts will be displayed, how the featured images will look, what meta data you want to display and so on. So this one will be for you to explore, to decide how the thing's going to look. But usually the way it is by default, it just works well. And you will see it yourself once we publish our first blog post. And yeah, it's going to be for you to decide how you want to work on the customization options of the blog aspect. But I think the default version usually looks good. And no matter what theme you are using. So if you are using an Astro theme or this one. And if you're not going to like the way things look, this is where you will be able to do changes to the blog pages, to the blog posts and to everything that is associated associated to blog. All right, let's go back and the WooCommerce tab right here. This is where you can do changes to the WooCommerce part of your website. So in store notice, if you watch my previous section, this is where I added my store notice. So if I would enable this store notice right here and I would click this one here, as you can see, we have a store notice that you can dismiss, but I usually don't use that store notice, let's say for this type of message, free shipping for orders over $50. Uh, when I'm working with Flatsome theme, maybe it's good option, it's good choice when you're working with Astro theme where you have lack of customization options, but with Flatsome theme, I usually like to display such information right here. So you can easily do that. So we can disable this one completely. All right, let's go back. Product catalog. So this is where you can do changes to the product catalog. I usually like the way everything looks. I do not change anything, but this is for you to explore the customization options. As you can see, this is our product page. So no matter if you're gonna be in the costumes category or wooden toys category or anywhere else, uh, it's gonna look the same, just like this one, shop. So this is where you do all the changes related to catalog. If I would scroll down, this is where you can change the layout of your catalog. I usually like to keep this one. You can change the list style and do various other adjustments. As you can see, there's plenty of various adjustments. And once again, it's the matter of taste. And when we're going to visit the widget section, uh, this is where we're going to add some widgets. So let's not focus on that right now. All right. So just do not be afraid to explore everything yourself. All right. Let's go back from the product catalog product page. All right, so this is the product page. If I would click on this product, we will be working on this product page. So you can change the layout, you can change how the thing's gonna look, how the header gonna look, and so on. So this one is, once again, for you to explore. I usually like to keep everything the way it is. I feel like it looks the best. You can also change how the additional images will be displayed. So for example, yeah, this is how it's gonna look. But I usually like to go with this version. And as you can see right here, we have various other adjustments. And if I would choose, for example, sticky add to cart, if I would scroll down, as you can see, we have add to cart option. So once again, it's up to you to decide what works for you the best. Looking from the conversion rate perspective, I haven't noticed any huge differences if I would have this one activated or not. So it's up to you to decide how you want to make your website look because after all, we are creating unique websites. All right, so I'm just going to disable this one. And as you can see right here, we have even more adjustments. But once again, I do not overcomplicate myself with those changes here because usually everything is good as it is by default. All right, let's go back and my account. So if I would click on my account, I would have to click right here, my account. As you can see, this is my account page. So here you can change the title alignment. As you can see, this is how it would look. I feel like this way it will look better. Yeah, maybe it's gonna look a bit better. And you can change the text color. Once again, those changes are up to you. We don't have too many adjustments right here, but it's okay. I usually like to keep everything simple. All right, let's go back. 
payment icons. So this one is up to you if you will decide that you want to display payment icons such as Visa, PayPal, Stripe, MasterCard, Cash and Delivery and if you would scroll down you will find even more various other different types of payments and I usually do like to display those especially if I'm working with the global audience so my global audience would see that I accept Visa, PayPal, Stripe, MasterCard usually if you accept payments by cards it's a good idea to include Stripe because Stripe is a very well known brand so it's usually a good idea to include that and for example once I would select absolute footer as you can see it's already being displayed right here but it shouldn't be displayed alright I want to display those payment icons right here but I just wanted to show you if I'm gonna display disable it it disappears so I should activate that one and in later lesson when I'm gonna be working on the footer we're gonna do some adjustments right here but for now let's keep those four active and we can go back I also forgot to mention you can also activate this one in card sidebar but I usually don't do that but just to show you how it's gonna look let's activate this one let's go to our card page and this is where it's going to be displayed so this is how it would look all right so we can disable it so it's up to you if you want to keep active or you want to disable it i'm just going to disable it i'm going to go back i'm going to go to the home page and just a second what else we have so we had payment icons product images we're not going to change anything because i feel like everything is good as it is by default but for example if i would choose this one one by one as you can see this is how it would look maybe it will look better so it's up to you i feel like it's gonna look a bit better i feel like it looks better so it's up to you if you want to keep this one or you want to use custom and you can change those settings right here okay let's go back checkout page all right this one is is very important since we were doing some changes in the previous section when I was showing you how to work with Astro theme how to customize it some of the changes were saved so what I did in that section if you remember I decided to hide company name field because I'm doing business to customer I'm not doing business to business I like to keep things simple and I decided to hide the second line for address it's not necessary because sometimes for customers it might look a bit confusing let's keep things simple because simple things work the best all right phone field phone field I usually like to require because it's important field and this information is important and right here you can do various other adjustments but I usually don't change anything maybe in some cases I move email to the first position just like that so you can activate this one as well some of my websites they have email address in the first position and once again i haven't noticed any huge difference in conversion rate and if you like the way this checkout page looks you can keep it just like that but if you would choose the simple layout as you can see this is how it would look and i feel like it's gonna look much better and if you would choose focused one it maybe doesn't look that good so let's go with a simple one all right now we can go back and if i would go to cart adjustments all right this is where i'm gonna be doing changes to the cart itself so i have to go to my cart and once again here you can change the layout so if i'm gonna choose the simple one this is how it's gonna look but i can go with a focused one i feel like the focused one is gonna look much better all right it looks a bit better i do understand it looks almost identical and just a second and you can also activate boxed shipping labels as you can see this is how it would look so once again those are up to you and right here if you would do any changes with those options you won't be seeing any changes because in the last lesson of this section i will show you how to fix this uh, card page the checkout page uh, there are some things we have to do but no worries everything functions the way it is right now but uh, in the last lesson the final touches you're just gonna take care of the final things so everything would look perfect all right so i think everything looks good now we can go back and basically we are done with WooCommerce tab with WooCommerce customization options let's go back layout adjustments we're not gonna change anything because everything is good as it is by default maybe you are creating some type of website in a specific niche where your website has to be extra sweet or something like that maybe you would want to include a background image that you can barely see maybe this would work so once again it's up to you and don't forget to check every time the changes on each device on tablet on mobile and once again let's go back to the desktop view and okay 
So here we're not gonna change anything because everything is good as it is by default. All right, let's go back. And the footer, we're not gonna do any changes because there's gonna be a completely separate lesson for this. And basically in this section, you're gonna have two options, how to set up your footer. So you're gonna have the same option as you had in the previous section by using widgets. But in the second option, we're gonna set up our footer in a bit easier way. And that's exactly on what I'm gonna focus. So let's not focus on the footer right now at all because we're gonna have a separate lesson for this. Pages, right? Here we're not gonna change anything because everything is good as it is by default. All right, let's go back. Portfolio, we can skip portfolio because we are creating an e-commerce store. We are not creating a portfolio type of website. And uh, like I said, this flat sum theme, this premium theme is extremely versatile. You can even create a portfolio website using this theme. But since we are working on an e-commerce website, let's not focus on that at all. All right, let's go back. Menus. So right here, we can change the locations of menus. And uh, to be honest, here we're not gonna change much. Uh, probably the only one thing that we're gonna change we're gonna go to main menu and basically we had kind of similar adjustments in Astro theme but here we have more settings because we are working with premium theme and uh, the only thing that I'm gonna change I'm just gonna disable footer menu I don't need to display any menu in the footer so if I would scroll down as you can see this menu that was displayed previously disappeared and that's exactly what we wanted to happen all right let's go back let's go back one more time widgets so here we don't have much adjustments as you can see we have adjustments for our footer and if i would go back this is the second footer and here we're not gonna change anything because those widgets are right here for our footer and maybe if you're gonna decide that you want to customize your footer using widgets just like we did in the previous section this is where you can work on those widgets this is where you can add those widgets but in this section we're gonna create our footer in a different way all right so here let's not focus on that too much all right let's leave that just like that home page settings we are not gonna change anything because everything is good as it is by default and as you can see the only thing that we can change is we can set page for our blog post all right let's go back share so in share you can do changes to the share button so for example if i'm gonna select this product right here as you can see here we have share buttons maybe we don't need to use email option because email is quite outdated let's be honest all right and this way i feel like it looks good and if you don't like the style you can change the style as you can see if you would choose this one this is how it would look and once again all style adjustments are up to you i usually like to keep things simple just like that all right let's go back notifications we are not gonna change anything right here this tab is maybe for users who are looking to let their visitors know that uh, there were any changes with cookie policy or something like that but we don't need to focus right here because everything is good okay let's go back and additional css once again this one is for advanced users who are looking to do some customization using css coding all right let's not focus on that okay and right here reset options you can reset theme options but we're not gonna use that at all all right let's go back let's check how our website is gonna look on tablet devices all right i feel like everything looks good and uh, of course you're gonna work on our header of course you're gonna change the footer but for now everything looks great if i would click on this menu this is how it's gonna look and if i would click on the mobile device it's gonna look the same and yeah basically everything looks great and if everything looks great if you are satisfied with the final result we can click publish we can close this one and this is how it looks so our home page looks quite well it's nothing compared to the previous section and of course it's because we are working with a premium theme all right so that's all for this lesson In this lesson, we're gonna edit our header that's right here, okay? So just like we did some changes to our header when we were working with Astro theme, it's gonna be the same, but except this time we're gonna have more customization options. All right, let's click customize and let's select header. And as you can see here, we have header builder. And uh, just like with Astro theme, this header builder has three levels. So this is the top part of our header you can see this right here in this electric color 
we have the second part of our header you can see it right here and we have the third part that is inactive right here you can switch between the different modes as you can see if i would switch to mobile tablet view i have a different header builder because on mobile and tablet devices our header looks different so this is how it's gonna look we have a bit different structure a bit different layout but it still works and it does the job so when you are working on your header using this platform theme you have to keep in mind that you have to do changes to your desktop device and to your mobile and tablet devices and as you can see right here in this header builder we have various elements we have html code so basically this html code is text right here this is the text if i would move this html block or element and this area of not used elements as you can see it disappears all right if i would move it back it shows up again so as you can see we have various different blocks elements and it's gonna be up to you to experiment what you're gonna like more but once again in this lesson i'm gonna show you my blueprint and i find that it just works all right so once we clicked on this block as you can see we are doing changes to this block but this block has various different html codes so this block is connected with other html blocks so those settings right here i mean so as you can see we have html block number two number three number Number four and here you can add various information text images if you want and if it's too confusing for you HTML is a very simple coding language and I'm just gonna explain you real quick what this code right here means as you can see we have text add anything here or just remove it so you can add any text you want and right here it's just set to display this text in upper cases and uh, this is a bold text so that's basically all it means I usually don't use this one right here except when I'm offering free shipping for order let's say $50 so I might replace this text and I'm gonna add free shipping for orders over $50 and as you can see this is how it would look and once again it's up to you how you want to display this information you can even move this block to the center and of course now it doesn't look too good because we have this menu we can deactivate this menu just like that and now it would look much better if we would switch to mobile and tablet device as you can see we have this html block as well and once again it's up to you if you are offering such things as a free shipping or you want to display any other information it's completely up to you i usually like to keep things simple and in majority of cases i just disable this top bar right here and when i'm offering let's say some special deal sales I just add HTML text informing my visitors, customers that there are such deals, such offers, such sales or something like that. And I include this information here. If you're not doing that, you can disable this one by moving this HTML code just like that. Or you can completely disable this top bar. So if you would click right here, top bar, you can select if you want to disable it. So for now, since I'm building the header according to my blueprint, I'm just going to disable it. But now you know the ways how you can use this top header and it's completely up to you all right so now you are familiar that here we have our header builder we have various blocks that we can move around in this header builder and if we are not using those blocks we can put them here and if we want to do some changes to these blocks we can click on those blocks and we can start doing changes to those blocks and you can also switch in between different views so now we know how that works. All right, so let's go back to all header customization options. And as you can see, with the presets, if I would go right here, you could choose the presets. So it's pre-made template for the header. You can explore that yourself. And it's completely up to you if you want to use that. But you can create your own header. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this lesson. So you can explore those. You can activate them. You can deactivate them. Maybe you'll find the header you would like to use. And once again, it's the matter of taste. Okay, let's go back. In logo and site identity, of course, you can add your site title. Since I already added this site title and the tagline when I was doing changes to my WordPress settings, uh, those are right here already in place and yours should be here as well. And those are not displayed because I haven't activated this one. And uh, the most important thing that we're gonna do here, we're gonna change the logo. So we're gonna click right here this is the logo i want to use i'm gonna click select and i can change the logo size so if i'm gonna move this one just like that 
I'm gonna shrink it. All right, I think it looks better. And now if I would scroll down here, you can see we have some other adjustments. You can play with those changes to see if it's gonna change anything. And of course, right here, you should add your side icon. So the side icon is displayed right here. So this is very important. Okay, let's go back. Top bar. So we already disabled the top bar that was displayed right here. And it's up to you if you want to display. Maybe you'll want to display this top bar when you are offering some special deals, special sales or something like that. And it's completely up to you. And if you're going to do that, you can activate it. You can add various blocks to this top bar, just like we did previously when we added HTML1, this one here, as you can see. Just like that, you can add those right here. All right, let's go back. Let's select top bar one more time. You can adjust the height. You can change the background color and do all other adjustments. So those are going to be up to you if you will want to use the top bar, but I'm just going to disable it. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to header main. So if you would click right here, we will be doing changes to this part of our header. So this is where we're going to do changes. You can change the height, as you can see. You can adjust that. You can change the width, just like that. I usually like to keep this way. And you can change the colors. You can do all other adjustments. You can change the size of navigator menu and so on. So this one is going to be up to you to explore because, of course, you want to create a unique looking website. OK, we can go back. And uh, to be honest, since we were there and we were working on this part, uh, we could do some changes to this section right here. So I usually like to display search right here and I like to put my main menu in the third part of my header, just like that. And I do not use search icon. Instead of search icon, I like to use search form. So just a second, this is the search form. And if I would add right here, this is how it's going to look. And as you can see, our website is starting to look better. And I usually like to go with this option right here, this one. And I usually like to choose flat. And I usually like to expand the width of this search bar. OK, I feel like it looks good. Now we can go back and now we have header bottom. So we already did some changes. We moved our main menu in the header bottom. So this is our header bottom. We could click right here to do changes to header bottom, but we can click here as well. So if I would click right here, I could change the height of our header bottom. I could make it a bit larger. I could also change the color to white. I think it's going to look much better. And I could change the navigation menu size. If I'm going to choose extra large, this is how it's going to look. But if I would choose large, this is what we get. Maybe it doesn't look too good. Maybe we could go with medium size and we could expand the spacing in between those menu elements. All right, I think it looks better. OK, the color didn't change, so we should change that one more time. And those changes are not appearing. No worries about that. Once we click publish, those changes will be in place. So no worries about that. You can also explore some other options. Uh, this one is completely up to you. All right, let's go back. OK, header mobile menu overlay. So here you will be doing changes to mobile or tablet device. So you should change your view to mobile and tablet. And as you can see, this is how it looks. So here you can do various adjustments. So this is our menu. And as you can see right here, now we have newsletter. To make this newsletter work, we would have to create a block and we would have to add to this block our contact form. And it's just too complicated for our visitors. And I usually don't include this type of newsletter in my menu. I usually like to include a simple newsletter form in the footer and it works very well. Sometimes I include pop-ups, but I do not like to include newsletter in the main menu because it just doesn't work. OK, so to disable this newsletter, because like I said, I do not recommend you to include that as well. You can scroll down and here we have various menu elements. All right. At the top, we have search. So this is search. We have main menu. We have account. So this is my account part and we have newsletter. So we can disable newsletter part and we can keep social icons. Later, I'm going to show you how to add your profiles, your pages to those social media icons. 
Okay, so now we are kind of done with this part where we were doing changes to mobile and tablet menus. So this is how it's gonna look. I think it's gonna look good and you can explore some other adjustments as well. So now we can go back to desktop view. We can close this one and we can go back and right here sticky header so sticky header means that you're gonna have sticky header once you scroll down so for example if i'm gonna scroll down as you can see our header is sticky okay so this is how it looks and it just sticks okay if i'm gonna activate and just a second i'm gonna deactivate the top yeah just a second because sometimes it just freezes and it's not supposed to act this way okay so now everything is normal and i deactivated this top bar and now it looks perfectly and uh, no worries about that if you published everything and you went to check your website uh, those changes would be saved and you wouldn't have any issues but i just wanted to show you how it's gonna look so as you can see this is how our sticker header looks and i usually like to keep the sticky header just like that it's very convenient for our customers, for our visitors. All right, so this is what the sticky header is. If you would go to drop down style, as you can see right here, you could do changes to the drop down menu. So, for example, if you would have, let's say, parent category costumes, and in this parent category, you would have child categories Halloween costumes, Christmas costumes, or any other type of costumes. Once you hover over costumes and there's a drop down menu, this is where you can do changes to this drop down menu so this one is up to you to explore okay let's go back buttons okay so buttons here you can add buttons so for example we have button number one so let's say maybe you're gonna create a button i don't know where this button will take your visitors it's gonna be up to you I usually don't use that because the simple header works just well but if in the future you will decide that you want to include some buttons let's say live consultation something like that this is where you can add text all right live consultations something like that this is where you will include link where your users can register for live consultations and now you will have an active button one and also you can do some other style adjustments for this button for this button one and if you would scroll down you can create another button and once you do that this is where you will find those buttons so right now those buttons are not used so these are the buttons button one button two so as you can see button one button two so for example i'm gonna include link hashtag i'm doing just to show you how it works and let's say now i want to include this button to the right side of my main header and as you can see we have a button you can also drag this button right here and once again it's up to you how you want to use those buttons okay i'm gonna put it back to not in use section all right let's go back now you should understand how buttons work account so once again this is our account our users can log into their accounts they can check their orders addresses and so on and this is where you can do various changes to the style of this part right here you can add an icon okay this is how it's gonna look but i usually like to keep things simple you can activate username as label as you can see this is how it would look and yeah those are just the settings for you to explore but i usually like to keep the way things are i think it looks great let's go back card you can do changes to the card style so at the moment this is how it looks i usually like to keep it this way i feel like it looks the best but once again it's up to you to explore you can activate this option you can choose card icon you can do whatever you want you can also import your custom icons so svg file so just like i showed you in the other lesson where you can download icons this is where you can upload your icon if you want and this is where you can do those changes related to your card style okay let's go back search so for search we already did some changes we selected the style so this is how it looks right now and i feel like it looks great all right let's go back html we're not gonna do anything because i already told you that this is where you can add uh, various information to html blocks so we have first html block as you remember we added free shipping for orders over 50 dollars so this is our html block just a second this is the first block 
And let's say I'm going to add this one right here. And this is how it looks. It doesn't look good. I totally understand because it's supposed to be right here at a top bar. But since we have disabled the top bar, it's not displaying. So we can put it back to not in use section. Okay, let's go back. Contact. So right here you can add your phone, your email, maybe later you will decide that you want to use those contact blocks anywhere you want. So once you add this information right here, we have this contact block and once again, you can display it anywhere you want. Okay, this is the contact information. You can display it at your top bar or anywhere else. Let's put it back. Okay, let's go back. Newsletter. So once again, like I said, I usually don't like to use newsletter. It's not the best way to show the newsletter form for your visitors. I usually like to include newsletter in the footer and I'm going to show you how that's done. And of course, for marketing purposes, you can also create pop-ups and yeah, that's how it works. But I usually don't like to use that in my header. It just overcomplicates things. All right, let's go back. Vertical menu. So vertical menu is for your mobile or tablet devices and usually everything is good as it is by default and we don't need to change anything. Okay, let's go back. Follow icons. So this is where you want to include your social media profiles, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, maybe your email address if you want to and all other information. And once you include those, you can display those social media icons anywhere you want. The block responsible for those icons is this one. So as you remember, it used to be displayed at the top, in the top bar. So let's activate the top bar one more time. Now we have our social media icons and we have a newsletter. If I would drag this newsletter to the not in use section, as you can see it disappears. And if I would click on social icons, we go to the same tab as previously. And here you can add your Facebook, Instagram profiles, you can change the style. As you can see, this is how it would look. So this one is completely up to you. All right, let's go back to the settings of top bar. Let's disable the top bar. Okay, let's go back. And pretty much that's it. So as you saw it yourself, this Flatsome theme has way more customization options compared to the Astra theme. And you have a lot of different ways to create your header. But I usually like to keep it simple because it works the best. And it's also completely up to you what type of header you want to have. But if you want to have the same header, just follow my steps and you'll have the same header. Once you're done with changes, don't forget to click publish. And now we can close the sidebar. And as you can see, this is how our header looks. It's a fully functioning header. And as you can see, it's a sticky header as well. And it works just well. It looks much better. And of course, it looks much better than we had our header with Astro theme. Okay, so that's all for this lesson. In this lesson, we're going to customize our footer. So the footer is right here. And like I mentioned you before, with this premium theme, with this Flatsum theme, you actually have two options to customize your footer. So the first option is right here. If you would click customize, it is going to be similar to the option when we were customizing our footer using Astro theme, except this time we ain't gonna have footer builder. So if you would click right here, footer, as you can see, we have first level of our footer. So this is right here. If I would disable it, as you can see, it disappears. And of course, you can choose how many columns you want to have. And if you're gonna scroll down, you're gonna have the second level of your footer. So this is the second level. And as you can see, it also has four columns. It has the background color and we have absolute footer that is right here. And with absolute footer, we will not be able to disable this right here because it is absolute footer and it's just going to be displayed. You can delete the text, you can disable those icons, but no worries about that. We're going to use this absolute footer, but we're not going to customize our footer using those options. And as you can see, those all footer levels, the first one, the second one were created using widgets. So if I'm going to click right here, as you can see, we have various blocks, various widgets. 
similarly to astrofim when we were customizing our footer using widgets so it's basically the same since we are using this premium theme we have an option to create our footer in the easier way so why over complicate ourselves with a more difficult way when we can do this in an easier way all right so let's close this customization sidebar let's click ok let's go to our dashboard and to create our footer we're gonna use ux blocks ux blocks are similar to widgets you can create blocks and you can display them in various places in this case we're gonna create a block and we're gonna display it in our footer as our footer and when you are creating blocks using this ux blocks option you will be creating those blocks using ux builder so the same builder that we use to create our home page and all other pages so let's click add new let's give a title let's call it footer and let's click publish and now we can select ux builder right here all right as you can see we have the same interface when we were working with our pages and now let's click add elements and let's choose Flatsum Studio. And as you can see right here from the list, we can choose all kinds of different pre-made layouts. So we want to choose footer. And as you can see right here, we have some pre-made footer layouts that you can use. And it's up to you which one you would like to use. You can even click preview to check how those footers look. As you can see, if you would choose this one, you could replace the information that is here with your information and you can set this footer to be displayed as your footer. All right, let's close this one. I usually like to use this one. So let's click import. And as you can see right here, we have our footer. This is how it's going to look. So the first things first, we could change the information that is right here. I usually like to include a short sentence about my business, about my e-commerce store. And at the top, I usually like to include my logo. So let's click right here. Let's click open text editor. I'm going to delete this title right here. I'm going to click here, add media, and I'm just going to select my logo. Okay, I'm gonna click insert into page. Okay, let's resize it a little bit. Okay, I think it looks good. And here I'm just gonna paste my text, my short sentence about my online store. All right, so I'm done and I'm gonna click OK. Right here, you can include your social media profiles. So if you have your Facebook page, this is where you can add your URL, your Instagram URL, Twitter or any other. So this one is up to you. If you have those profiles, just paste them right here and they will be displayed here. If you don't like the way those icons look, you can do some style adjustments, but I usually like to keep them just like that. I feel like it looks good. Since I'm not going to add my profiles, I'm just gonna click apply and I'm gonna move on to the next column. All right, so right here, I usually like to include information for customers. So at the top, I'm just gonna type for customers and here I'm going to include five pages for my customers, such pages as shipping and delivery information, returns and refunds, my account, my orders, and so on. So since I know that I'm going to have five pages, I can copy one of those pages right here. And I can go to the next line and I will paste this page. All right, as you can see, I accidentally copied too many pages, so I can delete some of them. I only need five. All right, so right here I have five pages and before I add anything, I have to disable the links that were added previously. So I'm just gonna remove links one by one, just like that. And here I'm just gonna replace the text with my pages. All right, so now I have to add links to these pages. So to add my account link, simply let's go to our website right here. All right, just a second, it opened our post page. So let's click visit site and let's go to my account. And this is our account page. So we want to copy this URL right here. Let's go back and here just select my account. Select this one, paste this URL and click this one, apply. Just like that, you will make this page active. And the same goes with orders. So let's select orders and I'm gonna copy this URL right here. And I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna select this one. And once again, just paste your URL click enter and your page is active okay so now we have to add contact page so to find our contact page we should go to our dashboard let's select all pages and simply just open contact page in a new tab just like that and this is your URL so you want to copy this one now we can close it let's go back and let's paste this one right here just select this one before 
let's paste it just like that let's click apply and i'm gonna do the same with the rest of pages all right so i finished adding my pages now i can click ok and we can go back and we are basically done with this column right here now let's go to the second column so in this column i'm gonna include four pages and those pages gonna be privacy policy about us uh, cookie policy and all other pages so basically i'm just gonna do the same as i did with this column right here i'm gonna list all my pages and I'm going to add URLs to these pages. So as you can see, privacy policy, I'm just going to open this one in a new tab. I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to paste this URL to my page. All right, I just finished adding all the pages and now I can click OK. And let's go back. And right here in this column, I'm going to include some information to encourage our visitors to join my newsletter club. I usually like to call this one not just a simple and ordinary newsletter, but I usually like to call it as a club as a special club where our visitors where our subscribers can get special deals and offers so i'm just gonna select this one right here i'm gonna click open text editor and i'm just gonna replace this information here all right so i just added my information and now we have to add a contact form so the form where our visitors where our customers can subscribe to our newsletter so if you haven't watched my previous lesson where i showed you how to do that with astro theme we're gonna do this one more time so let's go to our website and to create a newsletter form we're gonna use the same plugin as we used to create contact form all right let's go to fluent forms and let's click new form but if you have already created a form from the previous section where i showed you how to do that with astro theme you can easily use that form that we created previously but if you haven't done this yet you should create a new form so this is the form we could use all right let's select this form and right here we can do some changes so let's change the button background so i'm just gonna use the same color right here as i used for my logo all right so i replaced the color now we should do the same with hover color so right here i'm just gonna paste the color that i used for this button i'm gonna paste it right here and i'm gonna do the same with this color right here so i'm just gonna paste it right here and this is how it's gonna look all right i feel like it looks good and now we can do some changes right here i usually don't like to keep this star right here that this field is required it's kind of obvious for our visitors if they want to subscribe to our newsletter they have to enter their email address so we can select no it's not required it's just gonna look a bit better and all right just a second let's go back to input field and all right so this is how it's gonna look we can give a title to this form subscription form footer let's click rename all right we can close this one we can copy this form right here let's go back and let's replace this form that was added by default with our form all right so this is how it's gonna look now we can click ok and we can go back and we are kind of done with our footer but before we leave let's disable this area right here let's delete it because we don't need it since we are using absolute footer all right so we can click right here and let's select delete all right i feel like it looks good so now we can click update we can close this ux builder and now we should go to our site and as you remember let's click customize to work on our footer let's scroll until we see our footer so this is the current version now let's select footer and let's choose custom footer block so right here let's choose the footer that we created using ux builder all right let's scroll down and as you can see this is how it's gonna look of course this color will be different right now just showing up just like that but no worries about that we're gonna have our color that we set previously all right so before we leave we should do some changes to our absolute footer right here so let's select this absolute footer and let's work on the background color we can change the text style right here and we can select background color let's choose a light gray color just like this one and let's put it in the center and I feel like it looks quite good and now we can replace the text right here so instead of using flat some theme let's add the title of our website all right and this is how it looks and I think it looks great it definitely looks better than the previous footer we created using Astro theme now we can click publish and we can close the sidebar of customization options and let's see how our footer looks now 
All right, let's refresh this page. For some reason, it didn't save the settings of subscribe. So we should make sure that we save those settings. So let's go back to our footer builder and let's click save form one more time. Let's make sure that we save those settings and let's purge all cache just in case it didn't save. And now we can refresh this page. And as you can see, those changes were applied. So our customers can join our newsletter club. And for example, if I'm gonna type my email address right here, let's click subscribe. All right, so it says, thank you for your message. We will get in touch with you shortly. So that's not the message we want to show to our subscribers. So let's go back to our editor. And as you remember, this is where we created our form. So this is the same form. And now we should go to the settings and integrations and we should replace the text right here. So instead of showing this message, let's show them thank you for joining our club. All right, let's click save settings. And now every time someone subscribes to our newsletter, they're going to see this message. And once someone subscribes to your form, to your newsletter form, you should go right here to check all the email addresses that subscribe to your form. All right, not here, sorry. It's for creating new form. You should go to all forms instead. And as you remember, this was the form we created. It says subscription form footer. And here you will see all the entries. So here you will find all the email addresses. So if I'm gonna click right here, this is the same email address I used to subscribe to this form. So once you're gonna collect more email addresses, you can select them all and you can click right here, export and you can export them in Excel file and later you can use those all email addresses for email marketing. All right, now we can close this one and basically that's it. So if I'm gonna refresh this page one more time, this message will be gone. And basically this is it. This is how our footer looks now. And as you can see, it looks much better than the footer we had when we were working with Astrophy. So this is it for this lesson. All right, so we are almost done with creating our website using a premium theme. And as you can see, it looks much better than the previous version. And of course, all the customization options are up to you. As you saw it yourself, this theme is much more customizable compared to a free option that you saw earlier. All right, so in the final touches in this lesson, we're gonna cover some of the things that we skipped. So right here, if I'm gonna click on, let's say costumes category or any category, as you can see, we don't have a sidebar right here. So to add a sidebar to this area here, we have to go to our dashboard and we have to go to appearance tab and we have to select widgets. And this is the sidebar, shop sidebar. So in this shop sidebar, I usually like to include my categories and the recently viewed products. So our customers could see the recently viewed products. So for example, if I'm gonna choose this one, recent, no, not the recent post, just a second. We have to scroll down. Yeah, first of all, let's start with product categories. So let's choose this one and let's click add to shop sidebar, add widget. All right, so right here we have product categories. All right, so now we should scroll down and we should look for recently viewed products. Let's scroll down, let's scroll down. And yeah, this is the widget we want to use. So let's select this one, let's click add widget. And this widget was added successfully. So we just finished adding all the widgets we needed. And now we can go back to our site and we're gonna select, let's say costumes category. And as you can see, this is how it's going to be displayed. So if I'm gonna check this product right here and I'm gonna go to educational toys. As you can see, we have recently viewed products. So it's displaying right here. So everything works. All right, so the next thing that we have to work on is going to be in WooCommerce settings. And I actually did this when I was showing you how to work with Astro theme in the last touches of this section. So let's make sure that we have those settings active. So let's go to WooCommerce, let's select settings. Let's go to accounts and privacy. And let's make sure that you have activated allow customers to log in into an existing account during the checkout, allow customers to place orders without an account, allow customers to create an account during the checkout and all those settings right here. So you want to allow your customers to create the accounts. It's just a good practice. So make sure that you have those activated right here. If you have those activated, now we can go to the last thing that we have to take care of. So let's go to the site. 
and let's scroll down and as you can see if I'm gonna click about us page I'm just gonna open this one in a new tab this is how it looks it doesn't look too good because it's just using WordPress text editor and if you are fine with this option right here you can keep it just like that but remember to create your about page you can use UX builder so for example I'm just gonna keep this page open here I'm gonna go back to the dashboard I'm gonna go to pages all pages and if I want to create a new page a separate page uh, for about page I can simply delete this page and that's exactly what I'm gonna do and I'm just gonna create a completely new page but I'm keeping this tab open because I want to have this information uh, since I'm going to copy this information later alright so let's go back and also it's quite important to mention that if you're gonna delete a page you'll find those pages in trash bin so no worries about it if you deleted the page it doesn't mean it disappeared but if you want them gone you have to go to your trash bin select all pages and select delete permanently all right okay let's go back to all pages and we can click add new page let's type about and let's select edit with ux builder and let's create a new about page but once again before we do that uh, this one is completely up to you if you want to do that you can follow this lesson through or if you don't want to do that you are fine with a simple looking about page it's completely up to you and if you want like the page I'm currently creating you can create different type of page so this one is once again up to you all right let's click add elements and let's go to Flatsome Studio one more time and as you can see in about tab we have various different styles for our about page you can use one pre-created layout you can use two three four or five as many as you need but let's make it simple and I believe I'm gonna choose this one so I'm gonna select import I'm not gonna import images because I already have some images ready so let's click start and right here I'm just gonna add my text about us so from here I'm just gonna copy this text right here I'm gonna go back I'm gonna open this in a text editor and I'm just gonna paste this text just like that I'm gonna click OK and here there's a button I'm not using any buttons so if you see there's a button you can simply click right here delete I can also delete this button as well because I'm not using it so I'm just gonna click delete and right here I can add something about our story so once again I'm gonna copy this one I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna paste it right here and I can actually go to the new line and type our story and I can choose the level for the heading so heading 2 I think it's gonna look fine and we can click OK let's go back and here we can add images so that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna add my image right here alright so I just added first image and I'm gonna show you how I did this so you wouldn't get lost alright so I clicked right here plus icon I selected image and now I'm just gonna select the media and let me choose the image this is the image I want to use no I'm gonna use this one instead I'm gonna click use image and as you can see this is how it looks and I can change the size of this image if I'm gonna move this one just like that I can even move this image a bit up and this is how it's gonna look I feel like it looks good and now I can click publish and now I can close UX builder and let's go to all of our pages and this is our newly created about page so the reason why I deleted the previous page I created a new one so we would have the same URL so here's why I did this so if I'm gonna go back to my website I'm gonna go to my home page and since our URL didn't change we have the same URL if I'm gonna click right here about us we have a new looking page so that's why I did this that's why I deleted the previously created about page so we could create the same page with the same URL so we are basically done with this part and the last thing that we have to do we have to go to our cart page and as you remember when we were customizing our cart page we had an option to do some changes to numbers to the steps of our cart page and right now we cannot see those because we have to change the layout of this page so to do this we have to click right here edit page and here in template let's choose WooCommerce cart this is the template we want to use let's click update 
now we can click view page and as you can see we have a different looking page it's a minimalistic page it's totally focused on the card page uh, that's the popular layout nowadays and it just works and if you don't like this layout of course you can go to customization options click right here card layout and you can do changes but as you can see right now we have our shopping cart right here we have checkout step and we have order complete step so this is how it looks if you don't like this layout like i said you can go to customization options and you can do cart layout changes as you remember you had different views simple focused and minimalistic if i'm not mistaking anything and if i would go to checkout page right here as you can see it's also missing the steps right here so we have to go right here edit page and once again let's choose the template let's select woocommerce checkout and let's click update now let's click view page and this is how it looks so it's also totally focused page this is how it looks and it's usually quite convenient for customers so once again if you don't like this layout you can go right here checkout layout just like you can do with cart layout as you can see in checkout layout we can choose default and this is how it would look if we would choose focus it would look this way just like our cart page so it's up to you if you want to choose the default one or the simple one so let's go back to the simple one and let's click publish let's close the customization sidebar we can close this page we can go to our home page and pretty much that's it we are basically done with customizing our website using flatsome theme so that's all for this lesson all right fantastic on completing this section so as you saw it yourself working with a flat sum theme compared to astra is a completely different thing it has way more customization options for example once you started customizing your header as you saw it yourself how many options it had compared to Astra theme. So Flatsome theme is highly customizable and I use it for a reason on all of my websites because I truly like this theme. It's highly customizable, it loads fast, it looks good and what else could you ask from the theme. And uh, most of all it's just one time fee so you won't need to pay every year for this theme. Unlike a lot of themes they do this where you have to pay every year for a theme let's say about $80 or something like that and if you need to pay for the theme every month or every year uh, that means you don't have this theme so once you purchase your Flatsum theme it kind of belongs to you so that's a great thing and of course Flatsum has a huge community so maybe in the future you're gonna have some questions related to Flatsum theme you can join their group but you can also join my Facebook group and if you're gonna have any questions just let me know and I will help you right away so congratulations on completing this section now you know how to customize your website using a premium theme that is called Flatsum great job so far so let's keep building our website all right in this lesson we are gonna start talking about seo and if you're not familiar with seo it is search engine optimization basically you do everything you can to appear higher in google search results all right let's start by asking ourselves a very simple question what is a search engine so search engine can be google.com bing.com duckduckgo.com and any other search engine there are plenty of them nowadays but the most popular one is obviously google and this is where we're gonna focus the most and when we are talking about search engine optimization we usually are talking about optimizing our content so we would appear higher in google search results and uh, actually there's a good old saying in seo world if you want to hide a dead body you should use the second page of google search results because no one goes there so your goal is to make sure that you do everything you can to appear in the first page of google search results and the best case scenario it would be to appear in the top three results and of course if you can the best option would be to appear in the first position of google search results so how do we optimize our website so mainly we have two ways to optimize our website we have on-page seo and we have off-page seo 
All right, let's talk about on-page SEO. So in short, on-page SEO means that you do everything you can in your hands, in your power to optimize your website. So this is where you can use all tactics, all tricks yourself on your website, not anywhere else, but on your website, on your website pages to optimize your content. And how we do that? So we do keyword research, we optimize our content with keywords, we use interlinking and of course good user experience is also important. So how we do this keyword research you might be wondering. So for this we usually use tools to do our keyword research for our content, for our products and such tools could be Ubersuggest, SEMrush, Ahrefs. The last two they are quite expensive and I usually like to do keyword research with Ubersuggest. It's a much cheaper version and if you're gonna use this tool you're gonna get seven days free trial so I highly recommend you to check out this tool and if you are building a website for your native audience, for your native language audience, Uber suggests it also has an option to choose uh, various different countries and various different languages. So that's very convenient. And uh, when we are doing a keyword research, we also check our competitors. So you probably already know your competitors. And if you know those competitors, you know their products, you know their blog posts, you know their content. And you can, for example, take their product page. If you're going to sell a similar looking product, you can take this product page and you can run it through your keyword research tool like Uber Suggest. And this tool will let you know how much traffic this uh, specific product, specific page is getting for what keywords it's ranking and uh, what keywords are bringing this product the most traffic. And maybe you're going to see some other keywords for this particular product isn't ranking high because it's not optimized for these particular keywords. And this is where you can take advantage of that. And you can take, let's say, this keyword and you can use this keyword for your product and you can try to optimize your product using this keyword because that's not the keyword your competitor is using. So this is where you can take advantage when you are analyzing your competitors. And of course, when you are analyzing your competitors, you're gonna get some keyword suggestions. All right, so now you know how that works, what we use, but you might be wondering, what is a keyword? So basically keyword is just a phrase or phrases people use to look for information for news articles, for blog posts, for products, for images or anything like that in Google. So let's say in my case, I have a keyword wooden train toy and I did my keyword research and I found out that people are searching for this keyword. This keyword is getting quite a lot of monthly searches and that means people are interested in this product. They are looking for it and uh, this is a popular keyword. When I'm working with products, I cannot just come up with random names for products because it doesn't necessarily mean that people are looking for these products in these specific words. So that's exactly what keywords are. Keywords are just the phrases people type in Google search to look for information for products or anything else. So like I said, we look for popular keywords that people actually use to find information, to find products. But when we have a fresh website, our goal is to find not so competitive keywords. So basically that means not a lot of websites are optimizing their content, their products using those keywords because they are less popular, but they are still quite popular because people still use to look for information. And that's why we aim at those keywords that are less competitive. That means there are less websites that are optimizing their content using those keywords and uh, just because it's less competitive we have higher chances to appear in higher position of google search results when we're gonna do a keyword research you're gonna see it yourself i'm gonna do this in later lesson but right now my goal is to give you a better understanding what are keywords how they work and basically you would have a solid foundation of seo all right, let's talk about short tail keywords. So keywords are usually in two types. There are short tail keywords and there are long tail keywords. Usually short tail keywords are up to three words and usually they are very competitive. They are more difficult to rank. I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say I'm writing a blog post about Bengal cats. 
it's just the two words but this keyword is very popular around 200,000 people from us look for this keyword look for this information and obviously it's gonna be difficult to rank for this keyword so you have to take this in consideration when you are publishing blog posts when you're adding products or anything like that so for example when you're adding a product you could name your product wooden train in this case it's a short keyword but it's gonna be way more competitive because it's a short tail keyword and the more people look for this type of keyword if you would use wooden train toy it's gonna be a bit less competitive of course but it's gonna have less monthly searches if you're gonna use a longer keyword that's gonna be a long tail keyword and in this case could be wooden train toy set so now we have four words in this keyword and that's a long tail keyword of course it's gonna be less competitive because less people are looking for this type of product and it's gonna be a bit easier to rank in the first page of google search just because there are less websites that are targeting this keyword and there are less people who are looking for this keyword and I kind of already talked about long tail keywords. So the long tail keywords usually have more than three words. They are less competitive, they're easier to rank. And I'm just gonna give you a good example. Uh, when I'm working with one of my projects uh, that is focused on cats, I found out a quite easy to rank keywords and they are long tail keywords. So here's one example, can cats eat oranges? It's a long keyword, it has a lot of words, but it has uh, quite a lot of monthly searches, but not a lot of websites they use this keyword to rank for because it's not so popular, but that's something people want to know and uh, that's why this is a good keyword. So when you're gonna be doing keyword research, pay attention how competitive it is, how many monthly searches it gets, and maybe you're gonna find some other variations for this keyword that's gonna be less competitive but maybe it's gonna have almost the same amount of monthly searches so that's why it is important and we're gonna dive into this a bit deeper when we're gonna do the keyword research all right let's move on so before we talk how we optimize our content our products there are some phrases you should know so what means SERP or SERPs so it simply means a search engine result page or search engine result pages. So basically it means Google search result page. So basically that's what it means. Meta title. So meta title means that's the title of your product or your blog post or your website that you see in Google search in SERPs in Google search results. So when you type a keyword in Google search, you get a lot of results, a lot of websites. And those websites, they have their meta title. That's just the title. And underneath this meta title, we have meta description. So that's what is meta title and meta description image title so that's kind of self-explanatory when you add images to your products to your blog posts you add titles and when you add those images you're gonna also have an opportunity to add alt text to these images and you have to use those two fields image title and alt text to add your keywords and once we're gonna do this in practice you will see how it works and now we can move on to the next slide so how we optimize our content, our blog posts, our products, our categories with keywords. So first of all, once we find our main keyword that we want to use, we include this main keyword in meta title. Once we do this, we include this keyword in our meta description. And when we're gonna install an SEO plugin, you will see it yourself that you will be able to add those meta title and meta description and you will see how it works but when you are adding meta description to your seo tool and i will show you how that works it doesn't necessarily mean that google pick up on this meta title description that you added to your seo tool that's why when you are writing descriptions for your products or when you are adding blog posts the best case scenario is to include your main keyword the focus keyword that you just did research on in the first sentence of your product description because that's how google gonna pick up on your description and once someone's gonna look for a specific product uh, that you optimize with that phrase with that keyword for which people are searching then google will show this keyword in meta description 
just remember when you are writing your product descriptions don't forget to include your focus keyword your main keyword in the first sentence of your product description that's the most important thing when you are writing descriptions for your products and when you are writing your blog post you should include your focus keyword your main keyword in the best case scenario in the first two sentences so in the first or the second sentence it just depends how it's going to work for you and of course we include our main keyword in the text of our content so of our blog post of our products so when we are writing descriptions for our products we usually include the main keyword two or three times in the description and the recommended amount of words when you're writing your description is 200 words so if you wrote description of 200 words maybe you will want to include your main keyword two times in your product description so the first time when you're going to include your main Main keyword in the description is going to be the first sentence that's going to be automatically included in your meta description so it's going to be one time and the second time try to include somewhere in the middle of description or if you are writing a longer descriptions maybe you're going to want to include this keyword three times but don't overstuff your descriptions with too many keywords you don't want to make your description sound like a nonsense you want to make it sound naturally and when you're writing your blog post, uh, you want to include your main keyword in your blog post three, five times or even more. It depends on how many words you are writing. Let's say you are writing a blog post of 600 words. So six times to include your main keyword in the text is completely fine. Your keyword density should be around 1% and uh, seo tools they usually help you to deal with that when you are writing blog posts let's say you're gonna have an opportunity to add your focus keyword in the blog post in the seo tool and uh, this tool will calculate how many times you have included this keyword and it's gonna give you a green check mark or the yellow or the red mark saying that you should include your main keyword a bit more but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a huge problem if you're not going to include your keyword enough times. You just have to remember that you have to include your main keyword at least a couple of times when you're writing your product description. And when you are writing blog posts, your main keyword should be around 1% of word density. And also when we are optimizing our content with keywords, we include our main keyword in the title of images and in the alt text. So let's say I have a product wooden train toy. So when I'm adding this product in the featured image of this product, I'm going to include the main keyword in the title of my image. And of course, I'm going to include in the alt text of this image. It's very important because when you're adding products, it doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to use just Google search to look for products. Maybe they're going to use image search as well. And if you're going to include your main keyword in your images, you're going to have a higher chance to rank higher, not just in search results, but in images as well. Well, so that's very important and when you're adding some more images you can include other variations of this keyword of course you can include the same keyword as well and the alt text of other images but i usually like to include other variations and it just gives me more opportunities to show up in images so for example i could include in some other images wooden train toy set wooden train or something like that and of course when you're adding blog posts you're gonna include some images and in those images you can include your main keyword if it's for you difficult to include your main keyword in the text five times you can include your main keyword in the alt text of these images that you add to your blog post that's just an old trick in seo world where you can include your main keyword in all text of images that you add to your blog post any images not just the featured image that you're going to add for your blog post but all other images as well and you can also include other variations of this keyword and when i'm going to show you how to add blog posts you will see it yourself how you can add images and how you can add alt text to these images as well let's move on so how we use interlinking so what is interlinking when we are working with products, we don't really need to focus on that much because interlinking, it's already done for us, especially if you have a good theme like Flatsome. It also works with Astro theme. And if you would go to your product page, this is the same example. As you can see, this product has various other links in that product. It has the category link right here. So this product is already interlinked with our category wooden toys. It also has some tag that are also linked together with this product page. 
and it also has some related products so basically in this product page we're gonna have some other products added so those are the products that I displayed right here as related products we have our category that's very important and basically with products pretty much that's it we don't need to focus on that so basically interlinking means that from your product page or any other page from your blog posts or anything else you are linking to other pages of your website you are using links to link to other pages of your website also i'm gonna show you an example how it would look in blog posts all right so this is one of my websites and i have a blog post about the friendliest cat breeds you have probably seen something similar in other websites and the news websites they tend to do this quite a lot and if i would scroll down as you can see we have a paragraph about persian cats so right here I have a link that is highlighted and it says Persian cats. If I would click on this link, I would go to another blog post that is on my website. So as you can see, it's Persian cats. So this is Persian cats, the keyword I'm trying to rank for. If I would go back, as you can see, I use the same keyword right here to link to my blog post. If I would scroll down, I have Maine Coon. So Maine Coon is another interlink that I'm linking to other page. So I'm going to click on this interlink and I go to Maine Coon, as you can see. And I go to a Maine Coon blog post. So that's how it looks. That's how it works. You have probably seen this on other websites as well. So I'm just going to go back to our slides. And uh, that's how interlinking works. When we are talking about interlinking, we have to talk about anchor text and we're going to talk about anchor text and backlinks as well. So anchor text is basically the text I use to interlink my links. So as you saw it yourself, I had a paragraph about Persian cats and I had text highlighted Persian cats. That was a link. So this text Persian cats that was clickable was anchor text. It's very important when you are linking various blog posts. And when you are adding anchor text, you want your anchor text to be your focus keyword. So as you saw it yourself, my focus keyword in the Persian cats blog post was Persian cats. So that's the same text anchor text I use to interlink from the friendliest cat breeds to Persian cats blog post. So that's how interlinking works. You're just simply linking other blog posts, pages from your other post or your other page. All right, let's move on. And when we are talking about good user experience, so good user experience means that you have a fast loading website, but here we're not gonna focus on that at all because in this course, I showed you how to create a website with a good user experience already. So your website is gonna be fast loading. It's gonna be, of course, responsive. It's gonna work well on all devices. A flatsome theme gonna work a bit better compared to Astro theme. Of course, your website is going to be professional looking. That's, of course, very important as well. Because if you're going to have a not professional looking website, there's a huge chance that if a person is going to find your website, he's going to open your website and it's going to look awful. He's going to leave your website and that means you have a bounce rate. So if you're going to have a lot of people just clicking on your website and leaving right away, that's a high bounce rate. Google doesn't like that. And you can expect to rank lower in Google search results if you have a high bounce rate. And usually high bounce rate happens because your website isn't optimized well. It's not well structured. It's not professional looking. It's difficult to find information. And that's what gives you a high bounce rate. So you want to avoid that by offering good user experience. All right. So let's summarize the phrases that you have to remember on page SEO. So on-page SEO is when we do everything that is in our hands that we can take care of to optimize our website. So this is what we can do on our website, on our pages. Keywords. So keywords are basically the phrases people use to look for information in Google. Like I told you before, there are short tail keywords. So let's say Maine Coon Cat is a short tail keyword. And we have long tail keywords like can cats eat apples or something like that. That's a long tail keyword. Keyword optimization. So this is where we take this keyword that we did research on and we use to optimize our products. We use to optimize our blog posts, categories or anything like that. Keyword density. So keyword density means how many times you included your main keyword, your key phrase 
in the text of your page, of your blog post, of your product, of category or anything else like that. Meta title. Meta title is the title that you see in Google search results of a website. So that's meta title. This is where you want to include your keyword as well. Meta description. This is the description you see in Google search results of a certain result. So we have meta title and meta description. So this is where you want to include your keywords. All text. All text is alternative text that you add to images. Usually this text is used when images fail to load, but it happens very rarely. And in SEO world, people just take advantage of that to include keywords to alt text of images. SERP or SERPs, search engine result pages. And this is where you're gonna see all the results that Google shows you interlinking so you do interlinking to link from one page of your website to another page of your website so from one blog post you bring people to another blog post maybe from one blog post to product category maybe to products and so on anchor text so anchor text is the text you use to add a link to in a blog post all right let's move on so we're going to talk about off-page SEO. Previously, we talked on on-page SEO. That was everything in our hands that we can do to optimize our website to rank higher in Google search results. And when we are talking about off-page SEO, this is that something is not in our hands. This is when we trust other websites. So this is where we get juices from other websites instead of our website. This is where we rely on other websites to link to our website. So in this section, we're gonna talk about backlinks. So backlinks are basically when other websites, let's say from their blog posts, they link to your website using anchor text. You have probably seen this in other websites when you are reading news or something like that. You click on the link in the text and you go to other website. That's a backlink. We have do follow backlinks. We have no follow backlinks. Do follow backlinks are very powerful. No follow backlinks are not so powerful. And uh, once again, because those things are not in your power, you cannot select if you want to have do follow backlinks, no follow backlinks. But of course, if you are working with other websites, you can actually select. But uh, when you are adding your links to other websites, let's say to Pinterest, you can add your website's link in a Pinterest profile. It's going to be a no follow backlink because it's just not in your power to select if you want to have do follow backlink or no follow backlink. We're gonna talk about guest posts. So what are those things? We're gonna talk about niche edits, how they work, and pretty much it's all about backlinks. All right, let's move on. So let's talk about backlinks. So a backlink is when a website links to your website. So let's say when you are reading a blog post, you see there's a link, you click on that link and you go to a website. In this case, it could be your website. Here's an example. So here I am back to one of my websites. And as you can see, if I would scroll down, I have some links right here. So this is the link. And if I would click on this link, as you can see, I go to a completely other website. So this is a completely other website. And just like that, this website got a backlink from my website. If I'm gonna click right here, as you can see, I go to my website. So this is inner link, it's not a backlink. So you saw the difference. One was backlink, one was the inner link. All right, let's go back. And once again, anchor text, it's just the text that is highlighted and that is clickable. It's basically the link. So in the previous example, I showed you with a Persian cat. So that was anchor text. When you try to get a backlink from other website, you should focus to add your link to an anchor text with the same keyword that you're focusing on to rank. So for example, I'm trying to get a backlink to a blog post to Persian cats. So in this case, I want to find a blog. I want to contact a blog. I want to ask for a guest post and maybe they accept guest posts. I'm going to write them a guest post and my anchor text going to be Persian cats because that's my focus keyword. So that's basically what anchor text is. It's the same as you are interlinking your pages, your blog posts, your products, but this time you're doing on someone else's website. Profile links. So usually this is where you can get yourself some free backlinks to your website. So for example, if you're going to create a Pinterest profile, you can add your website to this Pinterest profile. And this is going to be no follow backlink. Usually those are no follow. They give you some juice. They give you some variety of backlinks, but these are not as powerful as do follow backlinks. 
There are plenty of various profile websites where you can create profiles and where you can add your websites and uh, just like that you can build some backlinks. If you would look up on Google profile links or something like that, there are plenty of various lists that you can use and you can try to add your website, your homepage and this way you can try to get some free backlinks. Usually backlinks are built using guest posts or niche edits. So those are do follow and usually those things cost money. They can cost from a couple of dollars to thousands of dollars. It depends a lot on the, the type of website you are publishing your guest posts and you probably have seen something on the news websites. Let's say when the news website is talking about some type of startup and there's a huge portion of text talking about the startup, how amazing it is and suddenly you see there's a link with the title of the startup it's a clickable link and you go to that website that means it's a backlink usually those things are paid usually if you want to get backlink using guest posts you should contact website administrators who are running those websites and you can ask if they accept guest posts you can ask if those guest posts are paid and this way you can write a guest post on the website and this way you can include a link in this guest post that brings the visitors to your website that's how the guest posts work niche edits niche edits are when let's say you find a blog and uh, you contact administrator because you found uh, some interesting article and in this article you found that uh, let's say this article is talking about the montessori teaching in my case as a saw yourself i'm building a toys online store so i have category montessori toys so let's say maybe you found a blog where this blog has blog post about montessori teachings and there's a paragraph that is talking about montessori toys you found in that text a phrase that you can use as an anchor text montessori toys and then you contact the administrator of this blog post and you ask, do you do niche edits? I would love to include my Montessori toys category in your blog post as an anchor text Montessori toys in that specific blog post. Usually those things cost money. It can cost from $5 to hundreds of dollars. So it depends a lot on the websites you are reaching out to. So that's how guest posts work, niche edits work, and um, this is how you build backlinks. And that's why it's called off-page SEO, because those things are not completely in your power and you have to rely on other websites. You have to contact them. You have to ask if they accept guest posts. And in this case, if they accept guest posts for free, you will need to write a blog post for free and publish on their website and include a backlink. They're going to get a free blog post. You're going to get a free backlink. So that's how it works. If you're going to contact a bigger website, let's say a news website or something like that, usually they list the pricings in their partnerships page and you will see yourself that those can cost from $10, 50 hundreds, thousands of dollars. So that's how backlinks work. You have to rely on other websites. And remember, if something's not clear for you, do not stress yourself too much. You can always join my group. You can ask questions and I help you out with any questions, with any issues. I can explain everything better. I can even help you with building backlinks. So do not hesitate to join my group. All right, so let's talk some of the other important phrases. We already talked about backlinks and I told you that the price depends on quite a lot of factors. So usually it depends on domain authority, DA, it's domain authority. You can have low or high domain authority, usually it's up to 100 and uh, usually various tools like Uber suggests, SEMrush, Ahrefs, they have different types of calculating your domain authority, but usually domain authority is calculated by how many backlinks you have, how many strong backlinks you have from uh, high authority websites. Let's say maybe you have two backlinks from bbc.com, so that's a high authority website. Uh, those high authority websites, they usually have a lot of traffic, they have a lot of backlinks. And if those websites are linking back to your website, you, this is how you can grow your own domain authority. So that's how it works. Page authority. Page authority is also important. Let's say you could have high domain authority, but you could have a lower page authority. You could have a lot of backlinks linking to your website itself, but you can have 
not so many backlinks linking to your specific page, to your specific product, to your specific blog post and so on. So let's say if you have a lower domain authority, but you have high page authority, you have a lot of backlinks to your specific page, to your specific product page, to your specific blog post page, then you might have a high page authority and then you will have a bit higher chances to rank higher in Google search results. Higher domain authority also is a factor when ranking in Google search results because it just means that you are a trustworthy website and Google trusts you. So that's how domain authority and page authority works. You are basically using other websites to build your domain authority, to build your page authority by getting backlinks from those websites. That's just how it works. All right, so what determines your ranking? So proper keyword research is very important. So this is the first thing when you do keyword research. When you are a fresh website, of course, you're gonna have low domain authority because you don't have any websites linking back to your website. You're gonna have low domain authority. That's why you want to aim to a less competitive keywords. Maybe those keywords not gonna have a lot of monthly searches, but they're gonna be easier to rank in Google search results. So this is important, proper keyword research, and of course you have to optimize your content well. So if you're working with products, you want to include your main keyword in meta title, meta description, in the description of your product itself, in the titles of images, in all text of images, and this is how you do a good optimization of your product. When you're writing your blog post, you also want to include your main keyword in meta titles, meta descriptions, in the text of your blog post. You want to include some other variations of this keyword. And of course, you want to include your keyword in all text of images as well. So that's going to be on page SEO. And another important factor is going to be backlinks. So how many websites you have linking to your website, to your specific product, to your specific blog post. And uh, that's also very important. And you're going to have high authority websites linking to your pages. You're going to have your higher domain authority. So backlinks, how many backlinks are linking to your website uh, determines your domain authority as well. So domain authority is kind of together connected with backlinks. So that's how it works. And just don't overcomplicate yourself with all those things. You just have to remember that your first goal is to do a good keyword research, find the less competitive keyword, and uh, you have to optimize your content. And in later stages, I'm going to show you how that's done. And once you get used to optimizing your content, your later stage could be building backlinks. But if you're going to need any help, once again, don't hesitate to join my Facebook group. I'm here to help you. And basically pretty much that's it. That's all for SEO. That was an introduction into SEO. And now you should have a good foundation, a better understanding what is SEO. All right, since you are a bit more familiar what is SEO and how it works, now we can install an SEO plugin. So let's go to our dashboard. Let's go to plugins. Let's click add new and let's use search type SEO and as you can see there's plenty of SEO plugins but to be honest they usually do one thing and that thing is they add meta description and meta title and it's good enough they also offer some suggestions they also give you some tips when you are optimizing your products let's say categories or anything like that and uh, in later lesson of course we're gonna dive deeper into keyword research but for now everything should be good so let's select this plugin rank math seo this is the plugin i like to use and i use it on all of my websites let's click activate all right so in my case i just activated this plugin and nothing happened but in your case maybe it showed you a setup wizard and no worries about it you can close that setup wizard it just walks you through the all settings and so on but in this lesson i'm gonna show you what those seo plugins are meant for all right so if i would go right here this is my rank math seo if I would go to the dashboard 
as you can see uh, we have various tools and uh, some of those tools are only active for premium version of this plugin but uh, trust me you don't really need to get premium version uh, premium version just adds you more analytics details and so on but even with the free version you will be totally fine all right so if i will go to setup wizard you're probably gonna have the same setup wizard as you had when you were installing your plugin so like i said you can close it but if you didn't close it you can still follow through this setup wizard and if you close that wizard just go to those steps i showed you select setup wizard and now as you can see we have options to choose we can choose advanced let's click start wizard and since previously I installed some plugins, it's giving me an option to import data, but I haven't added any data to those plugins. So I can click right here, skip, don't import now. You can do that as well. And here, just choose some details about your website. So your type of website is going to be a small business site, business type, organization, educational, e-commerce, and so on. So just choose all those right here. You can also add your logo. You can add social share image, but it doesn't necessarily mean that Google is going to show those things in Google search results because those plugins, they just add this information and it's for Google to decide if they want to show this information or not. So Google sometimes can be quite picky. All right, let's click save and continue continue you can create and connect your rank math account it's quite useful if you have a premium version it allows you to do some more advanced things but if you don't have an account you can click right here skip step if you want you can create an account and if you're going to create an account and you're going to add this account to your website it's not going to change anything in the flow of this lesson so we can click skip step all right, so here we have sitemaps. So those sitemaps will be used for Google. We're gonna add our sitemap to Google Search Console, but we're gonna do this in later lesson. And uh, as it is right now, we can keep it just like that and we can click save and continue. All right, we can click save and continue and we can click return to dashboard so we are done with installing our seo plugin it's ready as you can see it has a lot of different tools you can explore everything yourself in later lessons we're gonna dive a bit deeper in those options right here we're gonna use some of those options but of course not all of them this is just what this seo plugin has to offer and you have to keep in mind that there's plenty of seo plugins and they compete with each other and they try to offer as much options as they can and it doesn't necessarily mean that those options Options are very useful that's just how it works all right so now we have our plugin ready it's in place we don't need to add anything else and uh, now we should go to our pages let's start with our pages as you can see now it has these columns as your details title and description and so on so usually when you're working with e-commerce store maybe some of the most important pages that you want to show to Google and you want to take care of is about page and your home page all other pages are not necessary to take care of because they are just the pages for customers and you're not gonna rank those pages in google search but if i'm gonna click right here on about page and i'm gonna select edit not edit with ux builder but just edit as you can see here we have some more options so if I'm going to click right here, this is where I can access the options of our SEO plugin. So right here, it's showing us our meta title and meta description. So here we can click edit snippet and you can add the title. So this is how it works. Just add the title. If you want to add a bit longer title, if you want to add a description, you can do this as well. And like I said, if you want to take care of everything precisely, uh, the pages where you could focus are uh, about page and a homepage. Page. All other pages are not necessary to focus on because uh, most likely they are not going to rank in Google. But what's important to you if you are running an e-commerce store, for you the most important thing is products. So instead of doing changes right here, let's go back to all pages and now we can go to products and let's select all products. Let's scroll down and let's say we want to work on our wooden train set toy. So let's click edit. All right, so now we are editing our product. And as you can see right here, we have our SEO plugin in place. 
it's showing us our optimization score it is 8 out of 100 but no worries about it it doesn't really mean that much it's just giving you some suggestions some tips on how they see things and uh, here you will have to enter your focus keyword but about that we're gonna talk in the later lesson where I'm gonna show you how to do keyword research but you are kind of familiar what is a keyword so we're gonna talk about that a little bit in this lesson as well all right so let's scroll down until we see our SEO plugin this is the section for our SEO plugin and as you can see right here we have our meta title and meta description so when you are writing a meta title and meta description you want to include your main keyword in both of them so let's say in this case my main keyword is wooden train so i want to include this keyword in the title and that's already in the title and i want to include this keyword in meta description as well if i don't have this keyword in the first sentence of my description of my product description I'm gonna go back right here as you can see my product description in the first sentence it has the keyword wooden train so I don't really need to change anything in the meta description because it's already in my first sentence of my description and when you are writing descriptions just keep in mind that the best case scenario is for you to include your main keyword in the description in the first sentence of your description because no matter what if I'm gonna include this keyword in my meta description right here using this settings right here if i'm gonna add a different looking description from my main description of the product itself and uh, let's say my product description that i showed you previously it doesn't have the main keyword but my meta description right here it would have you see it doesn't really work this way because google is picky and it doesn't matter if you're gonna add meta description right here and uh, you're gonna include your main keyword there's a huge chance that google will decide not to use that meta meta description that you just entered right here with your keyword and it's just gonna pick your description instead of taking this description that you're gonna write so instead of that Google will take this main description and it's just gonna display in meta description in Google search results I don't know if that's making much sense but your goal is when you're writing descriptions for your products you have to include your main keyword in the first sentence of your product description so that's your goal and it just makes everything easier because you won't need to write a separate description for meta right here and it doesn't even mean that google will pick on this description that you're gonna type so since this product has a well-written description i don't really need to change anything maybe if you want you can change the meta title but right here i can type my focus keyword so my focus keyword is wooden train i'm gonna click enter and this is what we get so instead of getting just a couple of points out of 100 now we got 68 of 100 so as you can see the only downside is that our content is too short when you are writing product descriptions i always recommend to write 200 words and uh, just include your main keyword two or three times not just one but two or three times up to three times not more and if you're gonna include your main keyword too many times it's not gonna help it's just actually gonna harm your rankings so this is what seo plugins do they give you an option to select a different type of meta title of meta description and you can enter your focus keyword it just gives you suggestions how you could optimize your description better as you can see if I'm gonna scroll down it's actually saying that you should use 600 words but it's not true because we don't have premium version and with the free version it's not recognizing that we are writing description for a product not for a blog post so for a product it's 200 words and it just works fine so that's what SEO plugins are for just make sure that you install this plugin and uh, when you are writing descriptions for products make sure that you include your main keyword in the first sentence and later we're gonna use this plugin a bit more to submit our sitemap to google search console and you will see how that works but for now this is how it looks and just make sure that you install your seo plugin so that's all for this lesson In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to set up your Google Search Console. It's a very useful tool. It's, of course, a tool made by Google and it's helpful for SEO. It allows you to check how well your keywords are ranking, what keywords are bringing you the most traffic. And uh, basically, it's an essential tool for SEO. 
So first of all, you will need to create your account at Google Search Console. So just go to Google and search for Google Search Console. This is what you want to look for and the first result is what you need. So let's select this one. Let's click start now. And here you will have to type your domain name. So in my case, it's going to be baconavocados.com. Let's click continue. And now we're going to need to do some DNS changes for our domain name. So as you remember, my domain name was registered at GoDaddy. So it doesn't really matter where you have registered your domain name. You're just going to need to add one line. So right here, you'll find the instructions. We can select any DNS provider. And as you can see here, we're going to need to create a new text record. So we can copy this text record right here. And now I'm going to go to my GoDaddy account. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to select my products. So I'm going to scroll down until I see my domain name. And right here, I'm going to select DNS and let's click add new record. Let's select type. It's going to be text and name. Let's type ETA and let's paste the value we previously copied. Time to load. We can select custom and let's add 600 seconds. Let's hit save. All right, so we successfully created a new text record. Now we can close our GoDad account. And right here, just wait a couple of minutes. It shouldn't take long, up to five minutes. And once you have waited five minutes, you can click verify. All right, after you have waited some time, now we can click verify. All right, so the ownership was verified successfully. Now we can click go to property. And if you want, you can take the tutorial to see how everything looks. I usually don't do that, but I'm going to walk you through everything anyway. So once you're going to start getting more data, this is where you will see your information, the information about the performance of your website, how well it's doing in Google search. So right here, you will see the performance. Uh, you will see what pages are indexed and uh, various other tools like experience of your website enhancements if you're gonna have any and if i would click right here performance this is where we're gonna see everything more in detail we can select pages we can select the keywords countries devices we can check how well our pages are performing according to devices countries search appearances, dates, and so on. Later, I'm gonna log into one of my websites and I'm gonna show you how it looks with more information, with more details. Here you can inspect URLs to see if there are index. So if you would click right here, you can paste any URL you have and you can check if it is indexed or not. And index URL basically means that it is in Google's database and it can be found in Google search. So basically that's what it means. Here you will find various other tools and don't be afraid to explore everything yourself. And this way you will learn how to use this tool a bit better, but right now you ain't gonna have any information. If you would go to links here, you will see backlinks if you're going to have any. And like I said, this tool is very convenient to understand how well your website is performing in Google search. So you can explore all other tools like page experience. So here you will see information about your page experience, uh, how well it is, if it's good on mobile devices and so on. You will see core web vitals how well your website is performing according to Google's core web vitals. So Google has its own measurements to let you know if your website is fast loading, if it's slowed good enough. But if you're going to have even not so good core web vitals, don't stress yourself too much with that. It's not the main ranking factor anyway. So you can explore that. But before I go and show you how it looks, how it looks in one of my websites, there's one other very important thing that we have to do. We have to submit our sitemap. So we have to go right here, sitemaps, and we have to add a sitemap of our website, basically of all our URLs that we have on our website. So to find our sitemap, we're going to use our SEO tool that we installed previously. So let's go to our website. Let's go to the dashboard. Let's go to the SEO tool that we previously installed, the rank map. Let's select sitemap. And this is our sitemap. We can open the sitemap. And basically, it's just a very simple sitemap. It's kind of self-explanatory. It's the map of all your URLs on your website. So here you have product sitemap. If I'm going to click on products, as you can see, these are all products I have on my website. 
I'm just gonna go back and I want to copy this URL right here. I want to go back to my Google search console and I will paste this URL right here. All right, let's click submit. All right, so we successfully submitted our sitemap and now Google will start gathering information about our website. So if I would go to overview, once our website starts to get some impressions, some clicks, this is where we're gonna see all information. So I'm just gonna open one of my websites to show you how it looks. All right, so this is my profile on Google search console of one of my websites. And as you can see, this is the performance. So we can see how many clicks we get, how many clicks we get from search results, from Google Discover and so on. If I would scroll down, this is how many URLs Google has indexed on my website. As you can see, I have added some videos. So these are the stats of the indexed video pages and uh, an experience, as you can see, and some of the websites my experience is quite poor but uh, no worries about that it doesn't affect rankings that much and you shouldn't focus on that too much but uh, since your website is gonna be fresh it's gonna be new your page experience should be good anyway so if i'm gonna scroll down i have some more tools like shopping information uh, some of my products are listed on shopping ads and if i'm gonna scroll down i have some enhancements faq review snippets and so on so this is where you can see all the information if i'm gonna go to performance right here i can click search results so as you can see i can see how many clicks and how many impressions i got uh, in the last three months and i can check uh, what's my click-through rate what's my average position and if i'm gonna activate click-through rate this is how it looks and right here this is the keywords so here I can check what keywords are bringing me the most traffic. So this keyword right here, as you can see, is bringing me the most traffic. It's getting quite a lot of impressions. FO click-through rate is quite low, but the position is quite high. So as you can see, I can see the position, how well it's ranking in Google search. Even though those keywords are very competitive and I'm ranking quite good. So if I would click right here, pages, I can see how well I'm performing based on pages. So this is the page that is performing the best. I can even select this page. And as you can see, I can get the stats of this specific page. So this is how it works. You can explore everything yourself. And of course, I highly recommend you to explore everything yourself. Uh, once you start getting more data, those are up various filters. So I can close this filter that I selected previously to show me how well my page is performing. And as you can see, this is how it looks. I can check what countries are bringing me the most traffic, what devices are most used and so on. So this one is up to you. And in Discover, as you can see, I can check how many clicks I get from Google Discover. And usually Google Discover shows up when you're writing blog posts. You write quite a lot of blog posts and Google features some of your content. Sometimes it just gets featured, sometimes it just doesn't get featured. But if you upload content daily, you will get featured on Google Discover. So that's just how it works. And in pages indexing, as you can see, I can check how many pages are indexed and how many pages are not indexed and so on. So this is the various information I can check. I can even check my backlinks if I'm going to scroll down, if I would click links. As you can see, I can check how many websites are linking back to my website, how many backlinks I have, what other websites are linking my pages and so on. So this tool is very convenient to have. It's very helpful when you want to understand what works and what doesn't work, what keywords are bringing you the most traffic. Maybe you can write some other content based on those keywords and you can get some traffic from those blog posts or products and so on. Majority of the traffic that I'm getting to this online store is from blog posts, but I'm getting from products too. So that's just how it looks. So once you start getting traffic impressions, this is how everything is going to look. And basically until you don't have any data, you won't be able to explore anything. But once Google starts gathering data from your website, you will see everything right here. So that's just how it works. And once again, if you're going to need any help with the, all those tools or anything like that with SEO, do not hesitate to join my Facebook group. All right, now we can close our Google search console. We can close our sitemap. And basically we can go to our website and pretty much that's it for this lesson. Now we know how to set up your Google search console profile.
All right, in this lesson, we're going to set up Google Analytics and we're going to set up Google Tag Manager. And the reason why we are using Google Analytics is because we want to understand our traffic that is coming to our website. So using Google Analytics, we will be able to check how many visitors we are getting, where those visitors are coming from, if those visitors are coming from the search engines like Google, Bing or any other, if they are coming from social media profiles like Pinterest, Facebook or any other, or those visitors are direct visitors who type your website into their browser and they access your website. And besides that, you will be able to see the purchases, the sales, where they are coming from. So you will see if those sales are coming from organic sources, social media sources or any other sources. So having Google Analytics is extremely important, especially if you want to run a successful online store. And the reason why we're going to set up Google Tag Manager is because with Google Tag Manager, we will be able to connect our Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager is a tool that you install on your website. And basically your website in a way goes through Google Tag Manager and it captures various details like add to cart, purchases, page views and so on. And the Google Tag Manager sends this information to Google Analytics. And then once you log into your Google Analytics account, you can see all information in a well-structured way. And besides that, the Google Tag Manager is very convenient to have, especially if in the future you will decide that you want to run Facebook ads, Pinterest ads, Reddit ads, or even Google ads or anything like that. Because using Google Tag Manager, you will be able to install various pixels, let's say Facebook pixel, a Facebook pixel helps you to track conversions, to track add to cards, page views. And by using these details, Facebook optimizes your ads. So this is very important to have. So that's why in this lesson, we're going to set up our Google Analytics and we're going to set up our Google Tag Manager. So the first things first, let's go to Google and just type Google Analytics. All right, right here, we can select Google Analytics 4 because it's a new version. And right here, you want to select this option. So let's select this option. Now let's click start measuring. Right here, you can add your account name. So just give it the name of your website. So I'm just going to type bacon avocados. Let's scroll down and let's click next. So once again, type your property name. So your property name once again is going to be the name of your website. So in this case, I'm just going to type bacon avocados. Right here, select your reporting time zone and of course, select the currency you will be using. So if it's going to be US dollars, euros or any other currency, this is very important. So just select your time zone and select your currency. All right, so I'm just going to click next. Let's select our industry. So in my case, I can call it games, toys, something like that. And I'm going to select business size. It's small. Let's click next. So our business objectives are drive online sales, rise brand awareness, examine user behavior, and of course get baseline reports. No, we can select drive online sales, raise brand awareness, and examine user behavior. All right, let's click create. Now let's agree with terms of service. Let's click right here. Let's select accept. Let's choose web. And here just type your website's URL and give the name to this property. So the name can be the same as your website's title. All right, let's select create stream. All right, so for now, we don't need to follow any instructions for Google Tag Manager. Later, we're going to install that. Let's scroll down. Let's see what else we have. All right, now we can close this one right here. And this is our property. So now we can select this property. All right, so just open the same window. Let's close it. And instead of doing that, let's click next. All right, so data collection is pending. So it's gonna take some time until Google Analytics starts collecting data, but usually you're gonna see this information right away, unlike with Google Search Console. And right now it says it's pending because we haven't connected our Google Analytics account and we haven't added Google Tag Manager as well. So let's click continue to home. All right, we can click right here, save. 
and basically this is our property so right here we're gonna see various information about the traffic that is coming to our website so previously when we set up google search console uh, this tool is only meant for analyzing traffic that is coming from google search and that's it but google analytics is for analyzing traffic that is coming from various sources not just from google search so that's the huge advantage of google analytics so the next thing that we have to do now we have to create an account at google manager so let's go to the new tab and let's search for google tag manager all right let's click enter and this is what we want to use so select this option and once you're here now let's click create account and give a name to your account so you can call this the same as your business so in my case it's of course going to be bacon avocados select your country and now let's scroll down and let's give a name to our container so we can call our container our domain name let's select web right here and let's click create all right let's click yes all right so let's not install google tag manager we're gonna do this a bit later and now from here we can start working with a tag manager and the first thing that we're gonna do with tag manager is we're gonna set up google analytics tag so we can connect those two things together so to do this you want to go right here tags let's select new let's click right here and let's choose this option all right we can give the title so your title can be analytics ga4 all right so we gave the title and now we have to go back to our tag and right here we will need to add our measurement id so the measurement id will be in our google analytics account so let's go back to our google analytics account let's go right here to admin let's choose data streams let's select this one right here and we want to copy this measurement id so let's click right here to copy this id now let's go back to google tag manager let's paste this id right here and we are done with this part now we need to activate triggering so let's click right here triggering and let's choose all pages so we want to trigger this tag on every single page of our website so let's select all pages let's click save now we can click submit and let's click publish all right let's click continue and just like that we connected google analytics with google tag manager and we published all the changes all right let's close this one right here now we will need to add google tag manager to our website and we ain't gonna need to add google analytics because google analytics is already connected together with google tag manager and the only thing that we need to add to our website is google tag manager all right let's go to our website and let's go to the dashboard now we're gonna need to install one plugin so let's go to plugins let's select add new and right here just type google tag manager this is the plugin we want to use so let's click install now let's click activate and now we can go to settings right here and let's select google tag manager and right here we're gonna need to paste the idea of our google tag manager so let's go back to google tag manager let's go back to workspace and this is the id you want to copy so this is the id so let's select this id and let's click copy let's go back to our website and let's paste this id right here and just make sure that you don't have any spaces at the start of this id and at the end of this id because if you're gonna have any spaces it's not gonna work and don't forget to select on all right let's click save changes now let's go to integration tab let's choose woocommerce and let's select track enhanced e-commerce all right let's scroll down and let's hit save changes all right now we're gonna need to configure our google tag manager so we could send various e-commerce details like add to cart purchase details product views and so on right now it's just showing page views and it's not registering various e-commerce triggers so to do that i want to save you some time and i have a file already so you have to download a file where i have pre-configured variables so you won't need to over complicate yourself with creating various variables i get that this might get too confusing so i have done this for you so you wouldn't need to confuse yourself too much so you can go to my Facebook group and I have a pinned post where I have uploaded this file. So I uploaded this file to my Google Drive and you can download this file from my Facebook group if you are already in this group 
or if you're not in that group, I highly recommend you to join this group. But if you don't want, here's the link, I shortened the link and you can go to this URL right here. And this is where you will go to my Google Drive. Just click download and we're gonna use this file right away. Once you have downloaded this file, you have to go right here in admin tab. Let's select import container and let's choose container file. So I'm gonna go to my downloads folder and this is the file I want to choose. All right, let's click open. Let's choose existing workplace and let's use our workplace that we just created. Let's select merge and let's click confirm. All right, now if we're gonna go to tags tab, as you can see, we have a new tag that we just uploaded. If we would go to triggers, we have e-commerce triggers, uh, various triggers like add to cart, purchase, uh, page view, entering details using coupon and so on. If I would go to variables, these are all the variables we have that will be used to track various conversions. All right, let's go back to tags. Let's select our newly added tag. Let's click right here, configurations. Let's select configuration tag and let's choose the tag that we created previously when we were setting up our Google Tag Manager account. And let's click save. All right, before submitting our changes, we can click preview and we can check if this tag works, if everything works. Right here, you'll have to paste URL of your website. So just paste this URL right here and you can click connect. All right, so we successfully connected to our website. Now we can select this product, let's say. Let's choose the style, let's choose the age. And let's see if our Google Tag Manager is registering everything. So let's go right here. Let's select this option here. As you can see, the Google Tag Manager is working. So let's select this option right here. And as you can see, it is registering various triggers. So we have viewed item from start, view item list, page view, and so on. So if I would go back to my website, and if I would click add to cart, it should register another trigger, add to cart. So if I'm going to go back right here, as you can see, it is registering everything. So add to cart was registered as well. So now we can close this one right here, as you see right here. Oh, before we close, we can click finish. All right, let's close this one. Everything works. So let's go back to our tag manager. Now we can close this one and we can click submit. All right, let's click publish. Let's click continue. And now everything should work. So we can close this window right here. And basically we are done with our Google Tag Manager. So now you can go to your website in incognito mode. Just open your website in incognito mode and just go through your website, check some of the pages, check some of the products. And later we're gonna go back to Google Analytics and we will check if it is registering all the data, if it is getting data from the Google Tag Manager. So I'm just gonna open my website in the incognito mode. And I'm going to click on some of the pages. I'm just going to check if everything works. I'm going to go to the costumes category. I'm going to select this product. And as you can see, our online store looks quite good. And I'm just going to browse through my website. And once I'm done, I'm just going to close this one right here. And now I can go back to analytics. I can close this one and I can go to my homepage of Google Analytics. And now it should register all the visits. All right, as you can see, it is registering everything and it shows all the visits. So those were visits from my website. And as you can see, it is active. And once you're gonna start getting more data, this is where you're gonna see all information. Uh, you can choose if you want to check yesterday, today, 90 days or any other period of time. Right here, if you would go to reports, you will find various other more detailed reports. And once again, this one is up to you to explore. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to join my Facebook group and uh, just shoot me a message and I will help you right away. And uh, like I said, this one is up to you to explore. 
usually the most important things for me are I want to check how many visitors I'm getting where those visitors are coming from so once I click right here I can see that right here in this graph I can see the revenue the sales where those sales are coming from and all that information right now we don't have any data but once you're gonna gather more data this is where you will be able to check everything so Google Analytics is extremely useful tool and if you want to grow your online store uh, this is a must have so that's all for this lesson all right in this lesson we're gonna do a quick keyword research to find out how well our keyword wooden train toy is performing and maybe we will find a better version of this keyword that we can use instead of this wooden train toy and when you're doing a keyword research is completely up to you because of course you're gonna have different products you're gonna have different blog posts and so on but this is gonna be a quick introduction I'm just gonna show you the tool I use myself and I highly recommend you to use it as well because it doesn't cost much and before we jump in into exploring that tool I just wanted to show you that I opened one of my competitors so let's say I just found one e-commerce store that is selling toys and it has quite a lot of wooden train toys and this is the toy I want to investigate this is the toy I want to check using that tool and later that's exactly what we're gonna do but before we do that first of all we have to access this tool and the tool that I like to use is called uber suggest so just type in google search uber suggest and this is how this tool is called so let's hit enter and right here you will find this uber suggest tool so let's select this tool and right here you will be able to create your account if you're gonna create your account you're gonna get a free trial of seven days so it's gonna be more than enough to do a basic keyword research to figure out what keywords are popular what keywords are good or what keywords are not good at all so in this case I already have my account so I'm just gonna click right here sign in and I'm just gonna sign in to my account once you create your account and once you sign into your account this is what you're gonna see you will have an opportunity to add your domain name and so on so I already connected this domain name with my Google Analytics and once you create your account you will be able to do that as well in my case I'm not able to do this because I have already done this and right here you will see an option to connect with Google Analytics it's very simple you're just gonna need to allow this tool to use your Google Analytics by signing in with your email address so that's all basically gonna need to do all right so if I'm gonna scroll down this is the information I get I can see my organic traffic what's my organic traffic what I'm getting I can check this by devices by desktop devices by mobile devices tablets and so on and right here I have some keywords that I added that I want to check how well I'm ranking and as you can see this is the amount of backlinks I have uh, this is my on-page SEO score so on-page SEO as you already know is everything you do on your website so that's what is in your power so once you add your domain name you're gonna get a score how well you're doing and in my case it's doing quite well uh, we have traffic estimations and so on if I would click right here rank tracking this is where you will see how well your keywords are ranking so here you will be able to add various keywords by clicking right here and let's say in my case I want to track keyword a wooden train toy and I'm gonna paste this keyword right here and this tool will let me know what position this keyword is ranking so those are the keywords I'm tracking and this one is gonna be up to you because of course you're gonna have different keywords for you to track and just explore this tool yourself I usually use only the first tab right here dashboard just to quickly check how well my website is performing I do check rank tracking and right here you can explore other tools but the most important tool in this lesson that we're gonna explore is gonna be right here keyword research so if I'm gonna select this one as you can see it expands and we have various tools so if I would click keyword overview this is where I can check the keywords and as you can see you can select your location you can select your language in this case of course I'm using English language and location is gonna be United States so right here I'm just gonna type my keyword wooden train toy and I'm gonna click search and as you can see here I get various information so as you can see right here this is the search volume on average 2900 people look for wooden toys every month 
in United States. It's a quite popular keyword and as you can see SEO difficulty. So SEO difficulty goes from 1 to 100 and right now it's 55. It's a bit above the average. It's gonna be a bit tough to rank for this keyword. As you can see it even gives us some suggestions to rank in the top 10 for this keyword. Usually websites have 41 backlinks and domain authority of 65. That's very high especially if you are just creating a fresh website. So that means you will need to build some backlinks to build your domain authority and page authority as well. And as you can see, we have some suggestions about paid difficulty. So paid difficulty, it's 100. So that means it's very competitive keyword if you're going to decide to run Google ads and average cost per click is 170. So that's how much it costs to run ads for one click. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is how much it's going to cost. It's going to cost a bit less, sometimes a bit more, but that's just the average. And as you can see, the search volume uh, here increases during November, December. So during the Christmas period, obviously, it's just going to be higher search volume. And if I'm going to scroll down, I have various keyword suggestions. So I could check other suggestions. Maybe I will find the keyword that is less competitive and that I can use instead of using that keyword that is quite competitive. So right here, you will see all the suggested keywords. Right here you will see content ideas and basically those are just uh, the other websites that rank for this specific keyword and you can see how much traffic they are getting per month and so on and how many backlinks they do have as well. Alright, so if I'm going to click right here, view all keyword suggestions, I will see all keyword suggestions and I can use filters. So let's say I'm looking for volume right here from 50 to 2000 per month so that means i'm looking from 50 to 2000 monthly searches that keyword has so that's exactly what i'm gonna type 50 to 2000 all right now i'm gonna click apply and now i can sort by the keyword difficulty so if i'm gonna select this one no sorry i have to select this one i can select from the least competitive to the most competitive keyword so as you can see right here, we have wooden toys for four year olds and it's not as competitive keyword, but it doesn't make much sense because we are looking for wooden train keyword. All right. So maybe this keyword would be good for categories where you have a category for four year olds or something like that or any different. In your case, of course, it's going to be different, but I'm just showing you this as an example. So as you can see, the least competitive keyword right here is wooden train toy set. And as you know, it's a long tail keyword. It has four words and the volume is 480. Maybe it's not that much, but keyword difficulty is not as high as it was with the previous keyword. So we can select this keyword and we can check how it looks. So as you can see, it increases during the Christmas period. Of course, that's just how it works. And it's up to you to explore this tool yourself and to decide what keywords you want to use. Pretty much that's how I do keyword research with this tool. I just go through the keywords. Once I select, let's say this keyword, I will go through other keyword ideas. I'm going to click right here. And as you can see, we have even more ideas. I can sort by keyword difficulty. Just a second. And yeah, this is how it looks. Of course, it says zero because it's not a popular keyword. As you can see right here, we have a cool toy wooden train set. Uh, there is a typo right here, obviously, and you're not going to rank for this type of keyword. But as you can see, this is how you can do a simple keyword research to figure out what keywords perform. If you have an idea how you want to name your product or what keyword you want to target, you can check and see if this keyword is popular, if people use this keyword to look for this type of product or not. And this tool is very convenient. So you can use this tool just like that, as I showed you. And that's exactly how I use this tool. And I usually rank quite high in Google search results. And I focus on optimizing my content, my products, my blog posts, if I'm writing blog posts, of course. And in a later lesson, I will show you what I do to optimize a product. All right, so this is how you do a regular, a simple keyword research when you have an idea how you want to call your product. But if you don't know how to call your product, you can find your competitor. So in this case, this is my competitor. I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to go back to Uber Suggest tool and I will go right here in traffic estimation. If I'm going to click right here, traffic overview, I can check how many visits this URL is getting. So I'm going to paste this URL right here and I'm going to click search.
All right, as you can see, this product is getting around 500 monthly visits. It's ranking for 291 keywords for various different types of keywords. This page doesn't have a high authority, it's just 23. It has only one backlink and it's ranking very high. And usually the reason why such page is ranking so high is because the domain itself is very powerful. It has high domain authority score and it has a lot of traffic and it's just a trustworthy domain, a trustworthy website. And if you're gonna scroll down, we're gonna see for what keywords this product is ranking. And we're gonna see how many visits those keywords are getting. So in this case, it has even a brand keyword, Bata Train. And as you can see, the volume is not so high, but this is a brand keyword, it's very powerful. And that means this website is quite popular. So as you can see, it's ranking in the first place. For Toys Train, it's ranking in the third place. And as you can see how many visits each place is getting. So if I would click right here to check all the keywords for which this product is ranking, I can check everything. So I can sort everything by the keyword difficulty. Once again, if I'm gonna click right here, just a second, as you can see, I can sort by the keyword difficulty. So as you can see, train with track toys. Maybe it's a good keyword if you have a similar product and as you can see, it has a high volume and it has a lower keyword difficulty. So basically that's how keyword research works. If you have an idea how you want to name your product, you just go through this tool to check if this keyword that you are planning to use is popular at all, if people use this keyword to look for products or not. And if people do not use this keyword, you can try different versions, you can try various suggestions. If you don't find any suggestions, you can try spying on your competitors and this way you can figure out what keywords would work for your product. In my case, I think wooden train toy is gonna work fine. Maybe I could rename this to wooden train toy set, but I'm just gonna go with wooden train toy and I'm just gonna leave it just like that. But I just wanted to show you how the keyword research works. So I can close all those windows and basically that's all for this lesson. Now you know how the a simple keyword research works. Okay, in this lesson I'm gonna show you my formula that I use to optimize my products. So this is the wooden toy train product and obviously the keyword I'm focusing on is wooden train toy info. It's quite competitive. I decided to use it just to show you as an example. So if I'm gonna click right here, edit product, let's make sure that we have all requirements in place. So the first thing when you are working on your product, when you are optimizing it, of course you want to include your main keyword at the beginning of your title. So in my case, it's wooden train toy. And if I would decide to add something right here, wooden train toy with a rope or something like that, uh, this won't count as a keyword. My keyword is wooden train toy. So I can leave it just like that. I don't need to add anything else. But if you will need to add some more words to your product, just make sure that your keyword is at the beginning of the title. So this is in place. We have our keyword in the title. We also have our keyword in the URL of our product right here, which is very important as well. But I didn't talk about this in the beginning of this section because when you give the title to your product with a keyword, it usually adds that keyword to your URL because we did permalinks adjustments when we were working with the settings of WordPress. So we have our keyword in the title, we have our keyword in the URL right here. So that's great. And right here, we have our keyword in description. Since this description is quite short, it's only 100 words. I uh, also included this keyword two times in my description, but I usually recommend to write description of around 200 words. It works the best. And as you can see, I included my main keyword in the beginning of my description. So in the first sentence, as you can see, it says introducing the wooden train toy. So we have this checked. We have our keyword at the beginning of our description. And if you will keep reading this description, you will find that there is a place where we could include our keyword. So right here, this train. So instead of saying this train, we could say this wooden train toy. So I'm just gonna type right here, this wooden train toy. So as you can see right now, we have our main keyword in the description two times and we have right here and we have it at the beginning of our description, which is great. Like I mentioned to you before, your description should be of around 200 words. So we are done with that part. And now we have to make sure that we have our keyword in the photo of our product. 
So this is our featured image. If I'm gonna select this image, as you can see, I have the title of this image, wooden train toy, and in all text, I included this wooden train toy as well. So that's what you want to do with your featured image as well. And that's very important. So don't forget to include your keyword in the title of your image and in the alt text as well. If I would choose other image that is the part of our image gallery, as you can see, I included a bit different variation of this keyword, just wooden train. I don't want to be spammy. So this is the way I do things and usually it works and it's just wooden train. And actually this alt text describes the image. That's actually the purpose of alt text. If your image fails to load, you will see a text. Your customers, your visitors will see a text instead of image. That's the purpose of alt text. So we have done this. We have included the other variation of the keyword in the product gallery images. If I would choose this image, as you can see, I included wooden train toy set. So I included a bit different variation, but you could still say this is the keyword we are aiming to. It has wooden train toy, but instead of that, we included wooden train toy set. And that's good. Right here, I just added wooden train coach just to describe this image since I don't want to be too spammy with my keyword. Right here, I included wooden toy parts because once again, I don't want to be spammy. And here I did the same. So, okay, we can close this one. So we have our keyword in image. We have some different variations in product gallery, which is great. So right here in focus keyword, we can type our focus keyword to check how well we are doing with this product. So I'm just gonna type my keyword wooden train toy and I'm gonna hit enter. All right, as you can see, we got the yellow mark and it's good. We are not getting better score because it's recommending us to write 600 words, but don't worry about that. It's just focusing on blog posts. And when you're writing descriptions, product descriptions, 200 words are more than enough. So that's good. Even though we got 67 out of 100, that's a really good score and we should be fine with that. So basically that's how I optimize my products. And as well in product tags, I include wooden toy. As you can see, I have wooden toy tag and I have train. So I usually go with those variations because I know that I might have more products in the future that are gonna be wooden toys. And I might have some other toys, train toys, but those toys might not be wooden trains. So I included train as well as a separate tags. But you don't need to over focus on tags. That's just the way I like to do and it's up to you to explore those settings those options and now we can go up and let's go through the things one more time so don't forget to include your main keyword after you have done your keyword research in the title of your product and the url it's going to be automatically included if you're going to include it in your title and don't forget to include your keyword about two times in the description and don't forget to include your keyword in the featured image and include your variations of this keyword in product image gallery. So right here. And as you can see, this is how it's gonna look. And you won't gonna need to do any changes to the snippet, to the meta title or meta description if you're gonna do everything right, right here. So we can click update. We can click view product. And basically that's all. That's how you optimize your products. Just keep in mind that you should aim at lower competitive keywords because your website is fresh. It doesn't have any backlinks or anything like that. And you want to aim at the keywords that have less competition. So that's all for this lesson. And we are done with the SEO section. So this section was like a completely separate course in the course. So now you know what is SEO. It's search engine optimization. You know how it works. You know how to do keyword research, how to optimize your content, your products, and how to use tools to understand the traffic that is coming to your website. And that's very important if you want to create a successful online store. You have to understand how visitors use your website, what are the most popular pages, what keywords bring you the most traffic. And of course, uh, SEO is extremely important if you want to get those free sales coming to your website. And if you start getting free sales, organic sales, that means that if you're gonna start running paid ads, it's gonna work as well. If you're gonna get free sales, sales from the Google, trust me, once you're gonna start running ads, it's gonna work even better. But now you know how that works, you know how the whole optimization part works, you know how the on-page SEO works, you know about off-page SEO, and that's a solid foundation in SEO. So congratulations on that. 
now you know what is SEO, how that works, and this is gonna help you to get those organic sales, the free sales to your website. Congratulations on that. All right, let's start talking about blogging on your e-commerce store. So I already kind of talked about this in other lessons. I uh, kind of told you that writing blog posts uh, on your e-commerce store is a uh, good practice. Uh, you might attract more visitors to your website and you can expect more customers. Usually a lot of e-commerce stores do that, uh, do this as well. So for example, if I would decide that I want to write blog posts uh, with this e-commerce store that is in children toys niche, I could write uh, such blog posts about gift ideas for let's say four year olds or six year olds or something like that. Montessori teaching and all other similar type of blog posts and if you would do a keyword research looking through these types of keywords you would find that those keywords are quite popular and to add a product with a title a gift idea for a four-year-old it just won't work and uh, to take advantage of this keyword of this popular keyword let's say you could write a blog post. So to start writing blog posts, you will need to create your blog page and then you will need to create categories for your blog posts. So let's begin with creating our blog page. So let's go to the dashboard. Let's go to all pages or instead of going to all pages, let's click add new. Let's give a title blog and let's click publish. Let's click publish one more time. Let's go back. And now we have to set this page to be our blog page. So to do this, we have to go to settings. Let's select reading and in post page section right here, let's choose blog and let's hit save changes. All right, so we have our blog page ready and now we can check and see how it's gonna look. So let's go to all pages. And as you can see, blog is now set to be as post page. So we can click view. And as you can see right here, we have some blog posts. So here you will find all the blog posts. So as you can see right now, we only have two blog posts and right here we have a sidebar. So this is how this sidebar looks. It looks uh, quite messy. So our next task will be to fix this sidebar right here. I usually like to display the latest posts, the recent posts and the categories as well. But right now we don't have any categories created. So before we work on our sidebar, we should create some categories for our blog posts. So to do this, let's go back to the dashboard. And of course, this one is completely up to you. What type of categories you want to have? I usually have uh, about five categories, but in this lesson, I'm just going to show you how to create two categories. And uh, even though if you're going to have less categories, it doesn't really change anything because I usually like to use blog posts to provide useful, helpful information for my visitors, for readers. And this way I can build my trust and this way I can also expect that I will get more customers uh, later along the line because my future customers will be familiar with my website. So that's how I use the blogs. For example, I have an e-commerce store where I sell cat toys, cat products, uh, the products for cat lovers. And on this website and blog, I have quite a lot of categories with various tips, breeds, uh, suggestions, uh, entertaining content and so on. So so I usually like to provide my visitors with useful information from that they could benefit. All right. So that's how I use the blog. So now you kind of have an idea how you can use it as well. So before we leave, let's create our categories. So to create categories, we have to go to post and let's click categories. As you can see, by default, we have one category that is called uncategorized and we cannot delete this category since it's created by default. It's just the way it works. We cannot delete this category because uh, WordPress has to have at least one category and it usually is uncategorized. So instead of looking ways how to delete this category, we can edit this right here. Let's click quick edit and I'm just going to give name and the slug the same. The slug is going to be what we're going to see in the URL of this category. So this one I'm going to call Montessori. 
and I'm gonna click update category. So in Montessori category, I'm gonna post various blog posts about Montessori teachings, methods, uh, maybe I'm gonna post a list of 10 toys, 10 Montessori gift ideas or toys or something like that. And in this blog post, I'm gonna include my products. I'm just gonna showcase my products. So that's how you can take advantage of blogging as well. So the next category that I'm gonna create is gonna be called gift ideas. All right, let's click add new category and wonderful. Now we have two categories ready. And if we would go to all of our pages, I'm just gonna open in a new tab and I just want to check my blog page. I wanna see how it looks. So as you can see now, instead of having right here on categorized category, it has Montessori. This is gonna be the default category. And right now, as I mentioned you before, we should take care of this sidebar right here. So to fix this sidebar, let's go right here and let's go to appearance tab. Let's select widgets and th this sidebar was created using widgets. All right, just a second. All right, so this is the sidebar. As you can see how many widgets it has and I'm gonna delete this one. And actually I'm gonna delete all of these except I'm gonna leave this recent post and I'm gonna move categories above recent posts and I feel like just like that it should look good. So what I'm gonna do right now I'm gonna delete all of those blogs here and I'm just gonna leave categories and recent posts. All right I just finished removing the blogs that I'm not going to use and this is how my sidebar is gonna look now. Of course you can test some other widgets right here if you want you can use any of those just drag them anywhere you want and this one is up to you but I usually like to keep everything simple. Now let's go to our blog page and let's refresh this page and as you can see it's quite simple looking sidebar this is how it's gonna look and if you don't want to have the sidebar you can disable it if you would go right here and if you would select blog layout as you remember in the lesson when we were talking about customization options I told you that you can do various adjustments to layout but first of all you must have a blog. So right here, as you can see, I am in my blog customization options. And if I would go right here in this section, I can change the layout. If I would go right here, single post, I can change the layout as well. So this one is up to you if you want to do some changes, but I usually like to keep the way it is. I just wanted to show you that it is possible to do some changes. All right. So right now we have this blog kind of ready. And the next thing that we have to do, we have to display this blog somewhere so our visitors, our customers could access our blog. So it's up to you where you want to include your blog page. You can include right here in your footer or you can include it right here in your menu. So in this case, let's include our blog page in our menu and we're gonna create a drop down menu with categories. So to do this, we want to go to the dashboard and we're gonna practice for the last time working with menus. So let's go to appearance, let's select menus. And right here, this is our main menu. So right now, let's choose just the second custom link. So our custom link is gonna be our blog page. So right here, we can type text, it's gonna be blog. And here, I'm just gonna paste the URL of my blog page. All right, now I can click add to menu and I want this one to be the last. So that's exactly where it's supposed to be. And now we can expand categories. All right, so we have view all and right here we can see our categories, our all categories of our blog. So we can select them both and we can click add to menu. All right, so now I want to make this blog element a drop down menu. So I'm gonna move this one to the right and I'm gonna move Montessori to the right as well. I can switch places and let's click save menu. All right, we can go back. Now we can close this tab and here we go. We have our blog in place. So if I would hover over blog, as you can see, I can choose any category I want. If I would click on the blog itself, I'm gonna go to the blog page and if I'm gonna hover over blog, as you can see, I can select Montessori category. So this is the Montessori category. It kind of looks the same because we only have one category with two blog posts. If I would select gift ideas, we don't have any blog posts. So this is how it looks right now. So just like that, you can create a blog page for your website. So that's all for this lesson.
in this lesson, we're going to talk about the keyword research and the ways to optimize your blog post to get uh, the best results possible, especially if your website is fresh and understand when you have a fresh website, it's kind of difficult to get this organic traffic. And when you're writing blog posts or adding products, you should look for keywords that are not as competitive as others and uh, that have some search volume, some search monthly volume like 200, 100 or something like that. All right, so how to do keyword research for your blog post? It's actually the same as doing research for your products. It's actually identical thing. So I'm gonna go to Uber suggest tool. And as you can see, this is the same tool we use to do a keyword research for our products. All right, so let's go to keyword research. We can start with keyword overview. So as you can see, I already typed one keyword, one keyword on that I'm planning to write a blog post and the keyword is gonna be Montessori method. So I could write a blog post Montessori method dash everything you need to know, or I could name it all about the Montessori method. But the best case scenario is to include your keyword at the beginning of the title, because right now we are talking about the optimization part. So if you can, if it's possible for you, the best case scenario is to include your main keyword, the phrase at the beginning of title. So that's very important as well. But if you cannot do that, no worries, don't sweat over that too much. You can include in the middle of the sentence, it's still gonna work. But uh, it, this is the best case scenario. All right, so now we can check how well this keyword is performing. As you can see, we have an average search volume, 3600 searches per month on average. And that's quite good, that's quite high. And SEO difficulty is quite high, 49 out of 100 is quite high and right here we have some information saying that uh, in top 10 position to rank you should have this many backlinks your domain authority should be at least 55 but it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, these are the real requirements these are just predictions all right but as you can see uh, already from the seo difficulty score you can see that this keyword is quite difficult to rank and if i'm gonna write a blog post it doesn't mean that i'm gonna get a lot of traffic because most likely i'm not gonna end up in the first page of Google search results and to be there I will need to build some backlinks to reach out to other websites so I could post some guest posts so it's a long process but maybe we will be able to find a less competitive keyword and if I'm gonna scroll down let's see what we have right here so in keyword ideas I'm just gonna expand them all as you can see we have various other ideas right here montessori method of teaching materials all right so this one is going to be quite difficult to work on because i don't even have any ideas how i could uh, pump out a blog post talking about this subject so i'm just going to skip this one all right this one montessori method parenting search volume is low but it doesn't necessarily mean that only 70 people search every month for this information usually uh, the volume is much higher these are just uh, predictions these are just the numbers and it doesn't necessarily mean that if your search volume is low you shouldn't focus on that keyword because it has a low search volume no if it has low difficulty and it's not going to be so difficult to rank this keyword you should also focus on these lower volume keywords because of course your website is fresh your domain name is fresh you don't have high domain authority you want to focus on less competitive keywords and usually those keywords have less volume all right, Montessori method parenting. Maybe I could write a blog post, Montessori method parenting, everything you need to know, or everything you need to know about Montessori method parenting. Maybe this could be a great topic and maybe I can use this keyword. So I'm gonna select this keyword right here and uh, maybe I could write a blog post on this subject. So now I know that it only gets around 70 monthly searches. It doesn't have a high difficulty and uh, most likely I could end up in the first page of Google search. It's not much traffic, but it's something. And uh, when you are new, you should start with less competitive keywords and uh, as the time goes by, as you grow, as your domain authority grows, 
you can aim at more competitive keywords. And as I showed you in one of the lessons where I showed you how to work with Google Search Console, as you saw it yourself, in my situation, I'm kind of ranking in the very high positions with a very competitive keywords that are extremely competitive. So it basically happened to me because my website is out there for quite a while now. I've been running this website for six years and uh, i already gathered some backlinks my domain has a higher authority and i can rank higher using more competitive keywords so when you are fresh when you're just starting out you can pick less competitive keywords and you can start working with that because you still have to learn how to pump out content that is not that competitive but if you will manage to master this craft this art of pumping out content that is less competitive and you will rank high that's a great start that's a fantastic start to be honest so this is going to be the keyword that i'm going to use montessori method parenting and the title of my blog post is going to be every you need to know about Montessori method parenting or something like that and in this case of course it's kind of difficult to include this keyword at the beginning of the sentence but once again it's not a huge issue I can include it basically anywhere I want and uh, in any case this keyword isn't that competitive all right let's see what else we have what other competitors we have right here that are using this keyword all right, as you can see here, we have one blog post that is raising baby using Montessori method parenting. All right, maybe that's also a good blog post idea. If I'm going to open this one in a new tab, let's see how it looks. All right, as you can see, this is how it looks. It's a book or something like that. But yeah, this is how it looks. You can also try to write a blog post, a similar blog post to your competitors right here, picking from content ideas. Uh, you can try various different ways to pump out content. So this one is once again up to you. This is where you can get creative. And uh, let's run this URL right here through our Uber Suggest tool to check for what other keywords it is ranking. So if I'm going to go to traffic estimation, I'm going to select traffic overview and I'm going to paste this URL right here and I'm going to click search. We're going to check for what other keywords this page is ranking. All right, it's ranking for 15 keywords and let's see what those keywords are. All right, maybe right here we're going to find some other keyword ideas that we can use for writing our content. Okay, right here as you can see, mommy and me Montessori. It's quite confusing. Let's not focus on this one. If I'm going to select to view all, let's see all the keywords. All right, so as you can see, this is the keyword Montessori newborn for infants. As you can see right here, we have various different keyword ideas that we can also use to write content. Mom and Montessori, Montessori sleep method. As you can see, we have quite a lot of other keyword ideas. So this is how I usually do a keyword research. I usually start with the broad phrase of the keyword right here in keyword research. I go through the suggestions, I go through the various other keywords. Then I check content ideas. Then if I find something interesting like this one right here, I copy the URL of this page of this blog post and I paste it right here in traffic estimation and traffic overview. And I check for what other keywords this page is ranking. And then maybe I'm going to find some other interesting keywords. So as you can see, this is how it works. You just go through the keywords. You try to select the keywords that are less competitive, that has some volume, some search volume. And and that you can rank for and when you are optimizing your content don't forget that you have to include your main keyword in the title of your blog post and the URL of your blog post so if you're gonna include your keyword in the title it's gonna be automatically included in the URL as well and you have to include it in meta description too but if you're gonna include this main keyword in the first sentence of your blog post in the first couple of sentences at least then it's gonna be automatically included in meta description description so in any case it's very important to include your keyword in the first couple of sentences when you're writing your blog post this is a part of optimizing your content you have to include your keyword in the first couple of sentences of your blog post and then when you're writing your blog post let's say your blog post is going to be of 800 words something like that then you probably want to mention this keyword around eight times something like that and after you have included your keyword eight times the next thing that you have to do you have to add featured image for your 
your blog post. Later, I'm going to show you how that's done. But once you add featured image, you want to also include your main keyword in the alt text and in the title of the image, just like we did when we were working with products. And when you're going to add some other images in your blog post as well, you can include some other variations of this keyword that is also relatable to your content. So that's how it works. So basically now you are a bit more familiar with the idea how to do keyword research when you are writing blog posts. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how I add blog posts to my website. So if I would go to Google Docs, as you can see, I have my blog posts ready. And I usually like to use Google Docs for writing my blog posts. Not in all cases, I write blog posts myself. I sometimes buy those from Fiverr, from freelancers. And uh, this is how I usually get those blog posts done in Google Docs. And it's just more convenient. So as you can see right here, I have my blog post ready. This is the title. And as you can see, I included my keyword at the beginning of the title. And this is how it looks. It has headings and basically my blog post is ready. So I can simply select my blog post right here and I'm just going to copy it. All right, I'm just going to copy my blog post and I'm going to go to my website. I will go to the dashboard and in post tab, I'm going to click add new. All right, so I'm going to delete this block because I don't need this block because I need a paragraph block instead of HTML block. And right here, I'm just going to paste my content. And as you can see, this is how it looks. All right, now I need to add the title. So the title is right here. So once again, I'm just going to copy my title. That's how I like to write my titles. And I'm going to paste it right here. All right, so as you can see, this is how it looks and majority of words have upper cases. That's just how it works. And if you would go right here, you'll find various blocks that you can use in your blog post. Usually when I'm writing blog posts, I only use images, uh, paragraphs, headings and uh, the spaces. This one right here. Usually those are more than enough. But if you want to explore other blocks, it's up to you. To check them out so don't hesitate to explore other blocks maybe you'll find something you would like to use as well and besides that i also use table of contents by rank math all right so the first things first when i'm adding my blog post i usually like to go right here to post instead of blog when i click right here post i do changes to the whole post itself so the things i do right here i add my featured image so my featured image is gonna be this one. I already added some images. And like I mentioned you before, in the alt text, I'm gonna include my main keyword. So right here, I'm gonna include my main keyword and in the title as well, I'm gonna include the same keyword. All right, as you can see, I included my main keyword in the alt text and in the title as well. And I'm gonna click set featured image. Now I have featured image for this blog post. All right, so we are done with this part. Now we have to select our category. All right, just a second. And the category I'm going to select is going to be obviously Montessori. And in the tags, I will include Montessori and Montessori method. All right, as you can see, this is how it looks. And as you remember, tags are meant for describing your content in short keywords. So if you're going to have any similar content, maybe you're going to have a bit uh, different pieces of content where you're going to talk about Montessori as well or Montessori method, uh, you can include the same tags as well. So that's how the tags work. They don't do much help, but uh, it's still something. So I usually like to include tags as well. All right, so if I'm going to scroll down, we don't need to change anything else. Everything looks great. And now the next thing I do, I usually include spaces. So the first space I'm going to include below the title. And to include a space, you have to click right here. Let's scroll down and just drag it and drop it anywhere you want. I usually like to use 30 pixels. So right here, I'm going to type 30. Now I can duplicate this one right here. I'm just going to duplicate it. And I'm going to add the same space right here. All right. I'm going to duplicate one more time. And I'm going to add another space right here. And now I'm planning to add another image. So to add another image, I can click right here, add block. And I can select image. So if I would use search, I could type image. 
and this is the block I want to use and below the image I usually like to include another space so that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna duplicate the previous space and now have two spaces in between the image and now I'm gonna select image from the media library so I previously uploaded some images this is the other image I'm planning to use and as you can see I already included all text and the title this time I decided to go with different keyword and I don't want to make each image with the same old text so that's what your goal is you don't want to look too spammy all right so I'm gonna click select and this is how it's gonna look all right now I'm gonna scroll down and once again I'm gonna duplicate this space I'm gonna move it down just like that right here and here I'm planning to include another image so as you remember to include an image we can click right here let's select image let's duplicate our space let's move it down and let's choose image from the media library so the other image I'm planning to use is this one right here I included the same keyword as my main keyword because it will not cause any issues since I'm not using the same keyword in each image all right so I used my main keyword in two of the images I used in the featured image and in this image as well so I'm gonna click select all right so my image is ready and once again I'm gonna duplicate this space and I'm gonna move it right here and the next space that I'm gonna duplicate it's gonna be here and I'm gonna move it right here and right here I'm gonna include another image so once again let's select this plus symbol let's select the image let's duplicate the space let's move it up and down and let's choose the image this is the image I'm planning to use now it has a bit different keyword but it's still relative to my blog post all right so I'm gonna click select and now I'm gonna duplicate the last one and I'm gonna move it right here in conclusion part and this is how it's gonna look all right so now like I said you should interlink your blog post and since my website is fresh I don't have many choices to interlink my blog post I can interlink Montessori word right here this one and I can add the blog post category or I can add the category of my toys. So I'm gonna go to my website, Bake on Avocados. I'm gonna open Montessori toys in a new tab and I'm gonna open blog, no, not the blog. I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna hover over the blog. I'm gonna choose Montessori category. And now I have a blog post category Montessori in place and I have my product category Montessori. So I can include this URL, but I have to copy it. And now since I have copied this URL, I can go back to my blog post and I can select Montessori, all right? So right here, I'm gonna choose this option. And in this place, I'm gonna paste this URL that I previously copied. And this is how it's gonna look. So now this blog post is interlinked, so that's great. And the other interlink that I can include is my blog post category that is Montessori since I'm planning to have more blog posts in this category I'm gonna interlink this category with my blog post so I'm just gonna look for the other Montessori uh, anchor text that is right here and I'm gonna select this one I'm gonna paste this right here I'm gonna click enter and as you can see this is how it looks now I can actually go to my SEO tool that is right here and I can type my focus keyword. My focus keyword is going to be Montessori method parenting. So that's exactly what I'm gonna type. All right, I'm gonna hit enter. And as you can see, we got 69 out of 100. That's pretty good. And as you can see, yeah, we are getting good marks. Focus keyword not found in your meta description. So if it's not found in meta description, I actually included this keyword in the second sentence so it's not catching on but we can edit the snippet and right here in the description i can include my main keyword so that's exactly what i'm gonna do all right so i just included my main keyword in the meta description and this is how it looks i usually recommend you to include your main keyword in the first sentence of your blog post or of your product because it's just gonna work better and uh, right now I just included this one in my meta description using my SEO tool but it doesn't necessarily mean that Google will pick up on this one and Google might use just the first sentence so that's the issue with Google like I said it's quite picky sometimes so we can keep it like that it should work 
and now we can close our SEO tool and before we publish our blog post we can click preview let's click preview and let's check how it looks all right as you can see this is how it looks and it looks clean it doesn't look messy or anything like that I like the way this blog post look and this is the blueprint I usually use when I'm posting blog posts. This is how most of my blog posts look and it's easy to read, it's easy to understand and that's what matters the most. After all, you are creating a website with the intention of offering the best user experience for your visitors. So I think this blog post looks great and if you like the way your blog post looks, we can close this tab, we can actually close this one as well and that one too and now we can click publish. Let's click publish one more time and let's click view post and once again this is how it looks. If you don't like the layout of this blog post uh, you can do some customization options right here and this one is going to be up to you if you want to change anything but this is how it's going to look right now. If I would click on the Montessori category this is the posts we have and this is how it looks. So those two other posts were added by default. You can delete them because we don't need them. And basically that's how our blog looks. If I would click on our blog page, as you can see, this is what we get. So those two posts that were added by default, we can delete them. But for now, I'm just going to leave it just like that. And I feel like everything looks good. So just like that, you can add your blog posts. And when you are adding your blog posts, don't forget to optimize your content with your main keyword so you have to include your main keyword in the title of your blog post uh, that's gonna be a meta title as well in the meta description in the url of your blog post it's gonna be done automatically if you're gonna include your main keyword in the title of your blog post and you have to include your main keyword depending on the amount of words you're writing in the text of your blog post itself. Once that's done, you have to add uh, your images and when you're adding your images, don't forget to include your main keyword in the alt text of some images, in the title of images, and uh, then in other images, just include other variations of your keyword that are still relevant to your blog post. And of course, don't forget to interlink your blog post to other content of your website. So that's all for this lesson. Now you know how to add blog posts to your website. All right, so in this final lesson of the blog section, I'm gonna show you how I look for inspiration to write my blog post and the whole process itself. So the first place where I like to look for inspiration is of course, Pinterest. So if you have a Pinterest account, you can go to your Pinterest account. If you don't have one yet, you can create one just right away. And right here, once you are in the Pinterest, you can use search and just look for the keyword. For the keyword you want to write a blog post about or something like that. In my case, it's gonna be Montessori. So that's exactly what I'm gonna type right here. All right, so I type Montessori method. I feel like it's gonna be closer to my uh, blog post idea and it's just gonna give me better results. So I'm gonna hit enter. And as you can see, we get a lot of different content ideas. And as you can see, what is Montessori? What is Montessori? And five easy ways to get started. Montessori newbies need to avoid mistakes and so on. So you can scroll down through all various different content ideas and you can use Pinterest to gather various types of ideas. So that's what I usually like to use. Pinterest is usually my number one place to go if I'm looking for ideas to write my content. So this one is for you to explore and uh, yeah, I usually like to use Pinterest. It just works very well. And the second place that I like to use is AI tool, artificial intelligence. So as you can see right here, this is the open AI tool. We already used it uh, when we were writing some pages for our website like cookie policy and so on. But this tool is also great for generating ideas, for writing outlines and for writing the content itself. So for example, in this right here message field, I'm going to type give me 10 content ideas for Montessori method. All right, so my input is going to look like that and I'm just going to hit enter. And this tool will give me 10 content ideas. I usually like to use this tool not just for generating ideas. Sometimes I even write some of the content pieces when I'm working on a blog post. So this tool helps a lot. Just imagine Jarvis from Iron Man and uh, this artificial intelligence tool is very helpful. It just saves you a lot of time when you are struggling with coming up with ideas and anything like that. 
So as you can see, now we got 10 ideas and I can ask this tool to write me an outline for the number one. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right. So my input is going to look like this. Write me an outline for number one and I'm going to hit enter. All right. And as you can see, this tool is generating me an outline for this blog post and it makes sense. It looks great. And if you don't like the way it looks, you can regenerate uh, this output or you can work on this one yourself. If I'm going to scroll down, as you can see, we have quite a lot of points. But this is also another great tool to use if you are lacking of ideas to write content or anything like that. So I usually like to use this tool as well. Like I said before, usually my number one place where I look for ideas is Pinterest. And the second best place I like to use is ChatGTP. So this is a great tool for generating various ideas. It even helps you to write blog posts. So this is it for this lesson. Now it should be easier for you to gather ideas uh, for what type of content you should write uh, to your blogs. And it should be very helpful. Those two places, Pinterest and ChatGTP, are more than enough. So that's all for this lesson. All right, now you know how the blogging works and how you can use it in your advantage. So I usually like to add blog posts to my online stores. This way I can attract more visitors. I can also grow my domain authority because uh, with my blog posts, I usually get backlinks, uh, grow my domain authority this way, and it just helps to the whole SEO part of my website. So that's a huge thing if you can add blog posts to your website. And I highly recommend you to do that. You not just want to start selling things left and right. If you can, you should help your visitors, customers with valuable information. And that's how I usually like to do it myself. If I'm selling cat products, I usually like to have blog posts about cats, cat breeds, various health tips and so on. So this is a huge thing if you want to attract more visitors to your website. This way you can also collect emails if you're gonna do email marketing and basically a lot of e-commerce stores they use blog to attract more visitors to their website so congratulations now you know how that's done in this lesson i will show you how you can translate your website into any language so basically you can create your e-commerce store in any language you can imagine it's very convenient if you are building your online store in your native language for your native audience and you're not just focusing on English speaking audiences. So the first things first, when we are translating our website, we have to go to our dashboard and let's go to the settings. Let's choose general. Let's scroll down and let's choose site language. So from the list right here, choose your site language. In my case, I'm just going to choose Lithuanian. All right, once you have done this, let's scroll down and let's hit save changes. All right, as you can see, some of the tools in our dashboard are in different language right now, but not every single tool is in different because some of the plugins, they still use uh, the English version, but no worries about that. If you got used to the English version, you will not need uh, to know how it's going to be translated in your language uh, because those plugins are only in action in the back end of your website. So in the front end, you're going to have your website in any language you want. But we are not done yet. Absolutely not. There's quite a lot of steps we still have to take. But before we proceed, we can check our website. Let's see how it looks right now. All right. And as you can see, a lot of things right now are still in English language because we still have to change them. If I would go to my cart, as you can see, I still have the English language. All right. So now we have to do some important changes and we have to translate our WooCommerce plugin. So to do this, we have to go to the settings right here. Let's scroll down. Let's see if we have any adjustments. So right here, if you will need, this is where you can change your currency if you haven't done this yet. And you can change your region, location. Uh, using this information, if you will decide to activate taxes, using this information, taxes will be calculated automatically if you're going to enable them right here. All right, let's go back and let's go to the advanced part right here. So here we're going to have various endpoints, checkout endpoints and account endpoints. As you can see right here, we have checkout endpoints and they are in English. So you have to replace them in your language and it's order to pay order received and so on. Just replace all this information to your language 
and right here do the same with all this information right here just translate this text right here that you have in each window so that's exactly what i'm gonna do all right so once you have replaced all information right here you can hit save changes but before you do that don't forget that you have to use regular letters don't use any special letters that you have in your language just use simple plain simple letters that's all you have to do all right so once you have done this let's hit save changes and now we are done with endpoints and when you were adding your shipping methods right here you should change them as well as you remember we had various different shipping methods in english language and if you are creating your website for your native speaking audience then you have to replace those all shipping methods so just click edit replace standard shipping with the shipping type that you have in your language and basically that's all you have to do so this one is going to be for you to change so don't forget about that all right so since we are done with this one now we can go to our pages and as you remember, all our pages were in English language. So we have to go right here. This is our pages tab. Let's select all pages. And now you have to replace every single page with the page in your language. So to do this, you will have to click quick edit. In my case, this is how the quick edit sounds. So let's say this is a card page. So in my case, card page is going to be called Krepschalis. So that's exactly what I'm going to type. All right. Once you have done this, you can click update. And you will have to do with every single page that you previously named in English language. So you will have to replace English language with your language. And you have to do with every single page by clicking quick edit and just translate the page into your language. So that's exactly what I'm going to do myself. All right, as you can see, I just finished replacing all the pages and now my pages are fully translated. And when you are changing the names of your pages, just don't forget that in the title, you can use a special letters but when you are adding a slug that is going to be displayed in the url of your page you cannot add any special letters so just use regular english letters in the slug in the title you can use your letters all right so we can click update and now we can go to our website and let's check if anything has changed so if i would go to my cart page as you can see in the url right here instead of cart we have crepshalis so now this page is translated the changes are already in effect in the urls uh, we still have to do some changes to the uh, website itself but now we are kind of done with pages all right so the next thing that we have to change we have to update our category so as you remember we had all categories in english so if i would go to our products tab right here and i would select categories as you can see all our categories are in english so now you have to replace those categories in your language so to do this once again click quick edit right here and in the title include your category name you can use a special letters and in the slug right here don't use any special letters and when you are separating words you should separate them with dashes just like that so that's exactly what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna update all my categories all right so i just updated all my categories and if i would click right here view i'm just gonna open this one in a new tab as you can see we have a completely different category and now our categories are listed in lithuanian language so the next thing that we have to do we have to make sure that our main menu is functioning if i would click on this menu item as you can see it's not working because it's using the urls that we added when we were working with an english version of our website so to change those urls we have to go to our dashboard we have to go to the appearance tab right here and we have to select menus and right here we have to change menus so to change those menus we have to replace english version to our version of title and in the url we have to add our newly updated product category url so previously it used to be costumes now it's costume and it's a completely different url so to change that let's go to all categories and this is the one that i need to replace so first of all i have to know the url of this category so i'm just gonna open this one in the new tab this is the new url I'm just going to copy this one right here. I will go back and I'm going to paste it right here. The new updated URL. And instead of costumes, I'm going to replace to the other language. All right. So now I'm going to need to do the same with every single category. So as you can see, I replaced this one and I will do the same with this one, with that one. And I'm going to do the same with blog 
as well. So first of all, I'm going to add the blog page. So before I'm going to focus on categories, I just wanted to show you how to add blog. So let's go to our pages. This is where we're going to find our blog page. So I'm just going to open this one in a new tab. And this is our blog page. So if I'm going to click view, now I know that this is how the new URL is called. So I'm just going to copy this URL. I'm going to go back. And this is the blog URL. This is the old URL. I'm going to replace with new one. And I'm going to change the title. And to replace your blog categories is basically the same as replacing your product categories. So as you remember, you have to go right here in post. You have to select categories. Once again, I'm going to open this one in a new tab. And as you can see, these are the English versions. So I'm going to click quick edit and I'm going to replace the title and I'm going to add the slug. So once again, in the title, you can include special letters, but in the slug, you shouldn't do that. All right. So I just renamed my blog categories and now I can use them. So for example, I'm going to take this newly updated category. I'm going to click view and now I know the new URL. This is the new URL, so I'm just going to copy this URL right here. I'm going to go back to my menu editor, and right here in gift ideas, I'm just going to replace this one by removing it. So once again, I'm going to expand it, and I'm going to click delete right here. And I'm going to do the same with this one, right? I'm going to click delete. And before I add those newly updated categories, I will need to refresh this page. So before I do that, I'm just going to update those product categories. So as you remember, to add a newly updated product category, you should go to your product categories that are right here. Now I can close this one. So these are our product categories. I already added this one. So I can add this one. I'm going to click view. And these were bath toys. So I'm going to copy this URL right here. I'm going to go back to the menu. And this is the bath toy. So now I need to paste this URL and I will need to add newly translated title. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And just like that, I'm going to update all the rest of the product categories. All right. So I just renamed all the product categories. Now I can click save menu and now I will need to add blog categories. So since I refresh this page, I can go right here into categories and I can select view all and these are newly updated categories. These are blog post categories. So I'm going to click add to menu and once again, I'm going to move them to the right. I'm going to add them into drop down menu to our parent category blog and we're going to click save and now we can close those right here and we can click right here view our website. All right. Now, as you can see, our menu is in other language and it's fully functioning. So this is how it's going to look. And basically that's all for this lesson. So now you know how to translate your WordPress website, how to update your pages, how to update your product categories, blog post categories, and how to update your main menu. In later lessons, we're going to take care of the rest things that are left for us to do. But for now, we are done with a big portion of translating our website. In this lesson, we're going to use a plugin that is called Local Translate to translate some of the strings or in other words, text that is created by the plugins, let's say by WooCommerce plugin, by themes, by our Flatsome theme. Or if you're using an Astro theme, you will also be able to translate various text from these different types of themes, plugins or anything like that, that you can see in the front end of your website. Basically what your visitors can see. So let's go to the dashboard right here. Let's go to plugins and let's select add plugin and now use search to look for local translate. This is the plugin you want to install. Let's click install. Let's click activate. All right. So our local translate plugin is active and as you can see, it is right here. And if we would go to the home page, as you can see, we have various different options, but our goal is to start with plugins. So let's select plugins and let's choose WooCommerce plugin. All right. So as you can see, we have already fully translated our plugin into Lithuanian language. So usually such plugins as WooCommerce, they are translated in a lot of languages and you don't need to translate anything else. So you can simply select your language right here. You can click sync 
and now a lot of things that were from the WooCommerce part will be translated to your language. If you didn't see your language available, probably it should be available, I don't know, unless your language is extremely unpopular and uncommon, maybe you will not find your language added to WooCommerce, but if that happens, once again, join my Facebook group and I will help you with any of these questions. I will help you to translate your website. But I believe you shouldn't face any such issues because uh, WooCommerce is a very popular plugin and it's popular around the globe and it's translated to a lot of languages. So now we can click save. So basically we translated WooCommerce parts automatically. We didn't need to add anything. Everything was translated automatically. So if we would click right here, breeze, purge all cache, just in case to make sure that we have an updated version of our website. All right, now we can check our homepage by clicking right here. I'm just gonna open this one in the new tab and let's see if anything is different right now. So as you can see, now we have a completely different header. So previously we translated our main menu, but now our header, the search bar is also translated. Instead of my account, now we have a scratch that's fully translated as well. Krebschalis, so that's translated as well. As you can see, those buttons are also translated. So if I'm gonna click view card, as you can see, it's translated. A lot of parts are translated, but some of the text is still in English and it doesn't look too good. And don't forget in shipping part right here, you were supposed to change your shipping methods into your language. I didn't do that. I just told you that you should do this yourself. So that's why we are seeing those English versions right here. But if you have replaced your shipping methods with your language, you shouldn't be seeing those methods in English. All right, so most of the text is translated right here. As you can see, we have shopping cart. We should have a different version, checkout, order complete. So I'm gonna show you how you can translate those right here. So usually texts that come with theme are here in those various sections and for those plugins are not responsible. So mainly when we are working with our website, when we are translating our website, the most important things that we have to take care of is we have to translate the WordPress itself. We already did this in the first lesson. We have to translate WooCommerce, we just did that. And now we have to take care of the rest of the text. And usually the text that hasn't translated yet comes from the theme itself. So our theme right now is Flatsome. So we have to translate text for a Flatsome theme. So I'm gonna show you how that's done. And now you have to go back. And once again, let's go to local translate. Now let's select themes. So now we have to translate Flatsome theme. If you are using Astro theme, you can translate Astro theme. But in my case, it's gonna be Flatsome. All right, let's scroll down and let's see if we have our language. No, we don't have my language right here. But as you can see, if you're speaking any of those languages, you want to make your website in any of those languages, you can simply select them and you can simply use them. But if you don't see your language right here, you can click right here, new language. Let's select WordPress language. So it's gonna be this one. And we can keep it just like that and we can select start translating. Before we do any translations, let's click sync. And now we can go back to our cart. And as you can see, we have this text shopping cart. So all we have to do, we have to go back to our plugin. And right here, we can use filter and let's type shopping cart. All right, as you can see, it gives us text. So this is the text shopping cart. Now we can select this text and we can translate to our language right here in this window. So just type your version of shopping cart in your language. And now we translated shopping cart. So we can click save and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna refresh this page. And as you can see, it translated. So check out details, let's go back and let's use search one more time and let's type checkout details. All right, let's select checkout details and right here we can translate this English version to our language. All right, let's hit save and let's see if there are ever any changes. All right, let's refresh our shopping cart and as you can see everything is in place. So we can do the same with order complete. Let's go back, let's type order complete, let's select this one and we can translate it right here. All right, let's hit save changes and once again, let's refresh this page and as you can see, everything is in place. If you're gonna click right here, go to checkout, as you can see, basically everything is translated. So we don't really need to change anything. 
All right, so everything is in place. You can go back. And if I'm gonna scroll down right here, and if I'm gonna hover over this product, as you can see, we have quick view right here. So we could do the same. We could go to our plugin right here and let's type quick view. Right here, we have English version. Let's select this version. And right here, we can translate it. Let's hit save changes. Let's refresh this page. And let's see, yeah. As you can see, we just translated. All right, so now we know how to translate various text uh, from the themes, from the plugins using local translate plugin. Uh, of course, there are more texts that we can translate. It's gonna be for you to explore. It's gonna be for you to translate all the text because you just have to browse through your website and see if you find any English versions, variations. And then if you find any English variations, you have to go back to this plugin just type this text right here and look for English version that you can translate simple as that you will be able to translate any text from any plugins themes and so on but right here at our home page you won't be able to do that because for this we're gonna have the last lesson where we're gonna take care of the final things and one of those final things is gonna be our home page and our footer right here so we cannot translate those things right here using this plugin because we created those things using page builder all right so now you know how to use local translate plugin and now you know how to translate various text from the themes and plugins that's all for this lesson In this lesson, we're going to take care of other not translated texts that are on our website and we will translate them. And we're going to start with our homepage. So as you remember, we created our homepage using UX Builder. So to do changes to this page, we have to go right here and select edit with UX Builder. And it doesn't matter if you have created any other pages using this UX Builder and you created them in English language, you will have to edit them as well. Simply translate all the text that you have right here, that you have text in banners and buttons and in category titles and this text here, here and anything that goes right here that is in English, just translate in your language. So that's exactly what I'm going to do myself and I will start by clicking right here. As you remember, I will open text editor and I'm just going to replace this text right here. All right, so I replaced the text and I'm gonna click OK. And now I can select this button right here and I can translate this Shop Now button as well. And as you remember, to this button we added the URL. So now the old URL doesn't work and we have to replace it. So let's go to our website right here. And let's go to our pages and let's select all pages. And just a second, let's scroll down. And this is gonna be our shop page. So we can click view and we can copy this URL because it's a shop page that we previously had. And now we have to add a new URL right here. So we are not just translated the text in this button, we also added a new URL. Now we can click apply. And right here, I'm gonna do the same with every single text that is in English. All right, as you can see, I just finished translating all the text and now I'm going to click apply. I'm going to click update and now I can close our UX builder and now I can refresh this page. And yeah, as you can see, now our homepage is translated, except products are still in English because obviously you will need to translate your products as well. But you already know how to do that. You just simply have to edit the products. If you added products in English, just replace their titles add descriptions and don't forget to do the same as you would do with the English version simple as that I'm not gonna translate products because obviously you're gonna have different type of products and it's gonna be for you to translate them yourself alright so we are done with our home page now we can close this page right here and now our footer is still in English so before we do changes to the footer we should do some configurations right here because we have absolute footer in English as well as you remember we created this part using UX builder but this part right here was created using configuration options so we have to click right here configure let's scroll down and this is our absolute footer so let's select absolute footer right here and here in this window right here you can replace translate 
the information that is in English. So it says copyright, you can replace it to your language. All right, so I just replaced this text and now it's translated. Now we can click publish right here. And the next thing that we have to do is we have to take care of our footer. So basically we're gonna need to translate this footer that we created using UX Builder, UX Blocks. So we should go to our dashboard. Let's go to UX Blocks. Let's select UX Blocks. And right here in footer, we can click edit with UX Builder and simply replace the information. So right here we had text editor. I can open this one right here and I can add translated version of this text. All right, so replace this text. I can click OK. And as you remember, these columns right here, we also added them with the text editor. So let's select this column right here. Let's click open text editor. Let's replace this text above for customers. And now all these pages that we added previously are inactive because we have changed the URLs of these links and now they are fully translated. So now we can select those links and we can disable URLs that we previously added one by one just like that because we're not going to use them because those are inactive URLs. So I'm going to show you an example, my account. So I'm going to translate my account and let's go to our website. And as you remember, my account used to be right here. Now it's fully translated. Now we can select this one right here. Let's go back. And now we can select this text here and we can add URL. So we're gonna paste this URL. We're gonna click apply. And just like that, I'm gonna replace my orders. I'm gonna translate contacts and I'm gonna add new URLs. So if you will need to find the URL of a page that you translated, as you remember, all pages can be found right here. And yeah, this is where you're going to find the page. So let's say I want to find the URL of page contacts. Just a second. This is the page. So I'm going to click view and this is the new URL. So I can simply copy this URL right here. Since I know this is my URL, I can close this tab. I can go back and I can translate contacts. I can add new URL to this text by clicking here. I'm going to paste the URL. And basically I'm going to do the same with each of these pages. I'm just going to translate them and I'm going to add new URLs. All right. As you can see, I'm done with this column. Now I can move on to this column right here. I'm going to open this in text editor. I'm going to translate information and I'm going to replace the URLs and text right here, just like I did with this column right here. All right. So I successfully translated all the pages. Now I can click OK and let's move on to newsletter. So once again, let's open in text editor. Let's translate the text right here. All right, so I successfully translated all the text. Now I can click OK and let's click apply. Let's select update. Now we can close UX Builder. Let's go to our home page. We can close this tab right here and let's scroll and see. Yeah. As you can see, we successfully replaced the information. But right here, our subscription form is still in English. So we have to do adjustments to this subscription form as well. So as you remember, changes to the subscription form are done right here. Let's go to Fluent Forms. And let's select All Forms. And this is our subscription form. So let's click Edit. And now we can change the fields right here. So if I'm going to select this field, I can do changes to this field so I can replace this information right here. All right, now I can do changes to the button. If I'm going to select this button, I can change the text once again and uh, we can click save form. And let's not forget to change the message because previously when we added our message, it was in English. So right here, thank you for joining our club. You can translate it to your language. All right, now we can click save settings. And while we are here, we can go to our contact form because as you remember, we created our contact form and it was in English, but now we are translating it. So right here, you will have to click edit and just like we did previously, select the field, replace the text right here, first name, last name and email do the same. And just like that, you will change this contact form. Once you have done with those changes, don't forget hit save form just like that and you will translate it as well. So let's go to our website and let's see how it looks now. All right, let's scroll down and what we have. Yeah, as you can see, it's fully translated now. 
And there's one other very important thing that we have to take care of. If I'm going to click on this category, as you can see in sidebar, it's still in English. So to do changes to this sidebar, we have to go right here to our dashboard. And as you remember, those are widgets. So we have to go right here, appearance, and let's select widgets. And right here in sidebar, let's add category in your language. And right here, you can add the latest posts in your language. Uh, this one is going to be for blog sidebar. So don't forget to take care of this one. And for shop sidebar, as you can see right here, we have titles in English. So right here, we have to change product categories to the version of your native language. Let's hit save changes and let's expand this one and let's replace this one as well. All right, let's hit save changes. Now let's go back to our website let's go to the category and as you can see, it's fully translated. So now everything is fully translated. But if I'm going to go to our account page, as you can see, it looks quite messy. It doesn't have the same style as it used to have. It's because we changed the title of this page and now we have to click right here, edit this page and now we can select template. Let's choose from the list. And let's choose my account. All right, let's click update and let's click view our page. And as you can see, everything is fully translated. So just like that, we translated our website to other language. So as you saw it yourself, you can easily translate your website to any language you want. And uh, if you're going to have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. You can send me an email or you can join my Facebook group and I'm always here to help you. So that's all for this lesson. Now you know how to translate your website. Fantastic. Now you not just know how to create a website for the English speaking audiences or the global audience uh, that has .com domain, but now you know how you can fully translate your website into any language you want. Of course, now your website is not multi-language website. You just have a translated, a fully translated website to any language you want. So if you will decide that you want to create a website in your native language for uh, your native audience, maybe you are not from the English speaking country, then you will know how that's done. And that's great because you won't need to look for any other alternatives. You will know how to do that with WordPress and WooCommerce. So as you saw it yourself, we translated the back end of our website and then we translated the front end of our website for our customers. So if you will ever notice some untranslated text in your website, don't forget you have to use local translate to translate this text. Usually not translated things can be found in WooCommerce plugin and in your theme as well. So if you're going to find something that is not translated, that is not fully translated, your first option is to try your theme, either Astra or Flatsum, and then you should check out WooCommerce. And later, if you're going to decide to install some more plugins to add more various other functionalities to your website, and if you're going to see that there's some untranslated text, then you should check that plugin as well. So congratulations. Now you know how to fully translate your website.